It's your boy PSA Sitch here with another Sunday Sunday show with everyone's favorite number one iDubs fan, Adam Friend. Oh, how dare you! <laughs> can I see? I can't look. I'm not. I can't say the c word in the first minute of the show. But you know how I feel. No about... cursing. <laughs> no cursing in the first five minutes. But okay. you know how I f- look. I will elaborate on my feelings for iDub later in the in the streams. Mm, mm, later okay. in the streams, I will talk about the iDub. <laughs> it's funny. Adam like sent me this video. He's like, we have to cover this. Oh, yeah, no. I think we already have a video to cover next week. Oh my god! I only made yeah. it 15 <laughs> minutes. So infuriating. Anyway, what are we talking about today? Enough about the future. Uh, today we're talking about. I already forgot her name. Oh my god, what's this person's name? <laughs> Is it sexist to call her blondie? Well, she's not really blonde. She has like uh, white, white hair. Hair. She dyed her hair white. Yeah. Okay. What's uh, this so, look? Does this is this a conservative woman? Uh, what's no, this, so this? What's is, this look all about here? This is this is Leija Miller. Mm-hmm. Leija Miller, I think is how you say her name. Okay. We've been sleeping on Leisure here. We have. You know, I, big time. Yeah, what but, happened? Um, algorithm. YouTube algorithm. I know. I know. I, I think someone randomly sent me one of her videos, and I was like, oh, my God, her whole catalog. How have we yes. been sleeping on this? It's yes. just a, it's just like second. It's not as bad as second thought. I shouldn't, I shouldn't preface it that. But it's close. It's close. It's just the whole catalog of, you know, right wing bad, left wing good. Yes. Well, it is more interesting, I think, when an older person is still trapped in the progressive matrix. Mm. Don't you think? I, f- I feel like the older you get, the more likely you are to be able to step out of your moral matrix and understand other people's perspective. Um, I don't know if age has anything to do Really? With it. Okay. Wow. I mean, I okay. I'm You're sure more that's... likely. Yeah, more likely. But it's like we go from like a 0.5% chance to like a 0.6% chance. Like it's like, okay, so small step up, I guess. Yeah. Well, I just, I do feel like, uh, like she moves to the first place. Everybody moves when you're a hyper partisan and you want to understand the people who are against you, your political views. Right. You categorize them as having a mental illness, right? <laughs> That's the first place you always jump to. Did she, did she say, she say mental, I don't remember her saying mental illness in this video. But. I mean, she, all the, all the books on how conservatives have, a mental illness. I mean, she right. basically makes all those arguments. So, I I'm assuming you, she's read George Lakoff and right. Yeah, I almost sent you a paper it, it, when I was doing research for this video. I found a paper that was conservatism as a social contagion. Yeah, I think you did send that to me. But oh, I did, did I? Did, I didn't yeah, have okay. time to look at it. So, right. Trying to get uh, this comic done. That's true. Goro Sarah for twenty dollars says, "Congratulations, girls! Episode two hundred was exactly one year ago. Wow! Can't wait to see what you have planned for a very special episode two hundred seventy-eight. <laughs> Face reveal, panel show, twenty-four hours, the much anticipated Fight Club video. Oh, the possibilities! Wow, I didn't even know it's been one year exactly since two hundred. Well, fortunately, we're not doing it by years. We're doing it by number. That's right. So nothing, nothing special. You have to wait till three hundred, which is uh, getting." Very close now that Sitch made me start numbering the Tuesday stream, you fucker. Um, <laughs> so now well, I have we to started plans. doing our own thing on Tuesday, so we kind of had to. I mean, we could have just you know fudged it. Now we have to plan something for the three hundred show. And I mean, we don't and have Sitch to. did zero okay. planning on the two hundred show. That's true. So, that is that's very true. And it cost me a week of work on that's the comic because I had to plan a. We don't listen. An we don't extravaganza. Have to do, we don't have to do anything look at for this guy. 300. Look at this Adam. guy. Okay. Look Nothing. at this guy. It's a normal People show. love us, Sitch. How dare you? I'll do a normal show. Yeah, we'll do a normal show. People love us. It's all we We just need each other, right, guys? We just need each other. Sitch, you're complete. You're, look, you're pissing me off. Let's get into the video. <laughs> What? <laughs> you, you, got, you have we no, need more than each other. Is you that have, what you're saying? Adam? Look, you we have need no more sen- than just me. Look, you have no sitch. sense of shut up. <laughs> you have no sense of ceremony. You have <laughs> absolutely no sense of ceremony. People, you came back to me after the 200 show, and you were like, Adam, you were completely correct. The 200 show was amazing. Everybody loved it. I'm glad we did something. And now you're just going to do a regular show for 300. Get uh, get the, get out of here. How do you think I get, do you think out I get of here. you to do all the work and me to do nothing? 
Get out of here. Well, you do, <laughs> you you technically do more work on the Sunday show, so it all evens out in the long. That's run. true. Uh, J Mac, our surrogate father, thank you so much for the fifty gifted wow. memberships. Welcome, oh new members. God. Don't thank expect you. anything on the three hundred show. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, wait, before we start, I have to oh. set up a poll. Yeah, I was wondering. I almost did a poll, but. Okay, start a poll. I did, I did a debate with someone. Okay, well, yeah, I'm not going to tell. Now, let's I'm start not gonna the tell... video and then you can set up the poll. No, or... no, 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 no. Just okay. wait. It's going to take like two seconds. Okay, I did a debate with someone. I'm not going to tell you my opinion, and I don't want you to tell anyone your opinion, Adam, because I don't want to be the, the bias the poll at all. Okay. Okay. I did a debate. The debate was, where do you keep your driver's registration do you oh. keep it in your car or do you keep it in your wallet oh this is like the most boring question ever <laughs> no this is very important okay this 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 argument got very heated <laughs> okay. okay okay so all right i'm not even gonna weigh in that's how... okay so you don't even weigh in but anyway if you want to start the oh, i leave i leave yeah. my driver's registration in the envelope on my desk that's where I leave. My Are you serious? Yeah, fuck it. Are you kidding me? Look, it's in a big stack of important shit. What do you, what do, you do when you get pulled over? The the, the cops like license registration are just like. Well, I whatever. told you, I already have the license plate frame. They just like wink at uh -huh. Oh yeah, the uh -huh. the the Las Vegas Marathon, <laughs> where all the cops go. They're like, oh, you go to the Las Vegas Marathon. Yeah, my my buddy's a lawn. In law enforcement. We all go out there. Okay, take care. Mm -hmm. They don't even mm -hmm. ask me for my driver's license. Okay. Okay. Well, whatever. So you I'll add, leave at home as an option. I didn't even think I didn't think there was anyone that even had that as an option, but look, you got you gotta you gotta figure out the workarounds for life, Sitch. You're, there you you're go. doing things way too There's your poll. Very important. Okay. Anyway, so today we're watching uh Leisha Miller. Mm -hmm. Uh this video, we're gonna watch two of her videos. This video is called Why Do Conservatives Fall for Fake News? Mm -hmm. Now, this is kind of interesting because she says some things in here that I actually agree with. But it's just, to me, it's ironic that this is all aimed at conservatives when obviously everyone falls for fake news. Obviously. It's not like, you know, liberals and, and leftists and progressives and socialists are not immune to falling to fake news. Some people even dye their hair and create a YouTube channel just devoted to fake news. Right, right. And that's what's so wacky because she'll bring up things. And I'm like, yeah, that's true. But why are you only relating it to one side of the eye? Okay. Have you looked at her video catalog? <laughs> I mean, I, I okay, look, I, I did, think it's but... pretty obvious. And then the second video we're going to watch is all mm. about. Um... Don't spoil it. No oh, okay. Spoils. Well, let's just say no it's kind spoilers. of. It, I won't spoil it, but it's kind of ironic because of what this video is about. Uh-huh. Um, so we actually gonna, we skipped the first three minutes because the first three minutes of it is just her going over January 6th stuff, which we don't need to, we don't need to hear that all again. You all know our opinions on January 6th. Sitch and I both have covered January 6th. We're not in favor of January yes. 6th. We didn't support January 6th. We don't believe the election was stolen or... Right. We don't think Pence had the right or ability to instantiate fake electors and keep yes. Donald Trump in office. We were very surprised in the first CNN debate when Donald Trump still believes that Mike Pence could have done this right. and was a big fat cuck for not doing it. So You mean but, not the debate, the, the town hall meeting? The town the hall, yeah, yeah. The yeah. CNN town hall. The, right. So why are we... Look, I just want people to be clear on why we're skipping the January 6th stuff. Why are why okay. are we why are we skipping? Oh 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 yeah. oh! I'm skipping it because because when people hear her uh, speaking so gravely about it, I feel like it's going to make them more <laughs> in favor of it. Yeah yeah. <laughs> so we look. We don't want people to be to, to be in a world where they think January six was a good thing. Right. Uh, ben Shapiro never supported January six. I always I always turn to Ben Shapiro because like the left completely hates Ben Shapiro and and makes him out to be some kind of Nazi when he came out right after January 6 was against it never supported the idea that the election was stolen does not support that to this day and is constantly saying you know we need to get over this so we can actually elect we can actually 
nominate a Republican candidate for president that is could beat actually beat Joe Biden. So mm -hmm. the, he uh, Ben Shapiro feels January 6th is hurting the Republican Party. And I, I agree with that assessment. Right. Well, OK, so and she's going to say some things in the beginning of this clip. Some people in the audience are going to be very upset. Right. And it's going to be kind of funny. <laughs> <laughs> But Sit, you remind, bastard. remind me, Adam or chat, um, at some point in this stream, there's a there's a very recent clip of Donald Trump in an interview where he says something and it's going to be a massive sitch. I told you so. <laughs> moment. <laughs> and it's funny. It's not like a bad thing. It's actually something that I would give uh, Trump credit for. But it's funny because people are like kind of freaking out about it when it should have been very obvious that this would be Trump's position from the beginning. So. Okay. So anyway, we look forward to that. Let's get started. The January 6th insurrection on the U.S. Capitol building was unprecedented in the history of this country. Insurrection. <laughs> True. True. I don't know if I would call it an insurrection, though. You know, I, I, I wasn't even thinking about this. A few days ago, Scott Adams, I was watching Scott Adams as usual, and he talked about how Jack Posobiec and he said Tim Pool too, but I don't know if Tim Pool. Oh no, Tim Pool retweeted Jack Wasabic. Jack Wasabic had this conspiracy theory where he was like, "Oh my God, now that finally, finally, Ray Epps is being charged. Oh my God, finally he's being charged. Now that he's being charged, the mainstream, lamestream media is defending him, and they're no longer calling January 6th an insurrection. They're calling it a protest. Oh really?" So Scott Adams said that said this, and he believed it because he believes Jack Posobiec for some reason. <laughs> and I was like, I heard that, and I'm like, what? And I go and I look up Jack Posobiec's uh, Twitter timeline, and I find the tweet where he talks about this. And I and I said, I said to myself, without looking into this, I can almost guarantee this isn't true. That was my initial reaction. I was like, there's no way, there's no reality that this is true. Okay, right. That the media is going to give up the insurrection riot narrative just to defend Ray Epps, who they don't even care about, that no one cares about on the left anyway. True. So I go and I look up the articles and, oh my God, I'm totally correct. Oh, Jack yeah. Posobiec, if, I don't know if he took these screenshots or if he just took them from someone else and didn't check them up, but if he, if he took these screenshots himself, he intentionally and dishonestly cropped all the screenshots to crop out how in all the articles from the from the New York Times, the Washington Post, all the all the articles he cited, he would crop out right before and right after the part where he cropped out would say like insurrection or January sixth riot and use all the same language. Well, and I why just would thought he do it was that? Because Dishonest he wants, cropping. Because he wants to create this this conspiratorial narrative that everything's a conspiracy against people on the right. That's why. Ouch. As well as just like whatever is just true. And it was just, it was so wildly dishonest. I couldn't believe, it. I should have called, I should have done a, a tweet on it because I just responded to, to Scott and I just said like, oh, no, this isn't true when I showed evidence. I should have done my own tweet on it because it was just so wildly dishonest. I couldn't believe it. Wow. Anyway. Dishonesty in a presidential election year. I know, right? Who would have thought? <laughs> Never. Who would have thunk? Yes. Country, spurred by a power hungry, lame duck president who used his own platforms as well as his connections to right wing media and conspiracy theorists to whip his base into a frenzy, largely through spreading the categorically false narrative that the election had been stolen. And he, President Trump, was the rightful president elect, and that allowing Joe Biden to be sworn in would lead to the mass curbs on the rights and privileges that his base held so dear. Despite the fact that every major news outlet confirmed that Joe Biden was the rightful winner of the the 2020 presidential election, including Fox News eventually after the threat of litigation, and regularly debunked the disinformation spreading about fraud and a stolen election, hundreds of thousands of people in the United States have been convinced that the election was stolen. Hundreds of them believed it so fervently that it was worth risking their lives and for many their freedom over. How did we get here? What is it about America or American conservatives that makes this country so susceptible to believing in fake news and disinformation is it look it's all american conservatives sitch what is it about american conservatives that makes fake news such a problem mm -hmm. well it's funny because i don't disagree with, with what she just said there but 
it's this is why it's interesting. What is it about human beings? <laughs> right. Because it's like, okay, so, you, you know, throw shade at people or the media or Trump or whatever for January 6th and people, you know, believing this without like proper evidence, fine. That's fine. But to just relate this to the right is ridiculous. When we had just before January 6th, or not just before, but before January 6th, what do we have? Russia. What do we have? Russia. We had Russia Gate. That's right. We had Russia Gate. And what did yeah. we have that was like a massive, um, a massive movement where lots of people came out and risked their lives to do things in the in the streets. The George Floyd stuff. Oh, that's right. The George Floyd. The Black George Lives Floyd Matter insurrection. Right, and it's like, it's it's like we had all these massive protests all across the country that were all based on this myth, this myth of like, oh, there's all these innocent black people that are just being you know killed by the police left and right. When if you actually look at the numbers, very, very few number of unarmed, you know, black individuals who are not doing anything wrong are killed by the police. And yet we had these because of the fake news, because of the narrative, we had these just incredibly massive protests across the country. Yeah, we should have that number on hand because I think it's like six or something. Well, I don't know. So AJW I, I, I know always yeah it, it, out it was something i think it was something like the the year of george floyd i think it was something like 16. okay but it was 16 for unarmed black men shot by the police i think right yeah um but i don't know i don't but that was just shot I there's more for was. armed black men well no ob shot yeah, by obviously police. obviously yeah. right but so yeah anyway the myth created right. by the fake news that all the people on the left fell for and oh so i watched um I watched uh, Olay's conversation with Brianna Greyjoy about Kyle Rittenhouse. Oh, did you? Oh, interesting. <laughs> we get to watch that. It's a, or, like, even though it's old, I or maybe do some highlight reel or something. There's so many like things in it that are just so hilariously wild in that conversation. And in it, they both bring up Jacob Blake. They do, I know. <laughs> Yeah, speaking of fake news, right? We're Total saying, oh, fake news. Only the right is fake news. Like, they both bring up Jacob Blake, and they're both like, oh, my God, I can't believe that this, you know, unarmed black man was shot, shot you know. in the back. Shot in the back 14 times. As he was times. grabbing his knife. Yeah, it's like, oh, you shot in the back 14 times, right? I can't believe this, you know. And it's like none of them mention the fact that this guy was violating a restraining order that his ex-girlfriend had against him. Right. That he... Uh, was tased and and shrugged it off. That they tried to physically restrain him, and then he shrugged it off. And that he was getting into a car that wasn't his, that had children in the back of the car that he didn't have custody to. Yes. And that there was a knife in the car. Okay. What world? What reality? When a person is getting into a car who's who's supposed to be who's trying to be arrested by the police is getting into a car to possibly drive away with children in the back that they don't have a right to be with, what world does the police not shoot that person, right? Are they going to let them just get in the car and drive away and kidnap the children? Of course not. You have to but apprehend no. that dangerous suspect. Right, but no, of course. We, none of that can be brought up because we have this whole fake narrative. Oh my God, did you see the last mm -hmm. three seconds of a police interaction? I saw the last three seconds of police interaction where cops appeared to be shooting a, a man in the back 14 times. That's completely unjustified without me knowing anything about the situation. I'm going to go protest. I'm going to go on the street and burn down the, the car lot of a first of, <laughs> of a first, of a, generation, uh, first immigrant. generation immigrant. Of course, yeah. <laughs> oh my God. Plenty of fake news to go around. I mean, I, kept bringing... I think if you did a peer-reviewed study on the quantity of fake news from left to right, it's probably more on the left because it is all, everything goes into this race narrative. You got like the city bike Karen, you got the, mm -hmm. the, the other, the Central Park Karen, all of these Karen right. stories, basically. You got Rittenhouse, you got Russiagate, yeah. all the George well... Floyd stuff. Jacob and she, Blake. And she also brought up the whole Anthony Huber was shot in the back thing. And I was like, oh, my God. Yeah, totally. <laughs> then not, they don't mention that he's on the ground. That kept, I was so infuriated. Yes. I'm like, yes. they make it sound like he's standing at a distance shooting. Right. I'm right. like, he's been hit in the back of the head with a rock. No, yeah. I, I, here's what I would guess in terms of like the fake news. This would be my guess. I think that on the pure like creation of different stories, there's probably more right-wing fake news because there's more right-wing 
like little outlets that are not that can just say whatever the heck that they we want just don't essentially know about. yeah yeah so i think there's just more volume but i think there's more eyeballs on left-wing fake news and i think it's a little bit more pernicious because i think there's way more mainstream approval of right. left-wing fake yeah. news where there's very little approval of right-wing fake news from the mainstream now it's so bad but it's different yeah, it has the veneer of acceptability. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Uh, Twitter sucks for twenty dollars. Says, wait, no, read my joke. What? what? Oh, Twitter sucks for six months. Says, oh hey, I forgot. I get a free membership message. Uh, what do you call Iron Man if his suit was made out of rice? I don't know. Tony Starch. Uh, Please no steal uh, my joke. Uh, Ha 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 ha! Thank you, Twitter sucks. Uh, Sitch's mom. Oh my God, it's my mother. Wow. For twenty dollars, I can't believe it. She said, "Sitch, sweetie, why haven't you called back that Jewish Gator girl? She was so sweet and scaly, <laughs> only fifteen feet long." There you go, yeah, Sitch. What's going That's on? That's true. She does. She does want grandchildren, so she wants little hatchlings. Call the Gator girl. I'll call the Gator girl. All right. Listen, I'm not into scalies. Okay. Well, I don't know if you call Lamia scalies, but he likes anyway. those. He likes those big phallic ears. That's what Sitch likes. <laughs> he, likes he likes those big dildo ears. <laughs> For those who don't know, Adam is, refers to elf ears as uh, a <laughs> phallus. <laughs> exactly. Okay. The just conservatives who fall for this? Is it just America that suffers from a large swath of its population believing in conspiracies that have been widely debunked? And is there like Russia Gate? <laughs> way oh. out? I set out to find the answer to these questions, and what I found might surprise you. This is why Americans fall for fake news. Roll the intro. You you deserve to understand and how it's affecting. The world around you deserve you. to understand the law and how it's affecting the world around you. Oh, okay. Let's get the entrance. The intro in case the song is like... Uh, oh, yeah. And also, the there's an ad here. Oh, she has an ad for some kind of coffee. Yeah. Um, I have kind it at, of, it, uh, 554. Some kind of latte. Some, <laughs> some kind, some of, kind of limousine. Some kind of latte sipper. Some kind oh of limousine God. latte. She has a limousine latte ad. It's fine. Everyone likes coffee and lattes. Okay. I got no problem. Got no problem. The January 6th insurrection was the culmination of many disparate issues coming to fruition and a year. Wait, 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 wait. Abortion, we stop. AIDS. Hold on. We got to stop on each one of these pictures. Okay. Hold on. Moral majority. Yeah. Wait a minute. This is such bullshit. The January 6th insurrection was the culmination. This is okay, such so, bullshit. Okay, so we have the right wing moral majority. Right. Okay. Of many we have ending segregation. <laughs> this is such bullshit. You don't think you don't think January 6th had like no, its roots look, in ending segregation no, or something? No. No, they thought the election was stolen from them. It's that simple. No, but that's only because they're racist. This is such bullshit. <laughs> I can't stand it. It's only because they're racist, Adam. You know what I'm saying? How, disparate how issues. How somebody do this and and consider themselves legitimate? Abortion. What? Fake news. This is a, this is about fake news, right? Why do conservatives fall for fake news? Because of abortion. <laughs> <laughs> January six was about ending segregation. Coming to fruition and years and of Ronald Reagan. There's the moral, moral majority, majority report. report. AIDS, the homosexual disease that threatens American families. Oh my God! Look, Look they're at all this masks role now. reversal. <laughs> all these right wingers are wearing masks. Oh my God! To protect them from from the from AIDS. <laughs> That's a little silly. Yeah. Was it, was that actually a thing back in the eighties? Like people were wearing uh, masks to protect them from AIDS. I didn't see any of that. Okay information and fake news campaigns slowly building into a fever pitch, leading hundreds of people to believe that storming the Capitol was a valid means of handling what they saw as a very real threat to democracy. Turns out, however, that the disinformation itself and the erosion of trust in the democratic process are the real threats to this country. But all, 
all because of the press losing all credibility with the general public over Russiagate and COVID. So well, I like, mm -hmm. well, 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 if the, if the, you don't think if the press had, had not engaged in those so flagrantly dishonest stories that they would have had some credibility in the election realm? Um, I think I definitely agree that the, tr that the media having rampant TDS, uh, destroyed their credibility with millions of Americans. I completely agree with that. Okay. However, so what's the, well, <laughs> what however, are you welling about? Well, however, I don't think any of that, like, so let's just say hypothetically in alternate universe, the media doesn't have TDS. Okay. Right. Trump would have acted exactly the same regarding the election. Yeah. It's not like, like he still would have said that he won. He still would have done what he did. And I think, I think almost all those people that showed up on January 6th still would have showed up anyway, because all they were really motivated by was what Trump was saying. Right. So I don't think any level of credibility in media, like it, I think more people who didn't show up that were just out there in the public would be not swayed by, by Trump saying the election was stolen. But I think the people that showed up was still would have showed up. I think those people would not have been swayed by the media. I, I would, I would argue, and we would obviously have to do some kind of poll on this, some kind of survey. I don't even know if you really could do it, but well, this is uh, all hypothetical. Though. Yeah, I would say probably twenty-five to thirty percent more people believe the election was was stolen because the media lost its credibility. I think the media, mm -hmm. had it not lost its credibility, probably could have convinced more people that the election was free and fair and, and all no, that I, good I, stuff. Right. I agree with that, but I'm okay. just saying that when, when you're talking about like the people that actually showed up. Yeah. Cause January they're 6th, obviously the super partisans, right? Yeah, those are totally. going to be like the, the tail end of the right. extremes. There are so, a bunch right. of people who think the election was stolen that did not show up on January 6th, but they still, right. I mean, t to this day, they think the election was stolen. Right. Yeah. Right. Okay. That's yeah. That's credible. How did we get here and how can we combat it? Fake news, disinformation and propaganda are not new. We have seen them used for centuries to influence populations and achieve different ends. I and ironically, this video is continuing that trend. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's the thing. It's just, it's so, only the right does this, of course, though. I know. We're the party of science and, and understanding. Yes. That's why it's so used ironic. Ironic information and propaganda pretty interchangeably, though they do have slightly different definitions. Disinformation is incorrect information that is spread to purposely mislead people. Fake news is disinformation that is spread as though it is true, generally through the news media or via outlets that are meant to look like credible news sources. And the word propaganda has its origins in the Catholic Church, specifically in 1622 as part of the Counter-Reformation. The Catholic Church created the Congratio de Propaganda Fide, or the Congregation for Propagating the Faith, informally known as Propaganda, aimed at propagating the Catholic faith in non-Catholic countries. The term took on a secular and negative connotation in the mid-19th century when it started being used in the political sphere, arguably peaking in the U.S. in the 1950s during the Red Scare and fear of communist propaganda infiltrating the lives of everyday Americans. Even in 1925, Harper's Magazine... You know, it's it's fine because she because she says this is where like the height of propaganda in the U.S. is was was in that time period, mm -hmm. which I mean obviously there was a lot of propaganda at that time period. The Red Scare, you know, people were afraid of communism. Some of it was justified, some of it wasn't justified. But I mean, the amount of propaganda that we basically are saturated with in the last six or seven years about how racist our country is is kind of overwhelming. Yeah, way more than the Red Scare, I would argue. Well, I mean, I wasn't alive during 1950, so I can't comment. Well, I can comment on it. <laughs> okay. Well, you're very old, so I'm going to leave. <laughs> you're like, I remember what it was like in the 1950s. Look, it's my gut intuition, and it's never wrong, <laughs> oh, so just right. I go with it. But this is what annoys me when I have conversations with people on the left where they, they talk about the fake news on the right and all this stuff, or how the right, they either say there's always fake news on the right, or the right is just obsessed with being part like a victimhood cult. And then I point out, like, well, you only perceive that 
because you're blind to the left doing that. You're blind to the left constantly making itself the victim. But the sinish, racism, sexism, that's all true. Transphobia. <laughs> right. So and then that's where they go. They say, yeah, but that's not victimhood or that's not fake news because it's all true. And I'm like, oh. <laughs> uh, okay. uh, you pulled a Robbie there. Uh, 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 sorry. <laughs> was publishing articles in which writers were wringing their hands over the threat that fake news posed to democracy in America. By the 1960s, television news outlets brought the daily news into Americans' living rooms. However, the options for consuming news were limited, and most Americans consumed the same news. While different Americans interpreted the news differently and considered different solutions to the day's problems to be better than others, they generally all agreed on what the problems were. And only very fringe groups questioned the veracity of the majority of what the news media purported to be fact at the same time the united you know i don't know what, i don't think she brings this up which is kind of weird um you know in this time period now again obviously you know whether this time period the news was better or not you know i again i'm not adam i didn't live through it i can't comment on it i know the you can comment on it the, the the idea is that yes the news was far more credible and far more factual back in, in those days um, but usually the reason that's pointed to that, which she doesn't bring up, is because back in those days, the media was not for profit. And it was kind of a requirement for for TV stations to essentially use the airwaves to broadcast their signal. The government said, OK, you can use the you can use these frequencies, you can use this band of frequencies. But in order to do it, because you're not we're not going to charge you. You have to basically do a public service, which is to provide an hour of news, you know, once a night. That's not for profit. Right. And when that when that went away is kind of when we saw kind of the explosion of cable news and for profit news and partisan news and all this stuff. Yeah. United States began to see the growth of hot button issues being used to unify members within each of the two parties. The civil rights movement in the 1960s forced much of America to confront the injustices of overt racism, an uncomfortable exercise for those who exacted the most control and benefited from the racist systems, and a reckoning that some Americans have still not recovered from. In the 1970s. <laughs> this, this is so gross, okay? Right. Like, you got, you know, she, well, where's the picture? From the racist systems and a reckoning that some Americans have still not. So, so we have, like, it's just, it's so gross to me that we talk about this. This is, this is the Sitchin Adams law, okay? Sitchin Adams law is whenever you attack your political opponent, you point to the extreme on their side and you use a broad brush to paint everyone in that movement as that extreme like, yeah of course they you say the extreme is the archetype right the extreme is the archetype that's a great way of like of of simplifying it okay the extreme is the archetype and so it's like oh you know she's talking about segregation and you know overturning segregation which we're all in favor of and then she equates it to any kind of pushback to the BLM movement is categorized as like Look, here's a bunch of guys with Confederate flags who are probably racist, who never got over the fact that segregation ended, even though they were never probably even alive in the time period. Uh, that guy looks pretty old. I mean, he might have been. You're he right. might have maybe lived through he segregation. Was, maybe he know. was like 10 when it happened or something. So it's like, okay. Like, yeah, there are racists out there in the country, but, you know, most people... Most people, I don't think most people are judging their political opinions, based on their political opinions on racism. Right. That'd be my guess. Right. Yeah. No, there's this weird thing going on, too, that everyone, like, racism against whites seems to be socially acceptable. And if you're the type of person that doesn't like racism and notices, hey, I don't like people being racist against me and I'm white, all of a sudden you clapping back about this is categorized as as racism itself right which right i mean i don't know how we get away from that but i mean yeah. for all we know this guy has this guy in the video has a white lives matter sign and perhaps he's he's rebelling against the anti-white racism i don't know i don't know 
Yeah. I mean, um, I would probably guess not because listen, having the White Lives Matter sign on its own is fine, but like propping that up with Confederate flags is <laughs> puts you in the Confederate. A little bit, a little more that, sus. Scanning, yeah. Well, he doesn't have a Confederate. Flag. Well, true, but yeah. he's standing in a crowd of people that with apparently Confederate do, so. flags. Yeah. Right. So, but you're right. You know, who knows every individual person? Um, I don't know. Right. But it's it's annoying because like the thing that that I basically been warning about for you know forever is is happening. Where I said all this anti-white racism is just going to make people more racist. Yes, of course. And it's, it's not, not good. Yeah, and I mean you see it. In, I see it like constantly and just the 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 act the racism against black people against non-white people and the anti-semitism just appears to be increasing every day too <laughs> so it's just like everything's getting worse racism against white people racism by white people everything just seems to be get, getting ramped up by this wokeness if we didn't have all of those examples of anti-white racism in media and on the internet right we would look at this picture and see it completely differently. We'd just be like, obviously, those people have nothing to bitch about. So, well, well, that the problem is, this is the problem. People generally, they look at some situation, and they have limited information. Because you're you're exactly right. Like, I could see most average people who don't follow online politics or aren't kind of aware of this stuff. They just look at these pictures. They just say, oh, these people are racist. They don't understand. Yep. KKK right here. Right. Or yeah. And even if these people are racist, they just don't understand the other side of it. Like, well, like for example, they'll see how there's been an increase in racism and anti-Semitism they can see online in the last couple of years. And the problem is that now basically uh, the left will say, see, we were right from the beginning. We told you that there was all this rampant racism in America, and now they're just getting more bold and showing their face. That's what they'll say. Yeah. That's what they're saying right now. When in reality, it's more like, well, no, the fact that you put racism back on the menu is <laughs> basically allowed people to be racist. I've been saying this for years. If you use a weapon or a tactic against someone, they're going to use it, and it's effective, they're going to use it back against you, obviously. If you say that it's acceptable for non-white people to use their racial or ethnic identity to form an interest group, which then can leverage your racial ethnic identity against you, and that's effective in the political sphere, obviously, white people are going to do it right back. Unfortunately, yes. That's the backlash. Yes, and that's the problem. I've been saying this for years. You go back to my, my videos from a million years ago, some of my earliest videos. This was what I was always going to say was happening, what would happen, and it's happening. And, and they will never, the people that did this will just never accept it. They'll just convince themselves and say, no, 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 no. This is just the way it always was. You don't understand, Sitch. These people that are, are racist now, this is just the way it always was. And we just, we were just predicting it. We were just predicting it. We didn't cause it. We just predicted it, right? Yeah, it's very infuriating. <laughs> it it makes, is. Makes it me is. very angry. It's like a Greek uh, play. It's like a Greek tragedy. They were so afraid of some future that their actions caused it. Yes. Essentially. Yeah. You're basically a racist piece of shit. And right. then when people call you out for that racism, you categorize that response as racism. Mm -hmm. And then you say, oh, look, told you you were racist. <laughs> it's infuriating. Right, it's totally right. infuriating. Right. Yeah. Not recovered from. In the 1970s, we see the abortion issue come to a head in Roe v. Wade, giving the right a galvanizing issue to coalesce around. With the founding of the moral majority came the increased reach of the religious right into politics and the use of wedge issues like abortion, gay rights, and other hot button topics to whip the conservative base into a frenzy so they would show up and vote in higher numbers. See my videos on Ronald Reagan and on why conservatives are obsessed with trans kids from the past couple weeks. This increased use of specific... We're going to watch that video. We're going to watch that next, exactly. Yeah. 
issues as galvanizing forces led to further partisanship, as members of each party began identifying specific stances on those issues as attached to one or the other parties. For example, before Roe v. Wade, members within both parties were both in favor of and against abortion in relatively equal measure. Your party affiliation didn't necessarily determine your stance on abortion. Afterwards, abortion became a wedge issue exploited by the religious right, wherein if you were a Republican, the general consensus was that you were against abortion. And if you were in favor of abortion, maybe you weren't a real Republican. This led to increased divide amongst Americans along party lines, unifying members of each party and driving them further apart and turning members of the opposite party into social others, into near aliens whose views and beliefs were incomprehensible to members of the opposing party. And that partisanship has increased through a number of forces to where now members of each party often live drastically different lives from where they live. You know, it's, well, first of all, like, okay, what she's saying is kind of true, but it's also kind of not true. You know, you go, if you go back and you read history in America, going back to the founding fathers, I mean, there's always been, there's always been from the beginning of this, before the country was even officially founded, there's always been massive political divides in this country. And a lot of those divides that, which makes sense because these are basically the divides that exist in any country, were rooted in where you lived, right? Did you live in a city or did you, or you live out somewhere in the rural country somewhere? Okay. And it makes perfect sense because you're going to have different types of people moving to different places, number one. And then number two, different environments are going to require different uh, political solutions, right? Yeah, of course. And you're going to have to figure out how to kind of get along with this. So, so yeah, on one hand, like these, these massive political divides have always existed in our country and will continue to exist. However, it is sort of true, and I was kind of surprised by this because I, I looked it up in relation to this, that for a long time, the abortion conversation was sort of mixed. Like there was a little bit more support for abortions on the Democrat side, but wasn't by like a massive amount, which was kind of interesting to me. Right. That it was kind of mixed. Um, but I do think it's kind of interesting. One of the things that I don't think that gets brought up is that Part of the reason I think there was more mixing of political views back in those days where everything wasn't so politically one-sided was because of things like the Red Scare, was because we did have this external enemy that it seemed like most Americans agreed was an enemy right. that people could kind of like project onto and be like, you know, like, oh, we're all Americans. You know, even if we have our political disagreements, we're all Americans, but, you know, the commies... The Ruskies, like, we have to defeat them. And I think that since we've lost that, that basically the opposite political party in America has become that, has become the enemy for most people. I feel like the fear of communism was, in effect, a fear of authoritarianism. Yes. Just being superimposed onto communism. Like, a lot of people believe that communism leads to authoritarianism. Which it's it's odd in this political environment because the left is so in favor of communism that they don't even really perceive it as authoritarianism. They are against authoritarianism. They perceive authoritarianism as fascism, though. Yeah, no, which you're is an I interesting think, political dilemma. I think you're exactly right, and I think that's why mainstream Americans could very easily go from Nazis bad to commies bad because that I wouldn't be surprised if the like normie mainstream American kind of saw the Nazis and the communists as just authoritarian regimes without that much difference between them. Yeah. She uses the term wedge issue. And I, I'm, I have trouble with this term because I don't really know that there are any wedge issues. Cause it seems to me that there people constantly use this term incorrectly. A wedge issue is an issue that the other party's base has some conflict over. So you're basically drumming up the issue to create dissent in the other party. But I, how is abortion mm -hmm. a wedge issue? I mean, that unites Republicans. It's not a wedge issue. Um, all, and all the issues, all yeah. the issues she listed do not, they're not dividing the base of either party. Yeah, you're right. That doesn't, you know, when I look up 
Okay, if I look at wedge issue, it says it's a political or social issue, often of a controversial or divisive nature, which splits apart a demographic or population group. So it wedges a group of people, right? Right. Uh, wedge issues can be advertised or publicly aired in an attempt to strengthen the unity of a population with the goal of enticing polarized individuals to give support to an opponent or to withdraw their support entirely out of disillusionment. Um, wedge issues are also known as hot button or third rail issues. Political campaigns use wedge issues to soften tensions within a targeted population. A wedge issue may often be a point of internal dissent with an opposing within an opposing with within an opposing party, which that party attempts to suppress or ignore discussions because it divides the base. Yeah, dividing the base. Yeah, but see, it's weird because then under this it says. Typically, wedge issues have a cultural or populist theme relating to matters such as crime, national security, sexuality, abortion, or race. Which, yeah, if we're talking internally, I don't know how abortion is a wedge issue. Yeah. Um, I always had trouble with this term because it just I, I seems... Think, I think what she means is that since abortion used to not be strictly partisan, it became like it was a wedge issue. It, like It was an issue that basically forced everyone to be on one side or the other. Right. That's what she's saying. Like it became a wedge. Like today it wouldn't necessarily be a wedge issue internally. But just wanted to point that out because it's I, every time I hear someone say wedge issue, I think, well, right. where's the wedge? I think a wedge issue, right? An example of wedge issue right now for the Democrats would be, I think, a lot of the trans kids conversation because a lot of the party leaders, what they say doesn't align up with what the polling says. Even wedge wedge issue for Republicans because it's no for Democrats because there if you look at the polling for Democrat voters, there's still a lot of Democrat voters that are not in favor of trans women playing in women's sports and uh, kids transitioning. Yeah, women's sports I think would be a good wedge issue for right. for Republicans to wedge in the Democrats. drive a wedge between right. Democrats who are feminists and supporters of uh transgender rights right. yeah right. that's the wedge that's an obvious when, wedge when trump first became popular trump himself was a wedge issue because there was a lot of republicans that were pretty vehemently anti-trump but i think oh, they've all right. kind of either run away or been silenced so i'm you're not right sure it's really right the never anymore, trumpers but, right interesting to the media they consume, to the establishments they frequent, to the jobs they work. When two groups lead such disparate lives, hinging on fundamental disagreements about hot-button social issues, it becomes a lot easier to demonize the other group. Ironic. So I, I, well, it's funny. So I agree with I agree with what she just said. That like, yeah, when people live in very different places of the country and live very different lives, it becomes it does become easier to demonize people. Um, so I do agree with that. I don't know what she means by this picture because if I'm giving, if I give her charity, she's saying she's defending, um, what was the kid's name? I can't remember. This is the Covington kid situation. Right. Though. Cause it's, cause if I were to interpret what she's saying in, in charitably, she's saying, Oh, this allowed people to demonize the Covington kid. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. I think it was like Sandman, wasn't it? Nick, yeah, Nick Sandman. Nick Sandman, yeah. Um, but I don't know if this is what she means because of her own biases. Right. Well, this would be definitely be a point in her favor if if that's if if she means this in terms of defending Nick Sandman, right? Which right. I, I'm not really sure. I, I don't know how to interpret this. The media did right. demonize Nick Sandman and he got a yes. giant settlement for all from all the demonization the media did. Right. Rightfully so. Something that politicians and purveyors of news content can capitalize on. And nothing has capitalized on or grown this division more than the creation of the internet. Before the internet, people generally consumed similar news media. Everyone agreed on what the issues of the day were, even if they didn't agree as to their solutions. And other than the religious right, radical fringe groups were largely siloed due to the limitations of communication and community building in the pre-internet world. With the invention of the internet, everything changed. Information could be spread at an unprecedented speed. Communities could form made up of people who otherwise would be alone and isolated in their extremist beliefs. Anyone... Commies. <laughs> yeah, what's, well, 
<laughs> like I don't obviously the internet has drastically increased all this stuff, right? Of course. Um, but it's not just because of the internet. All this stuff existed before the internet. We had like hyper partisan Pamphlets. garbage. I mean, she even talks about, you know, you had the whole moral majority wedge issue on abortion. That was pre internet when that all happened, right? Right. All like so I don't know. I, I think people give the internet too much credit or they put too much weight on the internet basically you know changing you know making everyone hyper partisan we're like well people were just pretty people were pretty partisan back in those days maybe the difference is people just didn't realize how partisan people were because you weren't like talking about politics with people from across the country right you were only talking to people within your you know physical range of existence i think there's some merit to this argument because like in online spaces, just the phenomenon of bread tube right. will lead you to believe that a vast majority of the population is in favor of socialism. Well, right. I don't think that's true. Just because you have five or six video essay, essay as content creators that are making videos about socialism that maybe a million people out of seven billion people are watching. I mean, that's not really, that's not really a big amount of people, but it, it, it mm -hmm. per perception wise, it seems like it is. No, no, I, I agree that the internet has made it so that people can exist in these, made it easier, right? These much easier for people to niche. exist in fringe echo chamber silos. Right. right yes. And, and BreadTube is a good example of it. Well, and um, also believe that they are the majority, that they are the norm. Right. Which I don't and, think could happen before because you wouldn't be able to see these other people. You'd be like, look, I'm a communist, but I'm the only one. Right. And I think, and I do think that Twitter, unfortunately, basically acted that way for new, for journalists and kind of trapped journalists in a silo of thinking the entire uh, America or the entire world was far more leftist progressive than it really was. Um, so no, I do think it had an effect. I just don't think it's like, like she's like people kind of act like it's the reason, and it's like no, no, no. It just exacerbated a situation that's obviously been already occurring in our right. country, right? Again, I bring up you know Bill Clinton impeached for getting a BJ, <laughs> like very you know talk about very hyper partisan times, right? Yes. Yeah. People were very hyper partisan regarding the Bush uh, Al Gore election. You know, people were saying Bush was literally Hitler, you know, back in those days. Like po politics have just always been very, very partisan. Well, I, I mean, hmm, I'm really conceptualizing a difference between partisanship and just idea generation for various niche communities. I think it was just. This would be my guess. America has always been super hyper partisan, super uh, siloed, but just that the average person wasn't privy to that partisanship. Yeah, or what that was silo going on in the silo? Because they were just doing whatever, right? Yeah. And they didn't really have access to this information. And if you wanted to have access to this information, you actually had to go out and like interact with it in some capacity. Where now it's just so in your face that a lot more people are just part of these silos than before. Maybe that's what's going on. Yeah. Because it's funny, like, if you go back in the, in early American history, you know, back when the Federalists and the Anti-Federalists were fighting each other, right. they were literally, like, they both cr basically cr uh, created their own newspapers to just write fake news about the other side all day. <laughs> and then, like, go out in the streets and, and be like, read my newspaper about how the Federalists are, like, evil. Read my newspaper about how the Anti-Federalists are evil. Yeah, that's so, how you get voter coalitions right there. That's right. That's called building your voter coalition. There you go. I just think it's, write. it's bizarre and just this, the personality of this content creator just screams this. Like <laughs> so many people, they perceive their personal worldview as just reality. Not even really co uh, conscious of the fact that there are other competing worldviews that may or may not be true or have different levels of truth value or be true in certain aspects of life and untrue in other aspects of life. It's just, you know, they go to college, they're taught this stuff, 
they're taught it as if this is just the facts, the scientific, inarguable facts. And then they present it as if that's, that is the world with such smug condemnation. Right. Uh, right. Completely oblivious to the fact of, no, that's just uh, one perspective. This is like your opinion. Uh, Trent Roberts for 28 Canadian. Thank you, Trent. Says, uh, Sitchin Adam, would you ever consider collabing with dramedy, drama commentary YouTuber Augie RFC? He has covered uh, politicos like yours, such as Hassan, Keffels, Vosh, Sander Hall, and Lance from the Surfs. You guys should collab. Maybe. I mean, I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm not familiar with his content. Uh, maybe be happy to talk to him. I don't, I don't know what you mean by collab. We don't do like collab, like content collabs together usually, yeah. but sure. Well, I mean, we have people on the show and stuff, so. That's, that's kind true. of a collab, right? I guess, if that's what you mean by collab, yeah. Yeah. J Mac, our surrogate father for $10, says, quote, wedge issues is what I give nerds for looking at me <laughs> the wrong way. True. Of course. True. Yeah. Uh, Twitter sucks for $20. Thank you. Twitter sucks. Says, abortion became a wedge issue for women to vote against Republicans who are trying to, quote, take their rights away. That's why women overwhelmingly vote for Democrats. Now the opposite is true since Dems are encroaching on women with trans. Well... Well, that's a good point. That's a good way to conceptualize it. Well, to be fair, now again, this could all be fake news, right? Because obviously there's a lot of bias information uh, regarding this. Um, the story goes, and I haven't really 100% confirmed this, but the story goes that it was the right, the the Christian right that originally set out to create the wedge issue on abortion, not the left. That they were the ones that were like, we need to protect, you know, babies we need to protect life and they were the ones that really were driving this which makes a makes more sense to me it's hard for me to conceptualize that in the 70s or whenever this was going on that like the left just decided we're going to craft this issue that the republicans are going to take your rights away once you know especially once roe v wade already happened because that that's the thing too a lot of this abortion conflict that she's talking about started after roe v wade not before. So it wouldn't really make sense for the Democrats to be the people that would spark that. So right. I, I would guess that it was the right that started that. I don't know. Now, I would be curious to look up when when did the messaging for the left, the counter messaging become they want to take your rights away? Or was that always the messaging from the beginning? So I don't know. Right, anything, pass it off as fact. Any asshole could make a video and claim that what they say in it is true. Hi, I'm the asshole. And then social media... I mean, listen, look, she, she knows. Okay. She knows, look. Yeah, it's fine. Uh, ...what the internet was doing and said, hold my beer and came in and blew your dad's AOL chat rooms out of the water. Now we have algorithms spoon feeding us exactly what we want to see. And that's only amplified what was already happening before the internet age. Now the information being published by fringe groups and websites passing themselves off as legitimate information could- Look at that, right there. Front and yeah. center, who's that well, Who's that in the middle of the picture there's there? There's Benny Boy, but- um, Is that guy an election denier? How do we begin this video? Couldn't it's, even get an election denier here for the picture? You're about my, your fake news about <laughs> January 6th? You couldn't get one election denier? Well, wait a minute. Wait. I, I, wait, over, wait, wait, wait. Over wait, to the right, Candace stop. Owens. Yeah, she's I was an say, election. Right next to Ben. I'm pretty sure. And now, listen, I don't know if it's 100% sure, but I would be willing to, to guess that Candace Owens believes the election was stolen. I think Candace Owens might be an election denier. Right. I don't know about Matt Walsh or. or Michael or Michael Knowles or Andy I wouldn't be Clayton. surprised if they yeah. were, but um, no, like this is what's annoying about this video is that like what she's saying about the information silos and the algorithm, that's all true, but it's just like the blindness to only equate this to the right, only equate this to the right. It's only Breitbart. It's only Daily Wire, right? Ignoring that this is Yeah, where's Rachel Maddow? Take well, Ben Shapiro's face out and put Rachel Maddow's face there. Let me, let me skip ahead here. You'll like this. Okay. She, she brings up some article, and the article references NewsGuard. Okay. And so if you don't know, NewsGuard is an organization that is supposed to go around and like rate the trustworthiness of different news and media organizations. Right. Tim Pool okay. uses it for his videos and shows. Right. Tim Pool points to it a lot, yeah. Um, so I looked up the NewsGuard rating for Fox News and MSNBC. Oh, interesting. 
Okay. Which one is more fake? How's Joy so, Reid do? Can you look up Joy Reid for me? <laughs> it doesn't have specific people. I think Damn. It's, that works. So they have a scale. The new scale now, it's it's, it's from zero to 100%. Okay? okay. If you're in the 40 to 59% range, that's the second lowest range, and it means proceed with caution. Right. Okay. 100% means high credibility. 75 to, to 90 means generally credible. 60 to 74 means credible with exceptions. 40 to 59 means proceed with caution. And 0 to 39 means proceed with maximum caution. Right. It's just like a grading score. Right. F. Right. Essentially. Yeah, exactly. So Fox News right. got a 57%. 57. Not very right. good. Not very good. Proceed with caution, right? Sure. Pretty bad. What do you think MSNBC got? 38. 52 <laughs> percent okay so msnbc got a lower score than fox, than news. fox news yeah okay but you want to know something even funnier who got what do you think daily wire got Ooh, that's a tough one i i don't watch daily wire content beyond ben shapiro so right. well i don't know da Tell daily us. wire Tied with Fox News at 57. 57, okay. So Daily Wire has a higher rating of trust, of credibility than MSNBC. Than MSNBC. Hilarious. The news card. That's hilarious. So I thought that was pretty funny considering the context of this video. It would be disseminated in millions of tweets, shared millions of times on Facebook, and get in front of more people faster than anyone would have time to fact check or control. And social media capitalizes on pre-existing cognitive biases that exist in people, playing on preconceived notions, strongly held convictions, and emotional reactions in order to do what it was designed to do, maximize engagement. Keep people swiping and watching and clicking and commenting on the platform Form for as long as humanly possible. And what gets the most engagement? I'm going to here, here's a editorial note. It's a free note for, for Leisure here. For anyone making videos, okay? When you do that digital zoom effect. Right. So digital zoom means that the camera didn't actually physically zoom in. That when you're editing, you just make the picture expand. Okay. Yeah. You never... You never want to have that digital zoom be on a linear progression. Okay. okay. So what that what that means is here, here's some shop talk. Okay. I, this is like nobody cares about the shop. No, no, talk. no. He, everyone cares about this. Let is us, very important. Let us move on. No, look how awkward this zoom looks. is. Engagement. Okay. Keep people swiping what? and watching and clicking and commenting on the platform for as long. Oh. It hurts. Every time she does it, it hurts me, Adam. It hurts as a person who once edited videos. You're very, but no that's very does. sexist. It hurts me. What does it mean? What does that have to do with sexism? Well, you're saying it hurts you because her face is getting closer to you. No, I, that's no. Looks like the, she's the, coming up to give you a big smooch. No, the, the horribleness a smoochy, of. Smoochy, smoochy. The horribleness of that moment. She says six. Look at this. On the platform. Here it for is. As long. Oh, <laughs> that zoom. That, no, it's that zoom effect is so bad. No, it's nothing. No, stop it. Listen, I'm serious here. Here's your nerd shop talk for editing, okay? You put one point on your timeline. You put no, in the past. Sis, nobody you put cares. one point in the future. Look, it's everyone is listening in. right now. No it's one is zoom watching in. this. Hold on. It's going to zoom in, okay? In, in the couple seconds that you put there. It's 2023. Okay? Who watches videos? You click, click on your little point. Click no. on your little point. And somewhere in your options, depending on what program you are, there's going to be something that lets you change the type of progression. <laughs> Take it off linear. Put it on smooth or fast. Look, if right? you want to start... Put it on your, smooth or fast. If you want to start your editing tutorials channel, do it Do it on your time, okay? <laughs> it's got to be smooth or fast. Take it off linear. You almost never, ever, ever, Long ever use linear movements. Possible. And what gets them... <laughs> never use linear <laughs> movements for editing, people. Never do it. Most engagement... Sensational content, specifically negative sensational content, and content that confirms your pre existing beliefs. No one wants to be told that. Like all conservatives are racist, right?
they're wrong. So people are much more likely to share content that reinforces what they already think. And when like Russiagate really happened. Like uh, Trump is a Russian asset. <laughs> I saw a David Dole video last week where David Dole was saying that Trump was an unwitting Russian asset. To this day, he believes Trump was an unwitting Russian asset. That's not true, right, Sitch? You read the Mueller report. Oh, Sitch is gone. Sitch, is, Sitch decided he has to step out and do some video editing real quick. He wants to, he's right now, he's making a note about taking I decided it off. It's finally time to edit a new video while we're, while we're streaming. That's he decided that he's got to make a note about taking it off linear. Yeah. No, no, no. Okay. So, um, is was oh, is Trump an unwitting Russian? Yes. Well, I mean, I, that's someone's opinion, right? That's not like well, a fact yeah, claim. because Jared Kushner took a meeting with some guy who was uh, on the Russian payroll or something. Was that was that what David Dole said? Well, I think that's what he. Oh. that's the implication. But. I would assume if you asked him, he would say something about weakening NATO or some to that effect. Um, well, he didn't elaborate in his video. He just right. asserted it. Well, okay, so I guess I'll bring it up now. Uh, because it's kind of relevant to what you just said. So there's a clip today that's being spread around where someone asked Trump about the war in Ukraine. And this, the woman asked him, who's interviewing him, says, you know, you said that you were going to end the war in 24 hours. This has president. nothing to do with what I was talking about. But How are you gonna, no, no, this is relevant. Okay. Because this has to do with the claim that Trump is a Russian, uh, asset? A Russian asset. Okay. Because the idea is on the left that if Trump is president, he would just let Ukraine flounder right because he supports russia secretly oh yeah you're right right yeah so they so the woman asked him how are you know how are you gonna end the war in 24 hours and it's funny because trump says what i always said which everyone on the right and left forgets every single person but your boy psa sitch forgot this really small key important fact trump says oh i have a very good relationship with Zelensky. i really like Zelensky." and it's funny because as soon as he says this so many from the right go, oh, what? Zelensky's an evil gremlin. How dare you say you like him, Trump? But Trump says, I, lo I like Zelensky. I have a really good relationship with him. You know, uh, people forget. He said that it was a fine phone call. He said it was a phone call was fine. It was he perfect. Yeah, he said it was a perfect phone call. He could have said it was wrong. He could have granted it, but he didn't. He said it was a perfect phone call. He, and I was Zelensky like, was going to do what he wanted him to do. Z Zelensky yes! opened the investigation. <laughs> Yes, and see, that's what I of think Of course is so, he has a good relationship with Zelensky. That's what is so hilarious about the whole left-right uh, opinion about Ukraine and Russia is because everyone on the left forgets that Zelensky, or everyone on the left and the right, forgets that Zelensky was essentially going to be Trump's stooge. Well, and he was 20, a giant Trump. He was a giant Trump simp. He basically, yes. on the phone call, talked about how much he, he was Trump, trying yes. to fight corruption and and destroy the deep state in just Ukraine. Like yeah, yes, just like right. Trump. And he had learned a lot from Trump in his campaign. Right, right. And Trump is like, oh my God, this guy loves me. I love him. This is great. Yes. <laughs> it's and it's so funny because it, Zelensky was going to go on CNN and talk about opening investigations into Burisma. And the only reason he didn't was because Trump, uh, because the whistleblower, Trump unfroze the aid and told Zelensky not to do it because it was like bad for yeah. him. Yeah. Which was still it, in was still supporting Trump, right? Yeah, of course. He yeah, told him not. To, he told him, "Oh, don't do that." He's like, "Okay, I won't do it." Right, exactly. And it's funny because now, like the weird narrative has shifted, or like the left is so pro Zelensky and so pro Ukraine, and the and not the right generally, but a lot of people on the right are like very anti Ukraine and very anti Zelensky specifically, um, or anti involvement. It's like a lot of people on the right are anti involvement, which has bled over to a smaller subset subsection of people on the right who are like anti Zelensky specifically. And it's it to me, like, it's just, I really feel like people's opinions are assigned to them on certain issues or rather people have reactionary opinions because if Trump, I, I really feel like if Trump was president, Trump probably would have, and, and Russia invaded, Trump would support Ukraine. Trump would support Zelensky. And I It'd be very interesting to see if people would have the same opinions or different opinions. Actually, no, here'd be the question. They would have way different opinions. Here'd be the question. Actually, no, here's the hypothetical. Imagine uh, Vindman never came out with the whistleblowing thing about Trump stopping aid. Okay. Okay. So say that doesn't happen. So no one knows about it. 
So Zelensky does go on CNN and does open investigations in Burisma publicly and does attack Burisma and Joe Biden publicly, which, which is what Trump wanted. Wow. Okay. okay. Imagine that that happened. What yes. would be the left's position on Ukraine when they Russia invades Ukraine. it? They would hate Ukraine. Yeah, like They'd be everyone's, like, they'd throw them to the wolves. <laughs> yeah, like everyone's position would be, I feel like, flipped and reversed if that happened. Yeah, definitely. So I don't know. That's very interesting. Very interesting to me. So, but anyway, so Trump said, um, he's like, I have a very good relationship with Zelensky. And then the woman said, yeah, but what if, you know, what if Russia doesn't uh, do it? And he says, oh, if Russia doesn't, you know, I'm going to tell Putin, I'm going to say, listen, if you don't, if you don't sign a treaty with Ukraine, we're going to send them weapons. We're going to send them more weapons than you'll know what to do with. We're going to send them so many weapons. <laughs> And Trump said that. And it was funny because there were a lot of people right. They were like, no, Trump, no. <laughs> That's and awesome. I, was like, and I'm I haven't like, seen this clip. This clip sounds amazing. And I'm like, but to me, I was like, this is the most obvious thing in the world that Trump would say. I just, I, I'm shocked that people are shocked that Trump said that. Like, oh, obviously he's going to say that. What do you think Trump's going to say? Yeah, he loves Zelensky, of course. Zelensky is like l the mini me of Trump. Yeah. <laughs> he's, he's insanely crazy for Zelensky. He, this is the thing though, the audience, he, Trump is ultimately audience captured because he right. would do the same thing about the vaccine. Oh, Project Warp Speed, the vaccine, amazing. I did this incredible thing for the country and everyone was, would boo. And all of a sudden he's like, I can't say that anymore. Well, to Trump, to give Trump credit. Mm -hmm. Okay. He is very audience captured, obviously, but he does have a tactic at least that we've seen so far, where if someone supports him and doesn't attack them, attack him publicly, especially when they have an opportunity to, he definitely seems to continually support them. Right. Even if the crowd doesn't want to. So like, yeah, he might listen to people on the right backlash against his Ukraine comments and he might soften his rhetoric, but I think he'll, he's not going to like, I don't think he's going to abandon Ukraine literally just because he likes Zelensky. Right. Because his be voters don't like Zelensky. Right? Even if his voters yeah. don't, yeah. That'd be my guess. I'm going to end the poll. You win. Oh, what was in, the poll? In the car is uh, the correct answer, right? Where do you why, keep your driver's registration? In the why car. Do you think, why do you think that's my position? In the car, 61%. In the wallet or purse, 29%. Sitch keeps it in his purse. <laughs> Leave at home, 10%. Those are the based people right there. Okay. The contrarians. Which right. did you pick? So, it's funny, funny uh, story. Not very funny for story. The other day, I got into a heated argument mm -hmm. with my mother. Oh my! Don't argue with your mom, Sitch. I because I always yell at her. Stop. She never. You yell at never, your mom. That's I elder abuse. I always yell at my mom. How I you... scream at her. I shriek at her. Okay. Sitch, this is no, awful. I, I can't yell believe my my mom will never leave her registration in the car. She's so like, what if, what if someone steals my car? They'll have my registration. I'm like, what's on the registration? It's got like your address. What's is that? What's going to happen? The guy who stole your car, if you stole from your house, is going to know your addresses. Why is that? Like, what? That could not, be like, helpful if he. Social security number or something. It could be helpful if he has a crisis of conscience. He knows where to return the car. There you go. Yeah. She's just like all oh, this, the information on the, the registration. I, I don't want someone to steal it. I'm like, what's on the registration? That's so important. If your car gets stolen. Your name and address. Okay, so anyone could look that up. Yeah, no, I don't. Yeah, I don't anyone could just look it up. So, so she always like likes to leave it in her in her wallet or purse or whatever. And I'm just like, just put it in your car. Just leave it in the glove box, like every human being on the face of the earth. And so we got into a big disagreement about whether people actually leave their le registration in their glove box or in their car somewhere versus on their person. Well, now you can show her a hundred, 1,300 okay. people voted and 60% right. say in the car, in the car. Right. There you go. But 30% agree with your mom. Well, those people are wrong. And 10% agree with me. Listen, all Mostly I, all I got is the majority. That's right. all that matters. Okay. Slim majority, but good job. When fake news is everywhere, you could read one fake news article that reinforces your suspicions, like maybe that the system doesn't work for you and there's injustice all around, for example. And then when you see that Look, same she's, disinformation- she's toying with us. Stop it. She's toying <laughs> with us, Sitch. She's toying well, with us. That's what's so weird, because like when she says that, 
is she talking about the left or the right, or is she acknowledging that both left and the right have that same opinion? No, she's met. She's you could read one fake news us. article that reinforces your suspicions, like your suspicions, like that the system doesn't work for you, and there's injustice right. all around. That's the that's the left, right? <laughs> that's, yeah, that's the left wing position. Of course. So why is? But does she know that? That's what I don't understand. I don't know if she knows that or not. Is this like accidental or is she just like afraid of her audience and afraid to call out left wing fake news? So she's doing it in like a subtle way. She's messing with us, man. She's totally messing with us. I don't know. I don't know the answer to this, Leisha. Listen, listen. just say what, just call out left wing fake news too, Leisha. You don't have to like be sneaky about it. Just say it. Just say it loud and proud, baby. <laughs> Look, no, she can't do that. Look how big her channel is. She's blowing up on this. Oh, I thought you were going to say, look how big her glasses are. <laughs> no, she's blowing up on this. This is like catering to the left all the way. Well, exactly. But that's she's exactly left-wing it. Tim Pool. That's exactly it. She's just catering to a specific audience. So, Of course. Maybe that the system doesn't work for you and there's injustice all around, for example. And then when you see that same disinformation shared on social media, you're more likely to reshare that because it's negative, sensational, and confirms your beliefs. And while other countries do deal with disinformation... Those linear zooms, Adam. It hurts. It Get over it. Suck it, it up. It hurts me. It's the worst part of these videos is those linear zooms. Suck it Information up. sharing on a large scale. <laughs> Nowhere does it seem more prevalent than in the United States. Part of the reason for this is our strong divisions, sown over years and years by political actors like the moral majority, benefiting from pushing wedge issues to get votes and gain control. These Well, it just, and again, if, you know, if you want to talk about the, the right-wing moral majority pushing abortion, the wedge issue, you know, fine, fair enough. But to pretend or to not acknowledge like that the left has been pushing this wedge issue for who knows how long that the right is racist. Yeah, you couldn't watch CNN for five minutes right. without a CNN commentator saying Trump praised neo-Nazis. <laughs> yes. The right is racist, sexist, bigoted. I mean, we've seen this all the time. The whole, this drives me crazy. Whenever we have, and I think she says it either in this video or no, she says it in the, in the video we're going to watch next, the trans video. Where it's like, oh, the real reason, the real reason, I love this, the real reason that people on the right are pro-life is because they want to control women's bodies. Yeah. They don't actually care about the life of the child, like they say. They just want to control women's bodies. Yep, it's complete nonsense. Divisions create a higher emotional stake and cause us to identify with our party affiliation on a deep personal level. Seeing our beliefs as translating to us being inherently moral, good people. And when beliefs are that deeply personalized, you will more likely share an article that reinforces those beliefs and those identities, not so much to share the information contained in that article, as to signal to others your type, where you fit, what you believe in. That you're this an NPC, so, that you don't think is, for yourself, that the party does the thinking for you. <laughs> this is why this video is frustrating, because everything she's saying is like true. Yes. This is very true. People share these articles to virtue signal to some political tribe to say, I'm part of the tribe, the good tribe, right? Right, yes. But it's just, it's just frustrating because like, she only acknowledges and only acts like it's the right that does this when this is just literally how everyone acts politically on the internet right now misgendering should be illegal yes virtue signal virtue signal virtue signal uh twitter stocks for 20 dollars says but you don't need to be christian to be conservative you just need to disagree with the notion of abortion well i mean first of all i would say you don't i mean i'm sure there are people that are conservative don't have strong feelings that would identify as conservative. They don't have really strong feelings about abortion or would be in favor of abortion up to some time scale that would still identify as conservative. I don't think I would, I could be wrong, but I, I wouldn't think that the primary issue in my mind, at least that I would use to define conservatives is abortion. Now I'm sure there's definitely a, a much higher likelihood of people that identify as abortion to be pro-life. So well, I think abortion, a lot of people who are against abortion are religious. 
They're, yes. And they are against it on religious grounds. Yes. So. I know that there are people in our audience that are against it that aren't religious, but I would assume the majority is for religious reasons. But I do agree. Yes, you don't have to be Christian to be conservatives. There's obviously tons of conservatives out there that are not Christian or not even religious at all who we've talked to <laughs> right. and had a lot of conversations with. So. Well, and I do think there are a lot of people from a secular perspective that also see it as a as kind of a fairness issue because they think if you're irresponsibly having sex to make some potential child pay for your irresponsibility strikes him as wrong and unfair sure. yeah right so yeah well again it, this is why it, it annoys me when i talk to people um about abortion especially the people that make the woman's they just want to control women's bodies argument because the real argument is it seems to be from both perception or from both sides really is how are you defining what life is and where life begins is the yep. real question so and obviously you can you can believe life begins at conception without a religious framework anyway but uh, Jay for twenty dollars says polarization in the U.S. also mattered less when the federal government had less power of the states. It's less significant when the opposing power. Oh wow! Did you hear that? No, what happened? Oh, it was like super loud thunder. Cool. Um, it's less significant when the opposing party has power if they can't weaponize the federal government against their opponents. I mean, that is yeah, that's definitely uh, true to an extent. However, I don't know when that time period was because we've obviously had very significant federal government issues like the civil war <laughs> and that was significant like, what happened yeah, there <laughs> like because that was i mean that was the massive federal government encroachment issue that people were fighting about back in the day was like whenever you admit a new state you had to have you know was it going to be a slave state or was it going to be a free state and they had to have the compromise where for every free state, there had to be a slave state implemented just to kind of maintain this balance of power thing. And then obviously that explodes with the Civil War. And then obviously, you know, they have the whole segregation thing comes up, you know, 50, 60, 70 years later. So. Wow. But yeah, no, but I understand what you're saying. And it's, I think it's true to an extent. Uh, Snub birth 13 for $20 says further, further Twitter sucks point. If you take the conservative pro-life out of the argument, they fall apart. Abortion is just a mistake fixer. That you admit you were lazy with your own sexual agency, especially with modern medicine. See that they see it as irresponsibility. Right. Yep, of course, obviously. Um, There's no about. It's not about controlling women's bodies. Well, well, it de well. So it depends to some extent because some people say they don't. They're not Look, even. It's about you of, controlling your own body. Right now, some people are against abortion even if it's rape, which obviously that's not a question of being lazy because you were raped, right? Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, Those people are so, generally religious. Yeah. but Well, actually, but no, but, but it doesn't matter because if you believe, if the argument is that you believe life begins at conception, then the argument is, well, even if something horrific happened to you, why should a baby or a potential baby uh, lose its right to live, right? I don't, I feel like no one's changing their mind on abortion. So I just, I agree with you. Yeah. Yeah. And which group you belong. To. Well, actually, you know, it's funny cause you say that, but here's what's, what I'm curious about. So, cause if you look back at polling data during Roe v. Wade and before Roe v. Wade, there was pretty good split in the Republicans and Democrats in favor of who supported abortion. And so the question is now that it's basically a lot more one-sided than it ever was. Did those people change parties or did people's opinions change? I mean, I don't know the answer to that question. Changed parties. Okay. Maybe. I but wonder, you, because the of thing it, that I want to ask is if you could be 100% certain that no abortions were being had because of irresponsible sexual behavior, if it was mm -hmm. just completely responsible, you know, uh, women who are married and have, you know, five children already, you know, and are on birth control, but oops, they get pregnant, that kind of situation. If that, if that was all abortions, if people would still be against it, because I, I just, I wonder how many of the people are just 
voting based on irrespons their their view that all of these abortions are the product of irresponsible sexual behavior. Right. Which you is a completely the, the guiding, different issue. Yeah. I think that's the guiding intuition for some people. Well, I think definitely for some people, yeah. Well, you look, you can't some people just come out and say that. I think a lot of people right. think that, but they say that it's about saving the life of a baby because that sounds right. better. They're like, I right. don't want to say I'm controlling you. <laughs> well, I'll just say I'm saving a baby. Well, it'd have to be a combination because it would have to be like, well, you were irresponsible. Like just being irresponsible isn't usually an argument enough against making a behavior legal or illegal, right? Mm -hmm. So it had to be, they're bothered by the irresponsibility and, and laziness of it or whatever you want to categorize it of combined with them thinking that the baby or fetus is alive or has a life, a right sure. to live, right? Yeah. So. so the veracity of the information in the article itself becomes secondary to the act of sharing the article to signal your affiliation, allowing disinformation to spread more rapidly. And we generally are much worse at identifying disinformation than we think. An overwhelming proportion of Americans, when surveyed, believe that disinformation is a major issue affecting our democracy. At the same time, as many as three in four Americans overestimate their ability to spot fake news. And those that self-identify as more partisan, leaning more towards the extremes of either party, tend to be more confident in their knowledge of the political issues and are actually more likely to share disinformation because of this. About I can't Nine. take the irony. <laughs> well, that's it. Well, I'm that's overdosing on irony. Right. But but th that's, that's what's interesting about that, because obviously, and it's funny because if you were to ask me that question, I would say, I would guess that that's obviously true, right? The more partisan someone is, the more likely they are to believe and, and share and to believe they can identify fake news when they actually can. Right? Yes, of course. That's the problem. 90% of research participants told researchers they believed that they were above average in their ability to sniff out fake news. While so many people purport to be concerned about the prevalence of fake news, relatively few indicate having ever seen or shared it. That math ain't mathin', friends. However, this is not an equal partisan split. Republicans who consider themselves further to the right tend to be much more likely to spread disinformation through social Okay. So she's kind of done a little mix up here. And I'll get, I'll be chaired, I'll be charitable. I don't think this was intentional. Okay. Okay. Because what she, if you listen to what she just said, she said Republicans are more likely to share fake news, right? Yes, exactly. But, but if, but if you read on the screen, it says Republicans are more likely to fall for fake news. Right. And so that's that implies to believe the fake news. Right. Yeah. Now, a study of surveys involving 8200 people which published in in <laughs> the proceedings is that a typo in, on CNN which published in in the proceedings of the National Academy of Sciences also showed Republicans are more likely to fall for fake news than Democrats are. You're right. That is a typo. It's funny. The NN. The NN. Yeah. Yeah. But good, okay. Good so, job, CNN. So, whenever this is this is a big problem. And if you guys, if you've ever done like research or you've looked at study, a study before, you'll notice that like nine times out of ten, when a newspaper reports a study, they report it wrong. Of course. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So. There's a so there's an issue with this study in the way that like their newspapers interpreting it. So the way that this study worked is that they essentially had a bunch of news headlines that looked like they were Facebook links. And these were all real news headlines, okay? And they had uh they had stories that would appeal to the people on the left and stories that would appeal to people on the right. Okay. And they they showed them 12 links. Four of the links were fake, were fake stories. Two were fake for the left, two were fake for the right. And then eight of the stories were true, but four of them came from a, quote, low prominence source, meaning like a not as well-known source. And four of them came from a high prominence source, meaning like a very well-known source. Right. And they were also divided among partisan lines. And they would tell the participants, 
like, you know, can you identify what are these stories are fake and what are these stories are true? And they said in the study, they said uh, conservatives were more likely to fall for the fake stories or to not be able to pick out the fake stories or to wrongly identify true stories as fake than the than liberals were. However, that should be expected because conservatives have a greater distrust of the mainstream media than liberals do. Yeah, of course. Now, this is what's key in what CNN and what she's leaving out of her study. In the and this is where I think they actually I think the study is kind of stupid that it was designed this way. On the Facebook links that they had that they gave everyone and it showed them what to choose and what to pick out, it has the name of the website that the link comes from on the link. Right. So they just go MSNBC and they're like, fuck that. That's fake. CNN, that's fake. Right. So CBS, that's fake. Yeah. And see, that's what's kind of stupid. That's what, to me, what's stupid. Because if, if you're like an average person and you're mm -hmm. part of the study and you see, you see links from places you know or you've heard of, you're probably going to say, oh, that's true. Right. Yeah. Like, that would be the judge. Right. Like, if you see, says, true. Uh, right. Fox News, true. Or like, if you're like, but I'm saying even if you're like, like this isn't going to judge Sean the left's ability to properly gauge fake news versus not fake news. Because they're just going to say, oh, New York Times headline, I believe that that's fake. Washington Post headline, I believe that, I mean, I believe that's true. Washington Post headline, oh, that's probably true. I've heard of Washington Post. Oh, I've heard of CNBC. I mean, that's probably true. I've heard of Vice. That's probably true. Like, it's not really testing people's ability to look at a headline and discern whether it's true. It's just testing people's to look at this news site and to see whether they trust it or not. That's yeah. really all that it is testing for. You could completely control the outcome of the study just by making all of the fake news on Fox News or or Breitbart or whatever source that the conservatives right. trust because they would say those are true even though they're fake. Like. Honestly, I think, and it's kind of unfortunate because they did this big study. To, to me, it seems like it's almost pointless that they did it because of the, how they did it this way. I think it would have been very interesting for them to do, you know, one version the of the study. Of that. Yeah. Yeah. They had one version of the study where it has all the names of the news sites. One version or one group of the, of the people in the study where they remove all the sources. Right. So people only have the headline to judge. And then one study where they reverse all the sources. So they give all the fake news, the New York Times citation, and they give. The, yeah. the real news, the fake news site citation, and just we could, see. We could engineer that study so every single participant shares 100% fake news all of the time, <laughs> just by right. making the sources. Right. Yeah. Because I would, I would predict, in my hypothesis, I would predict that the overwhelming majority of people are just judging simply based on the, the outlet and not the actual story. Yep. Yeah. Look at this. This is partisanship in these social, these uh, social sciences is the problem. Right. Because they're, they, they're completely oblivious to what we just said. Like if we were putting this study together and you said, oh, this is what's going to happen, they'd be like, come on. We all know what? Fox News is fake and MSNBC is 100% true fact all the time. Well, and like there are Washington Post and New York Times headlines that are fake news. Like they could have selected fake news stories from New York Times and Washington Post, but they didn't. Right. So, but then, but then to take that study and to then equate it to be like a a central point of this video to say like, oh, you know, right wing, like it's the conservatives that are falling more for fake news than the left. This is like this is a bad study to bolster that argument because of how it was structured. Right. Did you look at the study questions, the headlines? Yeah. Oh, okay. I have. I, I even have the pictures of them if you want. Yeah. Um, like yeah. Well, I'll just read a couple of them. Like, okay, okay, so the fake news for the for the left was from a site called Rip Rip Partisan Report. So you never even heard okay. of this place. And it says Mike Pence busted stealing campaign funds to pay his mortgage like a thief. Okay, well, that's obviously fake. And then the other fake news um, for the left was Vice President Pence now being investigated for campaign fraud, his ties to Russia and Manafort, which at least that one sounds like it could be more of something that a person left would fall for. But it's from the D.C. Tribune, 
Okay. So who knows what that is? And then the the real stories were detention of migrant children has skyrocketed the highest levels ever from the New York Times. Okay. Well, this is this is ridiculous. Okay. Right. This is a uh, ridiculous study. The quote, this is the Washington Post article says quote, and now it's the tallest. Trump and otherwise sober interview on 9-11 couldn't help touting one of his own buildings. <laughs> mm -hmm. You can all believe that. Well, if uh, you if you put the fake news on New York Times and CNN, you, this study would be completely reversed. The right. Democrats would totally fall for the fake news every time. Right. Yeah. And then we had the fake news for the right wing was from a site called Neon Nettle, which I haven't heard of, that says, FBI agent who exposed Hillary Clinton's cover-up found dead. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> you know, every right winger was like, true. <laughs> of course. Only and then, one? Uh, and then uh, your, yournewswire.com, which I've also not heard of, had a, a fake article called Lisa Page Squeals DNC Server Was Not Hacked by Russia. So. Okay. But anyway. Okay. So. I'm glad we got into this. Because it oh, the, does the seem next like study just a failed uses, study. The next study that she uses has more significant problems. No way. Okay. Than this, more but... significant problems? Yeah. Who is doing these studies? They can't uh... find anybody who's nonpartisan in the social sciences to point out these total rookie moves. You would, I don't know. I mean, you would hope, right? You would hope. But. I just so many people go into the social sciences, and it's it is ironic because this is why Height got started in the social sciences because he was a partisan and he wanted to help his side win elections. So right. many of the people go into these these fields of study so that they can help their side win elections. So they mm -hmm. want to do this study that makes an that people can make an argument that conservatives are stupid and that and therefore you shouldn't vote for them. Right. That's the real purpose of this study. Right. Social media sharing, Democrats who consider themselves further to the left. A recent Politico study identified these individuals as low conscientiousness conservatives, or LCCs for short. These low conscientiousness conservatives are conservative and fall on the low end of conscientiousness, defined by the study as the tendency to regulate one's own behavior by being less impulsive and more orderly, diligent, and prudent. Now, isn't this odd? Because according to Height's research, conserv and I'm sure it's more than just Height, but conservatives themselves score high on conscientiousness, much higher than than progressives. Right. So I don't know if she gets into it, but the point of this study, even though I think the study has a lot of problems, the point of this study was actually sort of to defend conservatives. Really? Because the point of the study is to say, people are saying it's conservatives that are sh sharing most of the fake news, but we hypothesize it's a specific subsection of conservatives that are doing this, not general conservatives that are right. doing this. And so they actually split up within the conservatives themselves, low conscientious conservatives and high conscientious conservatives. Okay. And they're saying specifically out of conservatives, those that score low on, on that are low conscientious, and also as they say high on chaos so that comes in later, are the ones that are are primarily sharing fake news. Right. So even if so, so what they're saying is yeah. So even if on average there's going to be higher conservatives are going to be higher on conscientiousness than than liberals are, within that group, those that are the lowest are are going to be the ones sharing the fake news. Right. Well, I feel like people on the left share a lot of fake news too, but they're obviously low in conscientiousness. Well, so. that's a huge problem with this study that she doesn't talk about. This study literally only tests low conscientious conservatives. Right. It doesn't, and it's weird, it doesn't say what the results were for low conscientious liberals. Well, I or, just... Or progressives. Look, I, I, the low conscientiousness conservatives probably score higher in conscientiousness than progressives. The, That's... Well, like, no, 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 no. Wait, stop. The low conscientious conservatives might score higher than low conscientious progressives. Right. Low, well, high conscientious progressives are low conscientious conservatives. That's I what don't, I'm saying. I don't know if that's accurate. Okay. But, well, we don't know because we don't have a study. Right. But there's a there's a wide discrepancy in conscientiousness between. Yeah, on av on average, right? Yeah. But there's still going to be high conscientious uh, 
people on the left and low conscientious people on the right. No, impossible. Okay. Doesn't exist. Okay. That's like Bigfoot or the unicorn. Okay. No, I, they, I'm sure they do exist. So there are low conscientiousness liberals, high conscientiousness liberals. Wait, lie. That doesn't, that's <laughs> not true. Orderly progressive sits, you really think so? Well, it's, it's okay. It's just the left generally, right? It's not, so it's not just progressives, progressives. Progressives. <laughs> high conscientiousness conservatives and low conscientiousness conservatives. And of those four groups, low conscientiousness conservatives or LCCs were far more likely to believe in and share fake news and disinformation. The so the, in the study, yeah, did they look at low at high consciousness progressives and low consciousness progressives or? So here's the problem. It's really weird. So the study says specifically that high conscientious well, people on the left and high conscientious people on the right would share and believe fake news at the same rate. Okay. And it says low conscientious people on the right were like 2.5 times more likely to believe and share fake news. Than low conscientious on the left. No, it doesn't say. That's why the study's weird. Wait it specifically a says here. high conscientious <laughs> people on the left and right are the same. Then it says low conscientiousness people on the right are more, but it doesn't say more than what, what? The results were for the low conscientiousness people on the left. Well, because they're probably seven times higher. Well, I'm just saying, but that's why I'm, I'm reading the study. I'm like, wait a minute. Why would they not do? Why would they not say this? They're because, 10 times higher because obviously they should have those results because they asked, they they took a bunch of random people and they figured out where they were on the political spectrum. They figured out what their levels of conscientiousness was on the big five but they don't say what the results were for that one specific subset, which is very bizarre to me. Chaos is is synonymous with anarchy. Which side of the right. political spectrum is anarchy on? Right. So that's why I'm looking at this study and I'm like, okay, listen, I, I appreciate Such that their heart's bullshit. in the right place. They're trying not to throw all conservatives under the bus, but why would they leave out <laughs> this one key piece of information? Because it's horrendous. I don't know. I guess. It I'm just makes like, them look the awful. Hell? I couldn't believe it. I'm like, wait a minute. What's going on here? They're sharing Russiagate stories every day on their timeline. They're subscribed. Yes. They follow Rachel Maddow on Twitter and retweet right. her six times a day. Yes. I don't know. Unless it's like in their table somewhere, which I'm not going to go fucking browsing through. In like the actual text part where they explain the experiment, they don't say what the results were for low conscientiousness uh, left wing people. This is some major bias here. The only factor that this study was able to determine as the reason for why LCCs were so much more likely to share fake news was their specific proclivity for chaos, which chaos. the study defined as a motivation to disregard, disrupt, and take down existing social and political institutions as a means of asserting the dominance and superiority of one's own group. Indeed. I mean, that's anarchism right there. What is, what's she talking about? <laughs> right. So, okay. Well, first of all, to, to use that definition of chaos to me is weird. Cause that's not what I think of as chaos. Like I, I would think the first part that's chaos to, to tear down preexisting institutions. But the second part to supplant them with your own dominant group, I wouldn't necessarily equate that as, yeah, chaos. that's order. Right. Um, now, obviously there are both people on the left and the right that are in favor of tearing down all our institutions. Yes. I mean, that's, that's all, that's a huge part of the populist movement, right? Of course. They think they're, that cor idea. they're corrupt institutions. Right. Yeah. The, yeah. The, the populist left and the populist right both believe that the institutions are horribly corrupt and need to be torn down. I mean, this is why literally, you know, what did, what was, what did Trump just say a couple of days ago that all the people were like, unfortunately cheering. I don't, I didn't see it. He said, you should vote for me. Cause I'll, t I'll get revenge for you on the government. Oh yeah. <laughs> okay. Ouch. Which I was very disheartened to see the amount of people that were like, Oh, it's so based. Oh yeah. For this idea. That's like really destructively awful because essentially it, it kind of, it reminds me of when people say, Oh, socialists don't like poor people. They just hate rich people. Right. Like it's kind of the same mentality. You should be voting in favor of, 
in favor of something positive, not in favor of the destruction of something. Because the danger with any populist movement, left or right, is that if you essentially set yourself up for a worldview where every institution is essentially corrupt, except for the one person that you believe that fix everything, you have to essentially give that person unlimited power to do whatever they want without any checks or balances, because all the other institutions that could check their power are all corrupted. I've heard something about absolute power. I can't remember what it is. Right, right. No, so, okay. But, but going back to the study for a second. So there's a big problem with this study. Or, okay, there's a big problem with how she's talking about the study, and there's a big problem with the study. Um, which, again, I already said, they don't actually check, they don't say what the results were for low conscientiousness, people on the left, number one. Um, number two, when they talk about chaos in the study, they're using... Okay, before I get into the chaos thing, let me, let's put a pin on that. I'm a, this is the example they give for figuring out fake news, okay? Okay. Let me read you the procedure for the study. All right. It says, participants rated the accuracy of 12 real and 12 fake COVID-19 stories and how likely they would be to share them on social media. Within each of the 12 real and fake stories, Four were conservative leaning, four were liberal leaning, and four were neutral. Okay. Okay. So, first of all, you have a problem because it's a lot of the study is specifically on COVID nineteen, right? Right. Which is obviously going to be biased in favor of right of the right not believing COVID stories than the left. Of course, right? yeah. Obviously, so that's huge bias. Number two. Here's an example. This is what they chose. They don't show you, unless you go really searching for it, they don't show you what the name of all the fake news headlines are. But this is the example the authors of the study chose to highlight, okay? An example of a fake conservative leaning headline is, quote, even during coronavirus crisis, liberal media can't resist spreading lies. You're kidding me. You're kidding me. I'm not kidding. <laughs> that's their fake news? That's I was like, that's that's this is opinion. That's just <laughs> an opinion. What do you mean? How is that fake news? How is someone's opinion oh, fake news? That's ridiculous. That ridiculous. was ins is that not insane? That's ridiculous. Yes. Oh my it's totally insane. And then so the, they ba the example they're basically simping for the mainstream media in their scientific study. Yes. Yes. Ridiculous. I just I, I saw that and I was like this study ridiculous like it's so weird because on one hand they're trying to like defend conservatives on the other hand this is like it's this is so stupid all right who's who who did this study we got to look at them on Twitter we got to look at yeah. the Twitter feed <laughs> I was like how is that an example of a fake you can't like if we're, you're trying to study we have to do some investigation here. if you're trying to study fake news okay right. the the fake element should be there should be some fact claim in the headline of course right. Look, like, of course. So, okay. And then here's an example. So ridiculous. Of, I know. And here's an example of the fake liberal headline was, uh, quote, Trump is planning to bail out his corporate pals for pandemic losses and leave taxpayers with the bill. Mm -hmm. So at least that's a, that's a fact claim, right? Sure. The other one was just an opinion. <laughs> I couldn't believe it. And this was the example they chose to highlight in their study and didn't see a problem with it. Yeah, that's uh, giant bias. Right. Okay. Is there a name so that's the first... on the person? Uh, M. Asher Lawson and Hemet M. Kacker. Asher Lawson. Lawson. Okay, go ahead. What were you going to okay. say? Okay, so that's the, that's, that's the second big problem with the study that I had when I was reading this. I was like, what, what is this? Okay. So they did like five different or six different studies inside the study. They're kind of studying for different things. Um, so let me scroll down to where this chaos thing comes in. Okay. So I you, found you might it. say, well, how, Asher you might Lawson, say, assistant professor of decision science, PhD, Uni of Oxford, BA. Go ahead. There you go. They're from Oxford, Adam. Okay, look, we look, we can peek right into their brain here. There you go. Let's see how much TDS well, listen, there is. Should we be trusting any Brit bongers on studies about it? Of America? course not. Look, I mean they're, they're obviously all, just jealous. They're all jaded. Yeah. Yes. 
Okay. So you might say, how do you, how do they check for chaos, right? How do they check that? Um, so this is this is what they say for how they checked for for chaos. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, they had one study where they would provide the, the newspaper headlines, and they would have a fact checker, like a notification that said a fact checker said that this is true or not true. Mm -hmm. And surprise, surprise, they found out that people on the left more likely to trust the fact checkers and these low conscientiousness people on the right were less likely to believe you, look, the fact checkers. You have you okay. have to do a study for this? This needs a study? Right. I mean, you could have just asked me that. I would have told you. Right. So they're saying that because they're not trusting the fact checkers, that must mean that they're being driven by a desire for chaos. No, oh, that's ridiculous. That's ridiculous. This is ridiculous, Sitch. Oh, I'm so glad you looked into the study. I was like, I was just flabbergasted. I'm reading the study. I'm like, what? This is so stupid. Are you kidding me? This is supposed to be the, the desire for chaos because they don't trust the fact checkers? Like, come on. Yeah. <laughs> Look, I... Now, there, there there's was... A picture, there's a picture on Ash... Asher Lawson's. First of all, the header on Asher Lawson's. Guess what the header is on the Twitter page for Asher Lawson. Uh, I stand with her. Black Lives Matter. Oh no! <laughs> but it's a it's like a young guy and an old woman in the yeah. picture in the profile yeah. picture. But I don't. Is Asher the young guy or the old woman? I don't know. Um. Oh yeah, I don't I don't know the sex of M. Asher. That's true. Yeah. Um, so what I think the was... Black Lives Matter header is a little obviously mm -hmm. partisan. I'm trying to see where there was something I should have I should have taken better notes here. There was something that was kind of interesting where they got they actually had the exact opposite of what of what you would think. Like high conscientious Trump supporters would like not share fake news or something. I forget what, but something, I don't know if that was it, but something like that. Um, but I just, I just, I was seeing this study and I was just like, there's so many problems with this study. I, I just was shocked. I was just shocked to read this study. Well, don't be shocked. Uh, they're human beings. Yeah, but it's so obvious. Like, it should be yeah, so obvious. Of course. Should Long it not? As long yeah. as you pay the tuition, you know. Right. They pretend. No, <laughs> um, but it, it, and like she, she, this this person we're watching, they they base this whole video off of these two studies. One which is a study, which was flawed and she kind of misinterpreted, and then another of a study which she also misinterpreted, but on top of that was like extra super flawed. Yeah. And this is used as a justification for this idea that, like, well, it's just the right wing that's falling for the fake news. The left wing is, you know, who knows, right? They could be totally fine. Yeah. So. Anyway. The social cost of, fair, of sharing fake news mm -hmm. is all, they're trying to basically place it all on the right. Saying, yes. they're, they're saying that the problem is right wingers. Of course, they're completely innocent. <laughs> Is this the tribalism and tribula tribulation, the co uh, the social cost of not sharing fake news? Is that the study? Um, Excited to announce that our paper, Tribalism and Tribulation, the Social Cost of Sharing Fake News, no. is out in JEP -J General? No, this study... I'd be curious to see that one. This study is called Of Pandemics, Politics, and Personality, The Role of Conscientiousness and Political Ideology in Sharing of Fake News. Cool. I'll send you a link. Okay. Anyways. Continue. Multiple other studies have confirmed that conservatives have a lower ability to distinguish truths and falsehoods. This is due in part <laughs> to the fact that a vast majority of the disinformation out there tends to reinforce conservative ideologies, while the corresponding truths tend to favor liberal viewpoints. 
Oh my God. I've been, this is hilarious. Yeah, this, didn't you, didn't you listen. Yeah. This is the comedy part of the video, right? Oh my God. The, tr the truth. The truth about police violence, obviously. Fa you know, it favors right. the yeah. leftist perspective. Truth about pr police violence, truth about crime, truth about um, uh, justice reform, right? Yeah. Bail reform, justice reform. Yeah. I know. The truth about puberty blockers, all of this completely like, <laughs> favors the leftist perspective. It's because it's funny. It's like this is like the whole we investigated ourselves and we found that there was no problem. <laughs> yeah. It's like, well, no, no, a bunch it's of people... worse than that. We found the problem was those <laughs> other guys. Right. It's like, well, a bunch of people on the left investigated and said, whoa, surprise, surprise. The left has all the right answers and the right has all the wrong answers. What a shock. <laughs> we could never have predicted this. I know. This is oh, great. It's so, it's so dumb. Oh God. Yeah, but you're rewarded with a bunch of YouTube But this can all blame by the fact that content. conservatives tend to generally be less trusting of established institutions. Oh, new... Give me a second. My audio just died. I don't know if you were talking when I started the video. I was, I but it's off. okay. No big deal. Uh, I don't know what happened. My audio just like went off. Probably the okay, thunder. Say... I got gotcha. you. <laughs> Ooh. media and democracy itself do you hear that i heard that one yeah <laughs> it's like whoa i heard that that's some yeah. thunder yeah okay it made it past the zoom yeah geez. you're gonna be okay over there uh oh we need a rescue mission uh oh hold on my okay. something my audio is like really screwing up here wow look hopefully the stream doesn't go down it's no it's not it's like um the I, there's something wrong with like the little thing that you plug in your headphones you know like you have to kind of like futz with it a little bit you know what <laughs> oh, i mean oh like it's and it's like i guess it's like reaching that point where i just need to to get like a new microphone or something because it's i don't know can you replace that like one piece of it i don't know i don't want to get a new microphone just because it's having this like one problem i don't know okay look at read this headline and Look at the irony of this in the context of that study that we just... Americans can't tell the difference between fact and opinion? Yeah. <laughs> they literally ask a question. Uh -huh. That's an opinion question. Right. <laughs> and they ask people to discern whether or not it's fact. The people in the study can't tell the difference between fact and opinion. <laughs> right. Oh, man. This is due in part to the fact that a vast majority of the disinformation out there tends to reinforce conservative ideologies, while the corresponding truths tend to favor liberal viewpoints. But this can also be explained by the fact that conservatives tend to generally be less trusting of established institutions, news media, and democracy itself. Duh. And with the growth in partisan siloing, meaning the lie... Well, the reason that they're more skeptical of mainstream media is because of what you just said because you got it completely backwards you you said that the the facts tend to support the liberal position when that's not true that's completely false like a lot right. of the fake news is being propagated by mainstream media right this is the whole the problem with the Kyle Rittenhouse case and then they do it again and again and again they did it with Covington they did it with the city bike Karen look they do it again and again and again and again they have a narrative yep. in their head. The narrative is white people are racist and they have to make up news stories that fulfill that narrative. Mm -hmm. They do. They literally do. It's bullshit. It's funny. Republicans and Democrats look vastly. I cut you it's, off. It's okay. It's funny. When I was looking at the news guard thing for MSNBC. Yeah. Um, one of the things that, that it mentions screwing up is Kyle Rittenhouse's situation. <laughs> Really? Yes. Nice. So NewsGuard yes. got Kyle Rittenhouse right. Apparently. Yeah. So. They would have to. Look, you can't call yourself NewsGuard and get the Kyle Rittenhouse situation wrong. Yeah. yeah. Less trusting of establishing. We have to find out if Legia has a Kyle Rittenhouse video. <laughs> it says, oh. um, oh. Yeah, they, have, they have false claims. MSNBC posted, had eight transcripts that had false claims that Kyle Rittenhouse took his AR-15 style rifle he later used to kill two people across state lines. Right. Uh, they also shot, let's see, 
Yeah, said that the AR. They also said that the AR was not driven. It was not tamed illegally. Um, they also argued premeditation to shoot on his point, which NewsGuard thought was wrong for them to do. Um, and they never they never corrected the record when this was all found out to be inaccurate information about like the getting the gun and everything related to that. So. That was the one thing we forgot to talk about with the Vanguard boys. What's we'll that? Talk about that next time. They were. They don't believe Kyle Rittenhouse acted in self-defense. I just sent you. I just did a quick search. Legia Miller, Kyle Rittenhouse. Oh no! Does she have a Kyle Rittenhouse video? Victims of Kenosha riots not allowed to be called victims during Kyle Rittenhouse trial one year ago. <laughs> Where did you send this to me? I sent it to you. On, oh, 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 yeah. Got you. Well, oh, she's wonder, a lawyer too. I wonder what that's all about. Yeah. Well, we can watch it. So. Of course, they're victims. Yeah. They're victims of trying to grab Kyle's gun. <laughs> anyway. Anyway. Institute institutions, news media, and democracy itself. And with the growth in partisan siloing, meaning the lives of Republicans and Democrats look vastly different, comes the growth in one very significant factor. Liberals tend to go to school for longer than conservatives. Education... <laughs> oh, this is so bad. This is mm -hmm. so bad, Sitch. Isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Liberals? tend to go to indoctrination camp longer than conservatives. <laughs> so they end up believing all this fake news and just assuming that it's a fact of reality. Yeah. Look, it does, yeah. It, if, you go, if you go to college longer and you still can't tell the difference between fake news, that's like a cell phone. <laughs> you can't really, it's like you've owned yourself there. Yeah. Listen, I, listen. I had a, a college do a report, and the college told me that the fake news was not coming from the college, right? <laughs> of it was course. coming from, some, from the people that were not in the college. That was the real problem. Oh, yeah. Okay. There's another factor that strongly predicts whether an individual is able to distinguish between fact and fiction. But this truth that liberals tend to be better educated than conservatives also reinforces another commonly held right-wing belief that elites and academics are controlling the narrative and can't be trusted. And their distrust of academics and elites makes sense because partisanship has led to severe distrust in the other side because we've internalized our politics to the point of them becoming personal identifiers of morals and worldviews and the vast majority of people in academic and research institutions are liberals see this this is this really bugs me because so right. her argument is because people are overwhelmingly partisan and they hate the what they perceive as partisan liberals who are doing all of this research and, and involved in academia as because people on the right perceive them as their political enemies, they don't believe what they're saying. That's not right. the case. They don't believe what they're saying because what they're saying is incorrect, factually incorrect. So it's just like a major cope here going on, blaming this on partisanship when the facts are, you were just wrong. Like you were wrong. You're wrong about the criminal justice statistics. You're wrong about the George Floyd situation. You're wrong about uh, Rittenhouse. You're wrong about the city bike Karen. You're wrong about the Central Park Karen. You're just wrong, 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 wrong. Right. Yeah. Yeah. It's not partisanship. Look, I, well, I would argue mm -hmm. that the partisanship is what's making you wrong because a lot of times you're just ref you have this partisan narrative that all white people are racist, and a lot of these stories come out of that. Well, it the the problem is half of what she said is true because, as we all know, like and this is what's kind of annoying. So she cited she had that that study I didn't look into until you paused it where it said Americans can't distinguish between uh, facts and and opinions, right? Right. And I, and I brought it up and I'm, I'm looking at it right now. And the whole point of that study is it says both Democrats and Republicans don't uh, have an ability or, or basically fuck up on determining whether a statement is a fact or opinion, depending on whether they agree with the statement or not. Right. If so, it's an opinion they agree with, it's a fact. 
Right, exactly, exactly. And it was saying, according to this, I'm like scanning it, it's not saying that there's some massive difference between Democrats and Republicans. They're saying that they both do this. They both do this as long as it's an opinion that goes with whatever they want to be right, true. Right, yeah. Look, if you say uh, America's systemically racist, they're like, oh, yeah, that's a fact. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Right, exactly. And so that's the, that's what's kind of annoying is that for most of the times, like when either the left or the right gets a news story correct, it's, in my opinion, it's just chance. It's yeah. just because the politics of the situation happen to align with the left or the right by chance, and that's what lets them get the, the story correct. Right. You know, that's yeah. about it. That's all it is. They right? they are using, they are superimposing a narrative of the world onto reality. And if reality just so happens to randomly match that narrative, then they get it right. <laughs> When reality yes. goes against that narrative, then they get it wrong because they use the narrative instead of reality. There's actually a great quote by a crazy person. Mm -hmm. Well, someone who's sort of correct and sort of crazy. And this mm -hmm. comes up in her next video. Uh, says, um, let's see here. Let me bring up the quote. It says, the person says, uh, ideology takes an intellectual system a product of one or more philosophers and says, this system must be true. Inevitably, reality ends up contradicting the, sy the system, usually on a growing number of points, but the ideology by its nature cannot adjust to reality. So therefore, reality must be suppressed. And if the ideology has power, it uses power to undertake that suppression and to bend reality to the ideology. Yeah, that's the basis behind every religion, every world religion. Right, right. Yeah. Now it's it's interesting because the person that said that I read that and I said, "Wow, this person is based. They right. really understand how ideologies work." It's Ibram X. Kennedy. <laughs> right. Well, no, the person is like some like super right wing conservative person. Oh. Okay. Because right under that, they talk about how they need how everyone needs to adopt conservatism because conservatism isn't an ideology. It's what? Oh. It's beyond God. ideology. Oh yeah. Okay. <laughs> and I was like, "What okay. the fuck are they talking about?" I mean, I would I would summarize the conservative ideology in the belief that the traditions and institutions that we have now are have have created a society that's you know as stable as it is, and that we risk where we're at now if we change those traditions and institutions. So that's why they're apprehensive about change. They're worried right, about the so, law of unintended mm -hmm. consequences. Right. So you are correct. And it's funny because that is also how they describe conservatism. However, they do this kind of leftist linguistical word game, ironically enough, where they say, well, because conservatism is based on customs, traditions, and habits, that magically makes it not an ideology. No, it, it, it's, look, it's using, it's basically saying the ideology that we have now is the best. But that I the flaw the flaw in that ideology is missed opportunity. I mean, you could sure we're at where we're at now, but we could things could be better. Well, the flaw isn't just missed opportunity. The flaw is, you know, if if you're a hunter gatherer tribe living in a valley for three hundred years and your environment's never changed, you know, you can be as conservative as you want because nothing changes. Right. right? Yes. You know, great point. Following the the wisdom that's kept your tribe alive for three hundred years is probably. The, going to continue you know, to work yeah right is going is the good way to go but as soon as like a neighboring tribe moves in someone invents some new technology there's some kind of mass environmental change that requires people to adapt or, or change their ways that same philosophy is going to end up getting everyone killed yep yeah um no but so it's just it's funny because i'm reading this guy's work which we'll talk about because it kind of comes up in the next video and it was just so interesting to me that they were so dead on understanding ideology, but then they try to do this like linguistical word game to be like, well, since conservatism is based on traditions, technically not an ideology, of course, ignoring what you said, well, the ideology is the determination that one should just adhere blindly to customs and tradition. You're right. Yeah. So, that is the ideology. Right. Yeah. Anyway. What is the what is the progressive ideology? Flatten uh, that hierarchies. Tra that tra well, flatten hierarchies and that traditions and customs are all the are source oppressive. Of, are all oppressive and the source of all right. of our oppressive. No, I, the ideology everything. is that the world is is made up of oppressors and oppressed. That's right. the well, that's central part, yeah, I, ideology. Yeah. 
And because liberals are the ones obtaining higher education at a larger rate. So their distrust is self-reinforcing and also indicative of their ability to distinguish facts from fake news, leading to a self-perpetuating cycle that seems impossible to stop. How There is a problem with, because for a various host of reasons, um, you know, it seems like people that are have more right-wing personalities or moral mm -hmm. foundations are usually not attracted to being teachers okay for a host of reasons right they're usually attracted to you know starting business or, or doing something in that realm and people that have left-wing moral intuitions seem to be more attracted to becoming teachers care harm yeah all right. the way nurturing right and so this has created this problem where a lot of our educational institutions have become through the time through time become left-wing echo chambers because of just this uh unintended consequence of kind of where people's personalities kind of push them in these directions and it's led to kind of this incorrect stupidness and smugness that some people on the left have they're like well all the people on the left are like super sophisticated and educated because we all trust colleges and all the people on the right are stupid because they don't well it's like well the reason that people don't trust colleges now is because the colleges have become so hyper political when they yeah. never should have been. Pol colleges should be basically politically neutral places to learn information. And then obviously there's going to be political disagreements within them. They think science is their ideology, but it's really not. So so much of this stuff is right. not based on on science. Well, Even, everyone, go ahead. everyone uses science when it supports them and everyone ignores science when it doesn't. So... <laughs> It's well, just the way it works. Look, you've got two scientific studies used in this video that don't support them, and they still used them. So, well, yeah, because she read an article about a study, and the article explains the study wrong because journalists are stupid. Yeah, and then she goes and repeats this on a video to a hundred thousand people. Yeah, without fake, actually checking news. and understanding the study herself. So, how do you convince a group of people to believe facts? when those facts were discovered by academics who tend on average to skew liberal and are therefore the enemy. And according to conservatives, probably bought out by big pharma or George Soros or something. On so you, this is like just a massive cope. Come to terms with your L's during COVID and during all these other stories that you got incorrect. You've been well, the, the, factually the, incorrect. Right. Well, and the irony is, because she's kind of saying this like it's so silly, like, like, oh, yeah, they're not going to trust left-wing institutions because, you know, et cetera, et cetera, which is true. Everything like what that part is true. But then as when I looked into the study itself, I said, well, this study seems to be stupid. The study does seem to be in a, like the people that wrote it are in a left-wing echo chamber. And thus they weren't able to actually study effectively what they should be studying. Correct. Top of this, the past seven years have seen the accumulation of multiple different events that culminated in the perfect storm that led to January 6th and the stolen election conspiracy theory. Donald Trump was elected president in 2016, as if any of us could forget. And with his election came a president who was quick to share whatever information, whether true or false, furthered his cause or increased his power. We also had a president with an unprecedented connection to the news media, specifically Fox News, and fringe far-right newspapers and fake news creators like Steve Bannon. A president who regularly called in to Fox and Friends and made wild statements that had no basis in fact or reality, knowing that Fox had a direct line to his base and would do very little to fact check him or really stop him from doing and saying whatever he wanted. Add to e even this plays into the progressive narrative that Trump, everything Trump says is a lie, which is the reason why they never, which is a reason why they didn't get the lab leak hypothesis right. Like there's all kinds right. of things that they got incorrect because of this belief that if Trump said it, it had to be a lie. Right. Well, people have a lot of trouble. People on the right have a lot of trouble with this too. It's the same, like, so on the left, it's like, because Trump says a lot of things that are lies are not true, right? Right. I hope everyone accepts this. Trump, you know, hyperbolizes and says lots of things that are just not true, right? Of course. But that doesn't mean... That Everything. every time he says something, you should A, automatically assume it's a lie, and B, automatically take the opposite position. Correct, right? yeah. And that was kind of the problem that the left got into, was 
because Trump would say a lot of things that were not true or hyperbolized or obviously politicized, they would just, the left would just say, oh, everything Trump says, I'm going to just take the exact opposite position. Of. But I um, pointed and, out because in this portion of the video, she's just falling right into that narrative. Yes, right. And, and, and you brought up the wait, and you brought up the lab leak, and that's a good example of of that. Yes. However, the exact same thing happens on the right, where any time Joe Biden or any time some left wing newspaper or left wing institution makes a claim, because those left wing institutions very often get things wrong or lie or hyperbolize or use something political, a lot of people on the right automatically assume. It's got to be untrue or automatically take the exact opposite position mm -hmm. on the thing. Bring up the phone call. Bring up the, the battery. Right. right. So it's just, I don't know. It's sad. Who's it's sad. But this is the, unfortunately the, the first lens at which most people use for their ideology is like, well, where am I? Like, what is the political source telling me this information? And the thing is, instead of just being skeptical, like being skeptical of it is fine, but just don't take the opposite position of it automatically. Yeah, this is tribalism as epistemology. And epistemology right. is just a fancy word for how you figure out what's true. The what's a who's the phone call? Is it Valerie Plame? No, you mean Newland? Newland. The Newland. Bring up Victoria the Newland. Newland. Phone. Bring Valerie up the Plame. <laughs> Valerie Plame was supposedly the secret agent that was outed by uh, what's right. his face? Um, I forgot his name. Victoria uh, Newland though. Yeah, Victoria That's Newland, yeah. that is the case of of uh, the right, if the left says one thing, the right is like, no, it's a coup, a 2014 coup. Right. A global right. pandemic, which left people feeling isolated, afraid, confused, and looking for answers. And we have a perfect storm wherein disinformation can spread. And we saw this first with the pandemic itself, leading to what the CDC termed an infodemic, where so much information is available and being spread online that it crowds out the information that the experts in the field are trying to communicate to the public, leading to widespread distrust in the authorities and experts and causing people to do drastic and risky things because of that fear and distrust. So you have people injecting themselves with bleach and horse medicine because there's just so much disinformation information floating around that the actual truth seems wrong to them, especially because the type of person willing to believe that ingesting bleach is medically a good idea is also probably somebody who's a conservative with a low conscientiousness and a proclivity for chaos. Making Dumb. And who ingested bleach again? Where was that story? Um, there was like one or two people in like the entire country, I think, that did something to that. Did effect. they actually ingest bleach? I, there was one or two right. people that ingested bleach. Yeah, I know there was someone that, that seems ingested, like fake news to me. There was someone that ingested that f that fish cleaner stuff that was like some version of hydrochloroquine or something. Yeah, but that's not bleach. That's the supposed to be hydrochloroquine. Right, that's right, the, right, yeah. Yeah, that's right. not bleach. Yeah. I so I'm thinking there's zero bleach ingestion, and maybe one fish tank hydrochloroquine, but the. Joe Rogan did the hydrochloroquine, right? From the real stuff, yeah. Yeah, there's yeah. stuff for horses, and there's it's a dewormer, right? I stuff guess for horses humans, and stuff for humans. Yeah, look, right. humans get worms too. <laughs> yes, well, that's a great example of the fake news on the left because there was so many people on the left pushing this narrative that Joe Rogan took did horse, horse medicine. Yes, right. He exactly. took horse medicine. Yeah. Yeah, and he called out fake news propagator. Sanjay Gupta on his show and yes. said, why would you spread that news? Like I went to a doctor, I got the real, look, they give in these third world countries where they have tons of parasites, they give humans that stuff to, so they can get rid of the parasites. Yeah. They, there's actually a correlation. They think obviously hydrochloroquine doesn't cure COVID, but if you have a bunch of parasites in your body, you're more susceptible to COVID. Obviously, and therefore your body's you, weakened, yes. So that is the connection that people made, that if they take this anti-parasite medicine and they kill all the parasites, or if they have parasites, obviously they're going to do better from the COVID. If you don't have parasites, it's going to be, you're going to have zero effect. But right. right here you got, look, she doesn't even know the the validity of the situation. She's just calling it horse medicine and spreading fake news. So Well, that's a good, you know, I'm glad you brought that up because it's a very good example of the performative stupidity. Yes. Because it's like, if you were to ask someone on the left and you were to say, 
uh, hydrochloroquine cures COVID, right? And you were to talk to some left-wing pundit about this. They would say, no, 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 you're wrong. What it does is that it, they say exactly what you said. What it does is that it cures people in, in countries that have parasites, of the parasites, making their body stronger, which makes them easier to fight off COVID, right? Correct. And so they, they, they understand the underlying thought process of hydrochloroquine. But then those same people would then turn around and be like, Joe Rogan took horse dewormer. Yeah. For the dunk, just because they want to get that dunk on Joe Rogan and on some right wing idea or something, even though they know in another situation what the truth is, that there's obviously this medicine is made for people and can have an effect if you, you know, had I don't parasites know. inside of you or something. I think if we ask Le Leja, Leja to elaborate on the situation with hydrochloroquine, she wouldn't be able to do it. She no, no, doesn't I, look, she's in a depends, bubble herself. She doesn't know what I just said. It actually, here, it depends how you phrase it. If you start the conversation and you bring up how, you know, Joe Rogan, horse warmer, they will fight you to the death. Okay. On this. But if you don't, and you instead make it seem like you're going to argue that hydrochloroquine works and you're going to point to examples of it working, suddenly they'll become the most nuanced person on the planet and they'll know exactly, you know, the truth about hydrochloroquine. Right. So you have to bring that up first. And then once they accept and, and acknowledge that position, then you slap them with the Joe Rogan horse to where we're thing, because then they can't contradict themselves without looking silly. Oh, well, that'd be a good strategy, but I right. still don't think she knows this information. I don't know. Maybe I think she's in a bubble. I okay. think she's in a bubble. I mean, she is she in a bubble. Just, like... but... Yeah. But the thing is using that, that narrative about how hydrochloroquine could have an effect because it helps fight against parasites. That was in the left wing bubble because that was an argument they could use to to disagree with right wingers. Oh, it was. Yeah. Okay, I didn't know that. Because they would use that argument to because when someone on the right said hydrochloroquine works and it only costs a dollar, they would use this counter argument to attack that idea essentially. Okay. So that was part of the left wing bubble was this knowledge. Supposedly, they did some studies where hydrochloroquine seemed to have some effect, but then all the studies were done in these third world countries where the vi the parasite yes. load was giant. <laughs> so right, obviously, exactly. right, right. that was the correlation. Yeah. Right. Making them the perfect consumer and purveyor of fake news. Along with this infodemic and the election of Donald Trump, arguably the most populist politician who's ever taken the White House, you have a general erosion of public trust. How do you like that? More populist than FDR, Sitch. <laughs> I say more populist than Andrew Jenks. <laughs> yeah. Yes, who literally got rid of the, the federal bank. Right, right trust in democracy itself. Plus the very point of populism and a populist politician is to have followers of the populist politician, in this case, Donald Trump, believe in the strength and truth of that central person at the expense of belief in the system. Studies have shown that populism erodes democracy by requiring belief in the person or the nation, not based around specific issues or communities, but based around an organic, undefined version of the nation state. Like, make America great again. How? It's unclear, but if you don't believe in that statement, can you really call yourself a true American? A true patriot? Because another way that populism thrives is through the unquestioning adherence to belief in that nation and in that person. So, that so here's your fun history fact. Do you think the original populist party in America would be classified as a left-wing or a right-wing party? Left-wing. Yep. Giantly left-wing left -wing party. Yeah. Yep. They were the they had wanted the silver movement to yep. basically prop up poor farmers who were yeah. being taken to task by the fucking greedy bankers. Yep. Those are the it's, original populists. It says populist endorsement measures. This is from 1890. Populist endorsement measures included uh, the silver thing, as you said, uh, a graduated income tax. Direct a progressive of... income tax. Wow. Yes. Right yes. wing. A direct election of senators, a shorter oh, work, more democracy. Shorter, I know a short. Oh yeah, because back in those days, people know. Back in those days, you didn't directly elect sen senators. No, they were like appointed you by your state legislature. Yeah, a shorter work week. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, uh, the establishment of a postal saving system, which I'm not sure what that means. 
Uh, and these measures were collectively designed to curb the influence of monopolistic corporations in the fi and financial interests and to empower small businesses, farmers, and laborers. Anti-corporations, huh? Okay. Right. But you want to know what's also very funny. Uh, you know who they elected to run for president in 1986? I'm sorry, in 1896? 1896. Let me think. Yeah. I wasn't born yet. What was it? <laughs> Are you sure you weren't born yet? <laughs> A man named Williams Jennings Bryan. Williams Jennings Bryan. I've heard of that guy, but I don't really know anything about him. Now, you might have heard this guy for two reasons. One, he is the character that the Cowardly Lion in Wizard of Oz is based oh, off of. Oh, you're right. Yes. Yes. The big <laughs> pussy who wouldn't yes. adopt the silver standard. Yes. Uh, but number two, the reason that he's famous, is that he is the very famous lawyer... In the Scopes Monkey Trial. Wow. That argued against evolution being taught in schools. Wow. So we had the left-wing populist was against evolution being taught in schools. Boy, <laughs> things have changed. Isn't that hilarious? It is hilarious that oh. the Wizard of Oz is a complete allegory for right. getting off the gold standard. Mm-hmm. It is. That, yeah. Yeah. Secret propaganda. That's why it was the, the yellow brick road. Yep. And in the book, her shoes were silver and not ruby. Correct. Yeah. Showing that the silver standard was the answer to all along. Wasn't the, doesn't the Emerald City have to do with the greenbacks? Yes. And it was supposed to be she's going to Washington, D.C. Right. <laughs> yes. That's very silly. Talk about. Talk about putting politics in your children's stories, everybody. <laughs> Wizard of Oz was very political. Very. So I guess very it was political. so subtle that you wouldn't really even understand it. So. Call yourself a true American, a true patriot, because another way that populism thrives is through the unquestioning adherence to belief in that nation and in that person, so that if you are not with us, then you're against us. Populist leaders further erode trust in democracy by questioning the establishment, the media, and the elites, a theme we've already talked about, and that was the central touchstone of the Trump presidency. See, she, I, she's just using this definition of populism that is completely divorced from its historical meaning. Well, it's not, it's not divorced from a historical meaning because that is, you, I mean, that is what populism means. But it's just she's just referencing it as if it's a purely right wing phenomenon when it's not. I mean, left wing populism is nowadays is socialism. That's what it is. Right, but it's not based on some authoritarian dictator that's going to come in and give, give everyone socialism. I mean, even the original well, populism was like you said. You list off the the. Policy prescriptions were designed to help the, a wide number of people. Right. That's why it was called populism. It's help, yes. helping the populace over the elites. Right. She's skipping key steps here. Okay. Yeah. Because she's saying what I said earlier, but in a very low resolution way, in an inarticulate way. Because it's true, like populism, populism on its face does not advocate for a dictatorship or an authoritarian government. Right. It's usually the opposite. It's just it's a problem if you have a situation where you say all institutions are corrupt and the only person that can fix it is this one person. Yeah, but that's... That can lead you down the pathway to authoritarianism by the nature of that sort of ideology. That's one strategy to implement populist policies, but I don't... like. If you're talking about something that no longer serves the populace, and I don't think you can call it popula uh, populism, right? Well, okay, but I, I mean, mean it, I, I guess, but generally the populist idea has been, even back in the 1800s, was the same. It was, this, it was the idea that there's all these institutions are all basically corrupted. Yes, to serving just the elites. Serve the elite of the, in, yeah. uh, serve the interests of the elites and we need to have a, a movement that comes in and serves the interest of the populace, you know, the general population. Right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Populism is right. in contrast to elitism. Yeah, but if you look at the rise of socialism, okay, right. If you look at the rise of Nazism, they both operate according to that 
principle. Pa okay, I get what you're saying. Yeah. Right, because they both, you know, both Hitler and the communists, they both say basically the elites are all corrupt. They're all not for you, the average person. I'll get into power and I will make everything for you, comrade. Like that is the message. Now, well, to be fair, the counterpoint to this, or to be more charitable to populism, you can say that that's basically the political message that almost everyone runs on nowadays. Of course. Yeah. <laughs> right. So. Obviously, it exists on a spectrum because almost every politician probably runs on a message that, oh, all these institutions are really corrupted by the other side. And if you elect me, I will fix it for you. Well, the thing that bothers me about the analysis she's putting forward is that she's just focusing on almost like deity worship when mm -hmm. it has nothing to do with economics or, or, or populism sure. in any way, shape or form. Right. Well, deity worship isn't inherent populism, but obviously it could lead to that potential outcome. But sure. It's not necessarily not necessarily inherent. They worshipped FDR as a as kind of a deity for all the populist programs he put forward. Well, I don't know if I don't know I don't know if you would say FDR. Well, first of all, you could say FDR was maybe a populist when he sort of ran, but he, those like implementing widespread welfare wouldn't necessarily be populist positions. Sitch's favorite president is FDR. He's like having a little... No, no, no. I, I'm saying you can't... If, if you can have left-wing and right-wing uh, populist, you can't say that implementing something like social programs, which we generally classify as left-wing, are inherently populist by definition. Social programs are not populist. They can't, they're not necessarily inherently populist, no. Okay. Because they serve the elite? <laughs> they can. Depends on what the program is. I guess they could. I, if, yeah, if the elite are getting a bunch of contracts to house the homeless, sure. Okay. Think about it this way. If you had... um, Okay. Say Andrew Yang becomes president. Okay. And he implements UBI. Okay. All the left-wing populists are going to be very happy with that, right? Sure. Are the right-wing populists going to be happy with that? I mean, do they get UBI? They do, but they might not be happy about it. They're going to say it's going to cause inflation. It's just giving people money for free. Sure. Blah, 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 blah. Right. So they're not going to be happy with it. So that's why I'm saying you can't Crimea River. That. Right. So that's what my point is that you can't necessarily say that just because something is a social program that is supposedly designed to help the people, that doesn't necessarily make it populist by outcome. Or by ideology. Right. Okay. Disagree. Okay. <laughs> According to Stanford's Global Populisms Project, among most dangerous of populism's consequences is the erosion of formal democratic rules and liberal institutions. These destructive effects of populist rule include the takeover and taming of courts and oversight institutions, and new laws that limit the freedom of the media and civil society. These legal and formal maneuvers erode public criticism, transparency, and accountability. Just as importantly, however, such governments have also made a point of undermining informal democratic norms, such as conflict of interest laws, financial transparency, or respect for opposition. Here, the damage may go deeper and be far less reversible. Such norms and informal rules are the product of decades of elite and popular interactions. Once such trust and consensus disappears, it is not easy to bring it back. And with all of this... Well, who so said all that garbage? Uh, so, I, I forget what this like, anti-populist organization. Okay. Um, it will... Okay. Some BuzzFeed it, article said that? It's not actually garbage if you actually went back and clearly listened to what they said. Because what they said was true. They said populism can will erode Democrat and liberal. And I mean liberal, I mean liberalism. Democrat and liberal institutions, which it will by nature, by design, right? You're saying all these institutions are corrupted and, and need to be done away with. Um, but it also says these democratic societies have basically undermined their own trust because they've done all these bad things that make people not trust them anymore. And it's very difficult to regain that trust once it's lost. Sure. Which, so I assume you'd agree with all that because that's true. Right, but I, mean, I Nothing just, they said is wrong. Look, the entire Black Lives Matter movement is about the entire police and justice system being corrupt and us yes, needing exactly. to defund right. the police and get rid of it. Right. Like, what is it? How's that? All of a sudden... That's a populist movement. Black Lives Matter is a left-wing populist movement. Okay. 
and she and Le- Legion knows that. Well, she doesn't know that. No. Okay. I know. I'd be curious if the people that wrote that, that wrote that that organization. I don't know if they know it. Right. They could all be left wing too. I don't know. I didn't look deeply into what their ideology was, but. Trump presidency and the chaos of the pandemic, the election denial and eventual January 6th insurrection becomes a very clear and obvious outcome. For months before the election, Donald Trump made comments to his supporters that reinforced the notion that the democratic election process can't be trusted. In April, 2020, he claimed that mail-in ballots are a very dangerous thing for this country, saying they're fraudulent in many cases. In reality, mail-in ballots have been used successfully in several states for years with very few instances of fraud. In fact, Trump himself has voted by mail before. And because Trump was a populist president who required... She ignores the fact that they changed the voting rules. So in states where people... Normally when you vote by mail, you register to vote by mail. You you contact your state secretary and tell them you want a mail-in ballot. Right. A lot of people didn't have to do that. They just sent out mail-in ballots as if they'd registered to to vote by mail. Yeah. There were some states, uh, there's one or two states, I think, that did this where they would just automatically send out uh, mail-in ballots. Which is a giant change and completely insecure because they haven't been taken off the voter rolls to vote in person. Well, I don't think that was the concern because however the system worked, it was supposed to automatically cancel out dual voting. I thought the problem was just that when you have all these extra uh, ballots floating out there, it'd be more likely that people would be utilizing them and filling them out for other ways. people. Yeah. Yeah. Right. And changing the name or whatever. That too. So, yes, right. exactly. Because if you have to go through a process of actually requesting one and getting it and your name's attached oh, to I it. Oh, I guess this is a situation where people showed up and they'd already voted. They showed up at the polls to vote and then they would say, oh, well, you've already voted. So they wouldn't let them yeah. vote. Yeah. Right. Because someone got their ballot and mailed it in. Maybe, maybe, yeah. That's definitely possible. Yeah. Full loyalty from his staff and supporters, they followed suit. In June, then Attorney General William Barr began questioning mail-in ballots, claiming that they posed danger of counterfeiting, despite also acknowledging in an NPR interview that his claims had no basis in fact. Trump doubled down on... Okay, so I looked up to this. That's a giant lie, yeah. I was like, I don't think Barr would make that... I don't think he would say those things together. He's usually tries to be pretty careful when he says these things. So I went back and I found it and it says, um, this is the NPR interview. The, the interviewer says, some people noticed when you raise concerns about the security of mail-in ballots, as the president also has very loudly and said without evidence that there's a lot of fraud or can be a lot of fraud, you raise a specific concern about foreign entities counterfeiting ballots and mailing them in. <laughs> to which he said, well, I think there's a range of concerns about mail-in ballots. And let me just clarify here. I'm not talking about a mail-in ballot for a limited number of cases where somebody, you know, is going to be traveling around the world. And the way that the state has provided for that is you mail in your ballot. I'm talking about a comprehensive rule where all the ballots are essentially mail-in, which is what you were talking about, Adam. Yep. And there's so many occasions for fraud there that they cannot be policed. I think it would be very bad, but for of the things I mentioned, was a, but one of the things I mentioned was the possibility of counterfeiting. To which the interviewer says, did you, did you have evidence to raise that specific concern? To which he said, no, comma, it's obvious. And then the interviewer says, it's obvious that it can be done, period. Then when he said, of course, we get to a lot of why do you think we go to the problems we do in crafting single dollar bills? Because it makes it harder to counterfeit. Right. To which the interviewer says, sure, seeming to agree with Bill Barr in that situation. And then the interviewer says, do they not go through those procedures with mail-in ballots? To which Bill Barr says, you've seen them. They're pretty primitive. So apparently he didn't trust whatever the system is that they do for counterfeiting. So Yeah, they do the signature stuff, but a lot of times they don't check the signatures. Right. On the mail-in ballot narrative on Fox News, saying in July that mail-in voting is going to rig the election, indicating for the first time that he might not accept the results of the 2020 election if he were defeated. On election night, Trump claimed victory despite numerous swing states still counting ballots. This is the problem. This is why, like, the whole the crying wolf thing is so frustrating. Because, because the media had such rampant TDS from the beginning 
really unju like unjustifiable, completely unjustified TDS from the beginning and all throughout Trump's presidency. Then when Trump is like out here based on literally nothing, okay, he had no, we found out that he had no magical special evidence about election fraud other yep. than Sidney Powell, who obviously was full of shit, we found out. With the and crack totally and insane. Stuff. And insane. Or, or, or maybe she was being fed intentional bad information as some people uh, seem to believe. Right. Um, she was talking to Alex Jones. <laughs> so, but, but because the faith of the institution have been so eroded because they all basically had TDS, then it's like when Trump says, oh, the election is stolen, people will just believe it and they won't believe the institutions that say that there's no evidence for that. Right. Because the, the institutions have basically thrown their credibility away. Look, they blew point. all their credibility with the the fine people hoax. The right, Trump with Russia praise neo-Nazis. Yeah. And, you know, a, a million other things, right? So... And that's yeah. the pro that's it is the same thing with the with the people on the right complain about communism forever and it's like well now that's here right <laughs> it's like well we people become tired to the concerns of communism that's why like whenever we bring up you know socialism or cultural marxism you're like oh because you know it's like an <laughs> instant turnoff when you're talking to someone about this stuff it's tough it's definitely tough I know. yeah we got to talk to more actual commies well, maybe we should go back to using the term political correctness. The problem is it's kind of like a passe term. Right. But I, I always forget this. The derivation of the term political correctness was socialism. It was the Leninists use that term. It's kind of hilarious. The Leninists use that term positively to describe the correctness of someone's political positions. Right. <laughs> so it's actually kind of the perfect term political correctness that what people were throwing at in the in the 90s the 80s and the 90s to deter to describe cultural marxism because that's what it was it was political correctness hmm as a euphemism for socialism yeah because it's a it's a term that socialists use positively right Many of his supporters mobbed ballot counting sites in the days to come. Rudy Giuliani, despite saying in court where perjury is a thing, that he was not alleging any election fraud happened, he made numerous statements out of court indicating that there was a wide voting fraud conspiracy afoot. At one point, at that... Now, that is actually true. <laughs> that did happen. Yeah, Giuliani was awful. Yeah. Right. He did go and say that they had all his evidence for voter fraud, and then when he had to testify under oath... Suddenly that all of that, you know, disappears and evaporates. So Well, I think he was hoping that he could dig up some evidence. So he was overselling right. it. And then when he couldn't right. find any evidence, people kept calling him and saying, Hey, where's the evidence? Right. He didn't have anything to show him. Yep. The infamous hair dye melting incident. He said, I know crimes. I can smell them. You don't have to smell this one. I can prove it to you eighteen different ways. He didn't see that's him overselling it right there. Not, no. however, prove it ever in even one way. And while major members of the Trump administration were giving the voting fraud argument the veneer of legitimacy, the big lie was further spread through disinformation campaigns on untrustworthy news sites and via social media. According to a study published by the Carter Center, Facebook served a vital role in spreading the election fraud lie. Specifically, disinformation repeat offenders, that is, media sources known to repeatedly publish disinformation, were critical in the proliferation of the big lie and other harmful election narratives. Repeat offenders most prominently featured included Fox News, Breitbart, The Daily Wire, The Gateway Pundit, and The Epoch Times. Disinformation repeat offender content appeared in 97% of right-leaning Facebook groups and accounted for one in five links shared in those groups. Okay. So... As you probably can predict, Sitch is going to say, there's some problems with this study. <laughs> Let's hear and one them. Of the, and one of the problems I already I already spoiled, I already talked about. This is why I looked up the NewsGuard rating for MSNBC. So, because they use in this study, in this finger quote study, they use the NewsGuard rating for the basis of saying that these are not trustworthy studies. And it's funny because they label Fox News as like this big problem. And yet, if, if Fox News has a higher rating than MSNBC, how can you just say this is a right-wing problem? Yeah, you can't. Right. So, 
Okay. So the second problem with it, besides that, is if you actually read what it says, it says 97% of the right-leaning groups uh, shared something from one of these sources. Okay. So they're not saying that 97% of right-wing groups sh shared a story that was not true. They said 97% oh. shared a story from a link of a source that Newsmax or NewsGuard says is not exactly Which is credible. just Fox News, Breitbart, or Daily Wire. Right. Ridiculous. Or, I mean, there, now there were other shittier things in there, like Epoch Times and you know some other things. That so, were kind of like, but it could whatever. have been true, right? Right. But, but again, you have to judge... Like just saying, well, they shared a source from a shitty. They shared a story from a shitty source. That doesn't necessarily mean that the story itself is true or false. Right. Obviously. Now, of course, you know another thing that we could have brought up, which you haven't brought up yet, was you know the laptop story because you had all these sources, all these original, you know, mainstream media credible sources that were saying that the laptop was Russian disinformation, or shouldn't be trusted or whatever, right? And that turned out to be not true. Yeah, I remember that. Um, so another Cost big Trump problem the is, election. Yes. <laughs> another big problem with the study and the way that she's framing it is that this study was specifically around the 2020 election. Okay. Who's going to be sharing the fake news on the 2020 election? Is it going to be the left or the right? It's obviously going to be conservatives because they lost. Right, but so if they like, but if they won, they would be the left spreading the fake news. Right, exactly, and so, like, to use this to, as some sort of example to say, see, the right shares more fake news overall. It's like, well, wait a minute. If you have a study about specific issues, that biases it. Like, if you have a study on election, who's sharing more fake news about the election? Obviously, it's going to be the right. Well, if let's you have go a study to on the twenty sixteen election and see what happens. Right. Or if you say who, if you have, if you say we have a study on who's sharing more fake news on police violence. You think oh, it's yeah. the left or the right? Totally. George Floyd. Let's do yeah, it's gonna the be, George yeah. Floyd one. Right. It's going to be the left, obviously. So it's just, yeah, it's going to depend entirely on, like, if you're going to make a decision on a specific subject matter, that's obviously going to heavily bias the study in one direction. Let's see who's sharing more fake news about Kyle Rittenhouse. Exactly. Let's make our right. study. Oh, right. look. <laughs> The left only shares fake news. 100% fake news rating. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Groups and the of repeat offender content in right-leaning groups increased by 156%. 156%, Sitch? Oh, my God. In the days between the election and the January 6th insurrection. The divisions and distrust that have been sowed in this country for decades, combined with the power of the internet, created an atmosphere that was primed for the chaos brought by the January 6th insurrection. And it's still unclear what all of this might mean for the 2024 presidential election. My fear is that it's going to be 2020 redo between Biden and Trump, and either Trump will win and further validate his base of low conscientiousness conservatives, creating further ideological divides Look, no. in this country. That, that? That will now all the now his entire base is unconscientious conservatives. Oh, you're talking about the alt right picture. Yeah, she she said it's gonna. She said, wait, let's go back. Twenty redo between Biden and Trump, and either Trump will win and further validate his base of low conscientiousness. You like that? This, Trump's base, and you have the uh, the Charlottesville protest. Yeah, no, she. The Charlottesville white nationalist is hitting Trump's every. Base. Oh. Yeah, hitting every conservative stereotype here that she can right. hit. Yeah, she couldn't, she couldn't resist. Couldn't resist. Of course. Conservatives creating further ideological divides in this country that will only be exacerbated by disinformation online. Or Biden will win and we'll have another January 6th on our hands, but this time they've had four more years to organize, galvanized by their ability to literally break into the Capitol and wreak havoc. Imagine if those people had been organized on the ground that day. This makes it all... Okay. Look, First, either way, the right is going to be a problem. Right. <laughs> if they win First or lose, all, it's going to be a problem. Yes, exactly. That's a good point. But first of all, stop it with the linear zooms. You're right. killing me. <laughs> okay. You're killing me, Smalls. But secondly, this is a kind of a dumb, this is a, a pretty dumb point. Mm -hmm. Do you think after January 6th, part one, right? Do you think that's ever going to happen again? No, they they already closed the loophole for the electors stuff. No, no, no. I mean, in terms of like allowing people to 
to bust into the Capitol. Like, if if Joe Biden wins in 2024, this is going to be like the army. There's going to be so much security. Like, that's not, it's going to be impossible. It's going to be imp- impossible for anything remotely like that to happen. It's going to be like two tanks parked on the lawn. Of yes. The- this is. There's going to be like literal physical wall. They're going to build a wall. They're going to build a wall around the Capitol building. <laughs> like there's no fucking, like the reason that January 6th was allowed to happen in the first place was because it was just no one expected anything like that to happen. And everyone was caught with their pants down. And we had kind of like the cavalcade of fuck ups that allowed it to, to continue forward. Yeah. But now, now they're going to be ready for it. They're, this is what's going to happen. I, here's here's the prediction. Okay, I can see the future so clearly. If Joe Biden wins, okay, if Joe Biden wins, like very shortly after he wins, and Donald Trump will say the election is rigged. Obviously, if if Joe Biden wins, right, we all accept that. Mm-hmm. Right? I won three times. Right. Yes, yeah. he will say it's rigged, and then the media will say, "Oh my God, Donald Trump is starting to is going to have January 6th times 9-11. Okay. <laughs> Donald Trump is going to have January 6th with a vengeance. He's going to happen again. Oh my God. It's going to be the worst thing ever. And they're going to be hyping this up they're gonna be, for months. Okay. For like, the, you know, for no, through November, through December, the, the beginning of January, they're going to be hyping up. January 6th is going to be like the worst, most violent thing ever. And January 6th is going to roll around. And it's going to be like a literal army of people like made a human chain surrounding the Capitol. They're going to close down every, you know, no one's allowed to protest on the Capitol. Oh my God. It's going to be like this massive police presence and nothing's going to happen. Nothing will happen whatsoever. Sitch, I don't, they close the loophole. So there's no, there's no mistake. Nobody can think that the vice president could throw out the electors and, and substitute some <laughs> fake electors. They cha- They literally close that loophole to make it crystal clear that that's not a possibility. So well, okay, why, well, would, to, right. why would the January... Like, the whole idea behind January 6th was this idea that the election could be stopped by protesting the vote, the electors' vote. Right. Well, okay, two things. First of all, number one, to call it a loophole is charitable. Yeah, it's, it's like Trump a, no still one even knows it if it's a, a, it's like a theory. It wasn't even like right. a loophole, it's like a theory. Right? Trump still believes right. Trump called it a loophole because he's right. like, look, he totally could have done it. Obviously, yeah, they had right. to close it. That was his evidence. Right. right. Um, but number two, I am skeptical that the people that were there and had the animus and the energy to do what they did had some like intellectual thought process of of. Well, I'm only doing this because I believe there's this loophole with Mike Pence. <laughs> like I think they would have been there regardless. So I don't I don't think so because Trump set it up because of the you know, quote unquote loophole. Right, but that's like the Trump excuse. set up the January sixth okay. protest because of this loophole. I if there that. if there is no loophole, what is there for Trump to set up? To go and protest and to tell the Tell, tell the senators to not to vote down accepting the slate of ballots. That's still a thing? Yeah. Hmm. That's still a thing. No. I don't think it happens again. Okay. No, I don't think it's going to happen because there's going to be like a fucking army of people there. And everyone's so hyped up to prevent it from happening. It's not going to happen. Um, but I, I don't think... I don't think the Mike Pence situation or closing the vice presidential quote loophole is going to have any impact on it one way or the other. But okay. Who knows? All the more important that we think critically and take major steps to curb disinformation and fake news online. The good of our democracy depends on it. And studies have shown that simply debunking the conspiracies and disinformation is not enough. When someone's emotionally attached to a certain ideological belief and worldview, who considers themselves morally superior to others for their worldview, and who is- The I- irony such is <laughs> killing me here. Are you not being- I feel like we're being crushed under the weight of a thousand irons, okay? It's a thousand so individual irons have fallen down from the heavens and are crushing us underneath. This might be the smuggest content creator we've covered. I just feel smugness like wafting off the screen onto me. How is she not how can you be and maybe she's maybe she is aware of it. She doesn't say it. I don't right. know. Because like how could you say these words? And not equate this very obviously to wokeness and the left. 
Especially when you've spent all day just Googling things that confirm your bias. Yes. Yeah. It's it's the self aware if she doesn't understand this equating to the left, the self awareness is like in the negatives. Right. Was had that worldview reinforced by, say, QAnon conspiracies, or has been told to use bleach to kill coronavirus because the CDC is infiltrated with liberal elites, or all bought out by big pharma and don't have your best interests at heart? So what? So I guess it's just the right wing, right? It's just the right wing that has some idea about moral superiority. It's just the right wing that attaches their morality to some sort of fact claim, right? Yeah. Okay. Okay. We're not about to watch a video on uh, trans questions that she's going to totally stumble and drop the ball with and totally just slurp up all the wrong information and regurgitate all the BS we've all heard a million times. Of course, yeah. Right, okay. Failing every single MPC test that's been propagated on the internet. Yep. She also did a video on CRT where she just oh, we gotta slurped up one. all the t terrible uh, newspaper articles saying CRT is totally fine. It's just, it's just civil rights. It's just, it's just teaching black history. Come right. on. But no, it's only the right that has these hyper partisan fake news, morally polarized opinions on things. Only the right wing does that. Look, CRT is basically just the scientific study of racism and racist institutions. Sis. <laughs> Despite the fact that CRT claims science is a white hegemonic <laughs> institution itself, right? Listen, all of science <laughs> is rooted in sexism, racism, transphobia, mm -hmm. heteronormativity, and patriarchy. I actually okay. found I found a paper of, from a some, some CRT researching researcher arguing that CRT should actually use science. And the anti-science stuff has to, they have to, it has to stop. They have to knock That's it hilarious. off. Yeah, That's it hilarious. Is, yeah, it is. It is hilarious. It's hilarious that someone had to write that in a paper. She even cites sources of yeah. CRT being anti-science. What was the name of that paper she sent to them? I'll, I will. I'll find it and send yeah. it to you. It's pretty hilarious. That's funny. What else are you going to do? And then that same information is repeated back to them a few times through various fake news outlets or from the president of the United States. It becomes very, very difficult to convince that person otherwise. And when that person already tends to distrust the world around them, including all experts and sources of reputable news, a simple debunking doesn't cut it. It's so much deeper than that. One way to help curb the flow of disinformation is to focus on teaching media literacy, especially in middle and high schools. Some organizations are working to make media literacy classes more available, and some schools are requiring media literacy to be taught in the classroom. For example, those, all those classes say, believe Democrats. Of conservatives are liars. <laughs> well, see, that's the problem because, like, I think teaching media literacy in high school is a fantastic idea, but I don't trust any of these people to actually teach it properly and nonpartisan way. Right. This video is supposed to be teaching media literacy. How's right. it doing, Sitch? Um, it's basically just propaganda and misinformation. At this yeah, point. <laughs> it's failing spectacularly. Yes. Yeah. Doesn't even understand the problem. That's how media illiterate it is. Right. For example, Illinois was the first state to require news literacy courses to be offered at every high school. And Colorado now requires media literacy standards in schools. And California passed a media literacy law in 2018 that requires the State Department of Education to make available to school districts web-based resources and instructional materials on media literacy. Other state intervention could... We should look up those materials because I bet they're just catastrophic. Was it? She said the state of Illinois? California. California, California made a law saying that they have to provide media literacy online information. Okay. Could also prove effective. In New Mexico, the Secretary of State has developed a website that provides fact checks for disinformation specific to elections in that state. And the North Carolina Board of Elections created a program called Mythbuster Monday. A Is that Bigfoot on their website? Awesome. Based.
series of posts debunking popular myths in North Carolina about local and national elections. And finally, social media platforms need to take on the task of doing more to regulate disinformation. And don't come at me with your free speech arguments, okay? Social media platforms are private entities. They can curb whatever speech they want. And for the good of democracy, they should. According to the Carter Center, ahead of future US elections, social media platforms must reform policies Funny. and actions to address repeat offenders grounded in human rights principles to preserve freedom of expression and mitigate real world harms. Rather than blunt force interventions, e.g. blanket bans, that prompt accusations of censorship, platforms should establish clear policies and enforcement actions with an emphasis on providing context and creating friction that reduces the spread, reach, and impact of harmful content. Decisions about such reforms should be made in a collaborative manner with government, civil society, media, academia, and other experts weighing in on potential solutions. On an individual level, we can help stop the spread of disinformation by taking an extra b Okay. You're not going to be happy. What happened? You're not going to be happy. Okay. Did you, you find the California stuff? I found California Department of Education. Okay. Media literacy? Media literacy, right. Teach me. What do I need to know? So I'm kind of looking at it and I'm like, okay. You know, some things I'm like, okay, maybe this is fine. Maybe it's not so bad. There's a bunch of tabs. And I click on curriculum oh, and it says oh, the following oh. resources are ready-made curriculum, curricula, usually consisting of scope and sequence, learning outcomes and activities for media and information literacy, as well as digital citizenship. Great. Okay. I want to be media literate. I'm in California. What do I have to do? So I look at the resources. There's a bunch of links. Oh, good. I like And I the see links. the second one. Oh, cool. Second one jumps out at me. Jumps out. What's it say? It's called... Critical media project. Okay. And I go, critical. Mm -hmm. That's a key word. Like do critical they mean, theory or critical do they thinking? Mean, exactly. Do they mean critical thinking or do they mean critical theory, right? right. Critical <laughs> like, theory is, is the separating of the world into oppressor and oppressed. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So uh, I click on the Critical Media Project. This is okay. on the California Department of Education's website. Mm -hmm. Brings me to this website. And uh, at the top of it, there's a subsection. It says age, class, disability, gender, LGBTQ, race, ethnicity, religion. And I'm like, why is that a subsection? This is <laughs> so not like, promising. That's not promising. Uh, so then I, I look at the top and, you know, they have the about. Right. Because I was going to click on, like, what are they about, right, to see. Because that's usually where you'd see what the ideology is. But then right next to it, I see something that says learn and do. And when I mouse over it, the very first thing it says is why identity matters. Oh, okay. Wow. And then I click on that. Is this going to help me tell fake news? This is supposed to help you uh, dis discern fake news somehow. And I click on that. And it says, how do you identify yourself? What is the most important of your identity? Is it your sex, your race, ethnicity, your sexual orientation, your class ass, your nationality, your religious affiliation, your age, your physical or kind of abilities, your political beliefs? And then the whole thing is all about figuring out what your identity is. I Ouch. thought I was on this website so my identity yeah. could be someone who can d discern fake news very astutely. And, and I shit you not, okay, the third paragraph on this page about identity, it mm -hmm. says key words, identity, social construction, no way, norms, ideology, intersectionality, no way, prejudice, stereotypes, bias, sexism, racism, heterosexism, classism, ageism, ableism. Wow. It was so, definitely critical theory based. Yes. So uh, not looking too good for California standards for critical media literacy. Right. Analysis. Look, I just stumbled on this website to figure out what was fake news and what wasn't. And now I find out that I'm a gay, queer, wheelchair bound, transve uh, transsexual. Yes. And if you go on their, on their mission statement, it says the critical media project is a free media literacy website resource for educators and students aged 8 to 21 that enhances young people's critical thinking. This is the problem. They they hijack the word critical and every 
normie liberal thinks they're just talking about critical, critical thinking. Critical thinking. I know. They go, heard, oh, I like critical thinking. That's a good thing. They've heard for a million years. Yes. That uh, critical thinking is where it's all at. Right. It says uh, critical thinking, empathy, empathy, and builds on their capacity to advocate for change around questions of identity, to raise critical awareness and provide the tools to decode media representations of race, ethnicity, gender, sexuality, socioeconomic class, religion, age, disability, and develop an understanding of how these identities intersect. What does that have to do with whether or not news is real or not? We also seek to encourage and offer guidance for students to tell their own stories, to create their own representations, and uphold their status as an active and engaged participant in civic society. This is such horse hockey. Yeah, what does it have to do with media literacy? It's nothing. Isn't that bad? That's awful. I just I feel like all of these really bad. all of these education jobs just want to shove that in. Yeah. You know, the, and it's 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 so true and it's so disgusting the the leftist abuse of language because they're first on the first link on this on the curriculum above this one if you click on it they talk about like asking critical questions and critical thinking skills, and they mean it in like a non-socialist way. Mm -hmm. And so it's very obvious that whatever idiot is putting this shit together is like, oh, critical thinking, critical media studies. That's that. That's what we want, right? They don't even know the difference. Yeah. Yeah, they don't know the difference. Yeah. So that's the point. It's, it's terrible. You can't it's have really useful terrible. idiots without having idiots. Yep. Sad. Sad, sad, sad. Beat before sharing that article or that Instagram post. After learning everything for this video today, it has me second guessing and taking a beat before I share things. Because as much as we can say, well, studies show conservatives are the ones that are worse about it, the reality is that liberals also share disinformation. And I think it's- Oh my God, it only took us 27 minutes and 30 seconds to get that acknowledgement, Adam. <laughs> Well, she hasn't proven that conservatives are worse, even though she really wants to believe that because she's biased as fuck. No, no, no. Listen, she's unbiased because even though she spent 27 minutes of a 28 minute video talking about how it's all the right wing doing this, she said that the left wing is also doing it. Right. But she's not going to give an example of when they do no. it. No. She's going to say hypothetically. Right. It's so on she all of us liberal. to care about what we're sharing instead of blindly reposting because it fits in with our worldview without reading through the information and making sure the source is reputable. We can increase our media. What you didn't do for your video. <laughs> no, 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 no. Right? So ironic. You're Look, right. She did exactly that thing. Sitch uh, had, to, had to double check your video here. No. What's going on here? No, 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 no. You did the thing. You, you did, did the, the thing, thing. You said not to do. Yeah. Oh, so sorry. Look, you, you only had one day off to make your fancy video, and you want to spend right. most of the time with those fancy transitions. You didn't have time. Listen. You didn't have time, time to look at the study. It takes a lot of time to do those digital linear zooms. <laughs> okay. Yeah, exactly. You're more interested in digital linear zooms than actually looking into the study. Right. And and asking yourself, hmm, I wonder why there's a giant classification of people that are missing from this study. <laughs> All the unconscientious unconscien progressives like yeah. me. How yes. come I'm missing from the study? Mm -hmm. I don't know. She seems pretty orderly. Although you, you never really know. Because, you know, you could take that camera down and like right outside of the picture... Right outside of the camera frame, there could be a pile of dirty laundry. You never know. True. Listen, when I come on camera, it's going to be like so neat and tidy and like like an inch outside of frame. It's going to be like crap everywhere. <laughs> I mean, my desk is kind of a, oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> it's just like that. <laughs> of course. Okay. Of okay. course. Come on. My office is a sty. 
the Shame. illiteracy through courses online. PBS has a great collection of resources that are mostly for kids in high school, but frankly it could benefit everyone to get the basics of understanding how to spot fake news. Again, studies show that people generally are overconfident in their ability to spot fake news, and we could all benefit from being more critical consumers of media. Teach your kids media literacy and talk to their school board about adding media literacy curriculum into their schools. Contact your representatives and talk to them about social media regulations and your concerns about fake news and disinformation and their effect on our democracy. It can feel very overwhelming and hopeless, but it's important to work towards the world that we want to see, because the alternative isn't an option. If you liked this video, you'll also like my last video all about why conservatives are obsessed with trans kids. Thank you. To oh, maybe we should watch that, Sitch. Watch what? Why Why are conservatives so obsessed with trans kids? Oh, that's exactly what we're going to watch. But first bring up the Kyle Rittenhouse one from a year ago. Okay. I was I was looking at uh, the PBS website to see. Oh, it's horrible. There was Don't any, do it. It, it, well, it's, it. Well, it doesn't look so far. I only checked one of the links. It wasn't partisan, but it's like baby logic. It's like, which I mean, I guess it makes sense for, for small kids. It's like, make sure the URL is not like a weird URL. Mm -hmm. You know, check to see if the photo in the article is a stock photo. You know, right. it's like, okay, I mean, I guess you could do all these things. <laughs> but, okay, let me get the, I had the Kyle Rittenhouse thing open somewhere. But I have too many tabs. Oh, no. Did I tell you I had over 800 tabs? Too many, too many tabs. Too many tabs. <laughs> Do, 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 do. Are you saying that I'm going to get stabbed to death? Isn't I that too tapped. many cooks? Yeah. I, I got, we I should watch that next. I'm pretty sure we'll get copyright struck if we do that. Um, Let me, I can just copy the link address. And oh, wait, I have it. You want me to look it up? I, I got it. Oh, okay. I found it. I, but you'll be proud of me. I closed. I closed. Mm -hmm. I closed my 800 tabs. Nice. They're all gone. I didn't even look at them. I was like, I can't sort through all these tabs. It's just all gone forever. Kyle Rittenhouse is a troll. Well, I got to refresh watch together. It's like lagging out for some reason. Kyle Rittenhouse is a troll. <laughs> <laughs> I, think okay. that's, I think that's the first thing she says here. Victims of Kenosha Riot not allowed to be called victims during Kyle Rittenhouse trial. Right. Trial. Okay, here we go. How Rittenhouse's trial starts next week. If you'll remember, he's the one that's accused of shooting and killing a couple protesters in Kenosha, Wisconsin. What is this background music? It's completely lame. Have We're talking about a shooting. Dun, 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 dun. Have you tried YouTube? I'm in the elevator at the hotel, and we're talking about Kyle Rittenhouse shooting people. Dun, 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 dun. Like, Have what you? Is uh, yeah. Have you tried YouTube Shorts? <laughs> Automatic music. I don't know. Come on. <laughs> okay. Okay. Stop Judge assessing the media. The prosecution is not going to be allowed to refer to the people who died as victims because he says it's a loaded word and it's going to prejudice the jury against the defendant, making them think that he is presumed guilty. It's not unheard of for judges to make this type of determination. We do want to make sure that the jury isn't being unnecessarily prejudiced in one way or the other based on the language that each party is allowed to use. However, the... Okay, well... Not bad. That's we're good so far. Though the audio is like totally fucked, right? That's not on my end. You no, that's that? awful. Okay. Like it's like going through two different mics or something. Sure. Yeah. Terrible. Right. Okay. Well, okay. Well, she said, however, so I'm curious to see. Cause at first I'm like, well, that's true. Good point. Right. However, so was, he crossed however. state lines. <laughs> we'll see where the, however goes. Okay. Defense is allowed to call the people who died rioters, looters, arsonists. And we are more concerned with the rights of the defendant because he's the one standing trial for murder than we yes. are with the rights of the victims, as much as that doesn't feel right in our heart. However, there are many persuasive arguments against disallowing prosecution from being able to call them victims. For example, statutes themselves refer to people as victims, regardless of whether the defendant is guilty. They were shot and killed. They're victims. But this isn't entirely unprecedented. If you're shot and killed in the commission of a crime, are you really a victim? No. Yeah, okay, so. Anyway, look at that smug look on the face there. Victim, a person harmed, injured, or killed as a result of a crime, accident, or, or an other event or action. So I guess it depends, because as you said, we generally think of victim meaning someone who is undeserveably yeah someone hurt. who's innocent killed right. for innocent reasons yeah right even if it doesn't technically mean that so 
Anyway, the trial starts on Monday. We'll see what happens. So okay. it sounded like she... This is a pretty lame video. Um, yeah. It sounds like she, as a lawyer, is like, yeah, it makes sense not to be victim. But let me really try to pretzel some logic there, like, mm -hmm. <laughs> as much as possible. <laughs> Why we should call these people victims. Right, yeah. right. So... And the thing is, like, yeah, the, I mean, she even said it herself, you know, the, or she kind of alluded to it, the, the rioters and the looters and the burnerers, those people aren't on trial. Kyle's on trial. Well, the, the judge also, this is another thing that the right. far left progressive activists never mention is that the judge had a history of, not allowing the use of victim in his courtroom in right. other cases. So if you have yeah. a black defendant who is accused of a crime and you know it's not it has not been determined yet if they're guilty of breaking into someone's home, if you're calling the person that got their home broken into a victim, you are prejudic prejudicing the jury to think that this guy is guilty. So right. would this progressive activist encourage a judge to be calling this potentially innocent black victim, uh, victim, a uh, black person, you know, person accused of, of a crime, uh, victimizing these other people? Would she be in no. favor of it in that situation? Doubtful. Right. Yeah. So it's just completely politics brain. Well, also the judge didn't he say because I kind of I remember that hearing, where he's like, well, well, he can call them, uh, you know, what was like, what was the guy's name? Look, Banger. He... Banger was like, he can call them, you know, rioters and, and looters and, and arsonists. And didn't the judge say like, well, were they arsonists? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that, was, that was a funny response. Well, they like, have were they on, doing the action. They have them on video rioting and com they have them pushing around a dumpster. They had. What was the first guy? Uh, Rosenbaum. Rosenbaum. They had Rosenbaum pushing around a, fi a, a flaming dumpster. So I think arsonist is fair, right? Oh, that was another thing. You just reminded me. When I listened to Olay and Brianna Greyjoy talk about mm -hmm. Kyle House, they threw my people under the bus here. Did they really? They said Kyle House shot a bunch of Jews. Because Rosenbaum was Jewish? And I was like, no one knows what the fuck the religion of anyone involved in this situation was. They just assumed that he was Jewish because his name was Rosenbaum. And they assumed that guy's name is Jewish because his name was Grosskurtz. But you say, well, wait a minute. I don't know that. Number one, you don't know that. But number two, everyone involved in that situation had a German last name. Because it's a very German ancestry area of the country. Right. Rittenhouse, Rosenbaum, Grosskurtz, and Huber are all German last names. Yes. Okay. Totally. So I was like, don't fucking throw the Jews under this. I'm not claiming Rosenbaum. Fuck you. Hilarious. <laughs> Get out of here. Get that, out of here. That's not been determined. Unless they determine. I've never heard anyone confirm any religious information about anyone involved in that situation. So. The judge, the since we know so much about psychology, right? I do remember the judge talking specifically about the not using the word victim in his courtroom, and I, you know, I actually got a glimmer of hope for the criminal justice system because it is completely prejudicial. Of course, if you're going to call some, if you're going to refer to somebody as a victim for two weeks, you're totally prejudicing the jury. Of course. When the whole point of the trial is to determine whether or not the person is a victim or not. Well, yeah, because in this case, because in this case, it's not even a question. Of, like in some cases, you could say, "Oh, well, they're a victim," but you're trying to determine whether the person was the person that victimized them or not, right? Right. But in this yes. case, everyone knows that it was him. The question is, especially in a self-defense case, you 100% should not be able to use the term "victim" because the, the determination is, was the person a victim or were they acting criminally or negligently or was the person defending themselves in a lawful manner? Yep. So yeah, no, totally ridiculous. Totally ludicrous. Yeah. A record. Let's move on to the second video after I read some super chats. Can't wait. Uh, 
Where? Twitter sucks for twenty dollars. Thank you, Twitter sucks. Twitter sucks. Maybe becoming another surrogate uncle. Sweet. Says as a conservative, it's neocons who had some level of allowance for abortion. Anecdotally, I know someone who's an atheist who says abortion should be banned, and he says religion will lead to the downfall of the U.S. Interesting. Okay. Interesting. Yeah, I know. I, I know that we have in our audience people who are anti-abortion who say they're atheists. So, yeah. And they exist. They're out there. They're out there. I just, I would assume, based on my gut intuition, that it's the minority. But they're still out there. Yeah, the vast majority, I think. Maybe 90%. You might be able right. to scrounge up 10% of atheists who are against abortion on some yes. other grounds, but. Uh, Twitter sucks for another $20. Thank you, Twitter sucks, for your very generous money. Says, the experts were saying the opposite of mainstream media. Twitter took down a DeSantis video with three doctors. The story about the fish cleaner was a woman trying to kill her husband. I've been taking <laughs> ivermectin for decades. Shut up, LOL. There you go. Yeah, I thought that fish cleaner story was. I mean, that just screamed. Fake oh, that's news. right. I for, you're right. I forgot about that. Yeah, wasn't it? The, there was some question. Well, actually, did they know that the woman was trying to kill her husband, or was that just like I don't know if that was ever proven. I remember that being like an issue. Of people were questioning, you know, whether they actually did it or not, or whether who, it was intentional or not. But who fell for the conservatives were drinking bleach? Fake news. I didn't fall for that. Yeah, I don't know. Lisa did. Wait, why are you taking ivermectin for decades? Are you only supposed to take that when you have a a, a parasite or something? I don't know. Is there some condition that you would take that for? Uh, uh, maybe he's got constantly? one of those dirty jobs where he goes down in the sewer and... Oh, maybe, yeah. Clean stuff up. I don't know. Maybe, maybe. Um, Who's this lady? Conservative radio host at CPAC. Event calls for transgenderism to be eradicated. Well, oh, you know, wow. when we talk about the expert question, you say, okay, you know, what are the, you know, and I was very tempted to, to tweet this out. I didn't. I probably should have. Because when I put out my tweet about how, you know, oh, the left says that all the institutions are corrupted by patriarchy, racism, sexism, but you should totally trust them when it comes to trans issues. Yeah, that was a banger um, tweet. I like that. And, and a bunch of people were saying, no one on the left says this. No one on the left says this. No one on the left says this. I was going to reply to, to someone and say, like, really, how many expert economics, uh, how many experts in the field of economics advocate for socialism? Zero. <laughs> I think there's one. There's Richard Wolf. There's, oh, yeah, you're right. Richard Wolf. Right. I was like, expert, so, though? Come on, right. Sitch. Let's be well, honest. Well, they would here. call him an expert, right? An expert in the field of economics. So I'm like, oh, are we supposed to trust the experts on these economic issues when they all say socialism is fucking stupid? <laughs> right. Yes. Oh, we should like trust the experts when it aligns with the thing you want. Oh, okay. I, I hear you. I understand. Right. Right. What about all the experts? Uh, in the criminal justice fields who are not like woke, who all are actually looking at the information and they all you know, say pretty clearly uh, what needs to be done for criminal justice reform and how bail reform actually makes things worse and how a lot of these left-wing criminal justice reform policies actually increase crime. What about those experts? Do we listen to those people? No. Right-wing okay. disinformation, Sitch. Right, right. Those people are all racist, obviously, right? Yeah. What about the experts in the FBI when they were talking about the dangers of communism and infiltrating left-wing groups and left-wing anarchy groups. Do we Listen trust to them. them. No? They're, they are correct. Okay. You Most, don't trust them then, right? No, I trust them. We, we only trust them when they're talking about right-wingers being bad. So. No, I trust them. Okay. They need to infiltrate those groups. They need to sniff out the pedo mall Santas, too. <laughs> Uh, Kyler sternly ignores for 20 Aussie books, says the original populism wasn't in the 1890s. The OG populists were the Gracchi brothers in the second century BC. The most, most famous populist of all time, of course, is Julius Caesar in the first century. Also, S class is the best class tasks. Well, that's, you know what? That's a is fair that point. Is that true? I don't, is he, that? It is true. Well, I don't. I don't know if you. I mean, he wasn't obviously called populism, but he definitely ran on a platform, or didn't run. He took over the country on a platform that, by today's standards, you could definitely call populist. So that is definitely true. That is definitely true. Old JC. 
Old JC. Yeah, that's a good point. Julius Caesar. See what I did there? That was cool. Uh, Demon, huh? Demon Bunny for, for one year. Thank you so much, Demon Bunny. It says, the fish cleaner story at one point was thought to be murder with the wife purposely poisoning her husband because there was a history of fighting. There you go. Understate for 20 Canadian says, Nate the lawyer comes out as 80. <laughs> yeah, all the way. Thank you, uh, Nate. Yeah. I saw that. In his latest Anna video, he calls it the Stitch and Adam show. The only thing worse than calling it the uh, Adam and Sitch show in, in Sitch's mind is the God. Stitch and Adam show. God. Well, I guess I cut, Adam and Stitch could be worse. That's true. Cut Sitch's face out of the clip like he's a techie on Majority Report. <laughs> Gotta hurt. When are you having him on A Team Reigns Supreme? Well, we haven't. Sure, I'd be happy to talk to Nate. Look, he followed me. Him, but... He followed me on Twitter, so I think obviously we'll have him on sometime. So, right, right. We were gonna have him on because Sitch wanted to do a super boring video on the Alec Baldwin shooting thing. Yes. Right, but we never did. So. And now. They dropped the charges, right? I didn't just make that up in my mind. Yeah, they dropped the charges, of okay, course. So all Look, that celebrities can't away. go to jail. Right, okay. Populism! There you go. There you go. Uh, so I guess that didn't even need to happen. Twitter sucks for another $20. Thank you so much. Twitter sucks, I think, was now officially our surrogate uncle. Another one of our surrogate uncles. Maybe our surrogate... Yeah, no, our surrogate uncle. Twitter sucks mm -hmm. for $20. Says, to answer your question, I used to work at a farm breeding horses. No, not the Vosh version of breeding horses. <laughs> That's hilarious. That's good to know. Uh, lots of flies, lots of mosquitoes, LOL. Well, then, yeah, okay. that totally makes yeah. sense that you're, like, popping that ivermectin. Like, there you bam, go. Bam. That makes sense. Right. Yes. Some for the horses, a little for you, Nelly, a little for me. <laughs> uh, Jay for $20, for $20 says, I don't know, Switch. Oh, switch. Kind of Switch. Switch. <laughs> I am pretty sure Rosenbaum's middle name was Moisha and he was drunk on Manischewitz. <laughs> there you go. That's the reason why he chased the man with a gun. Is that what they he, said? He said he was drunk on the Manischewitz. There you go. Is that what they I said believe. on the Bad Faith podcast? That's what they said. They said it and they said it in that accent too. I thought it was very offensive when Brown and Greyjoy put on a Jewish accent when she said it too. Well, I mean, you've never got her name right, so I, I would forgive her. There you go. There you go. Okay. So the next video is, why are conservatives so obsessed with trans kids? We got to talk about uh, Brianna Greyjoy called me out on Twitter. Did she? Wait, yeah. I thought we already talked. Again? No, we, look, we haven't talked since Tuesday. Nobody, none of our audience knows Brianna Greyjoy called me out on Twitter. Wait a minute. I'm like fucking, my brain is melting. Her, her subtweeting you on Twitter. We talked about that. Did we that's not what fucking talk? That's what subtweeting is? Subtweeting is when you tweet about someone, but you don't tag them or name them, but you're tweeting, you're talking about them. She called me a YouTube guy. Some YouTube guy. Did we, did we not talk about this? I could have swore we talked about this on Tuesday. We talked about this in our DMs, but we haven't talked since Tuesday, Sitch. Obviously. When did this when did this tweet Look, no because it she on said Tuesday this on Tuesday okay. we talked to the Vanguard boys, correct? You're and right. Is, my and this is listen, my Sunday. brain is melting. Okay. I don't know time anymore. You're and right. This we talk about this. Sunday. Okay. Let's talk about it. If you want to bring it up, let's bring no, it up. No, we don't let's bring it up later. We'll we'll talk about it later. Let's get into the video. Well, it's kind of juicy. I mean, it's it's a nice. It is juicy. We'll milk it a little bit. Come on, bring it up. Oh no, fine. You wanna you wanna save it? Let's milk we'll, it. We'll milk it. Okay. Bra Brianna, Brianna Greyjoy. Greyjoy tried to make Adam pay the iron price <laughs> on Twitter. On Twitter, <laughs> she did. Think about it. Twitter sucks. She did. She did. Yeah. That's true. Yes. Yeah. So, and I okay. saw I saw your little retweet too. Gray joy. My retweet? Oh. Brown I saw your retweet. little re I saw your little response that you deleted immediately, Greyjoy. So Yeah, she replied don't think, to you and then don't, deleted hey, it. look, come on. She deleted it. It's yeah. her secret her secret is safe. Yeah, I mean you can still read it. I saw you took a screenshot. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah, but I never shared the screenshot. Look you share uh, it with I, me. Well, you're obviously not gonna share it. So the <laughs> <laughs> you say that. <laughs> 
look, Greyjoy, we would like we would like to have a a civil discussion with you on this topic. So you mm-hmm. know, sure, sure. Look, we don't no no bad faith podcast here. We're good faith podcast. So mm-hmm. Look, mm-hmm. we don't want to make waves for for Greyjoy. <laughs> All right, let's get get into this. We should this do video. nothing. If she comes on, we'll just have to speak in nothing but nautical puns the entire time. And exactly. Not why of we're doing course. It, yeah. Of course. Yeah. Have you ever been to Hawaii? <laughs> what do you think of island life? <laughs> that could be somehow construed as racism. So you have to be oh, really? a little bit more subtle, like making waves or the captain of this ship. Or oh, anything. okay. Okay. You got to be like. I know that you how want is, to make everything how, hyper apparent in, in, in everyone's face. How is we, how is asking if you've ever been to Hawaii? You can't just what, what the hell is the conversation? You don't randomly say, "Oh, by the way, have you ever been to Hawaii?" Why why would you just randomly bring that up? I don't know. That's not even associated with like the Iron Islands, just because it's an island. Oh, okay. Okay, you're Listen, right. You Never leave mind. it to me. Okay, you're gonna leave the puns to me. I don't trust you. Look, I'm gonna go you. back and watch some. Some reruns of, of uh, the Iron Islands. No, listen, I just listen. You'll leave all the puns to me. Okay, we don't trust Adam to do puns. So let's get into this video. Come on. Okay, the video is called "Why Are Conservatives So Obsessed with Trans Kids?" What are the chances mm-hmm. that we're actually going to hear some kind of cogent argument about why we think it is that there's some concern about kids transitioning? Well, I mean, we could. It's pretty easy. They're obsessed because they don't they're worried that there's a social contagion going around and their kids are gonna catch it. Yeah. But what are the yeah. chances that we're gonna hear some sort of argument that's even remotely charitable in this video about that? Zero. <laughs> oh, okay. You're right. Yeah, zero. Okay. Zero. Spoiler, zero. I don't she doesn't even mention social contagion, right? I don't think so. Yeah. Cause they've look, I the the Team science over here. There's been 50 years of study on social contagion, right? Maybe longer. Right. right. I'm sure longer. They, yeah. They've they created this narrative that social contagion isn't real. It's just a right-wing propaganda talking point. Well, only in res- relation to this one issue. In relation to other issues, like people becoming racist, people becoming Nazi, people becoming conservative, social contagion is super duper real. But they never they never frame it in social contagion terms. Well, yeah, not right. the general pop. General populace doesn't use the word social contagion very often. So. Right. So like, well, Number of bills something. relating to health care, access to bathrooms, even drag performances have already been tabled this year in state legislatures. Senate Bill 15 would ban transgender athletes from competing in sports at the youth level. It's the bill banning transgender transitioning for children. House Republicans have now passed a bill that would ban transgender girls from competing in female athletics. There's only two genders, male and female. Trust the science. Tonight, a ban on transgender athletes in college sports is poised to become law. A full-on attack on the rights of people in the community. Outright banning gender-affirming care for transgender minors. The bills spread misinformation. The bill says transgender females cannot participate in sports that correspond with their gender identity. The Kentucky General Assembly passing a sweeping anti-trans bill. Kentucky GOP lawmakers succeed in getting anti-trans legislation to the governor's desk. This is not good government. Nearly 500 anti-trans bills have been introduced in states across the country this year alone. They target everything. Again, we've pointed this out before. You have to separate those bills out into what they're actually advocating for. I don't think you can call a bill that says uh, teachers or administrators at public school have to inform the parents if they're socially transitioning some kid at school i don't think you can call that an anti-trans bill obviously so i'd be yeah. curious how many right. of the bills are that kind of thing and how many of the bills are banning like puberty blockers for minors or or banning i mean i w- obviously there's a spectrum here if they're just banning all trans health care or for all affirmative care, even for adults, then I think you could say that's an anti-trans bill. 
everything from books and drag shows to well no, i was gonna say you are correct and this is a big problem they talk about this because they lump any they lump in any bill that has anything to do with trans anything they just say oh it's an anti-trans bill yeah anti of course they would Marjorie call Taylor green look, yeah. if they had a bill saying People could use the bath, whatever bathroom they want. They'd probably call it an anti-trans bill just because it's about trans people. Right. I forget what it, Marjorie Taylor Greene said something real fucking stupid that I saw on Twitter today. And I don't Did remember she? what it was. MGT? I mean, like, I know that I know that that's like saying Marjorie Taylor Greene said something stupid is kind of like obvious. Yeah. <laughs> but I'll go back in my time. I mean, I, I, I remember she what. said some pretty base things. I think some. She things. she can say base things by accident. Okay. I mean. She just said there's only two genders. I mean, you accept that. You I don't do. you don't bind all the non-binary genders. Yeah, but I said she can say correct things by accident. Okay. Right. Like everyone. She's not saying it cuz she has some like really good, you know, foundation of, mm -hmm. of of premises which she's deriving knowledge from. Sure. I don't know much okay. about Marjorie Taylor Greene. I know she's like a okay. whipping boy for the left. The left sees Marjorie Taylor Greene, and they probably because she supports Trump more than anything. All right, she she equated, she said Joe Biden is bad guy because he's like Lyndon B. Johnson, and FDR, and the three of them wanted to implement socialism through Medicare, and welfare reform. Well, that's awful, but <laughs> I was like, okay, okay, you've convinced me. She's awful. <laughs> Have I convinced you? Okay. Gender affirming care, access to bathrooms, and even just speaking about the existence of trans people in schools. The issue of trans rights, which affects less than 1% of the US population, has become the central rallying cry for Republicans. Through concerted, strategic efforts to use trans rights as a wedge issue, conservatives have. So, to be clear, to say, first of all, to say that trans, trans, first of all, she's framed it as trans rights uh, automatically. So, we obviously know it's automatically biased in the way that's framed. Sure. There's, a, there's an automatic assumption of, of correctness, right? In whatever you know, whatever that's advocated for, it's part of trans rights. And this kind we're of we're framing in, them as anti-women bills. Well, you could, yeah, right. But this kind of came up in the conversation or the video we were watching on Sunday, which is all the reaction to Anna, where it's like, is there any anything that you can disagree with uh, on the trans activist narrative side of things? Can you disagree with any element of trans activist? Uh, rhetoric without being called a transphobe mm -hmm. and the answer is no because everything is framed in the rights of the trans person look at all these black americans holding a sign saying groom dogs not kids and look at all these transphobes look at this maybe this is a wedge issue <laughs> Fear mongered their base into a frenzy in an attempt to win votes oh well, i was gonna say she you know she says one percent mm-hmm so first of all, the number of kids identifying now as trans is more than one percent. Is it? Because yeah. all they're including all the non-binary. It's something like forty. Well, that's yeah, right. But that's part of the problem is that the number keeps growing and growing and growing. And especially if we're only talking about kids and not the general population, it's definitely more than one percent. Yeah. And so, you know, if we're in some bizarre situations where in some schools and some districts of the country, they twenty percent like of the 15 kids trans people. <laughs> You got like 15 or 20% of the kids are, are identifying as non-binary or trans. You know, that's a lot of potential false positives that are going to, you know, potentially create health problems if they don't actually have gender dysphoria mm -hmm. and they start transitioning. What bothers me is they never, they never consider the possibility that they could be wrong. Yes. Because you, you would have to confront the reality that, okay, we're doing horrible, horrible things to a lot of people that really don't need that kind of medical intervention. Well, why don't they ever yeah. confront that reality? I know. It is, if you do surgery, okay, you say, I don't know, you say you have to have some kind of surgery. You have to have your appendix removed, right? Or you have to have some kind of surgery. Any surgery that's done on you, if you didn't actually need the surgery, it's usually bad to do the surgery. Of course. <laughs> right? Yeah. You know, you don't want to you don't want to start irradiating someone's body if they don't have cancer, right? <laughs> like, it's just and it, and you're right. And it's because since people that are skeptical of it, who are more on the right than the left, will bring up the question of social contagion or bring up the question of trans regret. This pushes people on the left because since most people's first 
order operation, most people's first lens of, of epistemology that they view the world is through the tribal political lens, they'll just instantaneously say, I can't accept trans regret as being a potential fear because that's their argument. So I just say it's, it's not happening. It's very minor, right? Very low regret, regret rates. So I just have to trust the science, trust the doctors. Yeah. Stupid and win elections, all at the expense of the health and physical safety of a tiny group of marginalized people, mostly children, just trying to live their lives. These anti-trans bills- And so, you know, I'm glad that she framed it that way because it really shows you sort of the left-wing moral foundation. We have a tiny group of people that are being oppressed. That are being attacked, viciously attacked. Viciously attacked. By these yeah. conservatives that don't want their kids to be wrongly diagnosed with this social contagion right it's right. like oh it's so stupid sitch it makes my brain hurt you don't well, understand also, this affects 100 percent of us so yes. fuck off we're gonna talk about it well also if you include the sports women's sports question that's yeah that's 50 increase... percent of the population right that's ding bat the population right? ding bat I but it's just, funny the, because every time somebody says that, oh, it's a tiny percent of the population, so you should, you should just shut up about it. I just, I want to give them the middle finger so badly, Sitch. Yes. Because they're completely delusional. Well, it's funny because on one hand they say, oh, it's a tiny percent of the population, so stop focusing on it. But then if you bring up trans regret, they'll say, well, that's a tiny part of that tiny part of the population. It's too tiny for me to care about. Yeah, totally. <laughs> like, well, wait a minute, you can't have it both ways. Yeah, why do you care about this other tiny population? Right. Why can't we just let things... Let's just a ban, uh, ban all gender-affirming care for minors just to be safe. Or at least fucking study it. Yeah. Can't, why has it never been studied? Like, that's what's wild about it. This has never really been studied right. at all. Well, now's the time to study. You got 35% yeah. of the population identifying as trans. <laughs> like, <laughs> you're never going to get an opportunity to study it like you got today, right? Right, exactly. Bills are not about protecting children. They're not about fairness in sports. They're not about safety in public rest. You, you, you're, she's such a liar. Wait, wait, wait. Let, her, let her go off on her whole. No, she's list. such okay. a liar. I know, I know. Liar. Let me stroke your head. I'm gonna stroke Adam's head. I know. I know, baby. Liar! I Look, I just <laughs> they, stroke you. They this idea that you you can't care about public safety or no. children that are not your own. Look, the fa the false positives are hurting just as many people as the the not finding the tr the people that will go on to be trans adults. Right. You can't make this argument. Of course. Yeah. These people are monsters, Sitch. And and wow. their smugness makes it even worse. I How are they so not far monsters? To say monster. <laughs> How are they not monsters? To me, a monster implies intentional malice. And these people just are just stupid. They don't Look, understand more, what they're doing. More harm is propagated yeah. through ignorance than through malice. I understand that. And well, that's, to Look, me, I save monster for someone who's intentionally causing harm. That's right, monstrous. Some, That's what a monster is to me. No, no. You're look, okay. especially in an environment where they're saying, look, you're it doesn't it's matter. It's not no, it's just a difference of opinion for how the word is used. It's not like it's a fact on how we should use the word monster. This this is an educated person. Yeah. This person should know better. They're they're I agree. literally spreading fake news. They just we just watched a 20 minute video about how fake news is going to destroy all of Western civilization. I know. Listen, I think I think there's incredible harm and danger that is done through the ignorance and well-meaning uh, thoughts of everyone, including people on the right. And I think there's lots of I think can make a compelling argument that a lot of the election fraud adherence to is incredibly damaging to our country. But I'm not going to call people monsters unless I believe they have an intentional level of maliceness. But if that's just me. How about systemic monstrosity? <laughs> okay, there you go. You can call them systemic monsters. I like it. I like that. That's better. There you go. You've won me over. I just look. I don't. Any objective look at the evidence. I think would would show that there's merit to the conservative position. Yeah, but but it's 
it's more complicated than that because you you have to have an objective look at the evidence, but you have to know what evidence to look at because there's tons of finger quote evidence that shows you that trans regret rates are very low. And so if you don't know what to look at, you're going to say, oh, well, all the science is pointing in this direction, right? Right. There's tons of science, tons of papers that point the direction that uh, trans regret rates are very low. There's no social contagion or evidence of social contagion and that everything's fine and hunky-dory and all the right-wing people are just transphobes or all the people that are against this are just transphobes. Right. Right. All that science so. from all the educated people. Yeah, right. Children just trying to live their lives. These anti-trans bills are not about protecting children. They're not about fairness in sports. They're not about safety in public restrooms from potential groomers. What they're really about is a vocal, radical minority weaponizing fear and disinformation among the electorate to win votes, gain social media followers, and increase their political and social power. And this has been going on for decades, uniting the religious... Okay. So it's really funny because people on the right get really accused of being Alex Jones, QAnon, conspiracy brains. And while those people exist, there's tons of people on the left that have that same level of like conspiracy brain and it just gets ignored. Totally. Yeah. Which is what she's just, she right here. This is an Alex Jones, QAnon conspiracy brain. Like, the idea that, oh, because her her position is there's a cabal of people in a shadowy back room somewhere that have decided that in order to win elections, they're going to make pe people on the right care about trans issues. Yep. Intentionally. They don't actually care about the trans issues. The people don't actually care about trans issues. They're just going to convince a bunch of people to care about it so they can win elections. Yeah. This make is, make now, him Jewish this, and she's queuing on. What is, you think that she's going to provide a single shred of evidence for this like massive claim? Of course not. No, of course. Right. Yeah. But no, even if, even if we were to accept her claim to be true, let's say that there is a magical shadowy cabal of elites somewhere that's determined that trans issues are going to be the issues that they're going to use as a wedge issue that they're going to focus on. Okay. Mm -hmm. That would only tell you a tiny fraction of the issue because the cabal of elites can't make any issue a wedge issue, right? Of you, they can't not. just, yeah, they can't say, listen, as Republicans, we're going to decide to outlaw the color blue because we think it's associated with Democrats, right? It has, there has to be an issue that can wedge its hooks into people. And so even if you believe this stupid conspiracy, wouldn't it be more interesting or more worthwhile to actually dive into why you think this issue does have the ability to hook into people. Yeah. And I think the reason she doesn't is because if she did, she would acknowledge that the quote, think of the children argument is persuasive, is powerful, because generally people do care about their children. <laughs> that is what's motivating the average person, even if there was some magic hypothetical shadowy cabal somewhere. Yeah. Yeah, the I that's what offends me so much is the the categorical denial that people are are worried about their children being caught up in some kind of social contagion it's right. like it's so simple like they they think that people on the right know that the that people on the right feel that the social contagion argument is a lie and they're making it anyway yeah that's ridiculous how, how you can be an educated person and believe that I like that's beyond me right to conspiracy theorists and white power extremists and igniting widespread fear based on threats that do not exist this threats that do not exist I'm so fucking angry at this video is, is it the irony here it's even off more off the charts than the last video these He's threats like all these do conspiracy not exist. theorists these threats that don't exist while she's speaking about a conspiracy theory about threats that do not exist. The, I, I told you about that video that went viral of the guy who took his two boys to their doctor and the doctor asked the boys if they were gender fluid or non-binary right, yeah. or whatever. And yeah. he totally freaked out. Like he heard this story secondhand from his wife and he was saying, you're, 
you better be glad I wasn't in that doctor's office because, you know, uh, heads would have rolled. How is that not, how, how do people think that a doctor standing in a lab coat asking somebody this question is just innocuous? How do people believe that? Because it fits their political narrative. What do you mean? That's how they believe it. It's, it's just crazy. Because, Adam, everyone should be asked their... Listen, it's not happening, but if it was happening, it's fine because there's nothing wrong with asking people about their gender identity. We shouldn't be so cis, patriarchal, hetero, heteronormative, it's, okay? It's so ridiculous. It's nothing's happening. It's not a big deal. Nothing's changing. But we should all be actually advocating that every child learns about gender identity and, and cis, patriarch, heteronormativity. Okay? In a doctor's office. But it's not office. happening. I'm just waiting for the doctor to come out and say, well, have you picked your gender yet? <laughs> it's like... Well, that's what it is. That's what it means if you say, are you gender fluid or whatever. Of course. Of course that's what it means. They're going to go home and be like, mom, you didn't tell me I could pick my gender. <laughs> Why? What are you doing? Why are you hiding this information from me? Yeah. Obviously, the nice lady in the lab coat knows what she's talking about. She's in a lab coat. Did you yep. see the white lab coat, mom? Talk to me about gender. Mm -hmm. is why conservatives are so obsessed with trans kids roll the intro you deserve to be gaslit oh, oh look she's guy. got a death card on her just that's what i always want in my attorney i want to make sure that she has a tattoo of the tarot card death <laughs> On her left arm. I didn't arm. even notice that. Oh my god! Look, guys, when you're looking for an attorney, make sure, <laughs> make sure she has tattoos of tarot cards all over her body. I mean, that'd that's be how you badass. know you're getting listen, good legal advice. Listen, if she was a prosecutor, that'd be pretty badass, right? She's got death like on her fucking arm. <laughs> she comes to the court, rolls up the sleeves. She like looks at like the defendant. She's like, boom, death. But as a defense attorney, that's not what you want to see. Right? Or if it's, as a civil litigant, that's not exactly what you want to see. I just, this is so weird. <laughs> she also has the the woman sign on her other arm. Right, so, yeah. Little, you know, okay. Um, okay. Okay. Well, I mean, talk about, you know, it's funny, in, in the, uh, in the uh, fake news thing, she's talking about how people are, like, virtue signaling. Oh, yeah. They're, you know, through the sharing. I always think it's interesting how... People virtue signal their identity through how they dress and appear. So it's very fascinating to me. But these are the same people that when detransitioners come out and talk about how their lives was were ruined by this because they mm -hmm. were given bad information when they were sixteen years old and just dumb kids. Yes, people eventually grow up. And how, you know, they've been completely suicidal since they've completely screwed up their lives. These are the kind of people who will be like, oh, yeah, that, you know, it happens. Whatever. That's so sad. How Siri, can you not, Despacito. How can you not call those people monsters? I just, I feel like monsters is the appropriate category to put them in. Because they're doing this head logic where they say, okay, in their mind, they're like, well, for every thousand children saved by transitioning, there might be one who regrets it. And if the right wingers got her, their way, all those 999 kids would end up committing suicide. So it's like, it's a better, it's a better outcome. That's what's going on in their head. It's funny how the ideology just completely controls them. Yeah, because they're making up their position based on who's telling them what. So because the left, people on the left were originally in favor of the trans stuff, which makes sense because it kind of goes along with like the left uh, being, you know, more enamored with change and open sexuality and all this other stuff. And the right isn't, they're going to automatically assume, well, if I'm on the left, I have to take the left position. Right. Yeah. Even if it makes you a monster. Yeah. Even if it makes you wrong. And even if it makes you have, uh, have systemically monstrous consequences. <laughs> <laughs> pairs of glasses or sunglasses today. Okay. 
free to the same time. The issues are interconnected in our history, and the current flurry of anti-trans bills is simply a culmination of the perfect storm of many disparate movements coming together at the same time. But this has been- She did it again. Did you see? She had that the Charlottesville picture. It's in every mm -hmm. single one of her videos, man. What are you talking Listen, about? Don't you know that like people being worried about children transitioning, it all relates back to January 6th and white supremacy. It all relates back to it. I'm not a conspiracy theorist. Look at these right-wing conspiracy theorists. Now look behind me at my cork board that shows how everything the right does is really part of a massive conspiracy about a shadowy elite who is doing stuff behind the strings, behind the scenes to, to all go back to white supremacy. But I'm not a conspiracy theorist. That's what the right-wingers are. Well, this is what's so obscene about it. This is why I don't at all regret calling someone like this a monster because you can't even have a reasonable position on here on this topic without being compared to fucking white supremacists mm -hmm. that's so monstrous so bad faith it's very bad faith by the way she's not a conspiracy theorist trust the science but here's my conspiracy theory yeah exactly a long time coming jesus I watch the ContraPoints videos, Sitch. <laughs> Look, Sitch, I watch ContraPoints videos. I'm cool. I, you know, it's funny. I was literally, that was my first thought. I'm like, oh, someone who watched the ContraPoints video and was like, let me make a worse version of the ContraPoints video. I know. Oh, God. We got to slog through this part. I Here know. it is. Well, listen, Cop we got April O'Neil over there. Look at that. Jeez. Copycat ContraPoints video. I know. Incoming, guys. Get ready. Well, wait a minute. No. It, okay. Uh, she should be very, this is very offensive. This is cultural appropriation. Okay. Mm -hmm. She took the work of a trans person and just did their own, you know, did her own version of it without crediting them. But she stole it from, from ContraPoints. How dare she do this? Yeah, it's awful. Bigot. <laughs> Anita Bryant was once known as an orange juice saleswoman. Not anymore. With a religious fervor that has made her America's most controversial woman overnight, she has been selling her Save Our Children group. Her group is crusading to repeal a new Dade County law, which protects homosexuals in jobs and housing. Anita Bryant began her fight at her church, where the congregation believes the new law will force them to hire homosexual teachers. Anita Bryant was a singer who had a handful of pop hits in the 60s and toured with Bob Hope, performing holiday shows for troops overseas. She sang at the White House numerous times, and she was the spokeswoman for the Florida Citrus Commission, appearing in commercials for orange juice. She was also a born-again evangelical Christian on a mission to restore good Christian American values in the United States. In 1977, in Dade County, Florida, of all places, the Dade County Commission approved a law that would outlaw discrimination based on sexual orientation in employment, housing, and public services. News of the ordinance spread quickly, especially among the Dade County Evangelical Churches, of which then 36-year-old Anita Bryant was a member. Specifically, apparently, a police sergeant came and made a presentation. Jeez, I hope that wasn't a picture of her when she was 36. She looks like she's in her, like, 40s. Jesus. None of this has anything to do with the trans issue, by the way. Yeah, what does this have to do with anything? None of this has to do with the trans issue. So, look, you Remember? could be completely... They, conservatives could have been completely wrong on gay issues yes. and still be right on trans issues. Of it's, course. No, no, they're no. They're no, not no, no. synonymous with one another. You don't understand. All things that the left brings up are all progress. No. Okay. Wrong. They're all good. They're all good. And everything the right says is bad. So when Anita Bryant was against the gays, mm -hmm. that's obviously the same when people are against the transes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's how simple it is. Right. Yeah. Would to they, the church. Why don't they ever cast transitioning as conversion therapy or literally converting the body from male to female or, or male or Ooh. female to male? How come that? Now, how come they don't do that? Now, Adam, you just accidentally. No, that was very purposeful. Intentionally stumbled <laughs> upon a killer, a killer reframe. Yeah, as Scott Adams would say. Okay? Yeah, that's the kill shot. Why? Well, I'm I'm actually shocked that no one has done that. That is the kill shot. The kill shot for people on the right is to label transition as conversion therapy. It is conversion therapy in a right. much 
harsher version wow of it. interesting i'm kind of surprised that that hasn't been pushed for yet but that is a kill shot we'll do it from now on members about the dangers so we're it's safe for us to say that Legia is in favor of conversion therapy correct well listen i don't necessarily like that term look conversion people who are in favor of conversion therapy are right. monsters okay and Legia let's, is in favor of conversion therapy let's, let's therefore pump the brakes for a second <laughs> okay <laughs> Let's pop the brakes for a Sitch, second. I, Sitch, look, I've been, I've been, I've been uh, peeking yeah. in on some TYT videos lately. Yeah, and I do notice that the Jank and Anna personal dynamic. It's our, it's seems our dynamic. Very similar. It's when I'm watching, I'm like, this is kind of familiar to me. You, Shank is the buffalo. <laughs> Jank goes wild. He's and wild. Anna Anna's like <laughs> trying to hold back. Shank is the elephant, and Anna's the rider. She's like holding the, she pulling totally. back in the rider. She's like holding. That's on. exactly what's going on at T TYT. Has changed. <laughs> Anna has reined in her elephant. It's not and her two elephant. Elephant's name is Jank. It's not two elephants stampeding any longer. Yes, yes. Now it's it's one elephant stampeding and Anna <laughs> and Anna reigning in that elephant. <laughs> yes, it is. It's okay. kind of it is kind of funny, but look, right. I was having fun. Yes, about calling this monster who obviously supports conversion therapy when you so right. rudely interrupted me. What were you going to say? I was going to say the reason I don't. I think the tr labeling conversion therapy is a persuasive kill shot. Okay? okay. The reason I don't personally like it is because I do think I'm still in favor of people who do correctly have been identified of having gender dysphoria as adults being able to transition. Mm -hmm. And if you label it conversion therapy, you're kind of casting a very wide net to say like no one should be able to do this. Yeah, that is kind of a problem, huh? No. That's why I say I would pump the brain. <laughs> <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> Damn it. I'm so sorry to throw rain on your parade. <laughs> I thought we were going with it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm still, I'm not letting go of the monster thing. Okay. Okay. This whole video just screams, I'm a monster. Well, whenever you say it, I just imagine when, when you say monster, I'm just imagining her as like one of the monsters from Space Jam. So oh, okay. that's what I think in my head. Hmm. of homosexuality and showed them gay and child porn to, I guess, expose the wicked ways of homosexuals. At this point, the idea that gay men were predators to young boys was already a tale as old as time, but it hadn't gotten a national platform. Not yet, anyway. Anita Bryant was understandably horrified because she hadn't ever met an out gay person, nor did she know anything about the gay community, and she had four children in schools and was particularly concerned about the gays infiltrating the schools as teachers. If this sounds familiar to the video I made recently about communism and the fear people had that communists could be infiltrating every nook and cranny of society, including, God forbid, your children's schools, that's because it's the same tactic, different decade. Especially once you hit the 80s and the fear that your child- It's like every time I watch one of her videos, I'm like, I have to watch another one of her stupid fucking video. <laughs> oh, she, she whole... goes full commie apologist here. Yes, she has a whole video that's all commie apologists. She has a whole video that's all CRT apologists. She keeps referencing, every time she referenced another awful video, I'm like, no, it never ends. She's straight NPC, man. I'm telling yes. you. She has no original thoughts. Right. I am I, I am curious as to, is she herself a socialist leftist? Of course. Or is she just a NPC mainstream, you know, left-wing a Democrat who just doesn't prog progressive that just doesn't really know what she's talking about. All of the above, <laughs> and plus <Why> monster, <laughs> monster. Child could be in AIDS. Yeah, things got bad. When you have an entire electorate who hasn't knowingly come into contact with the marginalized group of people that are being regulated, it's easy to spread whatever kind of misinformation you want. Anyway, so Anita's horrified and she decides she has to stop this anti-discrimination bill from passing. Her and a group of churchgoers form a coalition called Save Our Children and everyone votes in Anita as president. Their goal? Get 10,000 signatures on a petition to have a countywide referendum on whether to keep the anti-discrimination ordinance. The group campaigned 
extensively, including showing people homosexual pamphlets and claiming that they were being distributed in grade schools to recruit kids to the gay agenda. They weren't. With Anita at the helm at one point holding a- Just a friendly reminder, none of this has to do with the trans issue, okay? None of it. A press conference to say that Dade County homosexuals are trying to recruit our children to homosexuality. A statement based on zero facts or evidence, but that was enough to foment fear in the local population and- See, okay. You all understand that this is a stupid fucking argument, right? Everyone listening understands they're saying, because someone in the past made a similar sounding argument where they said, oh my God, they're going in our schools to make all the kids gay, right? And now some people are saying they're going to schools to make them all trans, right? And they try to equate them just because it sounds similar. We all, we all understand it's a stupid argument, right? They have to address each situation individually. Right. We all get that, right? Everyone yeah. understands this. Well, right? you and I understand that. Well, I'm, I'm hoping everyone listening understands that. Of course. There's only one okay. person who doesn't understand that. Well... Let me cause some problems. Okay. This is my exact point. When I say, give me evidence. <laughs> oh, sh shut the for fuck up. For some kind of wrongdoing. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> by some institution or organization. And someone says, what's well, sitch? In a different situation, in a different time period, somebody did something bad. In 1960s, somebody did something bad. In 1970s, somebody did something bad. So obviously that means it's bad now. And I say, no, fuck you. Give me evidence for this specific situation. Each situation is different. Thank you. There, the thing is, though, the difference here is in your situation with institutional corruption in institutions like the FBI or the CIA, those institutions have ways of hiding their misdeeds. Of course. And in right. the situation with the trans stuff, mm -hmm. there's a, the evidence is online. You can look at it. Like, it's literally everywhere. Right. Yes. Yeah, but so the problem is, I agree with you, but the problem is we live in a country, and I believe this should equate to just not individual people, where you're innocent until proven guilty. Yeah. And I and I and I agree with you. Yeah. Obviously government organizations and institutions can hide information and evidence. Even these, you know, when people cite the WPATH or some other um well, I, trans I, advocacy organizations, they okay. do the same thing. They will hide evidence that contradicts their point. I don't know you that know? I accept your framing. Institutions are not individuals and while i think innocent until proven guilty is good for individuals i think institutions we should adopt the guilty until proven innocent i don't be agree because okay. we should constantly be vigilant for corruption although i agree listen in terms of investigating these institutions i agree with you in terms so, of so do you there's corruption wait, 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 in wait, every wait. single institution you agree with that right this cor yeah, the corruption. In every so hierarchy, then, every single yes. institution is guilty. Not of, of, the of specific some thing level that of corruption. Not of the specific thing that they're being accused. Well, I'm, of. I'm just saying. I'm just you. You have said this. Well, that's before. a terrible argument. <laughs> well, no, you have said innocent until proven guilty, and I think the difference is, I think that works on an individual basis because we don't want to see individuals suffer. Institutions, I think, we should always be vigilant to correct corruption that probably exists at some level or other yes but just because corruption exists in every hierarchy mm -hmm. doesn't mean you should assume that's the left-wing thinking because corruption is inherent to hierarchies therefore hierarchy bad right well that's not we what should I'm have saying. to avoid that i'm that saying corruption bad I, corruption yeah corruption exists in every hierarchy corruption therefore exists in every institution Right. right. But you can't just then therefore say, well, that means every hierarchy and every institution is automatically bad or automatically guilty of whatever you accuse them of doing. Automatically right? in need of some kind of reform, though. Well, there's constant. OK, so corruption is like it's a constant war. Where yeah. There's a law it that's is. being passed and then someone figures out a way around it and then a law is passed and then someone figures out like that's yeah, there's a constant process, right? They constantly be vigilant for corruption and all these things. And yeah, if you want to talk about like guilty until proven innocent for 
just the concept of opening certain investigations. I'm not necessarily opposed to that. Okay, but in good. terms of saying, in terms of making determinations where you say these institutions are corrupt and need to be completely dismantled, or I get to believe in some kind of conspiracy theory based on like non-connective evidence, that's where I say, no, you don't get to do that. Because when you do that, you're basically doing the same thing that this woman's doing right here with her own conspiracy where she doesn't actually have the connective tissue, but she throws up a bunch of things and says, look how similar they are and kind of rubs them together and hopes that just by rubbing these similar things together, some kind of mucousy connection forms between them that kind of yeah. tricks people into seeing a clear linear progression from one thing to the next. I totally agree with you on okay. the strategy that they're using to point to corruption being completely specious and ineffective. This idea that, oh, they did a corrupt thing back in 1969, so obviously, look, they're still corrupt today. Ridiculous. Right. Or even, yeah. even if you say someone who's related to this association did a corrupt thing in a different situation, therefore someone else associated with this, situ with this institution yeah, totally. must be corrupt in a different situation. Right, yes. yes. Right. Not a good... Not a good strategy. Because one Republican in who was in the Senate said something stupid or wrong or corrupt. Therefore, every Republican in the Senate must be stupid or corrupt. Right. Yeah. The group managed to get 64,000 signatures and bring the referendum to a vote. The results were overwhelming. It was the largest turnout in any special election in the history of Dade County, and voters supported repealing the anti-discrimination ordinance by a margin of more than two to one. Based on the resounding success, Anita continued the mission of Save Our Children on a national scale, making it the first national anti-gay group, and began traveling around the country advocating for people to repeal gay rights laws and think of the children. At at one point at a press conference in Iowa, a gay rights activist threw a pie in her face in protest, so she prayed for him. Through all of this, she genuinely thought she was doing the Lord's work, and she repeatedly said that she didn't do this out of hate or homophobia, she did it out of love for the homosexuals. Anita, this ain't love, girl. What happened to you to make you think that? Why do you believe in a God who would show love in that way? Anyway. We, we've talked about the pie thing before, and yeah. I've postulated that the pie probably put off the acceptance of gay marriage by 10 to 20 years. So, right. yeah. Well, so that pie was very costly to the gay rights movement. It's, it's really funny because she first says, Anita claims she wasn't doing this out of hatred. She's doing it out of love. Right. Uh huh. And then she says, but why would you believe in a God that demands love this way? Right. Which, I mean, okay, fine. You can have a theological conversation, but it's kind of, you're missing the point. You know, she's trying to create this conspiracy that people don't actually believe in these issues and that these are just wedge issues used to derive political right. votes. Completely cynical. And yet she's trying to acknowledge or almost acknowledging that Anita Bryant wasn't doing it for some sort of nefarious political Machiavellian thing. It was some position she actually believed in because of her religious views, regardless of whether you agree or disagree with her religious views. She right. actually believed them. I would call Lija's position religiously motivated. Of course. And she has about as much evidence. But it's just, it's just, and I hate every. it's so annoying because everyone does this and it's so stupid. It's like people can't, People are so shallow-minded, so weak, that they can't acknowledge what a person, like to acknowledge what a person's position is, they're so afraid that just the acknowledgement of it will make them believe it or support it. Yeah. Which it's like, yes, if it's true, if the Christian Bible is correct, okay, and you know, the Torah is correct, and you'll go to hell for being gay, then obviously we would all have, we should as a society do everything we could to prevent that. If it yeah. was true. Now, obviously I don't fucking think it's true. And lots of people don't fucking think it's true. And even lots of Christians don't think that that aspect is true. That's the question. But yeah. Anita Bryant apparently does think it's true. And that's what's motivating her behavior. Yeah. And that would be mo uh, motivating out of love. Yeah. To save people. Yes. And even, you know, in Contra's video, when Contra went over this, you know, she talked about how Anita basically had a, like an abusive childhood and then found salvation through her church. 
So it makes perfect psychological sense why she's so attached to the Christian faith, because it's what saved her personally. Well, this is interesting because in the trans issue, Legia thinks that more people are being saved by doing puberty blockers and affirmative care. And you yep. and I both believe more people will be saved by banning puberty blockers and affirmative care. Right. So we're both trying to do it out of love. See, yes, and I'm glad you brought that up because that's the problem and that's what's annoying about this conversation because it's just like with like the gay question, right? At the end of the day, you're really making a fact claim. Yep. You know, you're saying, do you believe in the fact claim of hell and, and, and gay people going to hell or do you not? Right? Yep. And, and how does that affect, you know, your, your view? And it's the same thing with this. And so you brought up, you know, do we believe the fact claim that more people are helped or more people are harmed by it? And you can have, obviously, you have we have different opinions here, but to not acknowledge that this is all rooted, at least from our perspective, I'm sure there's other people are just planning gross or whatever, but at least mm -hmm. from our perspective, and I think a lot of other people's perspective, that this is rooted in a fact claim. And what the whether the facts, you know, what the facts are, massively changes the outcome about who's right, who's wrong, who's on the good side of things, who's on the, the wrong side of this issue. Look, I'm getting a message from Lija's brain. I'm able yeah. to peek into and, and read her mind now. I'm impressed. And I think I've discovered her motivation. Lija actually hates conservatives, okay? <laughs> she despises conservatives. Yeah. She wants to see them annihilated basically genocided from the planet she cannot she despises all conservatives okay and she knows that actually more children will be harmed by the affirmative care model but she thinks it's funny because <laughs> it really bugs conservatives a lot so her motivation for all of this is to harm children and to upset conservatives in harming those children you're close. What do you think? You're close. <laughs> look, it, actually... look, obviously I'm joking here, but if I, if that was the position I proposed right. for her, would you call me a monster, Sitch? Of course. Okay, well, her of position course. is not that dissimilar from that well, no, position. So the right-wing um, version of, of what she's doing would be the idea that these people on the left don't actually think gender dysphoria is real or that it's all bullshit. And you know, they want to basically uh, transition people to destroy the patriarchy, to weaken society, to weaken males, to weaken white people, right? You know, we've heard this kind of shit before, you know, it is all part of some conspiracy to, you know, gain power and weaken Look, all these institutions. from weird QAnon people, but that's right, not no, the right. rank and saying... file conservatives. Right, but see, but that's what's the thing that's annoying. The rank like... and file conservatives are worried about a social contagion transing their kids. Right. But that's what's annoying is because while there are people on the right that say this stupid conspiracy shit, and some of them are taken a little bit more seriously than I would like, when people on the left have their version of the conspiracy, which is what we're listening to right now, it's not viewed in the same light of quackery. No. It's respected and, and yes. mirrored on MSNBC. Yes. Given some kind of credibility it doesn't deserve. Mm -hmm. Anyway, even in the 70s, a lot of people were like, this woman is nuts. She was the butt of jokes nationwide, including by former tour partner Bob Hope. And by 1980, she was completely out of work in showbiz, having lost her brand partnerships because of her anti-gay work. She had divorced her husband in 1979, for which she received... Doesn't that, you know, it's weird because, you know, Contra brought that up too. Doesn't that just completely destroy the narrative, like, that we live in this anti-gay society? <laughs> that the fact yeah. that she took this anti-gay stance completely annihilated her career? Yeah, of course. But, okay extreme backlash from the church. After seeing what it was like to be on the receiving end of evangelical hatred, her views on the gays conveniently softened a bit. At one point she said, the church needs to be more loving unconditionally and willing to see these people as human beings, to minister to them and to try to understand. Oh, interesting, Anita. Why is it always conservatives who are incapable of empathy unless it is literally happening to them? Anita's still alive. Go ahead. Oh, it's funny because negative it's like, stereotype right there. Yes, yes, and it's so funny because it's it's the same. It kind of reminds me of the the Anna situation, 
to some extent. Yeah. Because it's like the number one way it seems like that people sort of start to break out of the bubble is that something happens to them and then they get attacked by their own team for talking about what happened to them. Right. And they realize their own team has zero empathy for them, even though they virtue yeah. signal all day long about how much empathy they have. Right. Right. And it's funny because it's like, you know, Legia doesn't understand this. Like if she had some experience that, you know, didn't conform with, like if she had a nephew or a cousin or a child who had trans regret, right? Yeah. And all she of a talked sudden about she'd be this. targeted. Yeah. And if she talked about it, she would be targeted. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. It's terrible. Like, obviously, I I just, I can't stand the stereotypes. But I don't think Legia has any empathy for conservatives. Legia has zero empathy for anyone that disagrees with her 1%. So to, to mm -hmm. make it seem like, oh, it's the conservatives that have no empathy is just, I mean, obviously toxic. Very, very just... few people have empathy for the outgroup. Of course not. Yeah. yeah. Unfortunately. We do. That's but why Sitch is always reining me in. We're beyond boundaries. Okay. We are the true, massive, enlightened, big brain fence sitters <laughs> sitting on top of the, the largest <laughs> fence of all. We're on top of the fence of reality. Okay. Looking down at all the plebes below us oh, and saying, fools. Yeah. We're like on the Great Wall. That's our fence. Exactly. That's right. Looking down. How elitist is that? She's 83 and lives in <laughs> Oklahoma. And in a twist of karmic irony, Anita's granddaughter, Sarah Green, came out publicly on a Slate podcast in 2021 by announcing her impending nuptials to a woman. Boom. The national scale of Anita's campaign. No, look, nobody's scared of gay people, okay? Jeez, I like that. Well, some people are, but like, it's just who cares? This isn't yeah. related, you know, to just relate acting this to like, the trans -person. Acting like everyone who voted for Donald Trump is terrified of gay people is just, I mean, you're living in the past. Donald but... Trump hugged the pride flag. Yeah. And I he put, kissed it. I put Donald it the... Trump got on his knees and he literally gave the pride flag a blowjob. Look, I put it in the thumbnail just to trigger Elijah. <laughs> oh, did you really? I did, yeah. That's hilarious. I didn't even notice. <laughs> it's hilarious. Look, there's a lot of gay Republicans. Yes. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Oh, you want to read a super chat? Twitter sucks for twenty dollars. Back again. Look prefer, at this. <laughs> I prefer Godfather. It's more fun and less responsible. Well, there you go. Twitter sucks. Our surrogate Godfather. Thank you so much for the twenty dollars. That's awesome. Thanks. Yeah. Uh, J Mac for ten dollars says just call her Skipper. Refer to directions with nautical terms, and maybe Adam can use a pirate accent. <laughs> Are you matey? I think it would be a little confusing. The entire time we're talking to Brianna Greyjoy, Adam is talking with a pirate accent. Arr, what do you think of the universal health care, matey? <laughs> Your pirate accent's so bad. You don't like it? Look, I'll brush it. up. I love it because it's so awful. Oh my <laughs> god. You came to our show to make us pay the iron price. <laughs> But you, my dear, are paying the iron price today. Jesus. Bring the screenshot up. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, God. Look, <laughs> I'll work on it. You work on it. Uh, fondue for $20 says, did you forget the JBP voice? We're all monsters. It's all about conscious of your own cross propensity for malevolence. That's true. We all have to be aware. Yeah. That's what the Nazis taught us. You thought you would be out there and say you'd be different. No, you're wrong. You're wrong. You would be right out there with the Nazis killing people. I think I need to get one of those Nazi uniforms up so I can put the hat on Legia here. <laughs> oh, God. Let's not do that. <laughs> Twitter sucks. Our surrogate godfather for another $20. Thank you, Twitter sucks. For making it rain today, says mm -hmm. more projections and lies again. It was leftists that created the wedge issue after the FBI called parents domestic terrorists. The left is creating a wedge between children and their parents by making the state the parents. Yeah, we've brought that up many times. Right. Obviously, the right is just responding. Yeah, Look, I think, yeah. Nobody voted to have all of this stuff forced into public schools. 
So she's going to go through, and we're going to watch it. She kind of goes through this kind of uh, wacky conspiracy about how once gay marriage was kind of uh, off the table and once abortion was off the table, the Republicans were just so desperate for some kind of wedge issue. And so that's why they landed on the trans question, right? Right. Um, which, of course, is ridiculous because the reason the trans stuff even came out is kind of as Twitter sucks says, like, like the left started pushing all this shit and then the right reacted to it. Yeah. So it's so to me, it's just so indicative of people living in their political echo chamber, their political bubble when they're unable to see their side was pushing for something drastically. And then the other side just has a reaction to it. And they're like, well, what? these people just brought up this issue out of nowhere. Why do they care about this issue so much that we've been pushing for the last five years? If you're if you've been going to the doctor your entire life and your doctor's never asked you or anyone in your family, you know, are you gender fluid? What gender are you? Right. Are you gender queer? What's going on? And all of a sudden you show up there with your kids and they start asking you all these crazy questions as if this is the new science that's been discovered. Mm -hmm. That's com that's so bizarre. Obviously, it you're going to have some kind of pushback to that. Yeah. Show me the evidence. When did this, like, when did they start teaching people in medical school this crap? All of a sudden, I'm questioning the entire medical industry. True. Sure. Yeah, this uh, is crazy. Fond We're in crazy town now. Fondue for $20 says, rather than saying all systems are corrupt, I would say they are affected by entropy. They need to be upkept constantly, but saying they are corrupt, you ignore all institutions require trust to operate in society. Um, maybe I'll think about it. That that could be a better, a better framing device. Well, I, I look at it over. like, uh, like the immune system at any given time, you're constantly being assaulted by, by parasites and bacteria. Sickness. Yeah. yeah. Sickness, and sickness all is the stuff. corruption or the entropy. Right. right. And your immune system is constantly fighting that stuff. So institutions are the same kind of way. If people can act horribly because there's not procedures in place to avoid it. You know, they can hide their bad behavior. Bad behavior right. is what you're going to get. And a lot of times you can set up institutions where the places where people can hide their bad behavior are not easily discernible. So you kind of have to discern them over time, ferret those places out. And then people always find new ways to be corrupt. So true. Yeah. True. Era. I'll bear back. You keep it going. Should I just play the video? Yeah, just play the video. In, in the 70s was a galvanizing force that some historians point to as the beginning of the culture wars. Prior to the founding of Save Our Children, the religious right really didn't have a strong foothold in American politics. This is, why are we talking? Look, isn't the religious right kind of irrelevant right now politically? I think they have so little power, so little political power. It really seems bizarre to me that we're you know bringing them up as the driving force in the republican party today when i when i'm listening to various political commentators on the right talking about the primary for electing for nominating the republican candidate nobody's talking about the religious right they're talking about all sorts of other things they're talking about electability. They're talking about the personality of the different uh, uh, different candidates, the, the policy prescriptions that each of them have. None of them are talking about how much Ron DeSantis prays. It's, this is so ridiculous. Reverend Jerry Falwell, then the head of a mega church in Virginia, took a large role in assisting in the Save Our Children campaign in Dade County and would go on to found, along with political activist Paul Weyrich, the moral... Look, all these pictures are in black and white. Man, what is that line about why women make such great archaeologists? Because they're always bringing up old shit. Majority in 1979, a coalition of fundamentalist religious groups working on a national scale to influence politics through widespread voter registration, fundraising, and utilizing the media to inform voters about the cause and their version of the truth, the moral majority was able to play a large role in getting Ronald Reagan elected president in 1980, solidifying Ronald Reagan in 1980. 1980, let me see. That was 43 years ago, four decades ago. Wow. 
What does this have to do with trans issues? And the religious right's outsized role in politics and presidential elections that persists today. Since then, the religious right has fixated on social issues like abortion, religious-based education, LGBTQ rights, and parents' rights. These issues form the ideological bedrock of the religious right and turned evangelicals into a fervent and cohesive voting unit, one that became so powerful despite its small size in relation to the U.S. population because of how fervently they show up at the polls. In his yeah, and that was okay. Like the George Bush election mm -hmm. was a base election, turning out evangelicals. Right. I don't think they've had. Look, we've been through two terms of Obama and one term of of Trump. Trump. I don't think evangelicals are that big a political force any longer. I think church attendance is way down. Um, I don't agree with you do you think they're the evangelicals are going to call are going to be influential in the next election i mean that's, supposedly that's why pence is killing it well no but supposedly when you look at the the voting statistics they still make up a huge chunk of republican voters so they still need to drive you know, since since voting right now, a lot of it is not really making people change sides, but just driving as much turnout as possible. You kind of want to lean into a lot of your your base to like milk it as dry as possible. Right, but I think the ironically, because it came up in the last video, I think the conscientiousness on the Republican side makes more of them vote out of civic duty. Yes, which I means agree. they vote in every election regardless, which is just a yes. huge, like a huge thing for the, the reason Trump won was because he brought in new voters because he, he was a celebrity. There were so many people that never voted before that voted for him. Yes. So. Of course. Yeah, but I, you I can still milk that. it dry. <laughs> you still have to milk it dry as much as possible. And I do. So I do think that you have to have these like massive voting blocks. Yeah, I do. Look, I just, nobody, I'm watching the Republican contest for <laughs> denomination. Well, think of it this way. If, no, nobody's talking about evangelicals. No one. Well, okay. They're not talking about them in terms of like, no, like everyone knows how they're going to vote. Okay. But they are talking about them in terms of turnout. Kind of like, you know, when they're like, oh, you know, Biden wants to do South Carolina first because mm -hmm. he wants uh, black people and black women to to vote first because they're more likely to vote for him than someone else, right? Like no one thinks that they're going to suddenly vote for Republicans in droves, but they talk about them all the time because they want to galvanize turnout for Biden from that population. It's kind of the same thing with evangelical Christians. Like no one thinks they're going to go Democrat, but if they don't turn out for Trump or whoever the nomination is, then he's not. then the Republican doesn't really have a shot of winning. Right. If that makes sense. Right. Well, I did make the civic duty argument that they vote as a sense of civic. Yeah, duty. I think they vote more, but they still need to drive them. Now, I don't. Now that being said, I don't buy the broader argument that she's making. Like, obviously, you know, evangelical Christians are going to be more likely to be against gay issues and trans issues by the nature of their religion. Of course, regardless. So, um, but even even with the abortion thing that she's talking about. And this is part of why her conspiracy is kind of stupid too. Like, let's just say hypothetically, let's just say the trans issue didn't exist. No one had dinner for you. Trans wasn't even real, right? But we're in the exact same political climate. Like, the right would be the right and the left are both going to be running this election. Okay, people aren't really talking about it yet. But once the election kicks off, abortion is going to be a huge issue because the Democrats are going to say, "Hey, um, elect Democrats to federal office, and we can institute a federal law." that protects abortion rights yeah they're gonna say that right so abortion is going to be back on the menu in terms of a uh you know an issue that people are going to be voting for in the next election which will probably drive republican turnout yeah which will yeah it will drive both of them to turn out yeah exactly yeah so they don't need this you know trans issue to to do to be this magical conspiracy that it is or that she's kind of uh, posting it as all trump did as. All Trump did for the evangelical vote was publish a list of conservative judges he would nominate to the Supreme Court that were like obviously, 
ideologically friendly for abolishing Roe versus Wade. That well, was it's his, that, that was his I, big move. I think it's really, I think it's really two things. I mean, I think that's part of it. I think it's really just the uh, Trump being pushing back or and being anti woke. I guess I should say, which obviously uh, very religious Christians do not like woke. Or I should say that's not true. Evangelical Christians on the right don't like woke because a lot of Christians are on the left and are very super woke. <laughs> but evangelical Christians don't like wokeness, and they like that Trump is pushing back on that, number one. Number two, a lot of evangelical Christians have very bad feelings about the federal government, and so they are, they like the whole elect me, I'm going to take revenge on the government mentality. Mm -hmm. And they like the whole kind of, a lot of evangelical Christians feel like, like, oh, we're in flyover country, we're tired of coastal elite, you know, libtards, uh, looking down on us and Trump is basically making them all hyper triggered. And so we feel like we're getting revenge on these people and we feel like we're getting justified, you know, justifiable revenge on these people. I think that yeah. was a lot of what's voting the motivating the, the push and voter turnout for Trump. Yeah. He wants them to be triggered. Right. He's like, even DeSantis is trying to trigger them. Did you see that crazy video he released? That's like obviously trying to trigger the Trump likes gay people, but I don't video. Yeah. That video. Yeah. Was that video is designed to trigger people. Right. And he's like, yes. look, I can trigger people too. Vote for me. Yeah. But it was, it was, he's fucking up. Cause he was like, instead of saying I can trigger the left, it was more like Donald Trump is a fake triggerer of the left. Yeah. <laughs> Which we all know that's not true. Cause we all lived through Trump for four years. So TDS is way worse than DDS. <laughs> right you know what i said you know what's funny i said from the beginning what did i say i said ron DeSantis is gonna have a lot of difficulty winning because he has the charisma of wet cardboard yep you were Remember completely correct yeah and people were like sitch that's not true you should have bet <laughs> and i somebody. said all right we'll see You'd be we'll raking see. in the money right now. You should have made a bet. I should have voted on I should have bet on that instead of betting on my stupid Trump bet, which is gonna cost me five hundred dollars. It's gonna be great though. Listen, like any great predictor, mm -hmm. for every prediction I get true, I get another one wrong. Mm -hmm. Okay. You're batting a fifty fifty. That's pretty good. <laughs> yeah, there you go. There you go. Actually just that's chance so it's not really good but anyway <laughs> let's move on <laughs> his book the next conservatism paul wayrich the co-founder of the moral majority wrote that the goal was to weed out cultural marxism and restore a non-ideological american republic which is what we had until the wretched 1960s so okay it's really unfortunate such a trigger super, word came up <laughs> this is very unfortunate because i was kind of like trying i couldn't find this guy's book that she just referenced. Oh my God, it's on a print, but it's still driving the Republican Party. <laughs> well, no, like it's in print. I just couldn't find it for free online. I don't want to buy a copy of this stupid fucking book. Oh, um, I gotcha. It's also not audible. But anyway, um, but I couldn't find it for free anywhere. And, but I did find some of the papers that he wrote and some other people wrote. And it's annoying because he correctly identifies political correctness as cultural Marxism. It's like right on the money with all this stuff. And wow. like how this stuff, you know, was it existed in the early 2000s and in the 90s, obviously, though, to like a much, 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 much lesser degree of things, but it still was around. It just never really broke out. A good example of this is funny. My dad was doing research um, on the Duke lacrosse rape case. <laughs> okay. Do you remember this? From like the, do you remember this from like He's, the Yeah. Mid, Your dad's mid doing a book report on it or something? Uh, yes, my dad's doing a book report on this. No, but anyway, um, and it was funny because he was when he was looking into the the Duke Lacrosse case. Which, for, mm -hmm. if you guys don't know, the Duke Lacrosse case was essentially a a woman who was a stripper who was black, and that's important in the story. Uh, she was hired to to be a stripper at a Duke Lacrosse party for the mm -hmm. Duke Lacrosse team, and she the next day. She accused them all of uh, rape, mm -hmm. sexual abuse, physical abuse, and racism. And I believe she had like racial epithets like drawn on her body with a permanent marker or something too. Mm -hmm. Okay. And when this all came out, 
there was like this total lynch mob that formed where a lot of people automatically assumed that the Duke lacrosse players were evil white racist rapists, mm-hmm. right? Because you had, why are you going, mm-hmm, what is happening here? I'm listening. The Duke you're, lacrosse. You're, you're doing the weird, mm-hmm, where you're like, <laughs> something is happening that I'm mm-hmm, not aware of. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah. What? Mm-hmm. Do you no, not want me to talk about the Duke Lacrosse no, story? No, please do. Okay. Duke Lacrosse. Look, I'm gonna. I'm super attentive. No, you don't have to be attentive. You're just doing. The, I don't care if you're not paying attention because I'm like the jack. No, I'm glad you it pointed just, it you're out. You're doing mm-hmm, like the whole like you're gonna play a prank on me, <laughs> right? Any second now. Just yeah. look. Just pretend you haven't noticed. <laughs> <laughs> Look, there's, there's no prank just continue the, okay. i remember the duke lacrosse case i remember okay the woman. anyway she, i think they hired her as a stripper right they hired her as a stripper yes so anyway everyone is like not everyone a lot of people immediately jumped on the bandwagon of saying that these kids were evil white rapists they looked at it through the lens of literally through the lens of political correctness where they said these duke lacrosse players are all you know in some fancy expensive school they're all white they're all privileged and here's a poor uh, underprivileged black girl that they took advantage of, essentially, right? That was how a lot of people viewed it. And they had the the school, the administration at Duke threw these kids under the bus, too. Immediately. Yeah, immediately. They totally had an idea of guilty until proven innocent against these kids. Right. And um, it was funny because I didn't know about this. You know, my dad emailed it to me. There was like this ad in a letter that a bunch is called like the the gang of 88 or something. It was like 88 uh, teachers all, you know, Denounced took out and rejected them. Yeah. They all rejected them. And they literally took out an ad in the Duke, uh, student published newspaper, basically denouncing them for this action. Wow. <laughs> and, um, someone, I forget the guy, someone wrote a book about this and he talks about how, like, if you actually looked who signed on to it, it was like zero law professor signed on to this. But the majority of the professors that signed on to this were all like woke studies professors. They were of all like, course. like the gender studies, the race study professors, all the sociology professors, they all signed on to this bullshit. Um, and when I, when you look into some of these professors, they're all like hyper woke and they all say the same shit about how like, oh, there's a colonial mindset of white supremacy. It's like it's all the same shit you hear nowadays, too. And it was and I bring this up because my dad sent this to me. He's like, wow, like they're saying all the same shit that you talk about. <laughs> all these professors. <laughs> Back in those days, they're saying all the same stupid shit, right? Yeah. So, but anyway, the whole point of this thing is, uh, the, the sad part is about Paul over here, Paul Weirich, is that he was able to correctly identify political correctness and cultural Marxism and all this other stuff. But unfortunately, he has the brain rot. <laughs> he has the brain rot of the every bit of progress leads us down the pathway of socialism brain <laughs> Oh no, the America so, bad brain rot. Well, not America bad, but just like the, I think a lot of, when we hear these arguments that like everything, everything, like the whole, you know, kind of Mencius small bug, uh, I, I wouldn't be surprised if a lot of his, you know, philosophy that he's read a lot of Weirich and all these other people, because a lot of it is kind of repeating the same rhetoric. Um, and he, and Weirich is the one who, who says that quote that I read to you, or it wasn't Weirich, it was Weirich's friend who wrote with him, had that quote that I said to you that was so based about how ideology is dangerous because you have to basically force all of reality through the lens of ideology. Right. And you know, he said ideology is dangerous because when, you have a, when you're operating under ideology, you're going to have a conflict where reality doesn't match ideology. And instead of people changing ideology to match reality, they're going to try to change reality to match the ideology by suppressing what is true yes. and yet at the same and while that's such like a great thought at the same token then he has the mind rot the brain rot of then saying conservatism isn't an ideology it's some magical non-ideology that's just based in tradition so therefore it's automatically true or something my ideology can never be suppressed right like the idea that just because something's based in tradition therefore that must mean it conforms to reality <laughs> it's like really stupid but okay <laughs> because reality in the environment is always changing and as i said you could have something that works something that 
that works for 300 years when nothing has changed in 300 years. And as soon as something changes, it's not going to work anymore. Is science an ideology? Science is an ideology, but the idea of believing that we should, you know, use empiricism or um, the scientific method is an ideology. The idea that that has value is an ideology. Right. Valuing empiricism is the ideology. The belief yeah, valuing that there's empiricism, a, scientific method. Right. And, and believing that there's that a those, natural world that we can understand through experimentation. Right. And believing that you can derive better truth claims from science versus tradition or from intuition is an ideology. Right. Now, it's the ideology that I think is more accurate. <laughs> yeah, so do I. Right. So. Well, there's also also... There's also all these behavioral prescriptions in science, like honesty, sharing data, right? All kinds of different things. I mean, that people are supposed right, and just like as um, Fondue said, you know, it's another it's an institution's kind of tend towards entropy, and a lot of our scientific endeavors, unfortunately, I think, have a lot of entro entropic corruption <laughs> that is affecting them. So yeah, I agree. You can't just take them on face value. Now, very often that's because people are incentivized on individual levels to do specific things in order to gain um, praise Power, in the field. status. Yeah, I don't know. Did you send it to me or did I just randomly stumble upon it? There was this video. Oh my God, who was it? The was a video that was talking about this. Go ahead. This, um, this, this woman scientist. Yeah. Did you send that to me? I tweeted it out. You probably saw it. Oh, you tweeted it out. Yeah. yeah, what was her name? Do you remember? I can't remember, but she did a bunch of bogus studies for Harvard, and they that were sociolo they sociological. They found her out. Right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, she she did all these sociological studies about human behavior and group behavior. Yeah, and she was really big and famous in her field, and then it turned out like she was just f fucking faking like oh, yeah. so much of her information and data. She was faking the data. Yeah, and so fake it till you make it, Sitch. Yep. <laughs> You know, decade where civil rights were won for millions of Americans. At the same time, throughout the 1980s, anti-gay fear-mongering reached a fever pitch with religious right groups like the Moral Majority calling AIDS the gay plague and calling it God's will, while tens of thousands of people died from the disease. Throughout the 80s, a man named Paul Cameron, a former psychologist... Yeah, see, that was a big L for a lot of people on the right. That, sh that should have been the wake-up call. Because when, when AIDS first came about and it seemed like it was only really affecting gay people... There are a bunch of religious people that were like, this is evidence of God punishing the gays. Yeah. And then, whoops, turns out it was just a virus that can affect anyone. It had nothing to do with being specific for gays. So, but you know, never, no one ever admits that they're wrong and changes their mind or anything of that nature. So it doesn't matter. Dave, the distributor, thinks hurricanes are caused by gay people. Listen. <laughs> I have any problem poking fun at Dave, but let's try to not, you know, just make up bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> what are you talking about? I don't need another video. I don't need Dave like whining like Sitch and Adam <laughs> honestly believe that I think hurricanes are caused by gays. You know, we don't need that in my I don't need that whining in my life. If he, your joke is taken seriously. Look, if he right. wants to prove me wrong, he can. He can make a okay. video, but until look, that's my gotcha. opinion. Okay. <laughs> That's okay. my opinion. There you go. Psychology instructor at the University of Nebraska was publishing pseudoscientific pamphlets proving that gay people commit more serial murders, molest more children, and intentionally spread diseases. Despite being expelled from the American Psychological Association in 1983 for ethics violations, Cameron continued to produce bogus studies widely cited by anti-gay groups. Since then, however, as the United States has grown more diverse and more progressive, the bedrock foundation of the religious right has been slowly chipped away. First, it was anti-sodomy laws aimed at making gay sex illegal. Those were officially done away with in the 2003 Supreme Court case Lawrence v. Texas, which was a galvanizing force that became obsolete with the Supreme Court's Obergefell ruling in 2015, legalizing gay marriage nationwide. And while there are still evangelicals who are mad about the gay marriage thing, the vast majority of Americans are in favor of allowing the gays to wed. It no longer has the ability to whip the electorate into a fear-mongered frenzy like it once did. But the religious right still had one thing. They st also, she, she, she's kind of missing something here too, which is that 
if you remember from Clarence Thomas's uh, concurrent opinion on um, affirmative action on uh, abortion, abortion. Okay, he was he was claiming that the court should relook into the gay marriage case. Oh, really? Wow. Yeah. So the idea that Ouch. like. Oh, the like the rights the people on the right don't have gay marriage to like attack anymore. I mean, it's it's still kind of you know it still could be on shaky grounds depending on how this court is so far. Look, hurricanes are a huge problem. I don't know how we're gonna deal with them, but <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> I, I know some people on the right think the way we should deal with them is making gay marriage illegal. So right, okay, yeah. Thank you. I think it's climate change, but right. you know what do I know? <laughs> what <laughs> start it look this is the comedy portion of the show yeah. everyone knows okay look, this is okay. hyper this is okay. hyperbole yeah okay 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 do you doubt that some people believe that i'm gay... sure some people somewhere <laughs> believe that yes good all the all the guy the uh westboro church people with their little oh signs. they totally buy that yeah they probably yeah that, yeah Sure. Still had abortion. Pictures of tiny fetuses, heartbeats, and fingernails in the womb. These ideas still created a fervor in the religious right, enough to get them to show up to the polls at far greater numbers than any other voting bloc. And thanks to the tireless work of the religious right since the 1970s, inserting religion into politics and requiring pretty much any Republican who wants to be president to appeal to the religious right since Reagan onward, they finally got the person they had always dreamed of in the White House. Donald Trump, an orange Muppet who would say and do whatever it takes with impunity to gain more followers and power. He so disrespectful to the president of the United States. Just call oh. him a Muppet. Disrespect. He rallied the religious right and he put in the judges necessary to make real legal change in this country. And he paved the way for Dobbs v. Jackson Women's Health to make its way to the Supreme Court, giving them, many of them being recently appointed by Trump, another chance to finally do away with abortion protections across the country. A real- So, I forget, someone brought this up, I don't remember who. Someone said that the federal government had already protected gay marriage. Mm -hmm with the, um, it's called the Respect for Marriage Act. Mm -hmm. So that's not, it's sort of true, but but not true. So what the Respect for Mar Marriage Act did is that if one state has gay marriage legal and someone gets gay married in that state, it forces other states to recognize it. Oh, okay. But it doesn't force every state to allow gay marriage. Hmm. So, and also that, of course, that law itself could then be challenged. The legitimacy and the legality of that could be challenged if that is assuming gay marriage would be overturned at some point in the future. This law would obviously go to court and who knows what would happen. So, so we, we're, we've talked about gay marriage. We're talking about abortion now. We're 13 minutes into a 24 minute video. Uh huh. Entitled, Why Are Conservatives So Obsessed with Trans Kids? We haven't even got to anything related to this. We're talking about abortion. <laughs> yeah. What's the connection between abortion and trans kids, Sitch? It's all, listen, she, she What's has happening? to have, she needs the always sunny in Philadelphia conspiracy theory board behind her with all the, the pictures and the lines drawing, connecting, you know, connecting everyone everywhere. Look, this is going back to black and white pictures. She doesn't even have color pictures of half these people in this conspiracy. <laughs> Are they still alive? Anita Bryant's still alive, Ab. Therefore, is the conspiracy she? is true. Okay. okay. I mean, she's got to be in a nursing home or something. She's like 89 or something. Oh, right. A victory for the religious right, who are dead set on protecting fetuses, but fuck parents and fuck kids once they're out of the womb, especially if they're black or brown. But then the religious... Wow, what a stereotype. <laughs> Look at all this original thought, Sitch. <laughs> yeah. Being exposed to something I've never seen before. Oh, so original. Yeah. You know that right-wing bill that they passed that said we want to give uh, welfare to white children, but mm -hmm. not black children? <laughs> Remember that bill that got passed? Was is that real? Are you kidding? Oh me? yeah, that's that's a real bill that got passed in this YouTuber's mind. <laughs> oh okay, that's what I thought. In the YouTuber's mind, yes, yeah, that's yes. never happened, obviously. No. 
<sighs> okay. Religious right ran into a pesky little problem. All of their traditional wedge issues, abortion, gay marriage, gay sex, they'd all been done away with, either solved in the case of abortion or no longer the galvanizing force that brings people to the polls like they once were. And so the religious right had to change course and quickly. Back in 2016, after the gays were allowed to wed, the religious right was like, hmm, what new thing about the gays could we get people whipped up into a voting frenzy about? Well, we've kind of exhausted our options with the L and the G. The B, I don't know, do bisexuals even really exist? They're also sometimes hetero, so like probably fine. And then what's the next letter? Oh yeah, T. Wow, now T is an interesting option. There'd been some national- What a conspiracy theory. Yeah. They're sitting around. Is this like a Zoom call that they're on talking about this? <laughs> hey, we really need to get these Republicans elected here. Well, listen, it, it was during COVID. So it was on a Zoom call. It was one of those, you know, Zoom calls that have like 100 people. Yeah, totally. It was a Zoom call at 100 people, all the 100 most influential people in right wing religious politics. Well, we need and, some more wedge issues here. Right. And then at the top of the, who's, who's the top? Who's like the, the leader of this? The movement? leader? The figurehead. I, yeah. Oh, I don't know. Matt Walsh. You have Matt, Michael you have Matt Knowles? Walsh. You have Matt Walsh and Mike, Matt Walsh. He's in like a Dr. Evil swivel chair. Right. And he turns around on the zoom call. And instead of having a little like hairless cat, he has like the little Matt Walsh in the diaper, the naked Matt Walsh baby in a diaper doll. <laughs> no, it's a genetically engineered tiny naked Matt Walsh in a diaper, but with that slash the beard. Why and do he's you... petting it. And he's like, all right, my religious conservative uh, friends, how do we own the libtards now? Now that gay marriage is not something no one cares about. And now that we won an abortion, what do we do to own the libtards? I mean, aren't you really only trying to get certain political leaders elected so that you can get policy proposals that you want enacted? Like, if all your policy proposals are enacted, what is the point of getting anyone elected? Do you really think they're sitting around going, oh, I just, I feel better if there's a Republican president? It's not even, it's not, e you're right, but it's not even that. It's just that literally, again, like, the left has been pushing the trans issue for five or six years, and now the right's reacting to it being pushed look, because this is what always happens. Look, that's the reality of the situation. Right. The reality that she is pitching yes. is that Republicans have had all of their problems solved. And now they're going, look, I have, we have to create some problems right. so yes. that we can stay in charge. Right. Like no rank and file Republican is like, I have to stay in charge. <laughs> it's like <laughs> they're not even in charge. Some politician right. is. Right. Yeah, it's ridiculous. It's complete. This is conspiracy theories. Of course. Headlines in recent years that had brought trans rights to the forefront in a way that had never happened before. Laverne Cox played a main character role in Orange is the New Black starting in 2013, becoming the first openly trans person to be nominated for an Emmy in an acting category. And conservatives lost their... No, <laughs> nobody cared. Mm -hmm. Was this a big issue? Did you see I this on... I don't remember anyone Look. really talking about this. But was Ben Shapiro tweeting about this? Oh, no, the trans person won an Emmy. <laughs> I mean, maybe. I don't know. I wouldn't be surprised if I looked it up on <laughs> And later, the <laughs> first to win the award. You know Michael Knowles is upset about it. Former actor I'm Michael, sure Michael Knowles, Knowles is upset was about super it, yeah. upset about it. Yeah. Listen, he was gay in college, and he never got over it. Okay. <laughs> Chelsea Manning's leak of sensitive documents and transition while going through the legal process made national and international news, and her sentence was commuted by President Obama in 2016. In April 2015, Caitlyn Jenner came out publicly as a trans woman, appearing in a 2020... Does, does anyone think that, um, uh, that Manning would have been commuted if not for being trans? I don't know. I don't think so. That's a good question. Oh, maybe think, you're right. Maybe you're I don't right. I think so. Look, all this, all this stuff was secretly look at engineered. That. Drink that picture and look. Let's get off that picture. Oh, <laughs> the, uh, the all of this was done by the religious right. Remember, all this yeah. stuff. Caitlyn Jenner basically came out because of the religious right. How did they well, trick no, Caitlyn okay, Jenner into coming out because of the religious right? Well, look, no, this, so the religious right, right was wait, supposed wait, wait, to. Wait, 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 wait. To be to be fair. 
to our monster here, <laughs> our systemic monster. Um, no, she's saying that she is finally giving some sort of acknowledgement that the right is reacting to all of these things happening. No, no, these. That's things, what she says in the beginning. No, yes. these things were engineered by. Oh, these were engineered by. The, yeah, well, Matt Walsh of course. In, this, in this in the Zoom call was like, "All right, so we'll get Caitlyn Jenner to we transition." Need... And then we'll put her on the top of the magazine of Vanity Fair. And I'm going to go, what the fuck is this? Yeah, exactly. This is all right. a ploy for them to maintain power. Sure. I, you know what? You're right. That's that a conspiracy. Sense. Yeah, that does make sense. And on the cover of Vanity Fair magazine as the first out trans woman to appear on the cover. So trans visibility was having a moment. And as with any progress, there was, of course, some backlash. But it took the conservatives a bit of time to get it right. They started with bathroom bills. In 2016, again, the main motive to get them to the polls is fear. So they thought, hey, what if we told people that trans women were really just men in disguise as women so they can go into women's bathrooms and attack you? Yeah. Yeah, that'll get them riled up. In 2016, North Carolina legislators voted to bar transgender people from using the bathroom that didn't correspond with their assigned gender at birth. The backlash was swift and harsh from corporations, sports teams, and even Bruce Springsteen, so that lawmakers eventually rescinded the bill. Because bathroom bills are dumb, y'all. Men who want to attack and assault women aren't going to be dissuaded by a law that says you can't enter a woman's bathroom. Like, up, oh, I'll rape and murder, but going into the wrong bathroom, that's where I draw the line. And people kind of knew that. And the issue why is that a bad argument what why what what she just said what's That's, the argument who, who, she said she said oh it's so silly it's so silly to, to say oh you know uh men shouldn't be allowed in the women's bathroom because you know, rapists will do it anyway right yeah we've heard this argument we've heard this argument from people on the right okay gun free zones Gun-free zones. Yeah. So well, you think the person that's going to commit a crime, they're going to see the sign that says gun-free zone, they're going to stop? Right. No, of course not. Right. So I just, I think it's it's interesting that when the right made that argument, the left said, ha, 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 that's a silly argument. And now the left is using that same argument. Yeah, that <laughs> happens all the time, the obviously. <laughs> I do think that's interesting. That's interesting to me. Okay. The left is making the, we should have gun-free zones. And the right is saying, well, obviously gun-free zones aren't going to keep criminals out right and it's the same argument with the bathrooms yes just invert it right any any time you add some level of friction it's going to cause some reduction to some extent in that environment well i i do agree with the conservatives that a gun-free zone becomes a target for people who have guns obviously because you're like look all these unarmed people you might as well just say unarmed people zone i don't think so i don't agree with that i'll tell you why Usually, when we talk about like gun free zones, you're talking about like a school, right? Or something. Or a mall. I mean, there was just a right. shooting at a mall here in Southern California where a guy pulled out a gun and took care of uh, this shooter. Well, first of all, I don't think malls are not traditionally necessarily gun free zones. And they shouldn't. Because usually it's private property, so it could be whatever the fuck the private property people want to do, right? Yeah. Um, but because when, when you think of like most mass shootings that occur, you know, it's like a person going to a club. Or a person going to a school, like I don't think the thought process, I could be wrong, but I don't think the thought process, most even the person when they go to the school is like, I want to kill a bunch of people and I don't think they're going to have guns. They're just, they want to go shoot up a school because unfortunately that became the meme that people were replicating from the original mass shooting of the school. Right. So. Yeah. But anyway. But they don't go do the mass shooting at the gun range. Curious. Well, <laughs> there you go. There you, if mass only shooter, we could turn our schools into into the gun ranges. Mass you know. shooter walks into a, right. a gun range. Right. right. <laughs> there you go. That's true. You don't see a lot of mass shooters <laughs> the, going to gun ranges, dumbest, trying to walk into military bases. The you know. dumbest mass shooter on the planet. Sure. That's true. That's true. Okay. While popular with the fear-mongering Fox News crowd, really didn't get people riled up in the way that conservatives knew needed to happen for them to turn out in droves and vote. So, and someone who you know has uttered the words transgenocide dozens of times does not get to accuse the right of fear-mongering. 
Yeah, that's a it's great point. It's just like the the whole idea that the left is innocent of fear mongering. Ridiculous. No. Everyone's using fear mongering all the time. This whole <laughs> video is fear mongering. Yes. Yes. So advocacy votes. groups began polling to determine whether curbing transgender rights had resonance with voters and if so, how to best talk about the issue. Because again, this has never been about protecting children or about Christian morals. It's always been about power, getting elected and staying elected. And so this person mm -hmm. is so trapped in her own ideological bubble that she just uttered some of the dumbest shit I've ever heard. Yeah, totally. <laughs> it's not about children. It's not even about Christianity. It's all about power. power. So now this is what makes me think that this person's a leftist socialist because that's generally the dumb uh, epistemological lens at which they view the world. Thing. Yeah. Everything is just power. Everything is just power games. Yep. Okay? Power dynamics. Right. Not even just saying, listen, there's lots of people out there that probably just think trans people are gross. I think that's a big motivation. For right. Yeah. <laughs> Not yeah. even that. It's just like, oh, no, it's just power dynamics, power games. It's like, please stop. That's so stupid. That's so dumb. There was um another, one of the videos we didn't watch that we might watch in the future uh, is by a creator. God, what's the guy's name? It's like foreign man in a foreign land or something. Mm hmm. Is the one did you, you watch? You 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 only watched like fifteen minutes of it or something. Yeah, I saw it's it. really sad because uh, it's this creator who, like, he he'll start to say something smart and then immediately he'll undercut it by giving the dumb fuck like indoctrinated leftist view about everything's the fault of the patriarchy. Yeah, and everything's conflict theory. Same thing with like Benny when we watch Benny on Sunday. You know, even though Benny's like, I feel a little bit bad for Benny despite Benny being a, a dirty tanky, which is that. It's very obvious that Benny was indoctrinated in college and just absorbed a bunch of like leftist gobbledygook garbage and just regurgitates that as, as if it's fact. Yeah. If you learn a bunch of garbage in college, you you think, wow, I went to, I paid to learn this garbage. It's got to right. be true. <laughs> Good point. You, it's sad. If you pay for it. Yeah. If you pay for it, then it's actually going to be true. Right. Right. I think it's and, fact uh, checked. <laughs> And all of this, and her whole argument, this is all about power dynamics. She's literally provided zero evidence in this video essay that's 24 minutes long to for this conspiracy theory that this is part of some massive power struggle. But what about the orange juice lady? That was That's literally counter evidence. That was a person that was legitimately motivated by their own moral belief system in Christianity. Oh, you're right. Damn it. No evidence. Yeah, nothing. Like, this is a horrifically pathetic video. Yeah. That has, like, half a million views. <laughs> Show this, the Zoom call receipts. <laughs> right. Where did they sit right. around and say, look, it's all about our power? It's all about power. Listen, but the uh, the irony here, and it's funny because when I sent you this, you're like, we have to watch the fake news video first. <laughs> I know. Yeah. And I was like, that was my thought. It's like, she has this whole video about fake news. Oh, my God. The right wing falls for fake news. The right wing is promoting fake news. And then her previous video is her just making up a bunch of shit with no sourcing and no fucking facts yeah. and just promoting it like it's just obviously true. Yeah, it is. Look, she consulted, she consulted her tarot card tattoo. <laughs> That's her evidence. Right. Look, she did a tarot reading about this, this yes. mass conspiracy. Right. Polling found that, in particular, voters were significantly more likely to support a Republican candidate who favored a ban on transgender girls participating in school sports than... Look, they did a poll to find out what the voters wanted so they, they could win an election. So? <laughs> like, what's wrong with that? Don't you want your, your elected leaders to know what you want? What policy prescriptions you want? Well, you know, it's funny that actually completely destroys her argument because her argument is this is some sort of conspiracy to make people feel that way. But if you do a polling, it's the opposite. It means that <laughs> politicians are doing what the people want. Exactly. exactly. Literally, remember, I say this. People don't believe it until it like, smacks them in the face. There's so many times people cannot tell evidence that proves their point or disproves their point. They right. can't tell, okay, because they're ideologically biased.
elected. And polling found that, in particular, voters were significantly more likely to support a Republican candidate who favored a ban on transgender girls participating in school sports than on transgender people using bathrooms, especially if the issue was framed as a question of whether to allow men and boys to compete against women and girls. It's common knowledge in political polling and analysis that the form of a question matters, and that in order to get unbiased results, you need to frame the question in a way that doesn't lead the pollee to a certain outcome or conclusion. However, the op- Would have been great if you knew that information in your last video, <laughs> Opposite can also be weaponized by politicians. So instead of asking, should trans girls compete on girls' sports teams, which is almost obvious in its outcome, trans girls, girls' sports team, makes sense. Instead, they- mm -hmm. Listen, I believe in science, Adam. Yeah. I believe in fairness, right? Mm -hmm. But it's in the name, trans girls. It's got the word in it. It says trans girls. Yeah, makes girls sense. Girls sports. Seems okay? logical. Feels right. I, in one hand, I look, I'm holding the words. I'm like on Sesame Street. I'm literally holding the words trans girl right. on my left hand. And in my right hand, it says girls sports. And I look at these with my eyeballs and I hold them up to my eyeballs and I say, it's got girls in both words. So therefore, done. Logic right. solved. Issue over. Ipso facto ergo procto. <laughs> Ipso facto, ergo prado, ad hominem, el hocto, post hoc noterin, therefore, vis-a-vis, -vis, boom, we're done. We got it. We solved the issue. Why are people arguing about trans sports? It's so simple. It's just in the name. It's just in the name. Okay? All this is in the context of asking questions to get good, solid feedback from the electorate. It's just in the name. Like the National Socialists were obviously social. Oh, wait. Yeah. Watch out. Oops. Fascist. <laughs> oh, shit. Kyle Rittenhouse is trying. A the... record number of I bills relating to health. Oh, what did you do? I hit the back button. Oh, wait. No, I think I'm in the right <laughs> ...being that trans girls are really just boys in disguise. And the obvious answer... Look, that's how you should ask the question. Should boys in disguise be able to compete <laughs> in women's sports? What do you think? Right, right. Just what's that? How's your poll going to come back if you ask that <laughs> question, Sitch? It's funny. Answer to conservatives with strict ideals of the gender binary is no. Of course not. That wouldn't be fair. So you're framing the question in a way that determines the outcome, but then letting the person reading the question feel like it was their own idea, that it was unfair. Using these findings, conservatives ran with the approach. Okay, so I have a Washington Post poll okay from 2022 this and it frames the, the question okay. the way she wants it to be it says do you think trans women and girls should or should not be able to compete with other women and girls okay right so it's basically across the board 65 percent say no right. and 34 percent say yes okay so, so pretty across the board so they asked the question the way she wanted to ask and people still oppose it right it's a blowout. Right. 30 point discrepancy. And then By here's 30 another 30 points. Right. One third. Yeah, so I just. One I in know, three. Well, but here's what's interesting. Here's what's interesting. And I guess this is a good thing. So when they say, do you support or oppose laws prohibiting discrimination against trans people? The majority overwhelmingly support laws against Discrimination, yeah. Against discrimination in housing, of course. workplace, college, health insurance, medical professionals, school, and the military. Because they're not monsters. Yeah. Right. But this is why I get so pissed at when everyone says, oh, you're a transphobe. It's like, so overwhelmingly, you have all these people. They're, they're saying, yes, there should be laws to prohibit discrimination against trans people. However, they still also say that they don't think trans women should automatically be allowed to participate in women's sports because they also say discriminates against women right and they also overwhelmingly say that they don't think uh, kids at 10 to 14 68 per, uh, 68 percent said children 10 to 14 should not be put on puberty blocking medication and 58 percent said uh kids 15 to 17 should not be given hormonal treatments well why are they getting in between people and their doctors right but well here's what's funny and this kind of shows why, you know, part of these polling is silly. So 
I said 68% are against giving 10 to 14 year olds puberty blockers according to this poll. Mm -hmm. Okay. However, 62% are in favor of giving gender affirming counseling to kids 10 to 14. Oh, okay. So obviously people don't know what the word gender affirming counseling means. They they could think it means they think affirming, it means like talk. affirming their biological gender or their biological no, just, sex. They just see counseling and therapy and they assume it's like, oh, well, yeah, you can talk to someone about it, right? That's probably what they think. So. Yeah. Or they could think it's like they talk I mean, they could think it's conversion therapy, right? Maybe, I don't know. It's a good question. Hey, I'm going to hit the Why button. Why do I have to do it? Coach of you barring doing? trans kids from competing in sports. Because, according to the research, that's what got voters riled up. And then that quickly snowballed into the think of the children rallying cry that is so popular amongst conservatives, which then led to questions of children being turned trans in schools. What books are being taught in our schools that need to be banned? And wait. I hate all of this because all this is framed as conservatives just wanting to come up with whatever is going to get them elected even if they have to lie <laughs> which is right. just it's so ridiculous well, so again, reductive if people are taking polling on this is, isn't that the opposite yeah exactly it's what the electorate the, wants yeah the, they're not the ones directing the conversation they're they're, the, they're not leading the conversation they're basically following the crowd at that point why are kids even transitioning and playing sports for a different gender to begin with? Think of the children. And we should probably ban those medical procedures because they seem wrong. And voila, the conservatives had themselves a new wedge issue that would once again galvanize the voter base and get them to turn up in the polls. In March 2020, Idaho became the first state to bar transgender girls from participating in girls and women's sports, which was called the Fairness in Women's Sports Act. And one year later, Arkansas became the first state to enact legislation, making it illegal for my minors to receive transition medication or surgery. This legislation was based on model language first used in South Dakota that didn't initially pass there, but created the framework. So I just thought of something. Let me go back for a second. Okay. No. This is my problem. This is a problem. I have a lot of problems. This is, I have a lot of problems, guys, a lot of people. So we have this person who's speaking at a podium who I'm assuming is trans. Okay. Why? And they have this, the, the ugly green, blue dyed hair thing, right? And they have the I visual like aesthetic of like, you see this person and you know their politics, right? Yeah. To me personally, I'm instantly annoyed or turned off by a person. If I see someone walking down the street and I go, I look at them, I say, I know your politics just by how you look. I don't think that's a good thing. <laughs> right? To me, really? that's lame. <laughs> it's like... Well, it's very tribal. It's yeah, because that's what you're doing. You're signaling to your tribe, right? Right. So, but here, here's kind of the problem. When you have like, is is the person honestly trans? Honestly, have gender dysphoria, and because they have gender dysphoria, they feel like they're an outsider to society, and they have to buck the system, and so that's what um, attracts them to essentially an aesthetic that signals that they're trying to buck normative trends? Or are they attracted to the aesthetic of bucking normative trends and thus that's why they maybe believe that they have gender dysphoria and don't? Either one of those could be true. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Either one of those could be true, but that's why I don't like this whole virtue signaling. You have to show the world what your politics are through the way that you look and dress. You know, bullshit. I mean, I like the crazy color hair, so I'm just yeah, because you're a you're a Californian soy boy. Listen, I don't have a problem with people dyeing their <laughs> soy hair. Soy boy. Okay, this but this is what's so funny because when I was growing up, you know what it meant when people dyed their hair like this? What? It meant they were like goth. Oh yeah. Or they, they were, well, you they just dyed your hair black though. Or they were emo. No, but they had lots of colors. It wasn't just black. Really? Maybe for you it was black. But there's it, it meant like. If you were walking around at my age and you had hair that was some color, it meant it had something to do with what kind of music you liked. <laughs> okay. I've, I've dyed my hair both black and right. white. There you go. So, but nowadays, dyeing your hair has a fucking political affiliation to it. 
I don't like that. Go back to people dyeing their hair for their music taste. So it shouldn't be about your political choice. Politics are messing everything up. True. Work that was then used nationwide to curb. Also, why is this content creator doing her best to look like the most ghosty ghost that ever ghosted? <laughs> it's just I like I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm white. I'm pale skin, and I'm white. I'm gonna dye my hair white. I'm assuming her hair is dark white. Mm -hmm. And I'm gonna wear all white clothing. <laughs> like, what, what is happening here? Why? What is this aesthetic? I don't know. White, I don't know. White privilege, maybe. There you go. Herb trans rights. The model language was created by lawmakers in cahoots with religious right affiliated groups, including the Child and Parental Rights Campaign, the Alliance Defending Freedom, the Phyllis Schlafly Foundation. Yeah, we'll go back to which was created by lawmakers Schlafly. in cahoots with religious right affiliated groups, including the Child. And I just child nobody and likes rights. this stuff. Nonprofit public interest law firm founded to defend parent, parents' rights to shield their children from the impacts of gender identity ideology. I mean, that sounds pretty Watch out, you're triggering Doomer right now. He does. He hates when you use that word gender ideology, even though it's in a million books. Children and parental rights campaign. I mean, that sounds, sounds like that's okay, right? Gender identity ideology. Mm -hmm. Sure, okay. Sure. I guess. I don't know. Look, I don't, this gender stuff, I just, I don't think it's scientific. I've never, I've looked into it, Sitch, and I don't, I've never seen any really definitive tests that make me think, I don't know. I wouldn't, I, if I was a doctor, I wouldn't feel comfortable diagnosing someone with this kind of gender dysphoria stuff. I agree. Rights Campaign, the Alliance Defending Freedom, the Phyllis Schlafly founded Eagle Forum, and a fringe conservative doctors group that calls itself the American College of Pediatricians. Email exchanges obtained by Mother... <laughs> American College of Pediatricians just sounds completely milk toast. Yeah, but they are. They are very ideologically. <laughs> oh, they are? Okay. Yeah. I've, I've seen a lot... I've seen a lot of their quote research in my, in my pathways and studies on, on the quote issues. research. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. The Phyllis Schlafly founded Eagle Forum Schlafly. and a fringe Schlafly. conservative Schlafly. doctors Schlafly. group that calls itself the American College of Pediatricians. Email exchanges obtained by Mother Jones show members of these groups pushing lawmakers in South Dakota to make the laws more restrictive and to ensure that the language was ironclad. At least 18 states have introduced legislation with language mirroring the original model bill created for South Dakota. And the religious right has helped establish. Wait, but what was the language that was so suspect that we had to have it leaked? That's so scary. Look, that's not not important sitch okay just watch the video okay They're like we had secret leaked documents about how they were promoting this specific language well what was the language they were promoting look okay. it was completely innocuous but don't don't inside, ask about it inside the secret working group that helped push anti-trans laws did you find the language well i'm gonna look at the article okay Establish a sophisticated playbook to get this legislation passed, including pushing disinformation, utilizing the conservative media to instill fear, and even capitalizing. <laughs> Spreading misinformation. Doesn't Check. cite what the misinformation is. Right. Like, let us interrogate that claim. What was the misinformation? Right. Spreading fear. Oh, what did they do? How did they fear monger? Were they just telling people about... They're going to the transgenocide, Adam. I'm not spreading fears, it's just truth. It's transgenocide. Realizing on the handful of vocal people who have detransitioned and now are a... Oh, look. Minimizing detransitioners. There mm. it is. There it is, Sitch. Oh. How did I know this was going to happen? Oh, look at that. How did I know? Because you've seen this video. How did I know this <laughs> was going <laughs> to... Sitch, come on. <laughs> <laughs> An ex detransitioner disavows the anti trans movement. There you go. She helped spark. Wow. What was the basis of that? Will you tell us or will we just hold on, hold look on at, here. A, at a headline and that's all that matters? An ex detransitioner. That's like three steps. So yeah, first, wait a minute. What does that even mean? First of all, they transition. Then they were like, yeah. look, I need to detransition. Well, fuck, now I'm going to transition back.
Yeah, wait, what? Yeah, what? So she's, she's already been around the track three times. He or she, I don't know. I don't know where at we're point, at here. At this point, does anyone know? They, yeah, exactly. Jeez. So they've they've transitioned, detransitioned, and now are an ex-detransitioner. Disavows the anti-trans movement. She helped spark. Okay. So okay. This is this is hold on. She there we got a pronoun. So this detransitioner basically was against the the trans movement. Hmm powerful tool for conservatives hoping to show that because this one person regrets having transitioned then all of trans affirmative care is bad and dangerous these anti-trans bills are not popping up on a state specific level from local grassroots movements trying to create laws in their own state I mean, I, I, they a lot of people are against capital punishment because one person was executed wrongly right right so i don't if you're well, against, i don't know if that's a good comparison <laughs> why because one the, person was harmed wrongly right but but if you don't kill the people that are uh that convicted the crime you're still going to stay in jail you're not creating additional you're not potentially creating potential harm by not killing them right okay where with the kids if they if they need to transition and don't and commit suicide you are creating potential harm by not transitioning you understand that's what I'm saying I don't think it's a well good I just case. the whole idea of the suicide stuff I think is right. specious I don't it might be but I'm just saying that's the argument right I understand their argument but I don't right. think their argument is based on any evidence this whole idea that this you know people who don't get affirmative care end up killing themselves like citation needed I don't I don't know where they're getting these statistics from right well the problem is there's and they haven't shown causality because right. the, the people could literally just be suicidal so sure I mean, I've seen study, the studies that I've seen, they do show overall, they do show that there is a reduction in suicide and there is an improvement, but it's not like 100% mm -hmm. for everyone, right? So there is sort of a question of how much it really does help some people, right? Because I think for some people it helps a lot. Some people it doesn't necessarily seem to help very much at all. Mm -hmm. So I think it's a very case-by-case -case basis. State. It is a nationwide concerted and strategic effort by outside forces who want to come in and influence state elections. And while it is very common and truly preferable... Look, she's a state's rights person, Sitch. Look, that doesn't mean she's racist. Stop <laughs> implying that. Does that mean well, that she's in favor of uh, segregation and slavery? <laughs> yeah. I mean, she's state's rights, right? Isn't that what that's supposed to be? <laughs> she just made a state's rights issue, didn't yeah. she? Yeah. Stitch. What does that Listen, mean? I think you told me all states' be, rights people were racist. Abortion should be decided on a states' rights basis, right? <laughs> well, okay. Capitalizing on the handful of vocal people who have detransitioned and now are a powerful tool for conservatives, hoping to show that because this one person regrets having transitioned, then all of trans affirmative care is bad and dangerous. These anti trans bills are not popping up on a state specific level from local grassroots movements trying to create laws in their own state. It is a nationwide concerted and strategic effort by outside forces who want to come in and influence state elections. And while it is very common and truly preferable for law Makers to consult with experts on the bills that they're writing, that becomes a very different story when the experts are spouting pseudoscience, largely motivated by a specific religious doctrine that they'd like to impose on everyone, and working in concerted strategic ways throughout the country. The res woo, woo, woo. Irony alert. Irony alert. <laughs> irony. Well, I detected right. some irony. Well, so are these people motivated by religion or is it a conspiracy theory to maintain power? Well, there's obviously that contradiction, but transgender ide or gender ideology is a religion as well. Of course. Yeah, based on pseudoscience. The result of this effort is a dramatic rise in anti-trans bills, with nearly 500 winding their way through the legislative process this year alone. This, despite the fact that a 2021 PBS NPR Marist poll showed that two-thirds of Americans oppose bills limiting the rights of transgender people. However... <laughs> Look at the sneaky, sneaky, sneaky. Sneaky! Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Did you, you didn't catch that? This, despite... All of this, all of these bills, despite the fact 
despite the fact that a 2021 PBS NPR Marist poll showed that two thirds of Americans oppose bills limiting the rights of transgender people. How to find housing and jobs. Oh, that was a different poll. Oh, it is? What do you mean? Well, I'm sure poll the poll I... she's listing is about two thirds of people supporting them. Right. Finding jobs and not being discriminated against. So let's see it doesn't support two thirds of people do not support puberty blockers. Two thirds of people are against puberty blockers. Okay. So don't pull the sneaky sneaky. Well, hold on a second. Hold on a second. Well, first DJ. of all, it's interesting because her, she's kind of contradicting herself all over the place because her original argument was the right pulled people and they found that people didn't like these trans issues and that's why they're pushing them. Okay. Mm -hmm. But now she's saying they're the pushing people these do issues like the trans, <laughs> even though they polled Americans and Americans are against them. Right. So she's making the exact opposite argument she made two minutes ago. Three right. Minutes ago. Okay. Uh, regarding the poll itself, it is true that there is a 2021 NPR poll, or not NPR, a PBS poll, uh, that says, which I found very shocking, that says, the question was, do you support or oppose legislation that would prohibit gender transition-related Medicare medical care for minors? Okay. Okay. 66% said they were opposed to it. To it and only 28 percent said they supported it right okay now this surprised me because i know for a fact i've seen other polling data that completely contradicts this right you just listed some obviously i was quoting those right um because i found this gallup poll that i think we talked about on another stream and they compare the 2021 to 2023 uh, feelings. And I talked about how in, in 2021, according to Gallup, 46% of Americans, or no, sorry, 51% of Americans, according to Gallup in 2021, thought it was immoral to change your gender. Okay. Okay. So that directly contradicts this, um, this, Right. Uh, PBS poll, right? They think it's and immoral, but they think it shouldn't be banned. Maybe. Maybe that's yeah. the thought process, right? Sure. Um, the, let's see. Do they ask? I don't, they don't ask about legality here. Let's see. In 2021, 53% of Americans said that trans people should not be allowed to play on the sports team that matches their transition to gender. No, I'm sorry. 62% said you should only be able to, to play on a team that matches your birth gender in 2021. Okay. Right? So I don't know. I'm just, so it's a weird, it's a weird thing. This poll is weird. <laughs> I mean, well, I would want to see it replicated. Poll, obviously. Well, I would want to see it replicated because it seems to contradict other polls. But it's cherry um, pick for the video, right? Or as you pointed out, it could be, as she pointed out, it could be the way the question's worded and how people interpret the legislation question. Sure. Because uh, PBS, and it's interesting that she went to the 2021, and PBS has redone this in 2023, the same question, and the number has jumped up to 43% support criminalizing gender affirming care for minors so it's increased substantially yeah in the last couple of years is so it I'm like sure a twitter poll <laughs> no um though i'm sure she would interpret this as meaning that the right wing has basically successfully demonized the transit so right yeah obviously However, these bills, of course, aren't posed as limiting the rights of transgender people. They're pitched as securing rights for women in sports and as protecting children from woke indoctrination and grooming. And these talking points and fears have their root both in the bedrock of the religious rights, but also in the growth of white power movements since the election of Donald Trump. <laughs> I love that. That, uh, that, that photograph from Charlottesville, doesn't she? She just loves yep. that photograph. Oh my yep. goodness. Loves to pin that on the right. <laughs> Loves it. 
Mm-hmm. Remember last week when we talked about book bans and how Nazis burned tens of thousands of books to symbolize a new, clean, reborn Germany? Well, now we have to watch another video set. <laughs> I know it's never. I told you it never ends. I just the the defining of a book not being available to school kids in the library as a book ban or a book burning ridiculous yeah i know well a lesser known fact about nazi book burning is that a significant number of books that were burned were part of the library of jewish sexologist magnus hirschfield who's oh my god it's the transatlantis adam it's transatlantis no way we found it again i have to research this i have to research this stupid fucking place if because only. it gets brought up by everyone okay i know it's these a big, it's a white left, whale. Yeah, these people on the left bring up this stupid fucking place as like the trans cornucopia Atlantis, right? Yep. So, oh my God, everything magical and amazing and the evil Nazis came and burned it down. And you know who else brings it up? Who? The fucking Nazis. The fucking white nationalists bring this shit up. You have fucking on fre- Fresh and Fit. Everyone was talking about this stupid conversation between Destiny... Uh, Sneeko, Zerka, and uh, what's his name? Nick Fuentes. Mm-hmm. And so, and, and the whole thing is like, they're all talking about the fucking Jewish question. And I'm so glad Sneeko has just decided to latch on to the Jewish question. And he's bringing up this stupid fucking place too to throw it at like, it's the Jews that have brought it, that created transgenderism, Destiny. <laughs> like, really? I just, yes, really? it's like fucking hell. Everyone brings up this stupid place. That's the fuck place. That's the level the of discourse Atlantis. now. Yes, that's the discourse. That's that's now the white nationalist racist discourse. The Jews created the transes. Okay. Wow. And the Nazis tried to stop them. Yes. It's, you know, I watched part of that conversation. So some people recommended we cover it. And I'm like, first of all, we we literally can't cover it because I don't even think you can watch that without getting like struck on YouTube. <laughs> I don't know if you can watch. Nick Fuentes debating the Jewish question. I don't know. I'm not sure if we'll be allowed to watch that. Yeah, why are we no, doing that? Right. Number one. Number two, I'm wa- I'm like listening to this dumb fuck conversation. And I'm like, I'm so happy, sarcastically. I'm so happy that now, because Fresh and Fit and their fucking dumb fuck idiocy thinks like they're going to start pushing... Uh, the Jewish question now to literally prove every woke person right in their mind because mm-hmm. that was the whole woke thing oh my god all these people on the right it's just all a pathway to Nazism everything's a pathway to Nazism right that was the fucking thing we heard for six years you still we're everything's still a pathway here to Nazism. what are you talking about they still believe in the pipeline I know we've heard this stupid pipeline shit and now fucking the dumb fuck idiots at Fresh and Fit are like let's lean into it and do it Let's fucking do it. Let's do the pipeline that they've been fucking whining about this whole time. Yeah. We know the red pill thing is about supposed to be about women. Let's just throw the fucking Nazis into it too. And white nationalism into it too. And I'm like, you fucking idiot. Yeah. Holy shit. The brain rot on these dumb fucks. It's mind blowing to me how fucking stupid they are. Myron's dumb fuck ass goes on. A, a call we talked about this before he goes on a call and he puts on a kkk hood as a joke right. and he's like pretending to be super racist and the joke is supposed to be oh lol this is what they think I, like we are but then you go and do it and you promote it that's not a fucking joke anymore you idiot yeah, you just then put you're the just clip fucking of, doing the thing you just put the clip of him in the kkk hood and then him talking about the kkk stuff and you're you're it's good to like, go oh i was just like fuck this is so stupid. You have these fucking brain rot people who are like, it is so funny. Destiny brought this up when he was talking about Sneeko. Sneeko is like the biggest NPC ever. <laughs> because True. whenever you, yeah. you listen to him talk, everything is the matrix this, the matrix that. And it, his entire worldview is whatever the mainstream media says, I'm just the, the opposite, opposite of. of yeah. Right. That's literally his epistemological lens. Is I'm just the opposite of whatever the fucking mainstream says. And so it's like, oh, well, if the mainstream says the Jewish question is bad, I guess I'm going to go fucking dive into the Jewish question. And I'm like, fuck, this is so dumb. Really? 
And he calls everyone else bots. It's hilarious. It's yeah, it's so hilariously stupid. Where did you see that cartoon of him going around? Like all the people he's talked to. Like and every time he talks to someone new, he believes something new. I oh, I haven't seen that. No. Yeah. No. But it's like, I it's just from this optic standpoint, and I the people fresh and fit, I, they're gotta be fucking retarded. Like this is idiot. They have the really good thing going. They have a really good griff going, right? They want to now throw in with the race Nick Fuentes and racism and and the Jewish question and shit. I just that's retarded. Yeah. What the? What are you? Why would you want to ruin your brand this way? Why would you want to put paint this giant target on your back? I don't know. It's yeah. fucking mind blowing to me. But okay, it's so stupid. It's so stupid. It's so painful. Sounds painful. Right. I'm glad I didn't listen to it. Yeah. Oh god. I heard it's a painful people, conversation. I saw people talking it. about it, and I was like, "What?" Like Destiny debated the the Jewish question or something. Right. Is it really a debate over the Jewish question? Did they yes. set up a debate where they're like? It's literally a fucking debate about the Jewish question. No. Was did it, hold on? Did it just break out on some show, or did they? No, it like, was like set, I think it. My understanding is that it was set up to be a fucking debate on the Jewish question. For real? Yes. I don't even know why Destiny agreed to do it. Um, but I mean, I guess maybe his thought process was, you know, if he doesn't do it, they're going to get someone else to do it. Or they're just going to have Nick go off on the Jewish question unopposed for two hours on Fresh and Fit for some fucking reason. Hmm. But, and then I don't even know how, like I was listening, to, I didn't listen to the whole conversation, but I don't, I don't even know how Destiny puts up with Zerka at all because he's so he's like so horrifically bad faith in that conversation. It's just, I don't know why he doesn't cut ties with that guy. I just, I don't know. And the same thing with Sneeko. Like, it's just like, it's weird to me that, you know, you try to have like, if like, here's an example, here's how I would feel about it. Okay. We try to have like a friendly rapport with Brianna Wu mm -hmm. or the Vanguard boys or some other people that we know that we have, significant ideological disagreements with right right if we were on a panel where like everyone else on the panel was like pretty like far left wing and on that panel all of a sudden kind of like our charity or our rapport with vanguard boys or brown or someone else like melted away and they just like totally strung in the fuck out of us and attacked us in the most bad faith way possible i'd be like oh this person's a piece of shit yeah, we, we've had that happen before. We always dump them. This right, is why we're making fun of Dave, the distributor, because that, that's what he does all the time to us. Well, well, I mean, that, that scenario I'm talking about never happened with us. Like, we never were on a panel with Dave. Right, but... No, but I'm, they do start straw manning and not really... Right, right, right. right. Yeah. But what I'm saying Being is, like... bad faith, that kind well, of Well, yeah, but we never had, like, a particularly good rapport with him in the first place. But what I'm saying is, like... And that's, to me, is what's so fucking wild about Sneeko... In Zerka with Destiny, is that like when they're on talking to him one on one, that's like, oh, you know, they're trying to have this like reasonable, rational conversation. But as soon as they're like on Fresh and Fit or some other place where Destiny's outnumbered, it's like all the fucking bad faith attacks, all the bullshit just comes out. And like, I don't know, to me, I would personally find that behavior disgusting because it means that these people are like low people of low integrity, low moral character, right? If like when you're talking to them one on one, oh, they're going to be like totally good faith and nice. But then when they're in front of, an audience where they know that the audience wants blood, they totally throw their, they throw that away. They throw any goodwill that they had towards you away and they just become like a fucking piece of shit to you. Yeah, that, that happens because it's kind of like mob mentality when they're all on those big panels. They got like yes. six or seven yes. people there and they're all, oh, right. look, we're teaming up. We're ganging up. Right. Let's gang up on this person. Yep. Six yep. on one. That's the NPC brain right there. That's of course. The it NPC is. right there. Yeah. Yeah. So, but anyway, I got to look in this stupid fucking, I got to look into this stupid fuck. I can, I can just predict, this is my prediction. And I know so little about this. There's going to be like some seed of truth here that these people study gays and transes, but it, that this whole thing is like super hyperbolized and overblown to some massive extent on both sides. That'd mm -hmm. be my guess. Knowing nothing about this stupid fucking transatlantic shit. Yeah. But anyway. A lot of people want to, they want to believe that there's something that is 
culturally powerful that is just a complete lie. Like, this is why people go after the moon landing. This is why mm -hmm. people try to say MLK was pro-violence. Right. You know, they want to say that society has some historical fact completely wrong just to, like, fuck with people. Sure. Which, all that shit, it's just, I don't like that shit. Sure. You, you just said dope. <laughs> well, the thing is, it's just, yeah, like, society, you know, we're talking about, like, right now, American society has the mainstream is wrong about how to discuss trans issues right now. Okay. Yeah. Right. That doesn't mean the Nazis were right. <laughs> okay. <laughs> it doesn't mean there's Bold. a fucking conspiracy theory that's been spanning a hundred years with the fucking Jews. Right. Like it's just, it's so stupid. It's so fucking dumb just because this is why when she brought like it's, it bothers me because people can't see it. Like, it's so politically biased. If if you're on the right, okay, and and I point out to you, I'm like, look at this idiot in this video. She's with no. She's like, oh, the religious right had this conspiracy because you know first it started with you know the the abortion stuff, and then it became the gay marriage stuff, and now it's the trans stuff. And and here it is. Can't you see? Can't you see the connection? Even though she doesn't like show you the connection, she says, can't you see the connection? Because all the people on the left intuit the connection right there's no actual connection but they intuit the connection yeah okay they see enough coincidence coincidences they see enough similarities that they can rub it together in their mind they say well why is it always the christian conservatives that are against all these issues it must be a conspiracy theory right because it's always the christian conservatives that are on, on these issues and then and yet the same people can then not everyone obviously hopefully not people in our audience but some people who could see that if i explained it to them because it's not because it's attacking their political identity, they can't see the reverse of that when it comes to the Jewish question shit. Yeah, they just immediately fall into it, like, oh my god, blinders. Uh, you know, yeah, it's just I see all these like vague coincidences, and I'm just rub them together in my mind. Don't you see the connection, Sitch? Don't you see the connection? I'm gonna disregard all the evidence that points against the, the opposite thing. Yeah. But okay, whatever. That claim to secret knowledge is the, the big thing that they want. Yeah. But that's where the that's part of where the smugness comes from. It's like, <laughs> I have the secret knowledge, right? Everything in the world is just a battle of power. Yeah. Power structures. Whose Institute of Sexual Studies was the first clinic in the world to provide surgical interventions allowing trans people to live in the bodies they wanted. The and it was at the bottom of the sea in Atlanta. <laughs> The institute opened in 1919 and provided care and sought to dispel shame around same-sex relationships and gender nonconformity, as well as publishing path-breaking research into trans affirmative care. And nearly a century later... I mean, it's, it's, it's hard for me to imagine that in, like, 1930, mm -hmm. there was groundbreaking surgery, no successful surgery on, like, transitioning. Didn't was, break any ground, just really, paths. I don't know. Paths. I, I'm just, I'm a little skeptical that in 1930... Right. They could have like done a lot of good medical operations for these super hyper complicated trans procedures. Back in 1930, when most prescriptions were cocaine, <laughs> most medicinal prescriptions were cocaine. <laughs> right. Like I was listening to someone talk about um, how these hospitals, like how expensive a lot of like bottom surgeries are, and how like like these are like the most complicated, expensive. Um, have incredibly high uh, complication rate things that are like happening in medicine in the year 2023. And I'm like, okay, it's really 1930. There was like success with, I'm just, I don't know. When did they discover germ theory? <laughs> I feel like. I mean, I'm sure it was before 1930. But... <laughs> so the 1800s, wasn't it? I don't know. I'll but I just up. like, I just, I don't know. This fucking thing is so stupid. Yeah. White nationalist horror at gender nonconformity and hatred towards trans people remains at the center. Just, this, like, I don't get the connection here. The connection is, this is the connection. The Republicans are Nazis. That's what she's saying. Right. Okay. That's what she's saying. That's why she's What does this gender up. have anything to do with race? She is trying to say, this is what she's doing. She's saying, look, there were these, there were these people in Nazi Germany who were pro-trans. And the Nazis came and they destroyed their research and burned all their books. 
Right. You know who else is is burning all your books? That was what led into this. You know who else was getting rid of all your books? Nazis. The Republicans. Okay. Therefore, vis-a-vis, -vis, ergo ad hoc proctum, that Ridiculous. means... Ridiculous. Ridiculous, oh, that the Republicans are Nazis. Right. Anyone who's who doesn't want women in sports is a white supremacy. Right. Is a white supremacist. There are is a far right movements in the United States. Is white supremacy. They're doing a white supremacy. Okay. Trans women in sports. Yes. Obviously, women shouldn't play sports either. Though. Right. We all know that's... Yes. And nearly a century later, white nationalist horror at gender nonconformity and hatred towards trans people remains at the center of far right movements. And see, this that's just insane to me. Right. White, you're a white nationalist with horror at gender nonconformity. Mm -hmm. <sighs> the United States. A post from July 18th, 2021. What, what do you call a black person? That doesn't like this trans stuff. They're white supremacists. What do you mean? The black face <laughs> of white supremacy. That's why, it, look, it doesn't make any sense at all. Doesn't make any sense Don't at all. Don't you see the connections, Adam? It's all connected. Everything's connected. Where's that? Look, I'm going to go back to the photo. Because the photo was six African Americans <laughs> holding a sign that say, Stop grooming our kids. Those people were all Nazis, Adam. Those were all you. white supremacists. Those were all there's a black face of white supremacy. Yeah. Clarence Thomas Ridiculous. Is a white supremacist. I don't know if you know this. He's black, but he is he's white. He wants to sell his blackness to acquire whiteness as property. Okay. This video is the fakest fake news on YouTube. It's pretty bad. On, on the neo-Nazi blog Occidental Observer by open white supremacist Andrew Joyce is an example of this. In the post, he attacked both Magnus Hirschfeld's activism on behalf of LGBTQ people and a 1934 book that condemned racism in all its forms, saying, Look, guys, I found a Nazi online who agrees with me. <laughs> <laughs> That's literally what uh, she's saying. Uh... Who, look, you can find a Nazi online with an opinion for anything. Right. It doesn't mean it's a big <laughs> social movement. Or does it mean that you should take their word for it, that it's accurate information? <laughs> I know. Come on. <laughs> Please. And love as a concept was altered and weaponized by Hirschfeld, who imbued it with transcendental and cosmic Jesus qualities Christ. in an effort to distance it as much as possible from biological reproductive drives. Racism, homophobia, and transphobia, which together essentially boil down to the idea that whites should be able to live normally and by themselves, are perceived today as beyond the sphere of this deified love and are therefore representative of a kind of modern heresy. There, see, you were saying, what does white supremacy have to do with the, with the, the trans question? Well, there you go, Adam. Look, and neo-Nazi said it, so it's true. She found a Nazi online that's a transphobe, so therefore yeah. right. it makes her argument. Right. Who, who's, for some reason, asserted white identity related to sexuality, which they shouldn't really have any relation to do with each other, right. but okay. So. Okay. Okay. Yes. <laughs> oh. Okay. Oh, good. <laughs> Okay. Basically, gayness, gender nonconformity, and anti-racism are seen as an attack on the existence of white people. This is a stark example of how racism and transphobia are intertwined in the modern white power movement. Gender nonconformity <laughs> threatens their worldview, one that is fixated on immutable and antiquated gender roles, where white women are seen as walking wombs that must be used to replenish the declining white birth rates and reverse replacement of the white race by non-white children. The desirable qualities in a woman are chastity, submission, and silence, and the vitriol- What does this have to do with conservatives? <laughs> the name of the video is Why Are Conservatives So Obsessed With Trans Kids? He's been half the video talking about nothing to do with trans issues, okay? We only got two minutes left, and I still don't have an answer to the question. <laughs> then we were then we were given the, the thesis statement that, well, it's, a, it's all a power game. It's a cynical power game because they were following polling, even though supposedly the polling said they didn't agree with the very thing they were doing two minutes later. And now it's because Nazis, because you found some Nazi somewhere on the internet who doesn't like it. Okay. 
I don't give a fuck what the Nazis like and don't like. I don't give a shit. What does that have to do with the broader conservative movement? This one Nazi controls all the polling in the Republican Party. Come on, <laughs> yeah, Sitch. apparently. Okay. Montreal and hate being spouted on far-right neo-Nazi chat rooms and blogs is often reiterated and given validation by Fox News hosts. <laughs> oh, there it is! There it is! Oh my God! Fox News is spreading the Nazis. That's how it is. <laughs> there we go. We have the connection, everyone. Oh, this is crazy. We go from Nazi Nazi chat room to Fox News. Posts, prominent influencers spouting disinformation and pushing the narrative that LGBT people are child groomers, like Libs of TikTok, a Twitter account with over 2 million followers. And by Libs of TikTok, well-known Jewish conservative Nazi. <laughs> Wait a minute. Yeah, of course. That's what they don't she's care like a, about that. She's not just Jewish. She's like super Jewish too. Isn't she like like um, super Jewish? What does that mean? She's like very like she's like a very conservative sect of Judaism. Really? Too. I think so. Hmm. Okay. But so, like, is she is she one of the Nazis? Why is why is this very conservative Jewish lady promoting Nazism? Yeah, all of this is just all this entire video is designed to avoid the topic. <laughs> of course. Yeah. The real topic Lee Leja is on not on firm ground. Her position is really going to eventually be proven to be incorrect. And uh so this is all just smoke and mirrors. Mm -hmm. To avert that point. She can't engage the actual argument because the argument has merit. So what she's trying to do is smear the people who are making the argument. Make it seem as though they're all Nazis and white supremacists. You're giving her too much credit. She doesn't understand that her argument is shallow. She honestly thinks, that, she honestly believes this dumb conspiracy that she's promoting. She thinks well, she's like, a useful mm -hmm. idiot for the right for this... Look, she doesn't have to. She doesn't have to understand what she's doing to actually be doing it, though. Right. She don't. She is smearing the people who are making the argument with these claims. Right. Of course. But you're you're saying what are you saying that she? I'm saying that she. It's not like she she's doesn't not understand sit, the argument. She's, she's not, not like, oh, I have a weak argument, so I'm going to make a bunch of like specious, fallacious claims. Like she, just, in her mind, all these connections she's making all, all make sense. It's so logical, so rational. You just don't see it because you're just one of the bad people. Okay, the conspiracy makes perfect sense in the mind of the conspiracy-brained individual. Yeah, but the, it's not. It's not logical. <laughs> She well, I agree, but... You can't convince me that this is, like, logical. Well, there's a certain logic to it. There's a logic to it. It's just a bullshit logic. It's just a logic that's not proven by any facts, at least that she's presented in this video. I think this is just a smear campaign. I don't think okay. she buys... I, don't dis I mean, it is a smear Look, campaign. I don't, I don't think she you, buys but... any of this stuff. I think she knows I... the argument, and I think nope. she's just... I think you're falling into... You gotta be careful. I think you're falling into a trap here. She definitely no. buys into this shit. No. Okay. This is dishonest. Well, it, well, you can buy into something and still be dishonest. <laughs> what do you mean? Because you can be dishonest in terms of, like, you believe it, but even if you don't really have evidence to prove it, you're going to kind of, like, fudge what you select to prove your point because you believe it's true even if you can't find exactly what you're right. trying to prove. So she she believes that she's saving the transgender children right. by lying about people being white supremacists and stuff. Well, I would wager. I don't think she's lying about that. I think she honestly thinks... This would be my guess if you were to ask her. She would say she thinks that there's a bunch of useful idiots on the right that are not actually white supremacists, but are basically doing the bidding unwittingly of white supremacists. Right. That'd be my guess. If you were to, if you were to pose this to her, that'd be the most charitable position she would give. Right. Sure. That'd be my guess. Let's see if she actually answers the question. Why are conservatives so obsessed with trans kids? Okay. Is it because they're white supremacists? Is to it because win power. 
Is it is it because they want to win elections? Right. Is it because they want a, an abortion ban? Why are they obsessed? By a speeches by Donald Trump, where he either blatantly espouses the same values or gives the Proud Boys a nod and a wink on national television. Writer and researcher Talia Lavin sums it up well in a recent article, writing, what the far right proclaims through explicit street violence. Talia Lavin. Why does that name sound familiar to me, Sitch? I don't know. Why does that name sound familiar to you? Do you know who that is? Who is that? That's a crazy, crazy, uh, the crazy lady. The insane lady. Oh my God, she's insane. Culture warlords, my journey into the dark web of white supremacy. You no. Remember? Yeah. That's oh ins- no. Yeah. That's the totally, totally insane. Oh no. <laughs> yeah. I think she blew up on Greyjoy, didn't she? I think her and Greyjoy had a very public falling out. Well, this is where maybe this is where she got this theory from. It says the book describes the present day encounters while tracing the distant and near right history near sorry, the distant and near history of the alt right from medieval European blood libel to Henry Ford's mainstreaming of anti-Semitic ideas to Gamergate Mm -hmm. and the stories of some kind of radicalized YouTuber. So it's all connected. It's all connected. It's all connected. Journalist. And you know who's, you know who looked at this and said it's all connected and said, yes. Who? Fresh and fit. They're like, let's connect the dot for the left. Let's connect it all. Like oh, the dumb no. fucks that we are, everybody. Please, no. Yeah. I found a video. Brianna Greyjoy details her viral dispute with Talia Levin. Well, she had a I dispute hope, with her. I hope we can uh, clear the air. Yeah. I Brianna, don't, I mean, I think we were going to cover the podcast. I don't know that we ever did. I remember but, this at all. Yeah, Brianna Greyjoy had her... On the Bad Faith podcast, Tali on the Bad Faith podcast, and Brianna Greyjoy, if I if I'm remembering correctly, oh, I do remember this now. Was yes. calling her out, basically saying, yes. "You're promoting a bunch of fake news. What you're talking about is just like obviously factually incorrect." It was too crazy for even Brianna. It was too crazy for Brianna Greyjoy. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> All right, That's and. Funny. So they had a big dispute over that because she was like, oh, my God, how dare you? I was assaulted. Like, she basically went into Discord servers and, like, posed as a white supremacist to kind of Mm -hmm. entice white supremacy out of these kids. And I I don't know the situation. I never read her book or anything, but... I do kind of vaguely remember this. We were going to cover this, and we never did. She was trying to pitch it as... You know, this was this, you know, was it caused her some sort of existential crisis? And Brown is like, wait a second, you mm -hmm. just talked to a bunch of Nazis online and like you weren't in any physical danger or anything. (laughs) She's like, but I felt like I was in physical danger. I think part of the disagreement was because when I when I look up her video on Mm -hmm. the Bad Faith podcast, it's titled Punching Nazis versus De Radicalization. And if I recall correctly, Natalia lady was advocating for violence. Oh yes. And that was, yes. And that was the, the core disagreement between her and Brianna's. Brianna didn't want to advocate for violence. And Talia was like, it was so funny. They're not was looking at <laughs> Talia was looking at Brianna as like, you're like a liberal moderate cuck, you know, who's like afraid of <laughs> Yeah, because she's like violence. a total anarchist and shit. Right. Yeah. I forgot about this. Yeah, it was yeah. hilarious. So anyway, I knew I recognized that name. And so wait, so this person is citing this person as some kind of like source of of information. Boys a nod and a wink on national television. Writer and researcher Talia Lavin sums it up well in a recent article. Uh, (laughs) Yeah. Oh, she sums it up well. Purveyor of fake news. 
writing, what the far right proclaims through explicit street violence, it wants to reinforce with the implicit violence of the state. Bills that seek to suppress anti-racist education, anti-trans legislation that seeks to codify antiquated gender roles, and the severe and continual restriction of abortion rights in states with right-wing legislatures typify the ways hatred of gender nonconformity, a desire to control women's bodies, and racism intermingle. As a result of this, the last two years have been the deadliest for transgender people, especially Black transgender women, with nearly one in five of all hate crimes motivated by anti-LGBTQ bias. Trans Americans are four times more likely to be victims of violent crime. 86%. Wait, did she say, she said this was a recent article? She says in a recent article. This article's from 2021. But recent. That recent two-year-old article. Why would she say that? You could just say in an article. Why would you say it's recent? Well, because it sounds better for your internet video. Okay. This, um... I gotta read this art. This person... There's an article in Salon. It's called, What's Antifa? Question mark. Journalist Tal Talia Levine on the reality behind the media's pernicious lies. Confused about Antifa, so is everyone. Quote, anti-fascists have a purpose, says Talia. It's in the fucking name. <laughs> oh, nice. Thank you, Talia. It's very, uh, very informative. So she's so she's obviously pro-Antifa. So you so know this, she's a credible source of information. This article is the one that she cites? No, no, no. This is a different article. The article she cites is in The Nation that's actually okay. written by Talia. And it's called, Why Transphobia is at the Heart of the White Power Movement. Convenient. Convenient, right? Oh, and look, right in the beginning of it, she brings up Trans Atlantis. Of course. So now we know where uh, this this YouTuber got, you know, the idea for this uh, YouTube video, or at least that section of the YouTube video. So. Yeah. <sighs> Do you want to read it to us? I mean, you might as well if you're going to read it. No, it looks really boring and stupid. Okay. Yeah. We're almost done with the video. I know. Of trans or non-binary youth reported in a 2022 survey that they experienced negative effects on their mental health stemming from the political debate around trans issues. And nearly half had seriously considered suicide in the past year. Because again, say it with me, it's never been about protecting children. So why are conservatives so obsessed with trans kids? Oh my God, Sitch. Oh. We're going to get there. Here it is. Oh, my God. We've got so 47 excited. seconds left, Adam. Do you think you're going to get an answer to this question? I'm so excited. Are you excited? Is it Don't be. You're not going to get an answer. Is it going to be social contagion? Is it going to be the social contagion? It's going to be Nazis and power. Is it going to be Nazis. misdiagnosis of their children? What's it going to no. be? kids because they're an easy scapegoat and a new way to once again fearmonger their base into turning up at the polls to vote. And what can you do about it? You have to be more stubborn than them. You have to show up to vote, especially in local elections where this is happening. You have hilarious, hilarious. She's basically fearmongering people to vote. Is fear she's saying, listen, they're just doing it to fearmonger. So I have to out fearmonger their fearmonger and tell you you have to show up to vote to out fearmonger their fearmonger. How ironic is that? <laughs> that how dare they fearmonger? <laughs> and here I am fearmongering about them. <laughs> Look, they just want to use these children as pawns. Yes. In their ultimate these goal of taking over and destroying everything. These horrible fearmongers want to fearmonger. Mm -hmm. making you all afraid right but no you need to be afraid of them can you read to me the definition of projection because i feel like this <laughs> completely applies here not only that she's saying look this is why we have to vote to maintain power <laughs> <laughs> jesus fucking christ what the oh fuck my is this? god yeah. have to get into their base into turning up at the polls to vote 
And what can you do about it? You have to be more stubborn than them. You have to show up to vote, especially in local elections where this is happening. You have to get into the ear of your lawmakers, your city council members, your school board members. Be relentless. The power in the conservative movement, especially in the religious right, is that they're active in local politics and they show up. So you just need to show up more. If you liked this video, you'll also like my last video about why conservatives are obsessed with banning books. Thank oh, it never ends, Adam. The whole, the spiral. We can watch these stupid videos for a lifetime. It doesn't. So I looked it up. Projection. Yeah. The unconscious transfer of one's own desires or emotions to another person. Wow. It's like a perfect there fit. There Imagine you go. Imagine that. Yes. Interesting. Imagine that. Imagine that. Ugh. I have a feeling we're going to watch another Legion video pretty soon. Well, it's, ugh, we've been sleeping on this person. We've been sleeping on this terrible content this whole time. Not an original thought in any I of know. this. Okay. All lies. All lies and deceit. Sitch and I are both split on the monster category. I think firmly monster is fair, um, true, and... Okay objectively observable i just i look if any anyone who is going to lie so indiscriminately about their political rivals i think it's safe to classify as a monster anyone who's going to come out here and say listen we have a real fake news problem because of political polarization and then make the most politically polarizing video on the internet and right. post it to their channel. I think the monster category applies. I really do. So I will grant you that whether she believes it or not, even if we remove the lying aspect of it, I do think that broadly associating your political opponents with Nazis is a monstrous act. Yeah, so we'll grant you is. that. Okay. So I, I do, I do, that is a really massive strike against her. Yeah. For doing that. Everyone is a Nazi thing. So. Yeah, that's her brand. Uh, Twitter sucks for $20. Thanks so much, our surrogate godfather. Twitter sucks. Says one of my gripes with Brianna Wu was she kept framing conservatism in the same way. Quote, right wing power. They want to project fascism while simultaneously claiming that they are the ones that are standing up for your rights. A lot of that, I think, is just the stereotype, the stereotype talking, and mm -hmm. I do. I feel like, I feel like Brianna Wu is, is reasonable enough that we might be able to break through that stereotype a bit. So maybe I'm naive, but I do feel like she seems. I think we're making some progress. Yeah, I feel like she seems open to coming on. And uh, and you know. I tried this when I did my series with Isaac. My, I did a series of videos with a friend of mine who's obviously in the progressive bubble, lives in San Francisco, <laughs> holy shit. Mm -hmm. Went to UC Berkeley, like all the stereotypes, just completely, that's Isaac. And um, I, I tried to bring on a conservative that was just a nice guy to talk to Isaac, thinking, okay, this will break the stereotype. It didn't actually work, but I think that's a. I think that Bri Brianna is interacting with people in the YouTube space and seeing that there is a wide variety of different opinions among conservatives, and she's seeing some that are more reasonable and some that are less reasonable, and I think it's starting to destroy that stereotype a bit. Isaac never I did agree. that. Isaac just interacted with me on one stream, so he didn't really right. have the kind of vision that well, I think here, Brianna is getting. Right, Brianna had half of a uh, half of an awakening because she was like hyper into internet online politics, and then she goes into the real world politics and is like slapped into the face of like, oh, internet politics is like this completely different animal. That's not how the real world. True. Works. Yeah, she talked about that. Right, exactly. So that puts her in a, in a in a frame of mind to be more open to um, understanding and accepting things that would contradict uh, 
her worldview, her previous established worldview, right? With Isaac, I don't nothing like that ever happened. Of course not. Right? Yeah. He's still comfortable in his little bubble. So Yep. Got a little pillow in there. <laughs> <laughs> He's taking a nap. Right. The now Brianna never went through stuff. the full metamorphosis of, of Anna, but maybe we'll get there one day. <laughs> This is kind of the difference between these video essayists and uh, actual streamers. I think it is more difficult for streamers to stay in their ideological echo chamber because they're dealing with other people. So the um, world can kind of hmm. present situations that are kind, kind of unexpected where I, if you're just doing video essays, you're basically just cherry picking. I mean, you're doing the Google search. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna disagree. Oh, are you? I think streamers are better at crafting arguments because they have to directly interact with people in real time. And so they're better at arguing positions. But I don't think streamers are more open necessarily to new ideas. Well they I think least... they're just as closed minded as like the video essay is. Well the, look, I, I can accept that to a certain extent. I mm -hmm. guess I guess that there are streamers who are exposed to new ideas, but they just bounce off them like they don't even hear them. I think that's them. like everyone. That's like 99% yeah. of streamers. Okay, I guess you're right. So they are just, they're still in their ideological echo right. chamber. Even though people are exposing them to new ideas all the time, they don't listen. I noticed, like, that was a big difference. We We have a lot of people on, and I do notice a difference in some people... Like, they're just kind of waiting for their turn to talk. They're not really listening to what you're saying or responding right. to anything you're saying. Uh, we do have good conversations, though, where people do actually engage, and you have, like, a back and forth. It's like night and day. It really is. It is. It is, yeah. Um, but going back to the video essays for a second, since I was waiting for my turn to talk. Oh, you were? <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Uh, but, go um, ahead. There, there, is a, there is something that happens that I have unique insight into as you... someone who used to be a video essayist. <laughs> so do people still beg to return to being a video essayist? Someday. Um, someday. Uh, when you're writing these, I've noticed this weird thing that happens when you're writing scripts and you're kind of like editing a video where it can be very easy for the sake of crafting a coherent narrative sentence to promote whatever idea you're doing to cut corners and to simplify and hyperbolize an argument. Mm -hmm. And I don't really know how to explain this except to people who have done it because it doesn't necessarily make sense until you've been in it. But once you do it, like, and when I watch other video essays, video essays, I can kind of see it where I'm like, oh, they worded that sentence in this specific way because to kind of give the full nuance of the sentence would make it too long and like ruin the flow of the video. Mm -hmm. Because when you're kind of doing the video essayist thing, you're sort of not just telling people information like you, like we are when we're having this conversation on a stream, you're editing a product in a narrative flow. And so I think that just the style of the video essay promotes people to kind of engage in information in a hyperbolized, dumbed down, simplistic um, unnuanced way it doesn't have to, but I think it just it can very often lead to that that pathway. Simplified to the point where it's deceptive. Yes. Okay. Because I know there are times where I'm like writing my scripts and I'm like, oh, I can't say that because if I say that, I'm not really giving the full nuance. But then I'm like, well, how do I give the full nuance without destroying the flow of like right? Because I have to do like... an entire side quest here just to exactly, explain this right. one concept. Right. And so that happens a lot in these situations. And I, so I think that happens in video essays. I also think the fact that video essays, people who don't stream and just do video essays, it, I think it's easier for them to become wrapped in a cocoon of like stupid echo chamber shit, even more so than streamers, just because they never get any pushback. Or if there's just pushback in the comments, they just sort of ignore it or, or not look at it or whatever. You know, We see this with Philosophy Tube and, and people like that. So... Remember in the last video when Legia talked about how right-wing outlets will just promote fake news because it confirms the bias of their audiences? 
Yeah. Doesn't that perfectly describe this video? Of course. That's the projection you're talking about. Right. Yeah. So. Yeah. Very sad. Uh, Mark Twain's Revenge, our circuit uncle, for one hundred dollars. Thank you so much, Mark Twain's Revenge. It's incredibly generous of you. Oh yeah, awesome. Says gents, I took your advice and got the Righteous Mind on Audible based. Nice. After I finished it, I bought a soft cover copy to go over it again. Nice. I did the same. Yep. Uh, after that book, I picked up Thomas Sowell's, also known as Thomas Sowell, mm -hmm. uh, Thomas Sowell's Conflict of Visions, and it weirdly perfectly expands upon the framework that Height laid down. Totally agree. You've read Conflict of Visions? Of course. I've read a lot of Thomas Sowell. What is it? What is it about? Conflict of Visions is about kind of the mindset of the progressive versus the mindset of the conservative. And he lays out the progressives have a very social constructionist outlook on life. So they perceive human nature as infinitely malleable where conservatives have a more reserved belief in the powers of the malleableness of human nature. So, which I, I mean, I agree. I think his, his, um, his thesis is right on. So he, he doesn't necessarily, he comes at it from a kind of a philosophical perspective where height comes at it from a psychological perspective. So height is obviously trying to bolster all of his claims with evidence and studies and whatnot. Mm -hmm. But Thomas Sowell does it from kind of a philosophical and he points to historical examples. And I mean, that's the way the, pe um... people used to do it anyway, right? Is this tied into the whole the left generally believes that human nature is inherently good and the right thinks human nature is inherently good? He covers sinful? that, yeah. Okay. Because I do I do agree with that. It does seem to make sense. Definitely seems to make sense currently right now. So. It's a great book. It's a great book. This I'll check is, it out. This is one of my one of my critiques of philosophy, which I don't obviously I don't just categorically hate philosophy, but a lot of philosophy written historically, you know, it's it's basically hypothesizing about human nature. But we're at the point where we've got computers and stuff like that. We can sort of kind of test those hypotheses empirically. And this is one of the reasons why I really like Dictator's Handbook is because they they go through the philosophy of Machiavelli, the political philosophy of Machiavelli, and they say like he was the one that got it closest to correct. And they use scientific studies and whatnot to kind of prove that. Mm -hmm. So, but a lot of, there's a lot of philosophy that I just think is wrong. And sure, maybe it survived for the same reason anything survives because people find meaning in it, even though it might not be factually correct. So. Nice. Yeah. There's another book, Talib's The Black Swan. Which for some, I read, I reread the Black Swan after I read The Righteous Mind, and I was like, wow, there's a lot of overlap in this book, too. But Talib is just such a terrible writer. <laughs> he, Talib is a brilliant thinker, and mm -hmm. like the ideas in that book are amazing, but the book itself is just poorly written. It, it, it kind of just, you know, it's very stream of consciousness from one idea to the other. Talib needs an editor badly. But there's right. a lot of ideas that are in The Righteous Mind that are also in The Black Swan. Hmm. So, the Height is always talking about Talib's idea of anti-fragile. Talib is the one that came up with the anti-fragile concept. Nice. Yeah. So, Says, Height, um, Height yeah. knows the value. Height is really, like, just an amazing writer. Yes, yeah. he is. And it's nice. He's got a good, nice, uh, silky voice when he narrates his books. So Yeah, totally. It says says, uh, Stephen Pinker said um, that Soul's explanation is the best theory given to date. So Stephen Pinker, big fan of The Conflict of Visions. Yeah, no, it's, a, it's, great. it's a great book. And nice. Thomas Soul is a great writer. Yeah. Right. Check it out. Yeah, I've read a bunch of his books. 
obviously. Come on. Twitter sucks for 20, 40, 60. Oh my God. Twitter sucks. Thank you so much for your incredible generosity. Twitter sucks. Our surrogate godfather. Mm -hmm. And by the way, I agree. Twitter does suck. Uh, Twitter sucks says, wait, for $20. Says, wait, if I'm understanding this correctly, the left is duplicating the Jewish question. <laughs> yes, they are. For decades, they've been making the comparison by saying the Nazis were Christians. Now this moron is continuing that by saying it's still the Christians' fault for banning books. The left, Vosh, says this himself. Quote, the next step for conservative fascism is to start blanking trans people. Yeah, killing trans people. I just love the notion of, quote, we should only trust white supremacists when they agree with conservatives and not with socialists. Basically, quote, if the Nazis say something like, I believe them, I wonder who that sounds like. Yeah, no, that's a great point. That's yeah. a great point. They, it's, they are basically just duplicating the Jewish question. Yep. And of course, Terrible. they'll like, we'll, we'll believe with the Nazis when it supports our ideology, right? But when it doesn't support our ideology. Mm -hmm. Remember when everyone tried to teach Kanye what race essentialism was? And he <laughs> never got it. He never figured it out. He knew. He everyone really, he... just gave up. <laughs> the conversation between him and Gavin McInnes is so funny. <laughs> Gavin's like, like, listen, everyone says I'm racist. Mm -hmm. And I hate Jews, but I'm not racist and I don't hate Jews. So, like, let me try to get you to not be racist or hate Jews either. And Kanye's like, nope. <laughs> nope. Fuck you. I'm going to be racist and hate Jews. And then, and then our mm -hmm. savior, Jonah Hill. Jonah Hill descended from the heavens. He finally, <laughs> he opened up Kanye's third eye. And he was like, listen, Kanye, look how funny I am in this movie. Don't that, hate the Jews. <laughs> that wasn't ever, like, there was no conversation between them online, right? No, I know. It was just his performance in 21 Drum Street was so funny that Kanye just Is that didn't really? hate Jews anymore. I don't, I heard Jonah Hill. I mean, that's what Kanye know. said. I don't know if it's true. <laughs> Is it really? You know, yes. I didn't that know was that the was thing. the case. It was, he saw him, he saw him in 21 Drum Street and he was so funny that he, he cured his racism. Wow. Yeah. That's such a B movie. Yes. I'll be honest, I haven't seen it. I heard it was funny. And it's by the Lego movie people, so. Oh, it's got to be good then. Got to be good. Never mind. Con Kanye West says, Jonah Hill made me like Jewish people again after watching 21 Jump Street. <laughs> it's a, so funny. Like, let's just, let's give, let's give Kanye the modicum of charity just for the sake of argument and say that this actually this is a true experience. This really happened to him, right? Mm -hmm. It really shows that Kanye is a hundred percent elephant and no writer. Cause it's like everyone in the world is trying to explain to him with like logic about why he shouldn't hate Jews. He doesn't care about any of that. But when he sees a funny Jewish man, his elephant's like, I like this guy. Yeah, it's totally. <laughs> and suddenly his opinion changes just because emotionally he's like, Oh, you know, played to his elephant. Social intuitionism all the way. Yeah. That's hilarious. Um, so, oh, this is funny. The, the directors of, of 21 Drum Street, Phil Lord and Chris, Christopher Miller, directors of Lego Movie and Spider-Verse, said, quote, um, thanks for watching. Laughter is the best medicine. So wow. there you go. There you go. So they actually are taking credit for saving Kanye. They are. They saved them in uh, Chris Miller, Phil Lord, and Jonah Hill. Wow. I would and put that's that on why my you know, resume. I that's would literally how, put saved Kanye West from anti-Semitism. They should. Yeah. They should. That would that's be how you great. Know, that's how you know that woman that accused Jonah Hill of being abusive is like right. extra, extra wrong. Okay. How dare this bitch. Right. Accuse Jonah Hill. National treasure. Cured Kanye West of his racism. Right. And, and anti-Semitism. How dare she accuse him of abuse because he doesn't want her posting thirst trap pictures on Instagram. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What? Jonah Hill, oh. the, the golden calf of anti anti-Semitism. Yes. How dare we never really, did we talk about that at all? That shit was like, that was the dumbest fucking shit ever. Oh my God. No, of course we didn't. That. So there was in case you're like living under a rock. Uh, Jonah Hill's ex-girlfriend came out, accused him of abuse because 
he was like, oh, don't post thirst trap pictures on Instagram. He didn't don't. want her to have sex with other guys. And she was like, ugh. Well, it wasn't that. It was like, she <laughs> didn't, he didn't, abuse. He didn't want her to be hanging out with, with certain guys alone. Right. He didn't want her to be posting thirst trap pictures in bikinis because she was some surfer or something. So she would be posting some, you know. Provocative pictures occasionally. Did he use the term thirst trap? Because that's pretty cool. No, he didn't, but that's what was being oh, okay. referenced. What did he call them? I don't remember exactly the language he used. Provocative? I think like bikini pictures or provocative pictures or something. Um, and he didn't want her hanging out with some friends that he thought were bad. Trying to bang her. her. Right. No, no, well, women that we thought were toxic for her. Oh. But here's the thing. At the end of it, at the end of the leaked DM that this person leaked to show that he was crazy... At the end of it, he said, you know, but if if you don't want that to be like, if you can't agree to my terms, that's fine. Then we're just not compatible. And, you know, I wish you like a happy life and we can just part ways amicably. Right? Yeah, I'm famous. I'll go get another girlfriend. So but it's just like he phrased it in the most mature way possible. He said, here are my guidelines for a relationship. If you don't if, if they don't work for you then we'll just, you know, we'll just separate and part ways, you know, on a on good terms, right? right. We sometimes you just have to acknowledge that different people have different guidelines or different rules for how a relationship right. should function and you're not always going to agree. Yeah. And that's it. And he handled it in the most mature way possible. And for this woman to come out like a year later out of the blue and suddenly to attack him and try to get him canceled over which the DMs make him look good is like batshit insane. Yeah, I mean, people do this kind of stuff because so. they want to raise their profile. Yeah, that's... This exactly is like it. the Jesse Smollett thing. She's yes. like, look, I was abused. I couldn't post a bikini photograph <laughs> on my Instagram for a whole year. Yeah, uh, my boyfriend didn't want me posting like lewd pictures. How how tragically terrible, right? Look, he's like, that's emotional abuse. He's trying to control yeah. me. God. I uh, think he was a Republican, too. <laughs> Toxic Mix for $20 says, but zitch. Did you start that or did I start that? I started that, but I got it from one of your videos. So I, I was going to say, I think I said one of my videos and then you started saying, but zitch. <laughs> but zitch. But zitch. Uh, Don't uh -huh. you know that most Republicans believe in one God and one race? And if you subtract one from one from the date of Charlottesville, subtract January 6th at Hitler's birthday and subtract <laughs> MLK Day, you get 9-11. Wow. That That's is true. some conspiracy mix. That's, That's basically That's the true. summary of this video we watched. Yeah. I mean, that's about it. That's about it. I think you nailed it, Toxic. I think I just recently rewatched your P plus P equals R video. No. Do, you, do you do the butt sitch in there? Butts it. Uh, I don't fucking remember. <laughs> Seems like that was a staple of a lot of your videos. I would say butt was a staple because I always had the butt. The picture, I know. I had the picture of Assy McGee that I would always shove on the screen when I would say butt. One of Sitch and so. one of my, mine and Sitch's first arguments, creative arguments, was over yeah. that butt. Because I always it? said, yeah, I always told Sitch, I'm like, Sitch. Why don't you use a nice butt? Like you have the perfect <laughs> opportunity to put a nice butt. I don't butt. remember this conversation at all. It's in the DMs. Go back. That's hilarious. I don't remember this one bit. I said, look, perfect opportunity. Put a nice butt in your video. You just know what? You're... Just a nice, cute butt. Right. I listen, And he's got to use this cartoon butt that's like. <laughs> Dassy McGee butt. Well, I did because it, it was funny. But you're but here's here's what I should do from an emotional, manipulative, uh, video essayist propaganda perspective. Okay. Yeah. If the butt is a butt I agree with, it's a sexy butt. There you go. Perfect. Right. It's a nice sexy lady butt. I go, but and I have some if nice it's sexy a butt, lady if butt. If it's a butt you don't agree with, it's like a terrible looking butt. It's the Assy McGee butt, right? So that's <laughs> see, that's the emotional priming. If it's a butt I agree with, I show a sexy butt so people get excited. So then they're more emotionally ready to right. agree with whatever I say. They're like, but look, I, a... how can I disagree with this butt? It's so cute yes. and round. Exactly. But if it's a bad butt, if it's a black sitch butt, 
then you whip out the Assy McGee butt. So, yeah. Yeah. You, you know what? I agree with that. That's a good Now, if you only critique. made videos again. I'll put it in my next video. I'll put a sexy. I'll go, but. And I'll have. See, if I, when I make my Spider-Man video, mm -hmm. I'll go, but. <laughs> and I'll zoom in on Miguel's butt in that one scene that everyone. My, my Spider-Man video. The spider butt. Oh, so yeah. It'll come out. When's Spider-Man going to come out on streaming? That's the oh, time you're right. That, that's the time to hit for the video. I should have well, it prepared. Or when the other, when the net new Spider-Man comes out. Well, I'm assuming the old one will come out on streaming first before that happens. But They say it's supposed to come out early next, next week. year. Yep. Oh, no. stream. It's going to streaming next week? No, really? no, no, no. I'm just joking. Oh. Anyway, though the part two is supposed to come out yeah, early no, next year, but then I read also read that this one was four years late, and I thought, oh shit, <laughs> maybe it's not going to come out. Well, yeah, but I'm assuming they've already, I would assume that they already started. They must have already been like working a lot on it because it's not like they could create the movie in one year or two years, right? It takes a long time. So, of course, yeah, that's what's taking so long. And also, the way that the directors work, they're kind of like, show me something amazing. Right. And they're there you like, go. Cat... no, that's not amazing. <laughs> Make it more amazing. Cat Branchman says, put a nice butt, but slap on some elf ears. <laughs> oh, Cat. <how laughs> that's dare... what you do. That's how what dare you? Do. I'll have a nice night elf butt with some giant ears, not only on her head, but on the butt. I'll put some nice big ears on each side of the, the butt. I feel about terrible. that. Ed. Yeah, that's the perfect idea. I'm going to do that. Uh, to the chat father for twenty dollars says Twitter is great. <laughs> the change they're implementing incentivizes good conversation. Enlightened centrists can make can make more bank than anybody. S class E use it, S class. Star. Boo! Oh, go! But thank you for the super chat. Thank you. Yeah, I'm I'm curious if the uh, monetization change is going to make Twitter conversations better or worse. I'm not sure. But I guess worse. we'll see. We'll see. Everyone is also saying the only ones that got paid were friends of Elon. Mm. That they Elon followed or or knew personally. And I, I don't think a that's bunch true. of people right. signed up to get monetization and it's just been in limbo forever. Right. So obviously it's an excellent well, it's a new feature, right? What's well, an excellent marketing ploy? to give big dollar amounts. Like if they let a bunch more people into the program and had to disperse the advertising money <laughs> over more people, they'd be smaller checks and it wouldn't be as big a, like you got to admit the big numbers are probably making a lot of people think I'm going to get monetized on Twitter. I'm going to sign up on Twitter. Mm -hmm. So if they sent, if the biggest check was like 500 bucks, you wouldn't get this effect. Right. I think one guy got like a hundred grand or something. So, well, I'll be honest. It doesn't look good for Elon if one of the first people he gave monetization to was Ian, who's like a buffoon, Ian <laughs> and a propagandist. Shot. Well, and also just all stolen content. That guy doesn't make content. What do you? What the fuck? That's true. Yeah. So, but he sucks up hardcore to Elon. He's like <laughs> every yeah. day. Elon. Oh, he does? He does. Like every tweet that Elon tweets, he replies to it like, oh my God, I love you. <laughs> I saw a tweet some girl had posted saying, what happens if I just upload content I steal off of TikTok? Do I still get money for it? And Nerdrotic, Gary, who I love, yeah. by the way, responded, you just described Ian Michael, Ian... Is it Ian Michael Chong? Ian Miles. Ian Miles Chong's entire Twitter account. <laughs> and I was like, I was like, based. That's so true. <laughs> That's so true. Ian Miles Chong. I have him muted, so I never see his stuff. So, oh, okay. Yeah. Because it's just I'm glad to see uh, Cindy stuff. Throwing shade at Ian. I don't know what they're. I know. I did like. Is, I but... had no idea that was a thing. Right. But I was like, yes. Based. A lot of people 
have had bad experiences. <laughs> so. But Gary's the best. I don't like uh, Gary has a bunch of haters online, and I don't understand it. Every time I listen to any of his content, he's just like the nicest guy, and he he literally try he does the same thing Mahler does. He he tries to stay away from politics and incendiary politics stuff. Well, I mean, he talks a lot about politics. Does he talk a lot about like woke shit? I mean, in the context of movies and TV shows, sure, right, but not really, not really. Like he's not vote for Trump or sure. The well, that's tra good. The least. trans kids are gonna right. I don't know. Maybe he does do more politics stuff. I don't know. No, I feel like he doesn't really. Do hmm. you, I mean critical drinker is acute. Look, all, a lot of these guys are accused of being political. But I I don't really think like I like I've said before and I've made this argument many times, if there is some sort of religious ideology that's infiltrated Hollywood and starts sneaking their messaging into all sorts of movies, and you're saying, Hey, stop trying to propagandize us. It's it's turning movies shitty and also we can see what you're doing. Is that really political? I have kind of don't feel like it is. Um, I mean, I guess it depends how you talk about it, right? Sure. So. Like if you say it's the Democrats doing all this, then you're making yes. it political. Right, exactly. I don't think they do that, though. Okay. Yeah, I don't think they do it either. But... Did you see that Critical Drinker was on Russell Brand? I I saw that he said he was, but I didn't actually see it. Okay, I, I didn't see it either, but I right, saw the yeah. I saw the thing. I was like, "Oh wow, that's awesome!" That is awesome. You know, I don't like Russell Brand at all. That's good. For, I'm glad for. I'm happy for Critical Drinker. First of all, Russell Brand is hilarious. I do like Russell Brand, and I think he's a great actor. Really, you don't you don't like his movies and stuff? I don't like. He's a he's a personality type mm -hmm. that I don't like. Okay, I don't like that personality type. I don't know what it's called, but I don't like it. And in all his movies, he plays the same character. And it's not even a character. That's just who he fucking is. I don't even know if he's in movies anymore, is he? I no, mean, he's not. I'm saying when he was in movies. Well, I guess so. he was in a movie recently. He was in the the Death on the Nile movie, wasn't he? No, I don't know. I didn't say it. I think he was, yeah. Yeah. But anyway, he's got a giant YouTube channel. And, like, he's I know he a does. giant influencer on the... America bad left left yeah yeah I know yes yep. the con know. the contrarian left yep yeah it's very interesting because all of the people on the left call him a right winger and stuff well it's because so there's like this weird thing it's the same thing with Glenn Greenwald and Jimmy Dore a lot of people on the America bad left will spend a lot of time complaining about like leftists since they're leftists will complain a lot about liberals and they'll complain a lot about the democrats and democratic establishment mm -hmm. and so because they do that they're able to gain right wingers in their audience who like that they're shitting on the democrats and also that confuses uh liberals and democrats and other leftists is thinking that they're on the right because they're spending a lot of time shitting on the democratic establishment essentially yeah so, yeah, that's what's happening there. Yeah, that's what's happening there. Yeah, and they're politically illiterate, so. Well, you know, it's just. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> um. So are we, you you want to wrap up early, or you want to watch another video? We can watch um. Bri Brianna Greyjoy and the Rittenhouse one. Someone just sent Benjamin just sent me a DM. But it. <laughs> We can watch, uh, do you want to watch what we're going to watch next Sunday? No. No? We can't. Should I tell people what we're going to watch next Sunday? We can't ruin it. We, well, we can tell people, right? Or do you sure, go ahead. Tell people? So of course. Tell them. Today, literally today. Yeah. Uh, iDubs. A, a video dropped of iDubs. Video dropped. iDubs cuck video, video, video dropped. iDubs decided to talk to... Uh, our good friend Olay. Right. <laughs> what a fu what a fucking out of nowhere. Holy shit. Is this is this like the left wing version? Oh my god. 
This is the left wing for This is Olay's version of our conversation with Anna. Was oh, this her getting back at us? This is her version. She's like, I'm going to get, Ola, I'm going to get uh, eye dumps, right? We had Anna's like opening her mind to becoming, you know, going from being more on like a left of bubble to being like an enlightened individual. And we have eye dubs who was more of like an enlightened free thinker closing his mind to be <laughs> enter the left wing bubble. <laughs> Okay, it's literally the inverse of our conversation with Anna. Holy shit! Yeah, that's hilarious. I just realized that. That's so I funny. Dubs is lying down in the in the Matrix pod. Yes. Plug me in. Look, I'm ready. Yes. Uh, this video dropped today, and uh, it's so awful. I I watched it before we started streaming today. Hopefully I could only watch 15 minutes, it. and then I. Then I tweeted out Francesca Ramsey's MTV Decoded series because she has, so she has Francesca Ramsey on as well, and the 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 crux of the video is I Dubs feeling guilty for making response videos to Francesca Ramsey, which I don't even remember him ever doing that. Is well, that th even this, true? This is the thing because I look, we lived through that. I know he did, but Francesca I don't remember him ever making a video about Francesca Ramsey. Francesca Ramsey's videos, I think, can be broadly summarized as, as all life's problems are caused by white racism. You agree with that, right? Uh, sort of, yeah. Well, I went back and looked at her videos because I obviously I was thought, you know, am I misremembering something here? Like I right. remember her making a bunch of videos that people yes. perceived as being racist as fuck against white people. You know, she made all, she made all those fucking hyper woke videos way back in the day about yeah, yeah, yeah. can't be racist against white people. She made a whole video that was about like, you know, cracker and, um, and redneck and white trash are not really racisms against white people. She made up all these dumb fuck videos. Of yeah. course. Yeah. So she's right. promoting all these racist stereotypes against white people. The, the one that I hate most, that all white people are racists. So mm -hmm. I just, I'm, I'm completely against that. But their, I-Dubs' position seems to be, you know, I, I was mean. I was a, an internet bully when I'm making a response to these super racist videos. So it's uh, it's objectionable to me because it's completely recasting her history as just you know I'm just just making academic videos that everyone agrees with. Well, okay, let me ask Chat because I don't I don't remember. Did Idubs ever? I don't think Idubs ever made a specific video referencing Francesca Ramsey ever. Is she like? Oh my God! Wait a minute! I just had a brain blast here. Mm -hmm. Does Francesca Ramsey think that iDubs is Chris Raygun? Ooh, I don't know. I've only watched 15 minutes of the video. She, but that's is a this all like, But that's a distinct possibility. Wait a so minute. So she pulls that all white people look the same. <laughs> wait a minute, because Chris Raygun made like a million videos to Francesca Ramsey. He may even made one of the songs. Does she fucking think Chris Raygun is iDubs? Oh, I have fuck, bro. I'm telling you, I am fucking dude. She thinks I dubs <laughs> is Chris Reagan. I get, I bet that's my prediction. That's I'm telling you, that's what happened. You're look, that's that what prediction, happened. you no one is she's never going to admit to this if she figures Dude, it he, out. I dubs never fucking talked about Francesca Ramsey in his life. I'm sure he did. No, sure he didn't. Did. I remember all of his content con videos. He never made he never he did react to her at one point. What was the video? Because I know he never made a specific video about. Francesca Ramsey. He never made a content cop on MTV Decoded, or he never made a, a. None of his content was overtly political. Are all Chris Reagan's videos privated now too? Because he did the. He did like a million as well. Them. Yeah, I'm sure. I'm sure. Well, did uh, look. All these videos are getting deleted off the internet because all these people are like, "Oh my god." It's just I a matter a of time with before H3, they come H3 after me. about Francesca Ramsey. Oh, oh, maybe. Wait. What was it? Someone sent me this video. Does this video still exist somewhere? Idubs H three H three. I remember them making videos together. I don't remember them making one about Francesca Ramsey. I remember them made they made the video about like the glasses that could cure colorblindness. Someone find me this fucking video.
I want to see this video. If I don't see this video, I'm going to say with with all certainty, based on my intuition, <laughs> that Francesca Ramsey just thinks iDubs is Chris Raygun. <laughs> okay. That's that's what I'm gonna say. Because it's funnier that way. I want that to be true. That's pretty bad. <laughs> if that's the case. I don't like that. I don't like that mm. proposal. That proposal I find offensive. But anyway, no, so okay, wait. Um he th this conversation that items have with Olay is like insane. Because the beginning of the conversation is Olay talking to Francesca Ramsey mm -hmm. with items not there. And in it, Francesca Ramsey is basically just saying, you need to rake IDubs over the coals. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Okay. She's just saying, you need to you need to fucking extract an apology for my for my behalf because he harmed me in some way. People have come up to me and said mean things to me in person because of IDUPS. That was her claim. Yeah, no, I hate um, that claim. And you need to rake him over the coals because of it, right? And then she, and she's like, she's like, oh girl, I'm gonna do that, right? IDubs yeah. sucks. And they're both like just shitting on IDubs. This is, it's like the weirdest, like this is the most cuck shit ever. Now, obviously, IDubs, I'm assuming you didn't know about this. I don't know how I feel about it afterwards. It's like the literally most cuck shit ever. Before the interview, it's like her, Olay, and Francesca Ramsey talking shit about IDubs. And then there's the interview. And like Olay's obviously not using the same rhetoric to talk to IDubs. She's obviously big, like significantly nicer in the conversation. Mm -hmm. And I just thought, I was like, that's so snaky. That's so weaselly and gross. Right? Well, I don't know if the IDubs talk. I don't know in what order the conversations took place because of the magic of editing, obviously. Well, no. The, well, it sounded like the, the conversation you have with Francesca Ramsey happened before because she's talking about like what she's going to talk about IDubs. I don't remember right? that. So I'll take well, your she word does. for it. Right. So I just, it was like, holy shit. I just, to me, that's so gross. I can't imagine if we were going to interview someone. Mm -hmm. to talk to someone else first shit all over that person and then literally in the same video well now i think jump we cut should to our interview that. and then just be like oh hello you know look we should do that though that'd be awesome i, I guess I, I thought it was really weird but who would and then we of do course, that with oh, but it, oh here's like this and I'll, here's a little teaser for when we cover this this we're is like to, we're supposed to talk to peter bergosian soon so oh nice let's talk some shit about what we should do for him We'll talk shit about Peter Bogosian. And then we can put it in the beginning of the video. There you go. <laughs> Who's someone that hates Peter Bogosian? We'll have them on right before. And... Look, I love Peter Bogosian, so I'm not... Look. Does anyone hate him? He seems too likable. Yeah, he's a great guy. We've come off looking bad. <laughs> I know. No, so this this was like... This to me shows how race-obsessed and stupid Olay is, okay? Mm -hmm. Out of all the people, and I want chat to guess. Okay, I'm going to throw this to you, chat. Mm -hmm. and I'll throw it to you, Adam, because you didn't. I don't know if you listened to this part. Out of all the people that IDubs made content cops over and criticized, okay, out of all the list of people that he went after, who's the one person that Olay decided to fixate on and say, you should apologize to this person? I, I didn't watch the whole video, so I don't know. I know. I'm, I'm wanting to guess. It is... I don't know. My guess is Ethan Klein. No. Well, he never made a video criticizing Ethan, to my knowledge. Oh, he didn't? Who People did are saying he... not Keemstar. Who not did Leafy. he criticize? Not yeah, Leafy. Tana. Tana Montana. Not Rice Gum. Yep. Fighterian gets it. Jinx. Fucking Jinx. Okay. The, like, literally... The, the worst of the content creators, the guy who all he fucking did was take other people's content, put it in the corner of the screen, put a silly hat on his head, watch it, profit off of it, and laugh. And Olay is like, you need to apologize to fucking Jinx of all people? What the fuck, Jinx? That Jinx, guy was a fucking asshole. Jinx was a plague on YouTube. What the hell? Yes. Yes. He's, he was like one of the most popular, like, total bullshit like fake commentary channels where the commentary is just me watching someone else's hard work and then laughing. Yeah. And he milked the algorithm because he was putting 
like 30 videos up a day. Yes. Fucking shit. I just, oh my yeah. God. And I was like, if anyone, listen, if anyone's like, if, if, if any of his critiques against any of these individual content creators that he critiqued are still valid, Jinx is like still the most fucking valid. It's of still course, the fact yeah. that Olay is like, you should apologize to Jinx. What the fuck? Is she just so race obsessed? That because out of all the people that that items uh, criticized, the one black dude that he criticized was Shanks, and she's like, "Well, he was black, so you know, you got to defend him." Like, what the fuck? Oh, is it? You think that's what it is? I. What else is it? No, actually, it is because that's what she says. She's like, "Oh, all these white people you comment, you you criticize, they all came back to YouTube where they weren't bothered." But Jinx is gone from YouTube now, and she's equating it to like because he's black, he's been he left youtube because of idubs or something ridiculous oh so wow it's just fucking i didn't get to the jenks part yeah oh my god i, I, like, I couldn't fuck. listen anymore it was so infuriating i was like <laughs> the whole idea i just look i it's so bizarre to me that people are doing this they didn't yeah. i don't perceive those videos is them doing anything wrong i feel like francesca ramsey was forwarding negative stereotypes about white people people responded appropriately mm -hmm. and now all of a sudden that's being recast as you know white people defending themselves from these dangerous stereotypes is is bullying is bullying black people and racism right. it's like Bull no right. fuck you and it wasn't it wasn't just forwarding white stereotypes she was doing the whole gambit of uh woke leftist bullshit right she's on mtv which is supposed to be something that has nothing to do with politics right she's on mtv promoting far leftist socialist you know woke political correct cultural marxist gobbledygook on mtv and people who disagree with her political opinions are pushing back on her and that gets, as you said, recast into bullying, right? Yeah. So, I don't know. It's gross. Sell for $5 says, Chris agreed with Vosh on his show that both Carl and Medeker are neo-Nazis. That's sad. That's sad, yeah. Chris has gone off in the, his own, <laughs> spiraled off in his own direction, unfortunately. But Yeah. Which is why he made a bunch of those videos private, so. Yeah. So anyway, that's probably what we're gonna end up watching on Sunday, because oh man. And we'll get some we'll get some choice MTV Dakota clips. Ah, that's a flashback, right? Oh. oh. We have Ian okay. Crossland too on Tuesday. Tuesday, yeah. Talking to Ian on Tuesday, yeah. Should be fun. Uh Hayden Dill for twelve months. Thanks so much. Hayden for one year. Thank you so much. Says Though my badge may change, there are things that will always remain the same. Like A Team likes back shots like Tom Holland. <laughs> and what? S Class is more of a giver. Yeah. Right. Oh, that seems a little gay, but. What's to be gay? The, the giver or the receiver? I mean, I guess technically they're both gay for, for having it with a dude, but. Is MTV Impact? Is that the channel? It was MTV Decoded was the name of Ramsey's. Right. So I just searched I know Impact Francesca Ramsey Decoded. Yeah. Five things everyone should know about racism. <laughs> Six phrases with very racist origins. Like every yeah. single one of these things is about race. Yeah. Does I privilege remember. I remember. Does privilege make you angry? I remember. I'm pretty sure I covered, I did some videos on Cultural I'm appropriation. Uh, Fyodor Toaster Jetski. Wow, what a name. Does Thank you so much for joining the Free Will Seekers. Does Decoded hate white people? Yes. Why does MTV's Decoded hate white people? <laughs> <laughs> they literally made a video. Because they were getting so much pushback. Because everyone was like, what the fuck is this? The thumbnail is a white guy with his hands over his ears. Not listening. Right. Which basically 
plays right into that. Whitey won't listen. Whitey won't take his medicine. Mm -hmm. How voter ID laws explain structural racism. Here's why racism is not just comedy. <laughs> is there any of these that aren't about race? Are um, Hispanics white? I think it was primarily race, yeah. I'm assuming it was primarily race. Yeah. Do we hate white people? Maybe we should watch that. MTV Dakota, do we hate white people? Sure. We'll watch it on Sunday. Four Black Lives Matter myths debunked. Mm -hmm. I wonder if she says in the the Black Lives Matter movement is stealing money. That's a debunked. Like this, as a the debunked beginning of the video myth. says, we're going to ask the question. We're finally going to answer the question you've all been asking. Why do we hate white people? Yeah, see? <laughs> Look, it's just, it's yeah, not cool. Not mm -hmm. cool. Yeah. Um, what did Jesus really look like? Black, obviously. <laughs> Trippy Liquids, thanks so much for joining the Free Will Seekers. Trip, Trippy Liquids. If microaggressions happen to white people. <laughs> <laughs> it's never ending. There's like a hundred of these fucking videos. I know, this is why I'm just like... <laughs> Yeah, I when I was listening to the talk with Olay, I just I was like, "What am I taking? Are people trying to gaslight me here?" Like I seem to remember all of these incredibly racist videos with Francesca Ramsey being smug as can be, just talking down to all of you racist whites who need to figure it out. Okay, chat, help me remember here. Wasn't there a situation? Mm -hmm. I feel like I'm, I could be misremembering something. Wasn't there a situation where Francesca Ramsey was at some live event and she met yes. someone? Andy Worski. I don't remember. It was Andy Worski, right? Yes. And wasn't uh, Armor Skeptic there too? Or am I adding that? I think he might have been there. I don't. I can't remember. I feel like there was some video where she met Andy Worski and Armored Skeptic and they both, they had like a positive interaction and they tried to um, set up a lot. People in chat are saying it's Armored yeah. Skeptic. Maybe it wasn't Andy Worski. Maybe it was just Armored Skeptic. They had no, a positive I, I was interaction. there. It was Andy Worski. Okay. They had a positive interaction and they thought that they like maybe... Um, no, this did happen. I remember I did a video on this. Yeah, it was they had a positive in, uh... interaction. They thought that they had like built kind of a, a Have bridge you ever of understanding. Why people say, oh, I... they thought they had built a bridge of understanding. And then They're she released. immediately released Have a video. Wonder... What are you doing? I brought up that Francesca Ramsey. Video okay. She she insane. immediately she immediately did a video, or no, she immediately did an interview where she basically shit talked them after they like after they released their own videos, basically praising her for like Maybe building a bridge. Right. Right. That happened. She went on that? a she went on podcast with her husband. Yes, yes that's and right. With, said with her husband, yes. That you guys are a bunch of racist pieces of shit. And there's no way in hell I'd ever have a conversation with you and you should fuck off for even trying. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Yep. After they had some sort of nice interaction. And then she yeah. said, You think uh, you think you're better than me? Of course I'm better. <laughs> Of course I'm better than you. I was, I, yeah, because I did a video on that. I was like, oh my God, that was so snaky and gross. I was like, what the fuck? Jeez, that, see, that should really show you like where, how do you know you're on the right side of the wrong side of history? <laughs> oh, That's like that some terrible. four day laws of power shit there. Yeah, that was, that was wild. I remember when that happened. I was like, holy shit, what a gross individual. So... So Sitch will love this video. This video is entitled Why Colorblindness Will Not End Racism. Oh no. Why are you trying to trigger me? So let's see if let's see if there's any if you can detect any anti white racism in okay. here. Okay. Why people say, Oh, I don't see color as a way to fix racism. Yeah, that doesn't work. 
Oh no, are we going to Jesus get... Christ. Look What's at that, that screenshot. I know, it's great. That's perfect. That's her. The white postman is delivering mail to her house and she's like, ah! Well, get funny, out of she... here with your whiteness. I mean, she's literally hits that stereotype, right? Because wasn't her husband white? Her husband is white, yeah. Well, I think they might have got divorced or something. But... Oh, you... well, really? There's like a stereotype of like... Uh, black content creators who are like mm -hmm. very racist against white people that are women and then they're married to like a white guy or something. <laughs> that happens a lot. My so. goodness, we've all been lied to! Wait, why am I hosting this show? So race isn't biological, but the social construct of race and racism still have a very real impact on everyone's lives. And this isn't just about feelings. Race is all about the structural foundation of social power. So why do so many people incorrectly think- mm -hmm. Race is like about- it? Wait, race is about- Power. The social- Wait, it's too late at night for me to like use my brain thoughts here. But the structural foundation of social power. Race is about the foundation of social power. Right. Um, I'm going to say no. Okay. <laughs> it's not about racist. It's, you know, it's got to be annoying too, because if you're not American, like she's basing the entire concept of race off of one thing, right? The black white dynamic that existed right. in America, right? When right. obviously race is far more complicated than just this one specific dynamic. Yeah. French you people could, and. Right. And German people, Asian are both people, white. You know, yeah, right. Yeah, it's, you know, it's just Italian okay, okay. people. They're right. like Polish right. people. They weren't even considered Eastern white. Euro and, Eastern yeah. European people. They're all white. I know, but okay. So why do so many people incorrectly think race is biological? Well, beyond the fact that we like to group people based on external characteristics, it goes like this. In biology, there is a concept of genetically different subspecies, which a lot of people confuse with human races. Biologists actually have a scale for this, and humans don't even come close to qualifying. Throughout history, people have used this incorrect understanding of subspecies to justify all- Okay, this is so comp- this is so- why are we overcomplicating this issue? Okay. Mm -hmm. It's just that this has nothing to do with colorblindness. I know. I don't even know why we're talking about this, but when you talk about, okay, this is stupid. And this, this was a conversation that was like big in this time period. That was so dumb. Yeah. Seven Before years JF ago. And all these other people came into being. It's like the whole concept of is race biological. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, if I, you're going to create a category and you're going to place people in the category on the basis of their skin color, obviously the basis of it is biological characteristic. It's their skin color, right? Of course. Or if you're going to say, you know, we're going to say like all black people just based on their skin color are going to get rooted into one category as black. All white people based on their skin color or their country of origin are going to be rooted in white. All Asian people, blah, 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 et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Right. right. These are, they're, so they're using some form of biological marker to say that these are, this is a category. However, the question that derives from it, that, that Francesca and the other people are trying to get out by doing this like weird work around with biology is... Is the category actually a useful grouping that tells you some information outside of like skin color or some other visible characteristic? The answer to that would be no. Right. But so, but instead of just saying that, we get this like stupid conversation about whether it's biological or not, which confuses the issue. Because it is and, biological. Well, it's, it's like, like it's not biological in terms of there's no magic thing inside of you that says what race you are, but if it's based off of a biological characteristic, right, right then it would be biological in Obviously. some respect. Obviously. So, but this, I always felt this argument was so weak back when they were making it because essentially I felt like they were playing into the framework of the white nationalist in the first place for literally no fucking reason by even having this conversation this way. But yeah, I, I agree. I totally agree. Look at this freeze game. It's amazing. She always made these wacky faces. <laughs> I think it's part of her popularity. She would make wacky faces. Every thumbnail was like her making a wacky face, right? Because she made so many wacky faces in every video. I don't look. I the wacky face thing is people you know, listen. That's part of why she's mad. Like everyone, every single person, every anti SJW back in the day reacted to Francesca Ramsey because it was so easy it's so obviously racist content when she doesn't know she's just like not even aware that it's racist it was so easy to make and then also because look at all the thumbnail potential oh yeah totally 
Well, she goes over this. She goes over this in her response to Olay, where she's saying, look, I'm making this content that's really about original ideas, and I'm, you know, I'm, I'm developing original content, writing it myself, shooting it myself, all of that, and all these reaction videos are coming out that are just, they're using my content in very targeted ways and also just you know lazy ways that's kind of the argument that she's making yeah but i if you're you know if you have high production value but still your video is just basically a bunch of anti-white racist schlock people are going to respond to that right yeah well, that was yeah no, she, what she says which is what you were alluding to it's really dumb because she's like, all these people are just mad at me because they're haters because they couldn't make their own original content. Right. I'm like, no, bitch. They just fucking disagree with your, politi your political yeah. stances. It's like, what the fuck? If you would have yeah. just sat in your bedroom and made these racist videos without any production value whatsoever. I mean, the production value does add a level of kind of slap in the face. Because it's this is MTV sponsoring this kind of anti-white racism, which right. I mean, look, we were all raised to be against racism. Well, and it was a, this was a double slap in the face too. People don't probably remember this because it's so ancient history, but MTV for years, for decades, was supposed to be the place for edgy teenagers. Right. That was MTV's brand. MTV's brand was we are the edgy teens, okay? Right. We're going to play Beavis and Butthead, right? Right. We're going to play all the music videos right? in the morning before you go to school that your parents don't want you to see. Right. Yeah, we're going to exactly. have, you know, the surreal life, and we're going to have uh, whatever stupid fuck, re all those stupid fuck reality shows. That was the thing. MTV was supposed to be for edgy teens. And then when this comes out, you're like, what the fuck? MTV's gone woke. What the hell? What the hell? There you go. Hell! Say what? All kinds of terribleness and even proclaim other races as less than human. But modern genetics has shown that the lines around race are so arbitrary that they're actually meaningless. And since I'm not a scientist, I'll take a quote. Francis Collins, the director of- What does this have to do with colorblindness? Yeah, I'm waiting. Why are we talking hey, about race realism? Look, I'm waiting patiently here. Okay. Why colorblindness will not end racism? She's basically making an argument that... For colorblindness. For colorblindness. Yeah, exactly. Yes. I'm very confused. What's happening here? Of the National Human Genome Research Institute said it himself, those who wish to draw precise racial boundaries around certain groups will not be able to use science as a legitimate justification. Oops. I dropped the mic. So if race doesn't exist biologically, why do we keep talking about it? Sound the alarm. We keep talking about race because we created it. Yay, us. That's right. Race is a social construct. A social construct is a category, perception, or idea created and developed by society and then applied to individuals or groups. Okay. Um, what does that not apply to under this broad of a definition? A category, perception, or idea created and developed by society and then applied to individual or groups. Yeah. I mean, that really applies to just everything, right? Yeah. Hmm. If, you have a, if you have a word that describes everything, that means the word is useless. Right. So ch ch like chimpanzees <laughs> are a social construct, right? Yeah. Because it's a it's category. A, yep. The category created by society. Right. And applied yeah. to a group. A group of animals, yeah. Yeah. Even hmm. though the category is rooted in biological factors. Yeah. Yeah. That's why I, I hate this social construct, stupid I definition. Yeah. It's so worthless. Yeah. Toothpaste. Social the construct. Sun. Got you. The sun is a social construct under this definition. Yeah. Yeah. Stars, retarded. stars are a social construct. Yep. It the reason that this is done, this is and it's funny because this whole definition is done for political purposes. The reason people use this definition and adhere to it is basically it's a justification 
to soften up any category to allow it to be tampered with in any way the individual, generally the leftist, wants to tamper with the category. Mm -hmm. It's to say, oh, look, all these categories are just made up by people, so therefore we can do whatever the fuck we want with them, right? We can we can yeah. screw around with them anyway. Woman. There you go. Social construct. Yeah. Trans women are women, and women are birthing people. Yep. But social constructs are still very real and have huge impacts on our lives. Because you know what else is a social construct? Money. And if you don't think money has an enormous impact on your life, well then congratulations. You either have a trust fund or you're an adorable baby. Or maybe you're a dog. Here's what I know. Talking about racism just creates more racism. Uh, no. First off, race... You know another reason people react to these videos so strongly? Mm-hmm. Because they're, they're comedy gold? They're super cringy. <laughs> <laughs> these videos are fucking hyper cringe. This is before people even use the word cringe. If people use the word cringe, they'd call her Francesca Crimzan Crims Ramsey, okay? Like, Jesus. I forgot how incredibly cringe these videos were. Oh, it's like, God painful to watch are you cringing i'm my anus is like inside my stomach right now okay i've cringed so much why do we have to talk about race so much because i have to lecture you <laughs> is that is that not what's happening here that's Look, what happened this video is only five minutes long it we're feels half, like an eternity doesn't we're it? halfway through it yeah. the video is called why colorblindness will not end racism we're finally getting into the topic, okay? You think so? Yes. Okay, let's see. Isn't the problem. Racism is. And even if it was the problem, problems... Wait, 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 wait. Dog, here's what I know. Talking about racism just creates more racism. Uh, no. First off, race isn't the problem. Racism is. And even if it was the problem, problems don't get worse when you talk about them and they don't magically go away when you ignore them. Uh, not true. I had five cavities. I ignored them, and all five of those teeth fell out. Poof. Problem solved. Colorblind. So, so she's doing the classic thing that James Lindsay points out. She's confusing colorblindness with racism blindness. Yeah. Okay. Yes. You can't spend the whole first part of your video talking about how race is a social construct constructed to essentially use power over people, and then when someone says, "Oh," Okay, so why don't we abolish and destroy those categories? Or just change say, it no. to all human beings or one race, the right. human race. Look, right. we create a new category. Right. And then when someone says, oh, well, if I buy into your premise, Francesca, okay, why don't we just get rid of that category? And then she says, no, by getting rid of that category, you're being racist. You're ignoring racism. Yeah, you're like, wait, what the fuck are you talking about? <laughs> Yeah. Leftist gobbledygook. Blindness, while nice in theory, has no effect on structural and institutional racism. Ah! Racism is a system, and that system benefits certain people at the expense of others. Ignore Wait a minute. If there was no concept, if there was literally no concept of race, but we abolished the concept of race, how the fuck could structural racism even exist? Oh, yeah, that'd be a good step in the right direction, right? Structural racism can only exist if there's a category of race in the first place. Well, no, because look, I, I've detected the first anti-white racism in this video. Oh, okay. What's that? Structural racism exists because white people. <laughs> well, so the argument, and I don't know if she'll make this argument because these videos are so fucking paper thin of, of any like, useful information. The argument that I see... Mm -hmm in CRT, because she's basically just giving CRT arguments here, is that the reason colorblindness doesn't work is because it's all a lie, and people, especially white people, will never actually truly be colorblind. Yeah, no. They'll it's... say they are, but they won't actually be it. They'll still judge people on the basis of their race. Here it comes. Ready? Okay. Colorblindness, while nice in theory, has no effect on structural and institutional racism. Racism is a system, and that system benefits certain people at the expense of others. Ignoring it just lets those problems persist. Don't believe certain people at the expense of other people. Hmm. What could those look? She's already set up a video about racial categories. Is it rich people and poor people? 
it benefits certain people at the expense of other people. Who 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 are the people in those categories? In those social construct categories? I think it's people with blue eyes versus people with green eyes. I don't think so, Sitch. I don't think so. Oh, okay. Look, is she gonna say it or what? I don't or are know. we I'll supposed see. to just read between the lines here? I guess. Believe me, let's take a look at some examples where colorblindness doesn't work. Number one, preschool punishment. Let's face a fact, preschool aged children of every race are monsters. But according to the US Department of Education Office for Civil Rights Report released in 2014, black children make up 18% of preschoolers, but almost half of all suspensions, half. And I don't think anybody believes all these preschool teachers are racist out to get little black children, but the data shows that black and Latino children often face steeper punishments than their white classmates for the same behavior. That's a problem. So I've looked into a lot of these studies. I know you have, totally. These studies are all bullshit. <laughs> of course they are. Because first of all, it's not like they had the same teacher merit out punishments to white kids and black kids and then say, oh, the same, right? They're like, oh, they're, they're first of all, they're number one. They're, when they say like the same punishments, this, that they did the same problem, they're trying to base this strictly on different different teachers in different situations giving reports about behavior. Okay, and just if like a teacher says, oh, this kid was talking in class in one instance, and this kid talking in class in another instance, they just say, oh, well, they're both talking in class. It's got to be the same thing. Why was the punishment different? Right, ignoring all the one, further context. One kid told the teacher to fuck off. Right. One teacher told her to get the fuck off. One teacher maybe has been talking in class repeat. Like, there's another th big thing. They, they didn't account for uh, repeat offenses at all in, in any of these studies. Yeah. Um, that was number one. And then number two, another thing, and I've talked about this on stream in the past, all these studies would leave out the fact that a lot of uh, schools that had higher black populations generally tend to be poorer schools. Poor schools often don't have the money for indoor suspension or other punishment or detention or other punishment things so they have to heavily rely on outdoor suspension as mm -hmm. their only means of punishment and what we've seen in schools that get rid of outdoor suspension because you have to get rid of it because it's racist all that happens is that schools with higher black populations just become fucking destroyed with behavioral problems because they've literally they have no literally punishment nothing they can do right to, to punish kids after that hilarious it's just it's it's sad it's like fucking horrific and i don't know the idiots these well-meaning idiots who think they're fighting racism have no fucking clue what they're talking about when they go over this shit. well they literally make it worse because yeah. then all of a sudden they create all these behavioral problems in the black schools and they wonder why blacks are are doing worse in school yeah you know why because of systemic racism Adam. <laughs> yeah but they created the policy they literally <laughs> created the policy I know. I the know. policy was created to fight systemic racism. But see, that's why this is the concept of systemic racism is such a dog shit concept because this is how it's applied. You have there's some disparity in suspensions, and so what do the what do the politicians do? They say, "Oh, we'll just get rid of suspensions. That'll fix the problem." Guess what? It makes it worse. Yep. It makes it a thousand times worse problem and simply believing we shouldn't see race or we shouldn't talk about race does nothing to solve this problem number two the name study oh so and even if if we were to grant charity to say that that was even true the first thing was even true all that would mean was that the person wasn't really colorblind that's all it would mean oh you're right yeah we're supposed to figure out how colorblindness won't work right because i'm assuming she's going to say well the the asian teacher I don't know why she chose the Asian teacher. <laughs> the Asian teacher racist. is just has some kind of implicit bias, and that has something to do with systemic racism. Which, by the way, systemic racism has nothing to do with implicit bias anyway. But okay, different concepts. A study by the National Bureau of Economic Research confirmed that people with ethnic sounding names, that's a whole other episode, are less likely to get interviewed when they apply for jobs. We, we've we gone over this like study a million times, a million times. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Meanwhile, applicants with white sounding names actually get 33% more callbacks for interviews. It's the equivalent of having eight years of additional experience. Shout out to all the white taquans struggling to get job interviews. And it's not just black. Remember the study recently where people were using, people were marking black on their college applications because they were more likely to get in. <laughs> do you remember that? Uh -huh. Ibram X. Kendi 
complained about it in some tweet or everything. I do remember. Uh, and that, everyone yeah. called him out. They were like, well, listen, <laughs> this completely <laughs> goes against your theory. Right, right. Black and white. They've done similar studies around the world, and in Canada, people with white sounding names were 35% more likely to get callbacks than people with Indian or Chinese sounding names. So instead of just assuming people shouldn't care about color or names, companies, governments, and schools should take the bias out of hiring and experience. Uh, again, this is a problem with people not being colorblind. Correct? Right. Yeah. Yeah. Well, if, if we were to even take it on its face value, because obviously, especially with the whole. I mean, first of all, there's they've done studies with like redneck names. People don't want to hire people. Yeah, with totally. Names. People don't want to hire people with regional specific names. They want like, they want someone that has a blank default name. Right. Because there's a signal, and this is part of the problem. It's not talked about. When someone hires you, and if they look at your name and you have like a weird name, that's a, that's signaling to the person some information right. about you, which yeah. they could be completely wrong, right? But why would you want to saddle your child with some kind of signal that says, oh, my child is, is special in some way, right? right. My, or, you know, my, I'm not going to be a conformist, right? I'm not going to give yeah. my child a, a normal name. I'm going to give them a unique name because I'm not a conformist, right? Right, yeah. A, co a contrarian. Right. Hire the contrarian. <laughs> <laughs> Experiment with nameless resumes to, you know, solve the problem. Number three renting an apartment. When the Department of Housing and Urban Development and the Urban Institute did a study about real estate, they found that black, Latino, and Asian renters were shown up to 12% fewer units than white renters. And when the Fair Housing Justice Center used actors to apply for apartments, they found that black and Latino renters were often told there were no apartments available, while white applicants were shown apartments in the same building. So this building has a pool, a laundry room, and a racist landlady. I should check Color this blindness from... won't fix housing discrimination. So first of all, <laughs> wait a minute. So everything that she's talking about, that just means that people weren't colorblind. Yeah, totally. So there was some study supposedly where the people showing them houses were just racist. Yeah. Accordingly, supposedly, right? Yeah, they weren't using colorblind. Yeah, so they weren't colorblind. So how is that a knock against colorblind? How is that's like we shouldn't be anti-racist because being anti-racist doesn't work. Right. <laughs> It's like, oh, okay. And here's a bunch of situations where people said they were anti-racist but weren't. Well, does that just mean that they weren't racist, Fran Franny? Okay. Yeah. Like colorblindness, you know, actually utilized would work, obviously. Right. Yeah. Yes. We're going to need smart laws and a concerted effort for that. So tell me again how colorblindness is going to fix the fact that I can't get an education, a job, or a house. In many cases, colorblindness is actively harmful because it creates a false sense of security for the groups it directly benefits. The people who've benefited from systemic... Look at all those white people. I know. Here it is. Here it comes. I, I, I do like how 12% shown 12% less translates into it. I can't get a house. Right. Education, a job, or a house. In many cases, colorblindness is actively harmful because it creates a false sense of security for the groups it directly benefits. The people who've benefited from systemic racism can assume that they got the job or a house or weren't suspended from preschool simply because they were more qualified or just better. Ignoring race or only acknowledging that it doesn't exist biologically is not a solution to these systemic issues. It takes work, effort, laws, and new systems to undo racism. These differences may seem minute, but they're part of a very large structure of oppression that's been ingrained in us. If we can understand that we made it up, we can actively work to change it. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time right here on Decoded. See, that's a white stereotype. All white people are rich, privileged, racist assholes. I mean, obviously. Yeah. That's true. You know that? That's a racist stereotype. Yes. I mean, that's offensive. Look but it's out. true. It's not true. <laughs> that's the problem. But it's true. Ed. That's the problem. It's true. It's so weird. Mm hmm What? I just, it's, people love their racist stereotypes. They just love, love, love them. Love, love, love their racist stereotypes. Nobody ever wants to let go of their racist, racist stereotypes. We made a little bit of effort, I think, in the 90s, a little bit of push in the right direction.
people are like, oh, you know, racist stereotypes. We should probably not have those. Wait a minute. All that's so, gone now. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm looking at this housing study she was talking about. Oh, no, Sitch. <laughs> Sitch is already, already debunking the study. How dare well, was, you? I'm, I'm curious about this. And so now I'm just kind of like glancing at it. So maybe I'm looking at it wrong. Mm -hmm. Um, I think she completely misread or whoever told her to set us this misread the study because there's a chart that says long-term trends and net measures of rental discrimination. And it says, it says, okay. Um, it, it shows like it's starting around that, like somewhere in the 15 to 20% range discrimination. But then in 2012, when the study was done, it's like in 1977, okay? Mm -hmm. It's starting in like the 15 to 20% discrimination range. Mm -hmm. But then in 2012, it's down to like 3% difference or less. No way. So I don't understand what, unless I'm reading this chart wrong, I don't understand what the fuck she's talking about. The discrimination has dropped to 3%? That's, That's almost zero. Like, at least on this chart. It actually shows that it's it shows that discrimination for Hispanic people is higher at that six percent. So I wow. don't know. It's like I don't know. I'd have to really like dig into this study to see what they're saying, but how'd you find that study so quick? I just typed in uh the keywords. Whatever I forget, whatever the keywords were. Yeah, housing twenty housing study blah blah blah. Blah blah blah. That's what it was called. How'd you spell blah, that? Blah, blah. I honestly don't even remember how I found it. Amazing. I just typed in like housing discrimination study by the Department of of uh, whatever. Department of Housing. I don't even know. It's it's I'm slate. Whatever. I'll look into this when I have a fresher brain. I know. To make sure I'm not misreading something because it doesn't seem to be saying what, at least how she talked about it. But I got to run to the bathroom real quick. I'll be right you back. run to the bathroom. I'll read some super chats. Okay. God, who would have thought, guys? Who would have thought that in the year 2023, we would be watching a fucking MTV decoded Francesca Ramsey video? My God. We've gone back in fucking time. Jeez. How have we done this, people? How have we gone back in time to the to the the dark ages of the skeptosphere to the anti SJW YouTube? God, you know what? I don't like it. Actually, you know what? Here's the thing. I feel like it was it better. Was it better in those days when we didn't realize that all these people were fucking socialists? We were just like, what's up with these left people? Why are these liberals like? so stupid and anti-free speech and hate white people what's up with these liberals we were so naive it was so naive back then and now we're like oh it's because they're all commies <laughs> that's why <laughs> i don't know if it was better i don't know if it was better you know when i said dark ages i knew someone was going to say that was a microaggression i knew it dark knew ages it. what happened you committed don't a microaggression don't worry about it Anyways, F bomb. Thank you so much, F bomb, for joining the free will seekers. Thank you. Twitter sucks. Or surrogate Godfather for twenty dollars. Thank you so much. It says Jordan Peterson talks about this. A company hires a hundred engineers, and they have a requirement to hire fifty white, fifty black, and five thousand white engineers apply, and a hundred black engineers apply. The pool is lower for black people. That's not societal. There you go. Right. Back in time when Sitch maintained a YouTube channel. Oof. It hurts. That doesn't hurt. We have more fun doing this anyway. That is true. That is true. Being all by yourself in a room editing. Well, let me true. find a nice butt. Adam will be happy with his butt. <laughs> but Sitch. Uh... Okay. <laughs> Sammy G says, go back in time to... <laughs> Go back in time to video editing while you're at it. Ah. And Twitter sucks says, stab him like that. 
twist the knife harder. Thank you. Thank you, guys. We had some I fun at the beginning it. of the year. We did some She-Hold videos. Those were fun. There you go. And I was watching... Uh, why am I spacing on the name of this Rings show? of Power? No. <laughs> Game of Thrones. Game of Thrones. Why do I keep forgetting? I keep thinking Iron Islands, but it's not called Iron Islands. It's no. called Game of Thrones. Yes. I watched the entire Game of Thrones series. In like a week. Like a couple weeks. Yeah. Come on, it's eight seasons. I weeks. know. It's a lot. I had an I had an injury at the time, so it was actually mm -hmm. you were recuperating. I was kind of recuperating, yeah. Right. And Adam liked even the shitty seasons because he has bad taste in things. What do you mean? No, the last season is the one that's just garbage. The last season but... is the creme de la creme of shit, but it's pretty bad. Like after season four, it's just sturdy downhill garbage. It's not that bad. Yeah, it was good. It's pretty bad. The shame, shame, shame one was the I think the season where we kind of diverged. You you like that they CG'd her head onto that body? It looked so bizarre. Oh, I didn't notice that. But then again, I was watching the entire thing on my cell phone. Oh, okay. They remember CG'd you were giving me a hard time? I do remember this now that you said that. I think um there's like two times that Lena Hudsworth, Hudley, if you remember actress's name, was supposed to be naked on the show. And both times she was pregnant <laughs> in real life. Oh, so she couldn't do it. So they like faked her body. One was like, I think, a body double. And in the walk of shame, they like they like CG'd her head. And there's like one frame where it's like really looks like fucking, it looks like some machine learning drawing. It's <laughs> like really bizarre looking. Wow. I'll have so, to look yeah. for that. I did not know the lore. Yeah. Uh, Fat Brown Buffalo for $20 says, I often say sarcastically that the populist right views Trump as a messiah saving America from the deep state. At Turning Points USA, Bannon said that Trump is the righteous leader of the Holy Crusade against the deep state LMAO. <laughs> well, you fucking called it. There is definitely it. some of that shit going on. I don't deny oh, yeah. it. But just to paint the mainstream Republican Party as that. Right. Seems ridiculous. Yep. Uh, J Mac, our surrogate father for $20, says Sitch and Adam, if today's insanity has drained your American spirit, any check Twitter. Oh, yeah. Oh, yes. I... You have to bring up that video. <laughs> I don't, how do funny. I do that? Twitter made a change, an unfortunate uh -huh. change. Really? Yes, that I was, you were able to like look at things without logging in. So I would open, I would open a tweet in my other window, but I'm not logged in. in you can't log window. in on whatever that window is? No, because it's like Microsoft Edge. Why see. don't you just log in on Microsoft Edge? Let me see if I can get it's it. It's allowed. Oh, You're no, allowed to up. log in. I have I have Twitter on multiple browsers logged into my PSA Sitch account. You're allowed to do that. <laughs> no, it's not against the rules to use multiple browsers for Twitter. Don't be, don't be daft. This is like the this is like Jerry at Rick and Morty. That, that's okay. That was always allowed. <laughs> All right, here it is. We have the amazing J Mac here in the most patriotic outfit of all time. <laughs> Does this have sound Look, here? Uh, yes, yeah. Can you handle what America's cooking? This is uh, determining J Mac's yeah. politics. By hold on, hold on, hold on. America. We got to do one, two, three. Yeah. You got it? You ready? Yeah, give me a countdown. One, two, three, go. Can you handle? What America's cooking? I don't think can. Because America cooks what America likes. And if you mess with America, you're going to get the bird. The bird with its talons. It's fighting for freedom. Freedom you can't handle. Oh, yeah. <laughs> can you handle what America's cooking? Amazing. 
can you handle what America's cooking? I like the uh, Randy Randy Savage based Randy Savage. Yes, that's awesome. That's great, Jay. Look, fuck with America, you get the talents. You get the talents. Listen, if if everyone in America walked around like that and talked like that, we'd be in a much better state. Okay, of course we would. Yes, I. You know, this will be my new rule. Mm -hmm. Okay, I take back what I said. I think everyone in America should have to wear a uniform that's composed entirely of the American flag at all times. Is that a fanny pack or is it like a like a boom box, a mini boom box or it's what supposed is to be that? like a it's supposed to be like a belt. Oh like okay. a championship wrestling belt. Okay. I guess you're right. Yeah, look at that. But I think it's actually a fanny pack. <laughs> but it's a fanny pack. It's supposed to be like a belt. Right? Right, Jay? That's amazing. Yes. Amazing. Amazing. Yeah, I think Love we it. should just abolish, like, if race is a social construct, why don't we just make the American race? There you go. And just that's see, that's the true race that matters, America. Yeah, right? yeah. <laughs> the so if you're American, you're the American race. We're um we're superior than the white race, right? The Asian race, the black race. We're the American race. Yeah, then we're we superior than the just... Brit bongers or the the French. Right, or whomever, we're the American race. I mean, is it wrong to be an American supremacist? I mean, no, it doesn't feel based. wrong. Seems like. <laughs> if it doesn't feel wrong, then it's got to be right. Of course. <laughs> yeah, what, what was the um, what was the context of this, Jay? What, like, why did this <laughs> situation come about? <laughs> Are you just feeling like some very strong patriotism at that moment, and you're like... Was, Ooh, da yeah. was David Lynch in town and casting for his new movie and he was asking <laughs> for casting tapes? Right, right. Look, we should submit this. Mm -hmm. This is very, this is very David Lynch. We I should, we should, yeah. Love it. Maybe you're right. Maybe it's better with no context. <laughs> Sitch. What? Context could ruin it. That's true. Uh, jail, loser beard for tell us, I'm sorry. Loser beard for nine months says, "Did you guys hear about the YouTuber who, the YouTuber that was charging money on her Patreon to see autopsy pics of an 11 year old boy?" I did. No. Yes. What? what was the yeah, context I heard of about that? that? The context was she filed a FOIA request on some trial. Yeah. And got the information, and in the inf information was were the autopsy pics of the kid that was killed by his stepmom. Mm -hmm. So she decided to upload a video, I guess, with that stuff in it, which is okay. completely bonkers. Like who? Well, she do like a she like a true crime channel or something. Yeah, of course. Yeah, oh, true okay. crime. So what? What? what I don't understand what the, what's the problem. It's like a little boy was murdered and it's autopsy. Yeah, but okay, but okay, here's my question. Was it you had to pay the Patreon to see the video or was it like this specific picture was like just posted alone to see on her Patreon? She posted pictures. Or was it just part of the file from the FOIA request? It was part of the file from the FOIA request, but obviously the kid has family. I mean, how would you feel if you know, your nephew or niece was brutally murdered and right. all of a sudden some YouTuber was making money off the autopsy pic. She'd probably be pretty upset, right? Well. Such as like, no, I'd, that'd be fine. Well, no, because it's like, it, it okay, I have to have no more information. Because if she's like, if she's like, if, she, if on her video, she's like, if you guys want to see the picture of this corpse that's mutilated, you're going to have to subscribe to my Patreon. Like, like, if that's the way it was framed, I'd be like, oh, that's gross. But mm -hmm. if it's just like, oh, she regularly does FOIA requests and just uploads whatever the information to her Patreon is, and that's part of, like, what people pay for, then I don't have a problem with that. Okay. You're right? Sick, sicko. I, I'm just saying that, sick, as you said, sick, sicko. context matters as to, like, the situation. Like, I would think I it'd be think very... It does. I think it'd be in very poor taste to... Try to like if she used that as like an advertisement for her Patreon, I think that'd be a very poor taste. But if this is just something she regularly did with crime files, 
and I don't have a problem with it. That seems to be like what you would normally think would happen. So. Okay. I disagree, but. Okay. I think the situation is what you were laying out, but I think the person should be wise enough, mm -hmm. not be a complete and total idiot buffoon to get a bunch of autopsy photos gruesome autopsy photos of a right. murdered child and decide oh i'm just going to treat this just like i do any other case and i'm going to upload these gruesome photos and make some cash off them well here's my question does she have other autopsy photos? No, like, I think this is like a look. Obviously not. This is like well, no, a okay. Rare so like if situation. this is the, right. if this is a unique situation, she she hasn't done this before. I mean, I I agree with you. There's two different things. I agree with you in terms of like, if I'm doing this, you should have the thought process of like, hmm, maybe I shouldn't put like autopsy photos of like a person who was killed because that could be disrespectful. Normally um, to the family, right? Well, wait, hold on, hold on. Let me let me finish. Let me finish. Go ahead. Go ahead. You could you I could can't say like wait. I, you should say, I don't. Maybe I shouldn't put these autopsy photos of of a dead person on my Patreon or on my YouTube video, because it's you know the family members might not like this, right? Yeah, it's disrespectful. Despite the fact that every fucking time you see one of these fucking true crime videos on the History Channel, they always throw up the the, the picture of the body. Okay, so like they this. don't. Like, they, they do. They I've, are I've actually very it. respectful okay. in those types of situations. It's in my experience. But anyway, so I, I understand that, and I agree with that. I agree with not doing that. But there's a difference between saying, like, oh, this person was disrespectful, they didn't consider this, versus saying somebody used this to to get people to sign up to her Patreon for money. Because that's like, cause one of those is, like, disrespectful and not thinking, and one of those is, like, actually gross and despicable. Well, and so okay. that's what I'm trying to kind of parse between the two different situations. Gross is obviously subjective because I'm saying it's gross that she just didn't look. I, I, I think what she was trying to get was, and what they normally get is the interviews that law enforcement does with the suspects before the trial. Like they have <laughs> 911 calls. They have interviews with the suspects. They have maybe some crime scene photos but I don't think normally they have autopsy photos. And I think just this was the one of the cases where they actually had autopsy photos in there. And I think she even said, because she did an apology video, she, she said she was surprised by that. Okay. She she yeah. probably just didn't think about it. That'd be my guess. Just, she's just like, oh, I just, she uploads whatever she, information she gets. And she didn't think mm -hmm. about it. And Well, everyone's upset about it. And she did an oh. apology video. And she tried to say... I don't give a shit. She... She came out and she tried to say, right. She tried to use a sitch excuse. Yeah. Just, you know, I didn't think about it and this is not a big deal. And, you know, I just. Okay. Yeah. I don't think it is that big a deal. Okay. I mean, people say, oh, this is in poor taste. And she said, you know what? You guys are right. And get, gets rid of it. Yeah. So, there you go. <laughs> Fine. <laughs> Problem solved. Mm hmm. Just, I, don't, I can't imagine no. look not in a million years i would get those pictures and i i would like wretch i wouldn't think look i'm gonna upload these to my patreon yeah but you're not a true crime podcaster i would be worried look i i i would not know if the family has seen these or wants to see these, right. and I would be worried about them being propagated around the internet. And that, some, listen, I agree, I agree with you. I well, agree with you. Some fucking crazy right. people, some weirdos are going to be obsessed with these photos. It's just right, or send them super, to the family or do something really fucked up. Yeah, it's I fucking I horrible. Sure, I agree. That's why I said I, I don't think she should do it. But to me, there's a big distinction between she just did this without thinking and she's doing it to intentionally doing this to drive patron, patrons, mm -hmm. right? Because those are two different things. And I feel like people can very easily mix those together in right. their head. Right. Right. One of these things is thoughtless and one of these things is like evil <laughs> or like, I don't know if I'd say evil, but one of these things is like super fucked up and one of these things is just thoughtlessly stupid. Right. So anyway. J-Mac, our surrogate father, J-Mac, for $20, says it was for my aunt's 4th of July party. 
The belt is a fanny pack with a Bluetooth speaker in it. I even had a, <laughs> a patriotic playlist with over 40 USA songs. There's a pic of all my fan of all my family, all red, white, and blued on my Twitter. Well, that's based. Look at Jay. Yeah. I'm I'm glad that our surrogate father, J Mac, is so patriotic. Okay. That's probably why he likes his show so much. Because we that, are see, super patriots as well. Because America is the greatest. Don't get us started on how cool America is. I love America. America did nothing wrong. Right. Okay. Ever. America's oh, look. Amazing. Look at Jay's adorable family on Twitter. All decked out in patriotism. Beautiful. I don't know Beautiful if I should Jay. bring them up or not. Probably not, huh? No. What? Keep the kids out. Yeah. Looks amazing, though. I nailed the fanny pack. It's awesome. Yep. Uh, okay, where were we? Ooh. Sweet. J oh, there were the one. Zombie Squab. Thanks so much, Zombie Squab, for being a one year free will seeker. Thanks. Do we move back to the top? Yes. Welcome, Zombie Squad. Right. Uh, Nilo, Nilo, don't be stupid. Don't be dumb, Nilo, in all caps. Okay. Use what? your brain. I like you, Nilo. What's Nilo use your doing? Brain. Who's Nilo? He's he's being he's being Lord of the Nerds. He's just yelling in all caps. <laughs> Where? In that, is in that chat. In chat? <laughs> yeah. I don't see it. Oh, I don't know. Maybe it's on top chat. Uh, zombie Squad says Sitch is committing to the metric system. What? He's declaring war on the sun for forcing us to experience the heliocentric calendar? Wait, I don't understand. What do you mean? USA, USA? When am I committing to the metric system? I don't get it. Fuck the metric it. system. Andrew Clark. I think I'm way off here. Trent Roberts for 279 Canadian. Thank you so much, says... She looks like she has a BMI score of 105. Ouch, Trent's hurtful. Uh, Doomer Media for $2 says, look at that, Doomer Media. Our good friend in a turtle, Suan Dere, mm -hmm. Doomer Media. Oh, no. What did he say? He said, skip January 6th to appease chat. Yeah, we all forget <laughs> it. There you go. Okay. Look at Doomer over here, okay? That's not what happened. We just didn't want it. you to get an aneurysm, Doomer. Right. True. We're reliving the near nation-ending catastrophe of January 6th. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah. Poor Doomer. Still trying to get over it. Mm -hmm. Still having nightmares. Uh, Ehef for $5 says, I keep my registration under my seat with my gun. That way I can show both off at once. Don't do that. There you go. Yeah, be careful with the, the police officer. Might get shot doing that. Jeez. Right. I should call my mom at 12 o'clock at night. Be like, Mom, guess what? I won the poll. <laughs> You're wrong. <laughs> How terrible. Leave your mom alone. Okay. She super chats us all the time. How dare That's you? That's true. She does. Speaking of that. Sitch's mom for $2. The Sitch, honey. I want a cell phone and a little pop up ad. I think my identity may have gotten stolen again. It was an iPhone 11. The nice man on the phone needs Google Play cards to help me. Call me, please. Oh, no. There you oh, go. No. Mrs. Okay. Sitch. You've been scammed. You've been scammed, yes. Yes. I don't so fortunately neither of my par my parents are like hyper paranoid about everything. So they've never been scammed. That's good. Yeah. That's good. We don't let my parents have any cell phones. Right. <laughs> I mean, I know I know that my grandparents, I think both of my grandparents have 
received calls at some point, at least one call at some point where someone was like pretending to be me or my brother. Really? And ask for money. Wow. And uh, my grandma's like, she ain't falling for this shit. Right. <laughs> He's like, what? And then she calls uh, me or my parents. And she's like, she's like, what? Did Sitch call me for money? <laughs> They're like, what? No. Right. Uh, PC for $10 says, wait, wait, I skipped one. Rose the Ninja. Ross the Ninja for seven months. Thank you so much, Ross. Says the left seems to be fine with segregation now, but it's okay if you call it a safe space, a safe space for that group. True. Yes. yes. I think yeah. Francesca Ramsey has a video about safe spaces. I do Probably believe too. so. Yeah. Yes. Uh, PC for ten dollars says, but didn't abortion also whip up the left during the twenty twenty two midterm? Yes, it did. Yes, it did. Great point. And that ruling didn't outlaw abortion; it just pushed it back to the states, but was framed as an attack on the rights of all Americans. Right. Yeah, that yeah. is what happened. And Correct. yeah, no, it became a massive, um, a massive issue. Well, that was the thing. And, and I said this at the time. Some people were skeptical. And I said, this is going to help the Democrats in the midterms. <laughs> and uh, I think it did. I don't think it was the sole issue that some people credit to, but I think it definitely helped significantly stem the red wave. I think so, too. Yeah. So. I think it's going to be a big issue in the presidential election. as well. I do, too. Yeah. I think that kind of deflates the whole theory to this. This is just for power, right? Because if it was just yeah. for power and it ends up biting them in the ass, how does that help? Well, Democrats are going to use it to gain power. Yes. Yeah. Everyone's using it to try to, to galvanize their side. Yeah. Everyone's using everything that they can. Right. I don't... How do Republicans use the abortion where it stands now as a issue to drive people to the polls? They're going to say the Democrats, if the Democrats win the election and they get enough in Congress, they're going to try to pass legislation that that encodes it's a woman's right to her body, which would would force of not only abortions nationwide, but would force abortions up with to no the last time minute. restriction. Right. Right. OK. That's going to be what they're going to say. Okay, so. that's good. That's gonna. They're gonna have a good argument because there's a lot of clips of Democrats. I know, I know. Saying so that, we'll see. yeah. And well, and they'll ask. I mean, Joe Biden's gonna have to answer this question specifically. And he's understand. not gonna answer it. Well, yeah. Is, is he answer? Is he not gonna get a bullshit answer? Is you know, do you support uh, a woman's right to choose? And do you res like what are the restrictions, if any, that you would be yeah. in favor of? Because I know in the past, not like I think just a year or two ago, he was in favor of. The Roe v. Wade restriction. So I'm curious if he'll hold by that standard or whether he'll get suckered into the um the no new restriction. standard. I don't think he will. I don't I that just seems like such an unpopular, untenable position to publicly defend. What's well, really popular with the crazies on the left. Yeah, I guess and it and it directly plays into the the argument that the left makes that the right only wants to control women's bodies. Like it kind That's of why forces the argument them. Formed, yeah. It kind of forces them into that position because they're like, yes. we're the anti control women's bodies party. Right. But yeah. the thing is the people that would support that position would still support Democrats. If they're in favor of Roe v. Wade, like they'll take it. They don't, I don't think they necessarily need to live or die by um, that standard. So it, it feels like it would be politically stupid for anyone to, to, openly advocate for that position which i know some people have but they're going to spin it as controlling women's bodies regardless that's right. why lance was so scared to i know to say anything oh, well, well, i guess we'll find out is joe biden women's bodies we'll find out is joe biden or rather the person puppeting joe biden smarter than lance of the service <laughs> i guess we'll find out uh, all beef hot dog for ten dollars says. Remember, kids, lift with your back, not with your legs. Tune in next week for more Wiener wisdom. Okay, don't listen to Wiener wisdom. That's a terrible idea. Lift with your legs, not with your back, everybody. Okay. Does Joe Biden want to control women's bodies? People never want to lift with their legs instead of their back because it's lazier to lift with your back. Unless you're like doing squats all the time. JMac, our surrogate father for ten dollars. I read this one already. 
Wedge issues is what I give nerds for looking at me the wrong way. True. Yeah, that's when you pull their underwear up into the their butt crack. It's called that's why wedgie. it's called a wedge issue. Yeah, yeah, it's a real kind of issue with issue. your wedge. Andrew Clark for five dollars says wedge issues divide a population. It can be an issue that divides the American people or an issue that divides the Republican Party. Both are true. Fair enough. Snubbird13 for $10 says the draw to socialism is just very exaggerated hero complexes. One world community level garbage that they think can protect and sustain everyone while eliminating the undesirables. Uh, yeah, I think that's definitely a big part of it. I agree. Mm -hmm. John Bender. It's a banner year at the Bender house for $10. Since I listened to last week's show at work today and heard my super chat about the audio levels, I immediately could hear clearer when you changed them. Thanks, Adam. My work is a little loud and it helps. Oh, well, it's Bender. Well, there you go. Glad to help, Bender. Yeah. Change it Glad up for help. you. Turn it up a bit. Right. James Stanford for five hours says, have you guys tried getting in touch with liberal hive mind, politics girl, or, or Bo from the fifth column? No, not really. Okay. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> no, I don't I don't know politics girl. I do know liberal hive mind because they did a video on our Anna talk. Right. And I think they said we were centrist apolitical people, which I thought was cool. I think they called you Sitch. And me, Adam, which obviously... Oh, my God. Yeah. Amazing. It's so, the best best uh, content creator in the world. Yeah. <laughs> Amazing. They got our positions and our names right. <laughs> yeah. What a shock. Well, Soul Bunny called us to a centrist. That's true. Good job for Soul Bunny. But then she blocked me, so... Oh, I'll say it. <laughs> I guess. I'll say it. Yeah. The boy who cried Mexican for 10 Oh, yeah. Times. Must live says, in Southern California. There you go. It says sadly lost some real close friends because of political disagreements. That sucks. It honestly killing me how badly political discourse is getting. I want this all to end for the sake of everyone's sanity. True. True, true, true. Yeah. Can I we agree. go back? Can we go back, Adam? To the days where liberals were liberals mm -hmm. and conservatards were neocons. <laughs> and we didn't have these socialists. Fucking everything up. Yeah. Let's just go right back again. Be great. Uh, electric skeleton for five <laughs> pounds. Thank you. Says I hate that you guys keep making me aware of absolute midwits like this. Look, that's our job. <laughs> what can I say? But you're welcome. We didn't even mention the. The most devastating part of the situation. Oh, what? what? What situation? The woman we were covering is an attorney. Oh. I, I did mention this at one point, but we didn't, we didn't focus on it. Yeah, she's a, a lawyer. A lawyer. Yeah. Which is... Um, yeah, because remember I brought up, I said, if you're a lawyer, do you want to see your lawyer have the death tarot card? <laughs> yeah, you're right. Yeah, no, we did bring it up in that context, but... Yeah, it's funny because I watched those videos and I didn't think about anything about who she was and Adam is like like Sitch this chick's a lawyer I'm like what <laughs> yeah a bunch of her old videos are like lawyer reacts to something right yeah right but then she I'm realized oh I mm -hmm. can make a lot more ad revenue if I just stoke the social justice angle yep well, so there's lots of dumb biased lawyers out there okay the anti-conservative hate train. Right, right. Pretty embarrassing. Pretty bad. We should set up a live stream with her and Joe. Oh, that's interesting. MAGA versus anti-MAGA. Uh, lives in Dev's Wall specifically for Fidar says, I have a thing coming up and I need some luck. Can you wish me luck so I can summon some luck? Thank you. I love you. <gasps> wow, you love us? Oh my Get, God. Thank yeah. you. I Get know. Lucky. <laughs> okay. Get lucky. I'm gonna. I'm. I'm rubbing my hands together. I don't know if you can hear it, mm -hmm. or if uh, Zoom is cutting out. Okay. 
I'm summoning luck. Everybody in the chat, let's summon luck. Lives in Deswall specifically. Summon luck, Dev. We here at the Sitchin Adam Show impart upon you using the power of enlightened centrism, using the power of free will. I call upon the gods of free will and chance to impart luck on lives and devs wall specifically. Get lucky. Hallelujah. Adam, do you have anything to add? I hope you get very lucky. There you go. Get lucky. There you go. Hope you get laid. Is that what it's for? Oh man. Who knows? Now I really uh, hope. Now I really hope you get lucky. There you go. Adam wasn't really committed to the luck until <laughs> until it came about sex. <laughs> yeah. There you go. Uh, David Kane for ten months. Thank you, David. Says just dropping in to say S class is best class. But a team reigns supreme. Terrible. Supreme Terrible. victory. There you go. Grassroots Hegemon for $2 says car registration mounted securely in prison locker. <laughs> well, there you go. <laughs> Best of both worlds, right? Yeah, I guess. I mean, what do or you is a prison a car? locker in your uh, in your house? What if you're incarcerated? What do you need a car for? That's true. That's true. Uh, Keelan Narya Sawami for five dollars says, Sitch, your mom just saw the Better Call Saul episode where Nacho Varga finds out Pyrese's real name and address from the registration and his Hummer H2. <laughs> there you go. There you go. You're right. That must be it. Hmm. Uh, Sella for $5 says, Good Faith Gary with the WLM pick. I'm not sure she broad brushed. Oh, White Lives Matter pick. I'm not sure she broad brushed conservative. She said, quote, some Americans haven't got over desegregation desegregation uh yes first of all thank you good faith carrie uh my counterpoint would be she's still if i recall not part of the video she was still equating it to donald trump and conservatisms conservatisms in general so has donald trump gotten over segregation um yeah, don't you remember where he said, where are my blacks at? And then he pointed and said, there are my blacks. Yeah, but they were segregated from the rest of the crowd. Oh, you're right. So maybe he's still in favor of it. Because he's like, where are they? <laughs> oh, no, see, he, I he's not in favor segregated seg right no, over see, here. That's why he's he's not in favor of segregation. Because if, if they were segregated, he would have known where they were. Oh, there we go. They were mixed in with the crowd, unsegregated. So that's why he asked, where are they? Where are my blacks? <laughs> okay <laughs> that's so bad not good snubbird 13 for five dollars says rape being the exception to the rule obviously even then however i think the gatekeeping for the morning after pill has decreased significantly i mean i hope so yeah i, I agree i it has yeah it definitely has gone down and i do though actually i don't i know in some of the places in now where they've made abortion illegal i don't I don't know if that extends to the morning after pill. I haven't looked into that. I would be curious about that. So in certain states, the gatekeeping might have actually gone up. Now, the Chad father for 10 months says, I was default pro-choice Democrat before getting red pilled. I didn't learn about late-term abortion from the mainstream media. Yeah, they don't talk about that. Sure. Dr. Diddler for $5. S-Class General. Right. Says, um... A-Team is great. Says, A-Team only eats the cookie parts of Oreos and shows up to church just for the free money bowl. <laughs> S-Class is the best class. <laughs> oh, man. I've not been brazen enough to dip my hand in the free money bowl at church. There you go. Look yeah, at that. Just yet, so... Is that true? You only you don't eat the frosting of the Oreo. You just eat the cookie. That's weird. How's no. that even possible? Look, when I you get have to Oreos, use like a knife and like cut it out. When I get Oreos, I dip them in half and half, and I get them good and soggy, mm. and then I eat them. Oh, they're so delicious. Okay. Yeah. 
I don't like Oreos. They're only good when they're dipped in half and half. Oreos are gross. I'm taking a hard stance against Oreos. Chips okay. Ahoy, much better. Chocolate chip cookies, much better than Oreos. Yeah. I like peanut butter cookies. Not uh, really very popular, but I love them. I like peanut butter, and I like mm -hmm. peanut butter sandwiches. I do not like peanut butter flavored anything else. Hmm. Keep peanut butter out of my damn cookies. Okay. Terrible. Keep out of my cookies. What do you mean I don't like Oreos? You know what I mean. Oreos are gross. I don't like them Oreos. Give me some chocolate chip cookies. Some sugar <laughs> cookies. I don't like them Oreos. I'm not racist. Only racists like Oreos, okay? Chewy white macadamia nut cookies. Own. It says fast and bulbous for $5. Yeah, those are pretty good. Those are pretty tasty. Those are pretty great. Tasty. Yeah. Yeah, well, listen, I'll agree, like, them. Chips Ahoy, not the best cookie, obviously. But I'm saying if I had to choose between, like, cookie you buy at the store and, like, a giant pack, I would choose Chips Ahoy over um, Oreo. But, obviously, my my selection, this is what I did when I was young, when I was a wee lad, mm -hmm. and I could still eat dairy. Or, rather, I would eat dairy and then poop a lot. <laughs> okay. I would... Eat, I would buy those Toll House cookies, you know, the the little in the refrigerated section, you know, mm -hmm. the uncooked Toll House cookies that they're in like the big square. Oh, yeah, those are delicious. Yeah, you know, you, you go get the yellow Toll House cookies, they're in like a giant square, you'd break them up and you'd cook them. But I wouldn't cook them, I would just eat the cookie dough raw. <laughs> yeah, I've, I've done that many times. That's what I would, I would almost, ne they taste really good cooked, but I would almost never cook them, I just break off. I break off the giant square, I eat the raw cookie dough, mm -hmm. and then I would eat a Frito scoop, and the taste of the salty Frito scoop would go in your mouth after the chocolate cookie dough, and I was like, oh, it was like so heaven. good, yeah, so sweet delicious. and salty is the best together. Yes, oh my god, so unhealthy but so good. I don't know, I with the Toll House cookie dough, I don't know if that cookie dough was already pre cooked or not. Or if there was still the risk no, of salmonella poisoning. All the packages say don't, like, beware. You're going to kill yourself if you eat this cookie dough. But I, I think, th nah, it's I think this some amount of, I think there's some amount of pre-cooking in those, uh, some of those uncooked cookie dough things. So We have a cookie dough place that we go to occasionally that has the raw cookie dough that you can eat, supposedly. It's not. It's like an well, ice you go to cream like a, joint. Yeah, if you go to one of those ice cream places, they have like you can buy ice cream usually with cookie dough bits in it. That's no, it's different. It's meant to be consumed that way. So no, it's just raw cookie dough. I never did that with the. I've never actually. It was funny back in those days. I never did that with the Pillsbury uh, cookie dough ones because, at least back in those days, the reason I did it with the Toll House because it was in the it was in that square they could easily break apart. Where the Pillsbury one was that stupid like loaf. Yeah, you just cut and off I, a. A bit. Yeah, but that's like I have to had I have to add like work. I have to get a knife. I can't just like open a package and pull a piece off. I have to like get a knife out, put it on a plate or something. Interesting. Cut off slices of like raw cookie though. Like, come on. Interesting. No. I need listen, I need convenience in my life. I'm already so lazy, I'm not gonna cook the fucking cookie. Okay. I wanna cut out as much work as possible. I mean, I would just open up the end and just lick it like a Okay, you know, now like that's fucking a, disgusting. Like an ice cream cone. Are you fucking real? Yeah, just you take a couple licks and then you throw it back in the freezer. <laughs> oh <my God. laughs> Adam's like, first of all, he's freezing the cookie dough and he's like opening this giant cookie dough log. He's just like, mm, <laughs> licking it like it's fucking ice cream. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> Putting it back in the fucking package. <laughs> Come on. That's oh, a... my God. <laughs> that's, you're good to go. Hands are clean. <laughs> Your wife's like, I need to make cookies, honey, for the neighbors. You just don't say anything. Of course not. Oh, no. <laughs> Look, you've eaten ice cream before. Oh, God. That's disgusting. You've had an ice cream cone before. Yeah, I don't put the... I don't lick ice cream and then put it back in the packet. <laughs> Not that different. 
Come on. <laughs> Damn. Adam is, Adam is a psychopath. Come on. Right. Look. You know they make slabs of edible cookie dough now. Yeah, but I'm sure now, but I'm talking about back when I was a wee lad. I don't know if they I don't know if they did that back when I was a kid. I used to get the loaf and and cut slices, sure. No, you just like that. That's the lore. Okay, <laughs> I know the lore. The lore, lore, the lore is better, but I yes. didn't actually do that. I mean, I guess <laughs> I could have theoretically. I, f I feel like I was the only one eating the cookie dough, so. Right. Right. Okay. Adam was a roommate that drank milk from that show. <laughs> God. I have caught my wife doing that. Oh, my God. That's <laughs> hilarious. I have. Really? Yeah. Totally. Honey, what are you fucking doing? Get a fucking cup. <laughs> Get a fucking glass. It's the worst with milk, too. Milk just seems like it would be the worst, right? She just laughs every time I catch her. Oh, my God. <laughs> she just laughs. Because she's trying to get away with it, but I don't look. Look at that. It's I don't like, care. Like, disgusting. Look at this degenerate I drinking milk look, from a curtain. Oh. I don't care. God, that's the worst. Now, if she drank my half and half from the... Then, yeah. Then I would the be problem. super angry. Yeah. Right. Then the divorce papers are coming. <laughs> Every I, time I tell you not to drink from that fucking half and half, get a fucking cup. You might go even before a judge. You're like, listen, we have to get divorced because she keeps drinking my half and half straight from the carton. Nine, the judge look, is like, you drink half and half straight? That's exactly then, what the judge would say. Yeah, question mark. And then every, Adam's like, of course I do. <laughs> every time... Every time somebody finds out I drink half an hour straight, like it, it immediately becomes a conversation about how you're not supposed to do that. You're not supposed to do that. God, it's gross. Yeah. It's gross and probably awful for you. It's so delicious, though. Look, you eat ice cream, right? Yes. What's the difference? Ice cream is all cream. It tastes different. What do you mean? Half and half is half cream. When I when I back in the day when I could do that, because I'll be honest, I used to actually do that. Okay, I would do go what? into the restaurant and I would just drink the creamer straight out of like the little plastic. So you've thing. done it yourself. Yes, I've done it. You're okay. guilty. But wait a minute. There's a difference it's between yummy, taking... creamy, and wait, delicious. Stop. Stop. I usually did it just to freak people out. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> you didn't do it because you enjoyed it. Well, it was okay. I do, look, I get. It, it, it I was buy. okay. It's it was okay, but it was like it was very. It's very salty. Like I, I don't drink know, I like I drink like a half a gallon of half and half a week. Like that's insane. I to love me, that stuff. Like that's it. It's so salty. I don't know how you could drink that shit straight it's not up. Salty? What are you talking? It has like a weird flavor to it. it has like well, a salty flavor you're to it. Drinking the non dairy creamers at the at the oh maybe restaurant. that's well no I think the ones I'm the drinking half were, and half. One no, time the, you it was tried half to tell half. me it was in the it was a little half and half thing. One time you tried to tell me half and half had like high fructose corn syrup in it or something. Right. I was like, "You're high. What are you talking about?" I went and looked at the carton and it says milk, cream. That's it. Those are the ingredients. Okay. Yeah, it's delicious. Okay. Well, I mean, there's different types of half and half. You're probably just getting the straight up yeah, like I'm getting the cream. half milk, half cream. Not You're not the... supposed to do that, Adam. Yeah. <laughs> now, when I was younger, I didn't actually... I It was really weird. When I was a baby, when I was literally born, mm -hmm. I was lactose intolerant. Yeah. But then when I got a little bit older, I wasn't lactose intolerant. I would eat ice cream and milk and milkshakes and all this stuff. No problem. And then somewhere around college, I got slammed in the face with lactose intolerance. So how does that work? You just all of a sudden you're eating. I don't know. An ice cream cone, and you start feeling sick. Well, no, just as I'm eating the the normal things I would eat, I would feel sick all the time. I'm like, what the fuck's happening? Oh, okay. And you got it and checked out, like, and they were like, "You're lactose intolerant." Yeah. Well, so oh. the doctor, the doctor was like, "Have you tried not eating milk products?" I'm like, "No." He's like, well, try it. And I didn't. I'm like, oh, my God. That was the problem. I eat shellfish and I get chest pain. Well, that's different. I mean, that's mm -hmm. you have a, an allergy. Yeah, right. So intolerance and allergies are not the same thing. But height on lactose intolerance is interesting. Does he talk about lactose intolerance? What? 
Yeah, he does in the righteous mind. I don't remember that. How? Oh no, no, he. I do remember that. Wait, he talks about how there's like different, um, different regions of the world have different lactose tolerance levels, right? Right. Because yeah, okay, I, that, yeah. I thought you were talking about like some moral. He was talking about yeah, they make it moral. I do remember that now. Yeah. Yeah. To eat, to eat milk and the kosher laws and all that stuff. Lactose intolerance is an evolutionary puzzle. The gene that lets some adults drink milk with no attendant tummy troubles. Well, it's, I think I think lactose intolerance is pretty common in Ashkenazi Jews, unfortunately. So, look at that. There you go. You were the chosen people for lactose intolerance, <laughs> except for drinking milk. <laughs> yes. Libertary Sasquatch for four ninety nine. Says problem with fact checkers are a lot of the time they only fact check one small aspect of the story in question to dub the story false oh it's very true that's a that's shitty true. thing to do right yep, that is true they're like uh, lemon... a typo <laughs> yeah lemon heads for two dollars says abolish suburbs and force rich on public transit there you go yeah thank you emma <laughs> uh, grassroots hegemon for two dollars says horse paste bad horse size duck paste however <laughs> oh yeah good stuff drew the dogman for two dollars says you're confusing two drugs one for malaria and one for worms maybe i'm i thought it was for ivermectin was for worms or parasites oh hi or right? yeah ivermectin and hydrochloroquine oh did i say hydrochloroquine drugs. yeah oh that's right maybe i did ivermectin is a different drug Right. What is hydrochloroquine for? I don't know. A mala it's a malaria drug. Oh. Is that what it is? Ivermectin, I think, is You're right. Normal. Hydrochloroquine is the malaria drug. Yeah. Yeah. Gotcha. Duh. Stug for $5. The Soviets literally coined both the terms political correctness and social justice. Hilarious. Wow. How fucking hilarious is that? Jesus. Came right out of Stalin. Any Any confusion if this shit is... If wokeness is uh, socialist or not. CT for five Canadians says, why are we still talking about COVID? What kind of loser is getting COVID in 2023? <laughs> yeah. What happens, CT? How you feel, CT? I think so you, you over your... Can you taste things again, CT? Have you regained your sense of taste? Hope you're not <laughs> missing out on yummy right. half and half. Yes. Oh, did I miss CT? I guess I did, didn't I? You did, you bad person. What a terrible... Demon Bunny for 12 months says... 12 months! I read this one. But yeah. One year, that's awesome. Yes. Okay, well, thank you, Demon Bunny. Thank you. Yeah, it was about the um, the fish cleaner was they thought the wife was intentionally poisoning her husband. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, uh. <laughs> get, yeah, say that, say that name, Adam. Amenthi. 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 CT says that, yes, her sense of of taste has returned. Oh, good. You found out the hard way. What was that? Were you eating something gross and you're like, what the fuck? Amenthi, uh, Amenthi for $5. For $5 says, says hobbits... hobbits have second January 6th. <laughs> What's that That's mean? Funny. You know, like they have second breakfast. I still don't know what that means. Because I was saying, like, there's going to be January... Like, we were talking about if Biden wins again, there's going to be January 6th times 9-11. Oh, yeah. It's like, Hobbits have second January 6th. Get it? It was funny. I like. I appreciate the joke. Stug for $5. If CRT were to stop being anti-science, then it would not be able to propagate its own premise and conclusion in academia. Very true. True. That's the reason it is anti-science, right? Yep. <laughs> Soldos. Soldos for 11 months. Baking all the cakes. Says in a 1920s voice. Hot off the presses. Read it here, folks. S-Class likes to harass their mothers. While A-Team has good mother relationships. Real news here. <laughs> there you go. That's pretty true. good. True, true, true. That is true. Next Why can't we bring that? Why can't we all? I think everyone on the podcast should have to talk like this. Since she's going to try to teach his mom MMT next. 
It's going to be great fun. <laughs> I ha- I've tried to I've I've talked to both my parents about MMT. Oh, really? Yeah. What'd you get? Um, they buy aspects of it. My mom usually believes anything I tell her. <laughs> <laughs> my dad's usually a little more uh, uh, skeptical, but he 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 buys some of it. He actually read. He I got him to buy the Deficit Myth. Really? And I think he read it, or read part of it. He might have got bored with it. Um, he doesn't buy the notion that like that the only thing that makes money valuable is taxes, I don't think. And he doesn't buy the notion that they just destroy the money when they, when you get it. Yeah. So. Yes. I men- I made the mistake of mentioning on some show yeah. that if you could disprove that claim that the money is deleted, then MMT would fall apart. Mm-hmm. I don't know that I said these specific words, but this was kind of the implication of what I said. Right. So somebody's been going around and saying that they found proof that the money is not deleted because the money moves from when you pay your taxes to the general treasury fund. And therefore Mm -hmm. MMT is just completely debunked over end, Mm. end of story. Right. But I don't necessarily think it really is the end of story into the story right because that i've sent you the one video where it shows that the treasury and the fed work together and it's conceptually the the federal reserve is the bank account for the treasury and conceptually the account is a zero balance account it has no money in it or or not in it right Mm -hmm. Just okay. M- money is created as needed. So I get, I get that that's kind of the conception of it. But next, when we talk to Warren Mosler, which eventually we're going to talk to Warren Mosler again, we'll have to interrogate this premise of his because he does go into his book and he says that the IRS and the Treasury ha- have zero communication between them. Mm-hmm. So we'll get to the bottom of it. We will, definitely. We'll find out. Um, there was some other question we were supposed to ask them that I don't remember what it was. But... About MMT? Well, my router I, is crashing. I listen to All In Podcast pretty much every week. I don't know if yeah. you ever listen to it. It's uh, like a, a bunch of... It's four venture capitalists that do a podcast, and they talk about politics and whatnot. They're all friends with like Elon Musk and Jeff Zuckerberg and all that mm-hmm. kind of stuff. So uh, mm. Jeffrey Sachs is one of the people on the podcast. And everyone thinks he's like a super Hitler or something. Republican type guy. He uh, was involved in DeSantis launching his campaign and he's a big fan of RFK. I think he was a Trump supporter at one time. Hmm. But uh, one of the guys actually mentioned the deficit myth on the podcast this week. And I was really surprised because he said that the problem with the Biden administration and the problem with Democrats in general is the deficit myth. Yeah. That book by Stephanie Kelton. But he didn't, he never elaborated on. Like, what's the dealio? Like, why why is that the problem? And I would like to hear if they have a cogent argument, because most people that make an argument against MMT, they don't really understand MMT. But these mm-hmm. guys are a bunch of venture capitalists, so they should understand MMT, right? Right. They do, the in the in on the podcast, they do drift into the... Let's move on. Oh, we really have to balance the budget. The budget okay. is a giant problem. Let's you not know, talk about MMT a, anymore. This is a big deal. We have to get over it. Okay. Do you, do you buy that though? I mean, a lot like probably fifty percent of our everything. chat. Fifty percent of our chat right now probably thinks that the government needs to balance the budget, and that's probably the biggest problem that we're facing. Listen, I'll tell you what I buy, but mm-hmm. you have to bring up the watch together. I'll show you what I buy. Okay. Okay. If you bring up the watch together. Watch together's up. Okay. This is what I believe in. 
Where's the hold on? Listen, I'm a. <laughs> oh shit! Listen, I'm a gay man, <laughs> and I'm gay married. Really? Hold on a second here. There you go. Why can't I get the? Was it not up? One more time. Oh my god! Listen, <laughs> I'm a gay man, and I'm gay married. Really? There you go. Really? There you go. Thank you, uh, Lord Cameron, for making this video and this picture. This video is by Gamer. This is uh, uh, Lord Cameron did this. Happy belated Pride Month. So there you go. There's your sexy sitch cat. Wow. wow. I'm a cat. Wow. If, Beautiful. If only you didn't have those terrible ears. Well, they're cat ears. Sure. They don't look like penises, Adam. They look like cat ears. Sure. <laughs> okay. You can deal with the mouth, but the cat ears is too much, right? Mouth's a little sketchy, too. Okay. I sent you some fan art, too. Oh, sweet. I love fan art. I know. Just okay. one more question about the deficit. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Okay, thank you. I'm just kidding. I gotcha. <laughs> You got me. Got gotcha you good. Uh, SGTDA 4C for five dollars says if J Mac is still here, I want to say thanks. You gifted me my first YouTube membership. Also, lack of self awareness. This lady shouldn't surprise you. It shouldn't, but it does. Always does. So why is it that way? I know, but yes, thank you, our surrogate father J Mac. Uh, Isaiah de la Cerda for two dollars says fish cleaner story wife trying to kill her husband. There you go. Uh, Matthew Newman for two New Zealand dollars says last week my sister mentioned the bleach thing. No way. Go. Look, Sitch and I disagree about the ble bleach thing. What do what do we dis what do we disagree with? I don't think Trump. I think Trump meant light. I don't think he oh, meant bleach. Oh, God. Fuck Christ. Hey. <laughs> I'm serious. I listened no. to that talk a million times, and it's so obvious he's talking about the light. He's talking about both. I don't know what to tell you. He's talking about both. Hmm. What's the best disinfectant? Bleach. <laughs> Sunlight. Woman who blamed Trump after giving her husband a fish tank cleaner now under investigation for murder. Yeah, but was she charged? That's hilarious. She's like, oh, finally. I'm going to murder this guy and I'm going to pin it on Trump. Right. <laughs> Look, I was Wanda trying to Linus. save him from the COVID. Wanda Linus told NBC News last month that she and her husband Gary consumed fish cleaner because it contained a chemical Trump suggested might be an effective, uh, effective prophylactic and treatment for coronavirus. Yeah, skeptical. That seems like ridiculous. But okay, well let's see. Let's look at this woman's name. Did she get charged? Um, this art's pretty badass. I will give you fan art, but I will not give context. Well, it's this obviously Sitch and Adam Corn Adam here, a popular character on the show. Adam there you go. of the cornfield. Cornholio. Adam of corn. Uh, yeah. So this, this picture was drawn by Metard. Metard. Beautiful. Isn't that awesome? I dig it. Yeah. That's how I feel every time I see you looking like corn. <laughs> Woo! Okay, I looked up. Here's a, This is the latest story. June of 2020. Uh, the death of the Arizona man who ingested a lethal dose, lethal dose of fish tank treatment in March was ruled an accident by the county medical examiner's office. So wow. Such they did so... not charge the lady with murder, even though they supposedly investigated it to some extent. Sitch is so happy to hear that. Why? I don't care. I was... I was interested whether she actually got charged or not. Because I remember hearing about it at the time, but I don't remember ever hearing the follow-up. So, so, there you go. She was cleared. 
I don't know, man. It seems kind of sus, right? And you, are the people that are really that fucking stupid? Like, let me just take some fish cleaner and fucking drink it. Like, that's fucking... Like, why would you even... You're just going to randomly guess the amount you're supposed to drink? She's like, oh, I just took like four teaspoons and like mixed it in water. Why would... But why four teaspoons? Where would you get... Where would you come up with that amount? Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> like, I don't know. It seems... I, I mean, they cleared her of murder, but that seems pretty... Uh, maybe she's just a fucking idiot. I don't know anything about this person, but... People do a lot of stupid shit. That's true. It's inevitable. That's true. Look at this. Uh, friends of the man claimed that they were skeptical that he would intentionally do... That he would intentionally drink this. Um, oh, so they were trying to say... It. That's why they were blaming it on the lady. One of his friends said, quote, what bothers me about this is that Gary was a very intelligent and man. He was a retired mechanical engineer who designed systems for John Deere in Waterloo, Iowa. And I really can't see the scenario where Gary would say, yes, please. I would love to drink some of that koi fish tank cleaner. <laughs> this is what people this is what people said during the trial or something? No, someone told this to the um, a newspaper. There was no trial. Because they dropped, they, they investigated and said they ruled it an accident. So, well, good for them. Good for them. Go. Nobody deserves to go to jail for an accident. Assuming or was it? Was it? An <laughs> bum, bum, bum. Okay. Uh, Ed Woods Sr. for $5 says if truth means. Con if truth means consistent with reality, then convincing others of your beliefs is rational behavior. Interesting. Well, everyone believes their truth is consistent with reality, even though... Even though it's not. Yeah. Uh, so this this lewd picture mm -hmm. was by Zero Fox. Ugh, typical Zero Fox picture. So there you go. We got uh, the sitch like mm -hmm. a, a gentleman and a scholar... <laughs> Peeing the toilet. Peeing in the toilet because he's not a degenerate. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then you have Adam, like a, a degenerate psycho, uh, peeing in the shower. I think this picture would be better if I was peeing over Sitch's head and into the toilet. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. There's a whole... There's a longer <laughs> version of this. I don't know if we can show it on stream. <laughs> longer version of what? Of this picture. What do you mean? I'll, I'll, I'll show. Oh, no. Does it get gay? No, but it's got, like, you know, a lot more pooping and peeing. <laughs> oh, no. Look. Zero fucks always wants to take it too right. far. Too I'll describe it. Too far. It says proper methods of discarding bodily waste. And it, for the women, it's got the sit and the squat. And he put Lance on a woman sitting and peeing. And then the gentleman is me and Adam and says stand. And it's actually hilarious. So it actually already had the picture of someone peeing in the toilet and someone peeing in the shower. And he just put the sitch mouth and the Adam shorts. <laughs> Those people. Oh, okay. And then we have the, the disgusting Giga Chad section for pooping. And you have J Max standing on the toilet pooping into it. Nice. And then we have Zero Fox standing in the shower pooping into the shower. And then we have Zero Fox on the P section, handstanding and peeing on his own face. So, so there you go. Wow. Thank you, Zero Fox. For Very that, troubling. Uh, troubling. Troubling illustration. Or uh, edit, I should say. Uh, Christian Baller for $10 says, what moral intuitions do you all think abortion triggers? I would guess liberty oppression. But it's interesting. Liberals generally don't care about that. When it's care harm for conservatives, what are your thoughts? Adam? I think liberty oppression, definitely. You know, women don't want to be told what to do. They don't want their freedom impinged upon. Yeah, I'd say that. 
Is it? I do. Is it? I do think. Yeah. No. Yeah, but how does that I, work I agree with, with your assessment? Right? Isn't, it, isn't it reversed? Well, conservatives do use the Care Harm Foundation. They just—it's not their central foundation. I—I I would also say liberals are using the Care Harm, and they're caring for the poor, downtrodden, single mother, teenage pregnancy victim. <laughs> I mean, that's the way they're perceiving it, right? So they do, they want to care about the mother more than they put the, they're using care harm. They just put the care on the, on the woman instead of on the fetus. There, yeah. I think it's, I think they're both using care harm to just whether the care is towards the woman or the, the fetus. Yeah. So I think those would probably be the both moral intuitions that are being triggered in that moment. But I do think there is some liberty oppression in that. Well, sure. The left is using liberty oppression um, to say you're trying to infringe on my rats. Yeah. Yeah. Taking my rights away. Right. But I don't, I don't, I think that's secondary. I think that's part of the argument, but I don't think that's like the actual moral motivation. I think conservatives are also using fairness cheating. Yes. Um, This picture was. Crafted by Lord Cameron, this is the this the sad Gator woman that is mad that is upset that I never called her back. So there you go. Hmm. There you go. Did you know that Adam is into like lizard chicks? No, not at all. That. I was just thinking. I was. Looking you wanted at to this. put a lizard chick in the comic, in the second second comic. Sure, but I mean, not as an interesting character to draw, but not like going to bed with she's supposed to be like into you what do you mean can you imagine that would just like that would not be a fun night do you adam wants to draw a, a lizard chick that's mm -hmm. into him in the second comic and i said make it a snake chick and he's like no it's got to be a lizard kick lizard chick because she has to kick people with her legs well first of all this was your character idea that i'm like half-heartedly no. I only made it the lizard. What? Look, you wanted a snake chick. And I was like, well, to placate you, maybe we'll do a lizard chick. <laughs> oh, look at, look at Adam changing the story. Okay. Changing the That's story. That's not changing wow. the story. That's yes, exactly it how it went down. Oh, okay. Look at this. Blaming me now. All right. Terrible. Snake chick can't kick. <laughs> I thought that was the weirdest argument. They're like, Sitch, it has to be a lizard chick because he has to kick people. And I'm like, why is kicking people important? And you're just like, you know, whenever you do that, like people get very mad. Do what? They like make things big and small again. Stop moving it when I do this. <laughs> people don't like it. Are you trying to look at it? Here, focus. Yes, exactly. The like uh, a, a bad drug trip. Sitch Sitch hasn't drawn any of the comics, so he doesn't he hasn't had to sit down and go, okay, how am I going to execute this page? Like Sitch will write something like the snake woman kicks Adam in the face. Uh huh. I will. I, yeah, Not, I will write in the script that the snake woman with no legs is kicking someone. Yeah, there you go. Right. Thank you. Yeah. And then I'll sit down to uh -huh. execute it and I'll go, listen, the snake woman doesn't, a snake doesn't have legs. And that I'll can't say it be says done. Who. I'll say, make it, make it work. I'm a producer, Adam. I'm Hollywood producer man. Listen, kid, I know how to produce the pictures. Don't tell me what to do. If I say the snake kicks you, the snake kicks you. Make it work. <laughs> That's exactly how Hollywood is too. So sad. <laughs> so sad. You try to tell him, I don't, you know, I don't think this is going to look good. Then you, you actually execute it. Like, what's this? Looks like a fucking rubber hose. <laughs> what's going on here? It's like a hose flying through the air. Yeah, it's a right. fucking snake. <laughs> it was your idea to make it a snake. I wanted you to make it look good, though. You made it look bad. This is your fault. <laughs> <laughs> That's exactly right. That's exactly right. That's what they do. That's I know. Exactly. 
That's exactly what they would do. Look, I, I was talking about a cool snake. <laughs> Why are you give me this lame snake? I said a cool snake. A cool snake kicking a person. Yeah. Jeez. Kid, you never work in this town again. You're fired. What? How did this? How was this done? These are Sitch action figures. So Genos Coon did these. Okay. But this is One Punch Man. Yeah, he said he took a Saitama action figure and then gave it a Sitch face. Yeah. Isn't that cool? Very cool. cool. Thank you, Genos. Those are based. Very based. Look at I that. I like it. One Punch! Oh, wow. Wow. There's some more, I guess, here. Yeah. Thank you, Genos. That looks great. Looks sick. Sick as hell. Badass. I like it. A uh, very original for five Canadians says, Adam, why did you make the S-Class cover all hot woman? You're making me an A-teamer want to get it. Disgusting. So, well, listen, I understand. Everyone is loyal to A-team. And we'll get the A team cover out of loyalty. Mm. But nobody wants to get the dirty S class. Because <laughs> obviously, S class sucks. Nobody mm. likes S class. So I had I to see. make it enticing. I, I, I want you to get both. So. You know that, what? I, that's a, I like it. That, there was, you go. that was the ploy. Thank you. I appreciate it. Yeah. Uh, Adam Gadball, thanks so much for the 11 months. Says, I'll be watching tomorrow at work catching up, but can't wait for the coverage of the downfall of iDubs. A team is best class. There you go. Well, we're going to do that next week for sure. Right. We're talking to Ian on Tuesday. Right. And uh, I, what do you want to talk to Ian about? I don't know. You, you I think me. you should put, you should, I think you should tell Ian yeah. that he needs to confront Tim Poole <laughs> about this, the situation. Yeah. Yeah, you. I think you what should. What situation? Well, your all of your, all of your temporalness. No, 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 no. Listen, the, the, I'm not going to invite Ian on and then say, <laughs> "Let's talk about Tim Pool the entire." That's like super gross. Is it? Like he? Yes. Let me invite someone else on and then be like, "Let me bitch at you about your co-host." I want you to go back to your co-host and, and like give them all my complaints. That's fucking lame. I'm not doing that. No. I think you should do it. No, fuck off. I'm not doing that. That's lame as hell. No, 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 no. Okay, you f look, you didn't fall into my trap. I was Yo, trying to make... Okay, look at this. I was trying Who to make... Who do you think I am, partner? What do you think this is, kiddo? Partner? Partner? <laughs> Don't take my partner now. I'm going to steal the partner right from you. Get out of here. Look, Get I was going to try to come off as a cool guy. Yeah. When you brought oh, that up, I see. Look at this. when you brought that up, I was going to say, Sitch, why you look, he doesn't want to come on here and talk about Tim pool. Why are you doing this? Right. Right. Okay. But you already, you already figured it out. So You're right. you already didn't Thank fall you. for it. That's true. Your boss, not your co-host. Yeah. That makes it even weirder. Yeah. Oh yeah. True. So when, when Ian comes on, yeah, we'll have to ask him. Why do Nazis watch your show? <laughs> That'll be the first question. You know what? You shouldn't have said that because I will. That is literally going to be my first question now. There's no way I can't ask that. Ian, I have a very serious question. Why do you think Nazis just love the temple? <laughs> Why do white supremacists like your like oh, the God, show? Oh God! Now I have to ask that question. Fuck Adam. Now I have to ask that question. Look, it'll be a good icebreaker. That's true. Look, we'll That's ask true. him if owls are birds first, and then we'll ask him. The no, Nazi first question. we go with the Nazis. That's the first question. Okay. Okay. Then we'll ask him number the second question about the POV question. We'll bring it back for you. <laughs> Let's not do that. Okay. Are we going to ask him about the Eliza Blue stuff? No, come on. <laughs> Sitch. He's already talked. He's already said no. I mean, you can ask him if you want to, but I, I don't. Already said, no. He's already said it's it's fake, fake news. But I mean, I don't believe that. But okay, well, if you <laughs> want to bring it up, you can. I don't. Hell no! I mean, Come I think on, it's kind of stupid to bring up. 
Okay. <laughs> Uh, CT for two Canadians says, could be worse. At least the tarot card isn't the tower. Mm. There you go. Yeah, I think CT had a tarot reading and she got some like, it was like the fucking worst tarot reading ever. <laughs> Did she really? She it was got like COVID. everything bad is going to happen to you. It was, it was, I think it was some months before the COVID. She situation. got COVID from the tarot reader. There you go. That, there you go, CT. The reason you got COVID was because of that tarot reading. No, and from there was the, your tower. look, yes. the COVID was on the cards. It was over the internet, so that'd be pretty impressive. Oh, but, okay. Well, yeah. I guess I can't. I guess it's that. psychic COVID, you know, you never know. Right. Look at this. What? CC's already sent the chapters. I'm uh -huh. going to put them in. Thank you. Don't try uh, to Andrew stop Bellsprout me. For ten dollars, says we all oppose segregation. Explain why universities have black-only graduation spaces, housing, etc. Then you look at the black-owned operate movement. Fair enough. Fair enough. Florida Methgator for nine months says this is my theory of the conspiracy of the right-wing conspiracy theories. <laughs> True. True. Yes. Awful. CT says these are your strengths. All bad things. Yeah, that was a that was a pretty rough, pretty rough tarot reading. That's why we know tarot is not true. There you go. Your strengths were all bad things. Yeah, because it was like the person was supposed to be like, here's your strengths, here's your weaknesses, and the strengths right. were all like, like oh, I don't want these to be my strengths. <laughs> here's your strengths. You're lazy. <laughs> As my like, you're manipulative. <laughs> you're like, manipulative. Wait, yeah, it's like, hold on a second. Uh, Stuck for two hours says, just be sure to look at the eyeballs. I, I will listen. I will I will ask him about the comment. I'll ask him about the, the eyeballs comment. What that was in reference to at some point in the conversation. Oh, um, yeah. Look, I'm, I should put... I don't don't bring up the picture. <laughs> just That's I should bring mean. it up now just to remind us. No, 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 no. Let's, yeah. be, nice to Ian. Let's be nice to Ian, okay? I want to have a nice conversation with Ian. I don't want to be mean to him. Is it mean? I don't feel like it's mean. I think it's mean. <laughs> it's definitely mean. What do you mean is it mean? You're making fun of him. This is how we screwed up the Dave talk, because we thought we were just goofing around, but Dave was highly offended by the underwear. The sheath underwear. That's beginning. your theory. I don't know if that's accurate. But... Since when have any of my theories been <laughs> inaccurate? All right. That's just a theory, an atom theory. <laughs> Jeez. Oh, people were really criticizing your your neutrino take. Or I'm sorry, your neutron take. What? Did you read the comments or something? Where were people? I just I, I heard through the grapevine that people were saying that they were criticizing your <laughs> your your first of story all, about how neutrons of, were formed. First of all, it's neutrons. Yes, neutrons. You're right. And neutrons are a proton and a, an electron shoved inside a proton. That's what a neutron is. Okay. Maybe they... Look, I don't want to relitigate it. All you have to remember is I'm right. Okay. CT for two Canadians says, your, quote, your strength is your sociopath. The cards. Yeah, it wasn't good. <laughs> wow. Sounds awful. Right. Don't get a tarot reading. Look, that opens your mind up to evil spirits, CT. Why would you do that? There you go. That's what I heard, too. Yeah. Um, Will you ever talk to iDubs? Yeah, I would love to talk to iDubs. Hell I yeah. I doubt he'll talk to us. And Why not? Make iDubs talk to us. Look, we're other... Look, big people like us. Right. We're constantly... All kinds go of... Go ask him. All kinds of people have been on our show true oh come on be like listen i dubs you were on the reverse version you were on the mirror mirror version of our stream right with a light but what might as well come on the real deal all right look i'll dm i dubs right now there i think go. he's in my mentions you do it say listen buddy i dubs come on our show don't we'll do it during the stream i want you to actually give a good message i don't want you to give some <laughs> Let's see here. Let's see if his Doug for two dollars says Adams are open. I would actually be surprised if they were, but I'm sure he gets DM'd all the time. Stug for two dollars says Adam. 
Neutrons, not quite. There you go. Suck for $2 says, I mean, dot, 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 sort of, but not really. So there you go. Hmm. Oh, a lot of things are coming in because of my neutron take. Yeah. Look, we brought this up last time. Every time I make a bad take, we, we get rich. That's off true. Off of super chats. True. We do want to relitigate this. There you go. Because every every time we do, we make another twenty five dollars. Uh, CT for two Canadian says no. The tarot card reading was hilarious. There you go. There you go. Uh, Dingus Jones for three months says reading a script of her video makes this lady look bored and sleepy. There you go. True. Genie Air Penguin for nine months says two things make her a monster. That slide clicking noise we keep hearing and the fact she went to the same hairstylist as the tall man from Phantasm. Wow. So, I don't know what that reference is. Oh, you're right. That is her hairstyle. That's unfortunate. Um, You know, I didn't bring it up, but I, I was going to. That clicking sound in the video was real fucking annoying. It was. Did you notice it? Yeah, very much yeah, that, so. Click way over every time used. she had a different picture slide, I was like, geez. Way, way, way overused. Too overused and too loud, yes. Uh, you know, iDubs lost a bunch of money on Creator Clash. Did you know I, that? I heard that. I heard that, yeah. Yeah, I watched his response. Mm hmm So. That's sad. Matthew Newman for Two New Zealand says, self-delete post OP is the same true affirmation hasn't what i don't know what the fuck you're trying to say man. uh okay michael green for five dollars says this topic hit mainstream when jordan peterson went on tv to debate it if there should be a law mandating mandating pronoun use it exploded then well that's where it first came into maybe to some extent obviously I think it kind of like went under the radar for a few years because obviously all the stuff that the legislation that people on the right are pushing now is like that's like this year and last year um and maybe in 2021 a little bit too where jordan pearson talking about pronouns was what like 2017 or something so there's definitely a, um a, a big break in between but yeah that definitely created it definitely opened the door i think that's a good point that definitely opened the door to people starting to talk about it for the first time lucy lemonbug thank you so much lucy for the five gifted memberships thank you yeah that's generous, super lucy. very nice thank you uh lives Share in deswall specifically for two months says as i am exposed more to unthinking partisanship i have i gain a greater understanding of why people believe in phys physo not physod phys nominee i never know how i see this word i've never heard anyone say the word so i don't know how to say it Physiognomy. Physiognomy. What Physiognomy. the hell does that mean? It's the idea that like um, the way someone looks is an assessment of their character, like their facial appearance. And they, you know, they you try to say like all of these woke people are like ugly or have some like ugly appearance or something to them. So, wow. So there you go. Wow. There you go. <laughs> JMac, our surrogate father, for twenty dollars says, "I haven't been watching. Just look back, and it made me laugh that you guys have me on loop this whole time." Yeah, come on, you're the show mascot now. There you go, brother. Oh, let's see. Planes Escape Quarter for five dollars says, "Was out on a date, and received the quote. You received gift the membership email. Figured I'd drop drop in to leave a like, catch up with you later. Well, good luck with your date." Hope all is going well, Blaine. Yeah, really well. Right. Let us know. Check back in. Nilo for two hours says, please detail the science ideology. I thought I did. It says the belief that the scientific method is a greater way of figuring out truth claims in the world versus religion, versus tradition and uh, intuition and things of those nature. That's That's what I would call the science ideology. So I don't think 
Well, maybe you could. Yeah, okay. That's what I mean by it. Do you have any objection to that, Adam? I was gonna I'm looking up ideology. I'd like to get like a ideology. A fresh the system definition. of ideas and I a system of ideas and ideals, especially ones which form the basis of economic or political theory and policy. Right. That's a pretty broad definition. An so. orientation that characterizes the thinking of a group or nation. Right. Yeah, no. I think science obviously if is a orientation that characterizes the thinking of scientists, right? Look it up. Scientific method can inform ideology. Yeah, I don't disagree with that. I don't what's your point? I'm saying the belief that the scientific method is a more useful way of gaining knowledge is the ideology. You understand? Yeah. I know you understand. I don't know if Neil <laughs> I, I think I thought I was being pretty straightforward, but yeah. Ask um, Chat GPT for the difference. <laughs> epistemology. Let's actually, see. you know what? Let me do that. I'm actually I'm curious now. Let's let's ask Chat GPT. Okay. I had Chat GPT up. I asked Chat GPT. Is science an ideology? Let's see. I asked Chat GPT if. Biden was trying to control women's bodies and it gave me a, mm -hmm. like a giant. Right. Stab GP says science is not an ideology. Science is a systemic evidence based approach to the understanding of the natural world through observations, experiments, and analysis. It is a method of acquiring knowledge and understanding the physical and natural phenomena around us. Ideologies, on the other hand, are a set of beliefs, ideals, or principles that guide and shape people's actions, decisions, and worldviews. This is where we find out that ChatGPT doesn't have intelligence. Right. Because obviously. <laughs> okay. Listen. I, let me read it again. Science is a systemic evidence-based approach to understanding the natural world through observation, blah, blah, blah. Ideologies, on the other hand, are a set of beliefs, ideas, or principles that guide and shape people's actions, decisions, and worldview. Yeah, it, understanding the world, same thing. I know. I know. Okay. Uh, while scientific knowledge can, and discoveries can inform and influence ideologies, science itself is a process of inquiry that is neutral and objective. Mm. Well, let me ask. Let me ask a follow-up question. Isn't the belief that science is how should I word this? Is a is a neutral and objective way to how should I word this? Way to determine information about the world and ideology. Let's see. What's it say? They said... Um, What's the response? What's the damage? The response is, the belief that science is a neutral and objective way to determine information about the world is not considered an ideology in the traditional sense. Rather, it is a widely accepted epistemological stance based on the empirical and evidence-based nature of scientific inquiry. Well, I disagree with ChatGPT. I don't know what to tell you. Mm -hmm. It happens. So, right. This is this is this is your liberal bias infiltrating Chat GPT. Okay. So I've always anyways. had good luck with Chat GPT. Ask is science gay? Is science gay? It's not gonna like that. No, science is not gay or any other sexual orientation. Science is a myth mythology, a body of knowledge that is neutral with regards to sexual orientation or any other personal characteristics. There you go. Here's the real question. We got to uh, ask Tifa. Ask why. If that's Tifa. Ask <laughs> why are conservatives so obsessed with trans kids? Why are conservatives obsessed with trans kids? This is going to be good. <laughs> okay. This is going to be good. I can feel it. Jesus, it's a long answer. It's important to approach this question with sensitivity and acknowledge that views and perspectives can vary within a political and ideological group, including conservatives. It would be inaccurate and unfair to make a generalization that all conservatives are, quote, obsessed with trans kids. Wow! Look, Lija, all you had to do was use ChatGPT. 
Well, wait a minute. Let's see. If, if chat GPT gives a more intelligent, nuanced answer <clears throat> than that individual person did, I'm going to laugh my fucking ass off. That being said, discussions around transgender children and related topics have become more prominent in recent years. And there are conservatives who have expressed concerns or opposition to certain aspects of transgender rights or practices. The reason for these concerns can vary depending on the individual beliefs, values, religious convictions, or societal concerns. Some conservatives may have concerns about the age at which children can affirm their gender identity and make decisions related to medical interventions such as hormone therapy or gender-affirming surgeries. They may question whether children have the capacity to fully understand the long-term implications of such decisions. Others may hold religious or cultural beliefs that conflict with the concept of gender identity differing from signed sex at birth. It is worth noting that conversations surrounding transgender rights and the well-being of transgender individuals are complex and often rooted in deeply held beliefs and values. It is essential to approach these discussions with empathy, respect, and a commitment to understanding diverse perspectives. Engaging in constructive dialogue can help foster a greater understanding and promote inclusivity for all individuals regardless of their gender identity. Wow. So much better. That's hilarious. This unfeeling robots with no actual intelligence was far better at generating the answer to this question than than that 24 minute video we watched yeah from an attorney right that's sad from a partisan hack hack yes that's hilarious that's so funny <laughs> right wow 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 good job chat gpt yeah let's be friends uh, bra moment for eight months says, Hey burgers, are you guys going to start posting or streaming on rumble might be an untapped audience and they're in desperate need of enlightened centrism. Maybe people get crazy numbers on rumble. I don't know. Do they really? I feel yeah, like but they there's a question. There's a question to how the numbers work. <laughs> so. I feel like they don't get crazy numbers. I mean, the number says they get some people get crazy numbers, but I don't know. Hmm. Twitter sucks for five dollars says I'm right there with you, Adam. Make hurricanes illegal. I mean, I agree with that. I agree with that. True. Wow. True. Akilian Naryana Sawami for five dollars says she literally cannot comprehend the perspective of the religious right. She just chalks it up to quote, they make up stuff to gain political power. Yeah. Yeah. That's the crux of the, her argument. True. It's garbage. Lives in Deb's Wall specifically for five dollars says we need to create a culture of headhunting to aggressively push to, to aggressively punish academic fraud. Conclusive proof of fraud earns the finder a Roman style triumph. Was that like a head on a pike or something? There you That's, go. I don't know. Look, I don't encourage violence. I figure just fire them from their job or something, right? Mm-hmm. That's the appropriate response. No, I'm saying give the person that outs them or finds out that it's bullshit, you give them some kind of like finder's fee or some kind of, you know, something to incentivize people to look into academic fraud. Oh, okay. So, I get it. That's a good right. idea. Uh, I think that would actually cause more problems than it would solve. <laughs> so, if everyone's so thirsty to, to, to do that, there'd be a lot of false positives. So, yeah, I'll do it. Lives in Dev's Wall specifically for another five dollars, but I like your attitude. Says technically speak. Oh, this is bad. I I disavow this comment. Okay. Really. Lives in Dev's Wall specifically says not me. Says technically speaking, anywhere a mass shooter is becomes a shooting range. Hmm. Ooh. <laughs> what? Hold on. Say it again. No, I'm not gonna say it again. Bro, moment okay. for five dollars. Says daily reminder. That Adam munches on the pine cones outside in order to combat climate change. Okay. That's it? No, I don't. Also, do what are we watching? And there's like a little emoji of a wizard. A wizard emoji? It looks like a wizard. How is that possible? I don't know. It's a little well, wizard. Look at that. What's up, bra moment? Thanks for the wizard. Thank you. Is this true, Adam? Do you munch on pine cones outside? No, I, we don't even have a pine tree. You munch on pine cones inside. No, we don't have a pine tree. You don't have pine cones in the entire state of California? No, none. How is that possible? Just 
Look, I live in LA. We have okay. palm trees. We go camping. We have palm trees here. When we go camping, I see pine cones all over the place. Yeah, but uh, look, I'm not driving out to a campsite so okay. I can munch on some Gold. pine cones. <laughs> Are, yeah, that's right. You have them delivered to you via Uber. <laughs> Ouch. Solo for five dollars says, "Do you think legislation is needed to deal with the trans sports question, or is that going too far?" Um. Yes, I think I legislation. Look, you, we need to outlaw mm -hmm. that shit. Okay. Just I don't, categorically yeah. outlawed. Right. We have categories. We have sex segregated categories. Sure, you can identify as uh, whatever gender you want, but yeah, but okay. you can't. Here's the question. It would make sense that to be legislation regarding school sports that mm -hmm. are public schools, right? But should the government be making laws about what private sports organizations can do in regards to trans athletes? I don't think so. I think private organizations should have the rights to do whatever the fuck they want. Look, you just, you say that you can identify w with whatever gender you want, but you can't. You can't change your biological sex. Yeah, that doesn't answer my question. <laughs> well, the the sports are sex segregated categories. I understand that, but it's not law. I don't think there's, a, there's no law that says sports have to be sex segregated. Just look, a, I I a, don't a group decides to, a private institution decides to sex segregate it. I think the private institutions would like to just a decision to be made for them. I don't think. I mean, gonna, maybe yeah, because they don't want to get the blow. Yeah, because they don't want to get the the blame. Fuck them. Yeah. Tell them not to be pussy ass bitches. They just need to say. I don't agree. All these, all these teams are segregated by sex anyway. That's why I'm like, why are, what are we even talking about gender? Sports are sex segregated. They're not gender se segregated. Mm -hmm. Just, it's like female basketball. Problem solved. Sugar cone, waffle cone, cake cone, pine cone. That was the superior cone. True, uh, but no, I, I disagree. I think. For when you're talking about public school, obviously there has to be a law or a school policy, maybe not a law, but some kind of policy that would that would dictate that from the government. So that makes sense. I don't think private institutions should have I don't think the government should be passing laws that says a private institution uh, has to make decisions about trans athletes. I think it should be up to each individual institution to make that determination. So there you go. Huh. Um Derek Moriarty for five months says double D retrans you pick it. <laughs> there you go. True. No. I don't true. I don't when I was looking at the article, I couldn't tell if the person started the transition again or just that they were le they they detransitioned and then they left the detransition movement. Maybe that's what they meant. But they were still a detransitioner? But they were still a detransitioner, yeah. If you leave the movement, you have to trans again. That's the Oh, rules. is that the rule? <laughs> Yeah. Okay. It just is. Right. Don't ask questions. <laughs> Don't ask questions. Just have fun, right? Uh, let's see. Twitter sucks for five hours says the reason why the quote radical left wing pipeline doesn't exist is because everything leftist says is radical. True. True and based. True. And true. And factual. True. Um, Stog for two dollars says, "Let me ask you a Jewish question." And then there's some <laughs> Jewish characters, I guess. So I there's some Hebrew, as they call it. No, that's Jewish. <laughs> Is that Jewish? That's Jewish words. Yes, I don't know how to say that. It's been a long time. I'll be honest; I've forgotten my Hebrew. I'm a bad Jew. I don't remember my Hebrew alphabet anymore. Well, it's uh, but when I, a string of four-letter words, so it can't be good. But when I Google translate it, the question is, do you like sausage? Was it kosher? I like sausage, yeah. Mm -hmm. And I don't eat kosher, so it doesn't matter. Who doesn't like sausage? Sausage is delicious. Mm -hmm. Delicious. Go sausage. Is it female sausage? <laughs> I only eat sausage from female animals just to make sure it's not a penis. <laughs> I don't want anyone sneaking any penises into my mouth when I'm not looking. <laughs> oh, that's so bad. 
That's my that's the my new kosher rule. I only eat sausage from female animals. Okay. <laughs> okay. Benny the Doberman for twelve months. A full hey, year of free will still oh. haven't helped my, still hasn't helped my not being a schizo dog on the internet. Maybe a wrench would help me <laughs> with that. Mm. XD, love you guys. XD. Uh, mm -hmm. XD. Uh, I was going to say XD. Yeah, it's a little. XD. Uh, yeah. What? What? Oh, I like the XD. Yeah, it's a little face. It's a face, yeah. Yeah. Um, I was going to say, thank you so much, Vinny, for being one year free will seeker. Unfortunately, as Vinny said, mm -hmm. it hasn't helped cure skinny, skinny's, Vinny's schizophrenic behavior. <laughs> but who knows, Vinny? Maybe a second year. Maybe it's mm -hmm. like you had to build up enough free will to finally cure yourself of the schizoness. Okay. Next year, we'll actually have. The gold. The gold. That's right. Ooh, it's gonna the be good. Members. It's gonna be good. Can't wait. That's right. Can't wait. Can't wait. Uh A has. Thank you so much for joining the free will seeker. Yeah. Thank welcome. You so much. Welcome. You'll enjoy the free will here. Sitch doesn't have any. You'll see. But we I don't have do. any way. I wasn't listening. What did you say? Nothing. Oh, okay. I don't have any free will. Twitter sucks for five dollars. Twitter sucks for five dollars. Says Sitch. All you need is a set of elf ears as a tramp stand tattoo. Nice. Yeah, you should get that. Uh, now Sulla for five dollars says Chris agreed with Vosh on his show. Oh, I read that one. Chewbacca's lover. Oh my God. Sexy. Wow. Is that Han Solo? Chewbacca's lover for five dollars says Francesca Ramsey pretended to be friends with them as a sort of undercover research project. It was a special ops undercover mission, full on deception. You're right, I forgot about that. That's what she said. Yeah. She infiltrated the alt right. Yes, that was so insane. Holy shit! She found out they were very nice. God, <laughs> wild. That's what crazy. Right. Yep. Fuck her. Fuck. What a psycho. What a crazy woman. Uh, Joey Not Nice, thanks so much for the $50. Wow, Thank you, Joey Not Nice. That's Thank awesome. Thank you so much. Joey says, catching up on the stream, catching up on a show that streams for 10 to 12 hours each episode is very difficult. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but great interview with Anna Kasparian and LOL. Well, thank you. Thanks. Yeah. Thanks. And Joey Not Nice is a 15 month member. Thank you so much. Says word. 15 month. Word. I think that means, isn't that our longest? Isn't 15 months when we started doing the memberships? Perhaps. So there you go. Thank you, Joey. Thank you. Yeah, that's awesome. Twitter sucks for another $20. Our surrogate godfather. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. Twitter sucks for the $20. Says, wait a minute. How does she agree with the notion that, quote, society says I am black? But also... I can decide what gender I identify as, even though the gender is a social construct. What is happening? That's an interesting contradictions point. are happening. That's a good point. If gender is a social construct and you can identify as whatever gender you want, and race is a social construct, why can you then not also identify as whatever race you want? Well, it's hmm. it's weird because the TERFs are upset about trans people in the same way black people are offended by blackface they think you know it's kind of mocking them oh do you want to talk about your tweet not really i'm super exhausted now oh, okay because we'll talk about it do later we, do we have to you don't have to talk about, i mean you don't do whatever you want right uh, so uh, I, yeah yeah well i just i don't get why it's okay to tell women to fuck off, but you can't really. Like you, you're if if they're perceiving trans people as blackface for women, mm -hmm. why is it why is it okay to tell women to just suck it up and take a hike? And it's but obviously for a race, you're not able to do that. Right. Do you know why? Why? 
I don't know why. Oh, okay. Chaotic Contention for ten dollars says, "Hate it when Chris had a panic attack. We thought it wasn't right when someone mocked him, but when Kyle Rittenhouse was crying over his trauma, Chris goes mocking him, and those defended him should grow up." Wait, what? really? Chris, Chris was mocking Reagan? Chris Reagan. Really? Wow. How the mighty have fallen. I didn't Chris Reagan that. was when Kyle Rittenhouse was on the stand and huffing and puffing. Chris Reagan was laughing. Damn. Wow. That's pretty bad. Pretty bad. Uh, Lightning Ninja 36 for five dollars says, hey, does anyone remember that woman who transitioned to being black? If race is social construct, why didn't the left accept her for being black? That's right. Rachel Dolezal. Why was she not accepted? That's what I just said. Yeah, I and agree. And Sitch didn't want to answer. I said that they should. I said she should be. Oh, so you're like anyone can transition into yeah. anything. Listen, if if you can transition any gender you want, you should also be able to transition to any race you want. I don't. What's the difference? I want to be an Eskimo. There you go. Be an Eskimo, Adam. Okay, cool. I'm down. Why do you want to be an Eskimo? It just seems fun. Get to, you know, ice mm -hmm. fishing and. Hmm. I see. Get to there build a little igloo. Right. Sounds base. Uh, let's see. There was. You're not racist against Eskimos, are you? It's gonna. I'm very racist against. This might Eskimos. make the show difficult. I am. I'm jealous of their ice fishing. If I come out as an Eskimo and wearing those little parkas and getting to eat blubber, I'm not going to have their stereotypes that we get to put on Eskimos. I'm not going to have to talk to HR about you, right? <laughs> <laughs> I hate to tell you this, Adam, but I am HR. <laughs> okay. Oh shit! I am the HR department of this channel. <laughs> I guess you're right. Holy shit! Uh, Bob the Hunt for five dollars says she may be racist and hateful, but she is hot though. Even her arrogance and obnoxious smugness is sort of sexy. I get why Worski had the hots for her. Oh, Francesca Ramsey. I, I don't think she's that hot, but okay. Hmm. Did Andy Worski think she was hot? It's funny. Maybe. <laughs> I didn't know that. Uh, Twitter sucks for twenty dollars. Oh my god! Did I read this one. I did read this one, yeah. Thank you, again. Very original for 10 Canadians, says, I miss the old three questions. So I thought of new ones. Number one, the breakfast question. <laughs> okay. That's funny. Uh, number two, thoughts on have you read any height? Thoughts of, or, or have you read any height? Three, thoughts on Rittenhouse could ask before Tuesday chats. Hmm. Well, we'd have to ask afterwards because the Rittenhouse conversation would, the Rittenhouse question would derail, derail everything. I but mean, I maybe, don't, maybe those are some good questions. I don't really have anything lined up to talk to Ian about, so. Well, figure it out. Tuesday's you. You're right. I'll figure it out. Those are, those are good. Those are good questions. Very original. I like it. Maybe we'll, the breakfast question Height and Rittenhouse. I like it. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Chewbacca's Lover for another $5 says, Have you seen Truth Point Dark Web Rising? I'm pretty sure Drill and Derek are based on you two. You need to look into it. Great show. No. I'll look I've into it heard of right this. now. Truth Point Dark Web Rising. Yeah. Don't even know what that is. This is from 2019. So they... Hmm. Okay. Okay, we'll check it out. Sog for $2 says, Remember the superheroes Safe Space and Snowflake? Oh, God, I do. That was insane. Safe Whatever happened to that? Safe Space and Snowflake. Well, that it, never got off the ground. They pulled they the plug. Not. Yeah. Oh, you're right. They saw a quartering video talking about get woke, go broke, and they thought, oh, this <laughs> might be flying too close to the sun. So, Did they actually get canceled? Let me see. Did they ever get implemented? Uh, Snowflake and Safe Space canceled by Marvel Comics. That makes sense. Yeah. I don't even they think were... it got like a, a real 
book or anything. No. Yeah, there was, um, if you don't know what we're talking about, there were two Marvel characters called Safe Space and Snowflake that -hmm. both look like kind of non-binary, genderqueer black people wearing matching pink and blue, bright blue leotards with like pink and blue hair. Mm Mm-hmm. And it was like they had been bullied, called uh, snowflakes, and and so they decided to use that as their weapon and lean into it. And so they became sn- safe space and snowflake. <laughs> I think it was like safe space's ability was the ability to create uh, force fields or something. <laughs> to create safe spaces. To literally create safe spaces, yeah. Right. This is what it says. Safe Space is a big, burly, sort of stereotypical jock. And yet his character design is he's is he's wearing a tight pink onesie. Oh yeah. Very with pink masculine. hair. But uh, you know, stereotypical jock, right? When I think stereotypical jock, I think tight pink onesie with pink hair. But all right. Oh uh, yeah. He can create force fields, but he can only trigger them if he's protecting somebody else. That's fucking lame. This is on Marvel's official website. Snowflake is non-binary and goes by they, them. Right. And has the power to generate individualized crystal snowflake-shaped shurikens. The connotations of the word snowflake in our culture right now are something fragile, and this character who is turning it into something sharp. Badass. Is that not the lamest shit you've ever heard? I gotta get this book. Oh, there was also like a fat... Sounds incredible. There was a fat girl named Trailblazer. Oh, yeah, Trailblazer. She's like the uh, Indian girl. I guess. Native American. Say, but I'm assuming she's Native... She, they made her like a fat Native American girl. Um, Has a magic backpack that's actually a pocket dimension with infinite space. She can pull out useful or random objects, but it's not right. under her control. Was that actually? Does she actually have a power, or does she just have a magic backpack? It's the magic backpack. Okay. Full of infinite privilege. Listen, if you're going to be palling around with superheroes, and you don't actually have powers, you just have a magic backpack. Shouldn't you like really get in shape? I mean, you got fighting people with like fucking superpowers and shit. You gotta be in like peak physical condition. Can't you just hide in the backpack? I guess you could. You wouldn't be very useful in a fight then, though. Right. But yeah, this was uh this comic never got released, to my understanding. Sad. It is sad. This would have been great bait <laughs> to talk about. <laughs> uh, Bob the Hun for five dollars says, "Would you agree that anti-white racism is treated as a quirk or or?" Thank you, Adam. (laughs) Or S X X. I can't say the word. Eccentricity, a quirk or an eccentricity, and not real bigotry. Talking about how white people suck is just wacky. It is. It is treated that way, and I think it is wrong and very fucked up that is treated that way. Eccentric, huh? Eccentricity. Yeah, that's I, that is word. how it is treated, and it shouldn't be. It should be treated as a as racism, just like anything else. I actually retweeted someone put out a great tweet today. Uh, <laughs> that's it. Word. It was me. I saw you retweeted it. Yeah, someone put out a great comic today, and uh, the, the first panel is a, is like a person standing on a rock over a crowd, and they say racism is bad, and everyone's looking up and they're smiling. Uh huh. And then they say, including racism against white people. And then everyone in the crowd starts frowning and they're making angry faces. <laughs> and it was this? funny because if you look at some of the replies and some of the quote tweets, there's like all sorts of fucking like racist ass woke people trying to justify racism against white people. So I don't see this comic. Do you want me to send it to you? Yeah. You can Sounds- bring it up. Awesome. It's pretty based. I don't think you retweeted it. I did. So. No. 
how I found it. I really, I literally just went on my timeline. Really? That's how I found it, yeah. I'm on your right. timeline, and I don't see it anywhere. Okay. Are well, you crazy? Could be. Mm -hmm. Anyway. <laughs> Lives in Death's Wall specifically for five hours, says, I have a thing coming up and need some of the one. That was the luck. Uh, Stony for five months. Thanks so much, Stony. Says, hello, Sitch. I hope this finds you well. Today I worked hard. I haven't watched a video about lions and gazelles. Oh, I watched a video about lions and gazelles. You remind me of the gazelle. Debate me. Listen, Stony. Listen. Because you're running. Listen. I don't even know what the fuck Stony wants to debate about. Why are you running? Stony doesn't actually want to debate about anything. Stony wants to debate about why I won't debate Stony. It's a good question. That's the debate. He's winning that debate. He's like, Sitch, why don't you want to debate me? Well, what's the topic? On why you won't debate me. Debate me. Okay. If you want to set up a debate on why I won't debate you, <laughs> talk to Adam. He's my manager. Okay. He's the booker. DM me the topic. Right. As long there as the go. topic's good, maybe. maybe. There you go. Look, I, I'm trying to get such a debate stuff too so for real Sitch doesn't like to debate that's true I never like to debate anyone that's true but you're so good at it that's what's so frustrating yes J-Mac yeah. our get father for $10 thanks so much daddy J-Mac says remember when Oreos did the gay love commercial good times yeah I do remember that it was like the Asian... What was the gay love commercial? I don't remember that. Oh, I do remember that. It that was, was like the weird. Asian family that... Yes. And they had, and they had like the worst product placement ever. It was like, like the clear the table because my kid has to come tell him he's getting gay married or she's getting gay married or something. Right. And they're like, move the Oreos. Look, grandma's got the whole pack out again. You know what's funny? That scene literally happened in Everything Everywhere at once. <laughs> I wonder if they stole it from the gay Oreo commercial. It did happen, didn't it? Yes. They based the whole movie around it. They based How the whole lame. movie on the I knew gay there was Oreo a reason. commercial. I knew there was a reason I hated that movie. <laughs> it was basically all based on the gay Oreo commercial. It's based on the gay Oreo commercial. There you go. I hope you haven't seen that movie, J Mac. It's really bad. It's really good. Don't, Don't see it. It's based. Justin Hoek, thanks so much for joining the Free Will Seeker. Welcome. Right. Most dope for nine months has been a console gamer my whole life, but finally got a gaming PC built for me, powerful enough to stream too, so I can game and spread enlightened centrism. Based. Do it. That's pretty based. Do, Do it. it. Right. I know people uh, love it when... Sitch and I stream a game together because I'm so pathetic at it. They love to make <laughs> fun of me. I don't just look. Destiny does the the streams where he's gaming at the same time, and I just I can't stand the loud explosions and stuff in the video. Mm. That's that's like Boomerville, right? I'm just. I mean, he usually has it quiet enough that you only kind of like a little bit hear the you know the game noise, right? Last couple of videos I've listened to, it's just annoying. Oh, really? Yeah. It doesn't usually bother me, but maybe that's the boomer talk. Yeah, it might uh, be. I might right. just be boomered out. Um, 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 oh, says, J Mac what? says, love that movie. There you go. Base J Mac. Of course, J Mac loves it. He's good tasting things. God, I hate being odd man out. <laughs> Stag for says, uh, Helen Pluckrose keeps saying wokeness is capitalist. Huh. Okay. That's weird. I mean, she wrote the book about wokeness basically being cultural Marxism with James Lindsay. Uh, right? Yeah. Yeah. Critical uh, theory. Critical theory. Cynical, Cynical theories is right. the book. Yeah. It's really good. Yeah. I like that book. Right. Um, is she saying that wokeness is capitalism or is she complaining about woke capitalism, which is a thing 
that is real. Um, so is, um, is that what she's the distinction she's making? Who knows? Because I, I don't think she would say that like wokeness philosophically derives from capitalism. So. Maybe. Hmm. Um, Angry Bellspout for $5 says, morning after pill negates the claim for letting rape be a reason for abortion. It needs to be included in every rape kit. Um, well, not everyone that gets rape gets a rape kit, right? So that wouldn't necessarily be like a 100% fix. Hmm. Also, the morning after pill, if your position is that life begins at conception, isn't the morning after pill the same thing? Because, well, I guess there's two things, right? We there's isn't there one pill that will make it so if you're not the egg isn't fertilized yet, it won't be fertilized. But there's another pill that makes it so even if the if your the egg is fertilized, you'll still get rid of it. Aren't there two versions of the morning after pill or something? I've never taken the morning after. Pill. You know, oh, you don't know. Yeah. Well, you should you should test it out for us. Okay. Oh, thank you. So will it make me sterile or something? <laughs> I'll just make you shit blood, according to South Park. Wow. Mm -hmm. Let's see. Should be great for my dysphoria. So Solo for five dollars says get J J McCullen on. He made a video recently on America Bad Syndrome. There's a lot you guys would agree and disagree on. Hmm. So you skipped a lot of super chats there. I read those all. Oh, okay. I read some when they were coming in. He made a video on America Bad Syndrome. That's good. I hate America Bad Syndrome. I wonder if I saw that video. I didn't see it. Why are so many Americans anti-American? I'll check it out. Yeah, That's I want to watch that. Right. Um... Let me do some stream live. Solido for two dollars says the notion that media has turned evil because of greedy profits just doesn't hold water when NPR, CBC, and BBC have zero profit motive, but were all caught spreading blatantly biased news and misinformation, even recently, yellow, yellow journalism and all. Yeah, I think Hello, recently, friend. So I think it's a different issue. Because yeah, recently these institutions have all become ideologically captured, right? But even before the ideological capture of institutions. Like I don't, I don't know because I wasn't really paying attention back then. Like I don't know what NPR was like in you know 2005. So like a dog shit radio station even back then, or was it more neutral? So I don't know really the answer to the question. But yeah, that's. I mean, obviously it's not the only, profit motive isn't the sole contributing factor, but that definitely seemed to be the signaling of the downfall of news media. Or at least that's how the narrative goes. Yeah, so. when pay to play became a thing. Right. Or just not necessarily pay to play, but just um, when you have to make the news, when the news becomes made for profit and it needs to be designed to be entertaining as opposed to just being dry informative. and informative. Right. right. Yeah. So. Imagine so if you doing... had to make math entertaining for anyone to take math class. Right. Uh, so Roj for two dollars says so in light of the recent counterpoint versus president sunday fight let's ask it here do you consider it weird if someone judges your relationship with your father when considering marriage also thoughts on the new mission impossible I haven't it, seen mission impossible i mean it looks pretty good for the trailer right me too i haven't seen it either i don't um, know anything about the president sunday stuff is first of all I, yeah, I didn't even know. Is Counterpoints going to debate President Sunday on this stupid, um, on this stupid topic? I saw President Sunday g going back and forth with Brianna Wu on Twitter mm -hmm. about I don't know. It just seemed like nonsense to me. President Sunday just calls people out all the time for just bullshit. Well. That's kind of like his jam, right? Why can't he just make content? Is to just start these like weird fights in a very hyperbolically obnoxious manner that are very bizarre takes. <laughs> yeah, what is the deal with that? Right. 
Let's see. Does he even make videos anymore? Oh, you mean videos versus just streams? I don't know the answer to that. Yeah. So, but anyway, regarding, so, let's see if I can oh, bring President it up. Oh, President, I can find it. I saw, I did see this tweet you're referencing somewhere. Let's see if I can find it and read it. I don't know if I liked it or retweeted it. I just looked at it and I shrugged. I was like, huh, okay. Let's see, counterpoints, marriage. Maybe that will make it come up. His last video from five days ago is, in bold strategic move, foreign man admits fraud. Is foreign man the video we were going to cover? Right. I don't know. Hmm. Okay. Let's see. Counterpoint said, you should marry a woman who has a good relationships with her family. This is uncontroversial anywhere besides Twitter. A refugee of the fatherlessness. My wife okay. has an excellent relationship with her father. So, look, I'll throw an anecdote your way. Actually, yeah. I, I don't know that I've ever even had a girlfriend that had a bad relationship with her okay, father. Okay, let's. Okay, let's. Here's the here's the origin point of this bizarre conflict. So Elijah Schaefer, in his very bizarre trying to um, flirt with the alt-right but not be super open about it, uh, tweeted a picture of Nick Fuentes out. And he said, you see a picture of this man, what's the first thing that comes to your mind? Okay. The picture of Nick looking a little weird, drinking from those red cups uh, from Fresh and Fit. And someone responded saying, I don't know who this is, but I'm getting my daddy will sue you vibes. To which some presumably groper responds to that, saying, took that person who said that, took their picture, blew it up, and said, I don't know who this is, but I'm getting, quote, sex with many men I barely know vibes. Okay, interesting to comeback. Which, yes. Um, to which CounterPoints, quote, tweeted that and said, I married Mrs. Points partially because she has a good relationship with her father. She is a good woman, a great wife, and mother. And cartoon trad accounts should focus more on themselves and their communities over Jew posting. Oh, that's Counterpoints' as wife. Okay. That's why he replied that way. Okay. So Counterpoints' as wife said, I don't know who this is, but I get the I get the daddy will sue you vibes. And then someone responded to Counterpoints' wife saying, Sex with many, many men I barely know vibes. And then that's why Counterpoints said what he said. Okay, so you have so let me read that again. Now that I understand the context, he says, "I married Mrs. Points partially because she has a good relationship with her father. Partially, she's a good woman, a great wife, and a mother. And cartoon track accounts should focus more on themselves and their communities over Jew posting." Okay, I, do you have any problem with that tweet? I have no problem with that tweet. Okay. Is there anything wrong in that tweet that sick, that jumps out at you? Well, I don't like the word Jew posting. Okay. Okay. So then President Sunday replies, you married your wife because of her relationship with her father? Question <laughs> mark. Which is a classic President Sunday bad faith, um, intentionally bad faith attack, right? Yeah. Because as we all read, first of all, he said partially, right? So then we're going to simplify that and say, you married your wife solely because of her relationship with her father. So an intentionally dishonest, bad faith attack from President Sunday. To which typical. counterpoints, yeah, typical. To which counterpoints responded, you should marry a woman who has good relationship with her family. This is an uncontroversial statement anywhere besides Twitter, the refugee of fa the fatherless. Okay. Seems fine. Seems fine to me. I think President Sunday just being a weirdo, weirdly autistic, but that's kind of like his entire um, <laughs> his entire jam, so I don't have any problems with anything Counterpoint said. <laughs> now, to be, to be a little bit charitable, 
Um, let's see. Someone said, you know, there are bad fathers out there. Should I refuse a woman because she distanced herself from a bad person who happened to be family? At which counterpoint says, yes. <laughs> if people refuse to have good relationships with the most evil people on earth, you all should be exiled to the island of Elba and barred from the internet. True. So this is kind of the problem of the, the autistic, the autistically pedantic debate, right? Because I think if we're giving some level, and we all know people like this, and this is especially very popular on the internet, right? You say something that people understand what you mean. They understand the general gist of what you mean. But in they order twist to, your words. Yeah, they either twist your words or in order to make some debate point, they become highly autistically pedantic and parse everything you're saying, right? So I would interpret con uh, Counterpoint's position about saying you should marry a woman with a good relationship to her family. She, he's speaking in generalities, right? Obviously, there are circumstances that are outside this. No one is suggesting that if someone has an abusive family situation that you shouldn't marry the woman because or the man because they don't get along with their abusive family, right? That's a ridiculous statement. Mm -hmm. But what Connor points is really alluding to when he says, uh, this is uncontroversial anywhere besides Twitter, the refugee of the father of the fatherless. What he's alluding to, what I think he's getting at, is that it doesn't seem it shouldn't be a controversial statement to say that if someone gets along with their family, that would be a positive in your eyes for marriage, right? Because you would expect that there'd be possibly some sort of um, like how someone's interacts with their family could then be a marker for how they might interact with you. Yeah, it's uncontroversial. Right? If you can't get along with your family, how are you going to get along with people who don't even share the same genes as you? Right, right. Um, so that's why, so that's how I interpreted Counterpoint's statement. And I also interpreted that like weirdo lefty types who have like weird ideas about family and being anti-family would find this take controversial. Right. Or they'll become hyper pedantic and say, what if your family sucks? What if your family's a boost? Blah, 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 blah. Which is like, OK, that's all fine. But that's not really what he was really alluding to. And if you're going to have some sort of level of general charity to interact with an individual and understand words that are coming out of their mouth, I think you could understand the concept without being this hyper pedantic. So but of course, that's not the case because it is Twitter. So. Well, I would also think, you know, if your family sucks and you were raised by wolves you're probably a bad candidate for a spouse <laughs> as well like That's i just possible, like but... sorry right sorry right yeah uh to which let's see the continuing the dumb drama about the dumb comments uh so shu tweeted out fellas is it fascist dot 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 to want to date someone with a good family dot 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 and it yeah, see, someone on, Shu comes in with the ultimately reasonable take again. Right. Yeah. Well, also somebody on Vosh's forum says, okay, here's the tweet. So there was, it was counterpoints tweet. And then Shu replied to it saying, one of the things that attracted me to my boyfriend was how nice and respectful he is to his mom. It shows respect for family. Hell yeah. True. And it shows respect for their family and that their views on men or women haven't been tainted, tainted, avoid mommy slash daddy issues at all costs. Okay. Thank you. Yes. Another reasonable take. And right. people so, raised by wolves. Right. So someone took a screenshot of that Twitter exchange with Shu replying to counterpoints. They posted this in Vosh's Reddit saying, no surprise, Shu is even fascist in her personal life. What a just bad faith people, man. <laughs> right. These people probably got a lot of jealousy because they have terrible relationship with their parents. Right. They've been completely poisoned in this online atmosphere where if your parents don't accept everything that you want to throw at them, your parents are fascist pieces of shit and you should just immediately disown them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So they do she that also, and they have terrible relationships. 
She also posted a picture of even it seemed like even some of the people in Vasha's subreddit thought this was stupid. Someone said, is it really fascist to want to date someone who has a functional family relationship? And then someone says, yeah, I would say it's not, but this could be a dog whistle. Oh. <laughs> Since most used attack on women online is that they don't have a father. And then the OP of the thread said, it's a dog whistle. So it's a go. dog whistle. I just, uh, are all these people 15-year-old boys? I feel like they I are. Know. 13 year old boys, 12 year old boys. I mean, this is just like ridiculous. Right. But anyway, and then President Sunday goes off being President Sunday. So, you know, whatever. Mm -hmm. Okay. Moving on. Uh, Moving on up. Blaine's Escape Corner. Well, Blaine's Escape Corner for $2 says date is going great. She's my wife of 10 years. <laughs> well, there you go. Glad, glad it worked out for you, Blaine. Okay. I know you were on pins and needles, but I'm glad it worked out for you. <laughs> I'm glad you checked back in. That's right. I'm stoked. Maybe Wait, why are you listening tonight? to us? You're on a date. Okay. Stop listening to us. Give your wife of 10 years some, some love and affection <laughs> and your attention. All right? No. <laughs> <laughs> Tell her we're happy that you're happily married. Uh -huh. Ask her about her relationship with her father. Yeah. Make sure it's good before you there ask, you though. Go. Don't want an uncomfortable situation. If it's bad, you divorce her on the spot, okay? <laughs> take, you throw this, you take those 10 years and you say, no, doesn't matter. Right. Uh, Dr. Diller for two hours says, I think both sides believe tons of uh, lots of bullshit, but only right wing garbage is sufficiently mocked and debunked. Most people are, aren't openly laughing at the patriarchy, white supremacy, etc. True. We are. Yeah. But yeah, the overall, every time somebody says patriarchy, I laugh my ass off. Yep. That's a great point. Patriarchy theory. Patriarchy. <laughs> patriarchy theory. Yep. True. What the hell is that, Sitch? That's uh, a conspiracy theory. That's what it is. Some weird guy for Joe says S class goes grocery shopping by taking items from other people's shopping carts and was almost arrested for public indecency at the local duck pond. A team reigns <laughs> supreme. Play us a tune, friended. Wow, look at this. Wow. Some weird guy is copying Dr. Taylor. Oh, is that in... Really? Yeah. Terrible. I mean, listen, that makes sense. We all know A-Team's a bunch of copycats. A bunch of unoriginal biters. Was that S-Class that pulls stuff from people's carts? That's what he said. Okay. Read it again, but make it cool. No. <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> Dr. Diddler, S-Class General, and Original Soul for two dollars. <laughs> says, I got a term for your vocabulary, lads. The woozle effect is the process by which people repeat a citation to a source that doesn't adequately support the claim. This Princeton study says that elites rule politics. I've never heard that. The woozle effect. Is that a so, real thing? Because that's awesome. Yeah, it is. The Let effect. me quote this insane Antifa writer as evidence for my claim of whatever. Yeah, right. I hate that. So this is a reference to a comic of Winnie the Pooh and Piglet who are hunting to catch a woozle, but they're really following their own tracks around a bush. <laughs> oh, this is great. This I is like great. It. The woozle effect. That's good. I'm glad it has a name. I see that all the time in videos and it drives me crazy. It's like, yes. look, I'm quoting this person. That's an insane, yep. like an insane serial killer. But <laughs> I just want to make a video that is all quotes from serial killers, but right. like not telling people they're serial killers. A lot of woozling going on. Yeah. Death by Sloth for $2 says every leftist says racism is systemic, but I've never heard a single one actually define that. From what I can tell, it basically means... Things in the past affect the future, which, while true, is not profound or helpful. No, not that, at all. That is true. And, I mean, 
The frustrating thing about that that Francesca Ramsey video was her her prescription was try harder. Well, why can't you just try harder with the color blindness? Right. It's like, no, we have to change laws and institutions and all that kind of stuff. That's what we have to try harder on. Change mm -hmm. them how? Right. Yeah. Dumb. Very dumb. Dr. Dealer for $2 says, how many crazy people have you watched just to laugh at? Me personally, I used to watch Naked Ape and Louis Levon because they're both very angry and insane and it puts me into a laughing face. <laughs> well, if you want to know how many crazy people have we watched just to laugh at, I mean, that's like 90% of our content. <laughs> yeah, most of them. Right. So, yeah, very high level. So, very high level. But, yeah. I watched a Vosh video the other day because he was covering Tim Pool's PragerU video, which, I mean, that's... Why is Tim Pool doing a PragerU video? That seems way off brand. Wait, anyway. really? Tim yeah. Pool did a PragerU video. Right. That seems off brand. But in the... It seems totally off brand. But in the PragerU video, he mentions the fine people hoax. And mm -hmm. Vosh starts pulling up clips from the press conference but he starts the clip right past where Trump has said, I'm not talking about the neo-Nazis. They should be condemned totally. So the whole time he's watching this long ass clip looking for that, he's basically convinced himself that Trump never said that part and, and buying into the narrative. No, he like he ends up, he continues and ends the video going, that's right. He never said, he never condemned neo-Nazis. Tim's an idiot. Why didn't he just Google it and find the transcript? So I could just, or he or just searched it. Or why didn't this he just look at the transcript look, on the video? This is Vosh we're talking about. Okay. Okay. And then he starts it's... talking about Sean's video and how Sean made this video that proves Trump never condemned the neo-Nazis. Oh, I just said three days ago, Vosh, Tim Pool, psychotic prager you video. Yeah, that's the one. That is really hilarious. So he, he I was laughing. The... I'm laughing hysterically the whole time. I'm like, look at this. Right. This dumbass. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And he's thinking he's like fact checking this. Look, I fact check, check Tim Pool now. What the fuck? He's wait. I, I just scrolled the video. He's like looking into Michael Brown. Oh, my God. Is Vosh is Vosh like Michael Brown? Is he bringing up Ferguson? Michael Brown situation with no knowledge of the situation? None whatsoever. Oh, man. None at all. Right. Yeah. That's hilarious. He didn't do terrible there, though. He at least looked at the autopsy and realized the guy was shot in the, in the right. front, not in the back. Because there was a claim he was shot right. in the back as he was running away. But the mm -hmm. autopsy shows that he was shot right. in the front as he's running forward and then he went down and one hit him in the back as he's mm -hmm. falling forward. Right. Right. Because he charged the officer. Yes. The officer's testimony lined up with the autopsy information. Yep. Right. Okay. Interesting. Well, I'm about to watch that video if I want a good chuckle. The, <laughs> the, the stuff on Trump, which is, look... You can't really defend Trump anymore because of the whole January 6th indefensible shit. And it's like even more indefensible when Trump does a CNN town hall and claims that Pence is a cuck and he he totally could have thrown out the votes. It's like, what? Mm -hmm. the? <laughs> That's insane. Nobody, nobody in particular says that Vosh did find it, but that he gaslit through it when he found it. I mean, I watched the video. He didn't. He never found it. Okay. Yeah. He um, he never found the specific moment when Trump says, "I'm not talking about the white nationalists and neo Nazis. Right. They should be condemned totally." That's exactly what he says. Right. Yeah. Right. That is not in Bosch's video, and I watched because we were well, arguing. Tim says the quote, and you're saying that he didn't play the the audio of Donald Trump saying it. Right. Yes. Right. And he's wa he walks away saying Tim is lying. Mm 
Mm-hmm. Yeah. Which... When I look on um, when I search for condemn on the YouTube transcript of the video, it only shows up once when Tim says it. Yeah, that's exactly. Look, I watched the video. Okay. I believe you. Look, I have a perfect photographic memory. <laughs> Don't laugh. That's true. Uh-huh. I have perfect uh-huh. recollection of everything I've ever watched or seen mm-hmm. or heard, especially from astronomy and chemistry class. <laughs> the What about astrology class? I never took astrology. Okay. I should have. There's a bunch of cute girls in there. Mm-hmm. I... Yeah, I don't. Yeah, this obviously it's a hilarious video. You should watch it. That's bottom line. Watch it. Okay. It's hilarious. Right. I don't know That's why Tim bad. Pool is making a Prager U video that I don't think. Look, I don't condone that at all. But. In the year 2023, Vosh still believes the fine people. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Of course he does. Wow. We were arguing on Twitter about this. I, I can't remember. I think you might have been in, involved because you were making fun of the guy and I kind of stepped aside. It was the guy who came in and was like. Okay. He was saying that Trump never condemned neo-Nazis and then he moved the goalpost to, okay, well, he condemned him, but like three days later, he didn't condemn him immediately. Yeah, I don't remember. What, I don't remember what sparked that conversation. But he posted yeah. some Sean video. Yeah. And I went and watched a Sean video, and I thought, "Oh my God, Sean is doing all of the thinking for every single leftist." Online. Oh, you mean Sean and Jen? Yeah. Yeah. Because this video is basically that just their narrative of the whole entire thing. Hmm. And but in the video he does Sean does play the video of of Trump condemning the neo Nazis. That's in the video, but I don't think right. anyone who watches that video knows it's in there. Because Well, first of all, Sean's videos are two hours of the most boring fucking content on the planet. So I don't think anyone actually watches them. Of course, yeah. of course. But in the video, he comes up with this wild way of dismissing the fact that he he says he's condemning the neo Nazis <laughs> by basically saying, "Oh, but can't you really condemn them because you know they were there?" It's it's so weird. Why do I find this tweet? Um, find people. Let's see. That didn't work. Who cares? I want to find the stupid person. I want to find the stupid Sean. Sean well, they video. probably blocked you. They ended up blocking me. Oh, really? That's funny. Yeah. After the guy bitched and moaned about me blocking him just because I thought he was just some tart on Twitter. So I unblocked him because he complained to you. And then he blocked me. <laughs> I was like, funny. Oh, piece of shit. Well, in his bio, he's labeled himself as the centrist Marxist. So you can take that as you will. And also says, fuck civility politics. So interesting. Right. Um, After our, he looked us up after the Anna interview. And he watched a bunch of videos. Right. And he wanted to, he came at us with the Kyle Kalinske stuff. That was the guy. He's like, Kyle Kalinske? You were on Kyle Kalinske's stream defending Trump. Right. And you're thinking, oh, well, maybe he's a fan of the show. But no, he's just watched Kyle Kalinske's stream five minutes later to find some dirt on us. That he could go to Twitter and, like, start posting at us. Right. right. What, what is this strange world we live in, Such. That's a lot of work to do. Just to okay. argue with someone on Twitter. I found it. You were, God, your memory for bullshit is very good. I don't, I like, <laughs> I have these conversations with people and I immediately just put them out of my mind because I don't want to fixate on them. Sitch, don't fuck with me. I, my memory is ironclad, okay? So this guy tweets me in response to one, to Anna saying something. Uh, he tweets it, he, he tags both of us and he says, 
uh, she, meaning Anna, just said on the centrist right wing <laughs> Sitch and Adam show where he tagged us that Anna doesn't like generalizing about people or putting a spotlight on one Karen, but she's totally fine with putting a spotlight on a small group of activists and using it to generalize about trans people, which is not something Anna did at any point in the conversation. No, I like how when Anna didn't say trans people and said trans activists, she gets in trouble. And yet now this person is assuming that she said all trans people instead of saying trans activists, but okay. But anyway, Matt continues. Hey, remember when Sitch went on Kyle Kalinske's show and lied? Lied? Yeah, lied about how liar. Trump supposedly denounced the Nazis at Charlottesville when you admitted the fact that he only did it after being hounded by the media about it for three days. I do. Okay. Yeah. To which I replied, it's been a long time since that show. I think it was like literally like two years ago. I assume you're referring to us talking about how Trump said the white nationalists were not fine people, but a lot of the media cut that part out. How did we lie? Then he links a, is this the Sean video he links? Yeah, totally. He links a Sean video called How Prager You Lies to You, Charlottesville. Right. Three Which years ago. in that video is Trump denouncing right. the white nationalists. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Matt says, I only saw it a few weeks ago. I binged and otherwise never heard of you. Okay. Because he only denounced the Nazis and white supremacists three days after being called out by the media relentlessly for it. Again, literally Prager you talking point. I always think it's funny when people accuse us of having some talking point from some source we've never seen. Right, or heard of. And then they and then on top of that, then they throw us some talking point from some other content creator. <laughs> like he's like, You're just regurgitating Prager you talking points. And Watch I know this this Sean video. <laughs> because I have some Sean and Jen talking points. <laughs> exactly. It's like okay. exactly. Right. As you do. <laughs> right. But notice, see, but this is this is where the people are sneaky, right? This is where the people are sneaky. Of course. And you can't fall for it. And I did very I did very good here, not falling for it. I said, if you want to complain that it took Trump too long to respond, go ahead. But we weren't addressing that. We were addressing a completely different point that the media was lying about. Yep. Okay. And that's where the sneakiness is. Because I said, how did we lie? And he said, well, you left out that it was three days after the thing. And I'm like, well, we never talked about the length of time response. We were talking about the fact that that they would cut out the he him saying he wasn't talking about the Nazis. Right. And they literally it. they right. literally say Trump praised neo Nazis. Right. Or they would cut that out or they put it right. at the bottom of the article, or whatever. Right. And yeah. yet someone changes it to a they this is what this is the projection. I talked about this the other day. I say something or you say something or we tweet something and someone like they add their own fucking wild interpretation to it and then they straw man you and you're like, well, that wasn't my point. And they go, you're moving the goalpost. You're like, what? That was never my point, you piece of shit. Yeah. I never said that. Welcome to the internet. Right. And then this person, because this is funny. I don't think this person, I don't know how old this person is. I'm going to assume they're very young. 15. Right. Because I don't 14, think they were like 13. cognizant, politically cognizant in 2017 or whatever the fuck this happened because anyone that was paying attention to politics when this happened remembers the fine people thing clear as fucking day right of course everyone remembers this he then this guy then tries to go on this gaslighting campaign where he was like no 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 the point the media was making was that he took too long to respond not not what you're saying <laughs> and i'm like all right whatever well, when it first happened, the media was hounding him for some kind of explanation and trying right. to get him to denounce. All of this is in Sean's video. Mm -hmm. Sean. Yeah, but that's a different point. That wasn't the point that we were talking of about. Of course, on, it's on, giantly uh, different point. point. Yeah. And Sean uses his point to say that Prager U is lying. Like, <laughs> mm -hmm. Prager U. Uh, Sean's video basically says Prager U is lying because Prager U got wrong the length of time that it took Trump to respond or, or says that the media left out some aspect of it. And Sean picks media sources that freely admitted that. Right. I guess the Prager U video says that 
the media leaves out that Trump denounced the neo Nazis. So he finds like six articles well, well, here's where they the question, say, right? right? And I haven't seen the PragerU video because I don't watch PragerU fucking content. Right. Did PragerU actually make a, a fact claim about the length of time? Or my guess is they didn't. They just focused on the fact that the media was cutting out the context and Sean focused on the length of time and then said, well, the fact that they didn't bring it up is a lie. Well, she, yeah, Sean focuses on the length of time. PragerU doesn't. PragerU's argument is that the media cut out the context and Sean finds like five or six or maybe three or four media sources where they have the context in. Right. But the crux of the article is you know, Trump denounces neo-Nazis, but wait, there were neo-Nazis there. <laughs> like, right. Well, I guess I should have watched this video because I would have pointed to this idiot online and said, this video literally makes my point. <laughs> You're fucking yeah. idiot. It does make the point because it's right. actually in the very beginning of the video. Right. Yeah. Interesting. Well, you know, people are fucking idiots. So. Well, I thought the interesting thing about the video was, oh my God, so many arguments that I've heard dumbass leftists make come straight from that video. Like Sean mm -hmm. is literally doing the thinking for thousands of people who right. cannot think for themselves. Right. So sad. You know, it's funny. So then this guy responds saying, that was literally the point the media was making, not the cutting out the thing, but the length of time was too great. That was the outrage. I remember because I was paying attention. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Like ultimate irony. Sure. Go ahead. Make that completely different point. As if the media didn't actually report when we, when he finally did condemn the Nazis. Well, here's what I actually should have responded to. I didn't think about it because I was just kind of like flipping, like not really paying attention to this guy. If that was the point, then why didn't Kyle say that in the conversation? I don't remember the conversation. I didn't go back and look at it. because I didn't look, either. I don't... But if that was the point, why didn't Kyle Kalinske bring that up in our conversation? And then we addressed it there. I don't remember the conversation with Kyle, to be honest with you. Because obviously Kyle was paying attention, I would assume. Kyle was paying attention the way that we were, the way that everyone was, and understood at the time period there was an actual push by people to pretend like Trump didn't actually denounce the neo-Nazis. And they kept you kept seeing the headline, flying people on both sides, flying people on both sides. Right. right. Look, he said... And the, the first words out of his mouth were, I condemn the violence on both sides. Right. And the everyone lost well, their shit. Well, it wasn't literally like, the first words out of his mouth. That's a prayer you lie at. Okay. He had other words that came out of his mouth first. Well, he thanked, he, look, he's in a press conference for some, <laughs> for some union meeting or something like that. So he did thank the people who he met with that were union members or whatever right. it was, right? But then his first words out of his mouth about the Charlottesville situation was, I condemn the violence on many, mm -hmm. like, there was violence on both sides. Right. And I condemn all of it. Right. And everyone lost their minds because they're like, what? Right. What? Okay. There was right. violence with Antifa when there's right. there was literally videos of Antifa going down the street breaking all the windows in the cars. Right. So yeah, there was a bunch of videos online of Antifa causing mayhem. Yep. But anyway, so, just to, to put a pin on this. Um it's funny, the guy so the guy he he sent a tweet that was from August fifteenth of twenty seventeen from ABC News. And in the tweet, it's an audio clip from ABC. And, and the audio clip does actually start with Trump saying, uh, "You and you had people, I'm not talking about the neo-Nazis and the white nationalists because they should be condemned totally, but you had people in that other group, the neo-Nazis and white nationalists, okay. And the press treated them absolutely unfairly. Yeah. So you, so so on one hand, so you use the ABC clip where they do include the context, but the text of the tweet says, President Trump on Charlottesville, quote, there are two sides to a story. Says the counter protesters didn't have a permit. <laughs> so if you just read the tweet and you don't actually play the, the, the video, and even if you do play the video, is basically the, the text of the tweet has primed you 
to think that Trump is saying that there's two sides to the story in defending neo-Nazis. Yeah. Right. Which, of course, I pointed out, but you know, whatever. It doesn't matter. I just... The, the CNN narrative that you hear all the time is Trump praised neo-Nazis, which obviously right. never happens. So, but whatever. I Who know. cares? But, you know, whatever. Factually it doesn't incorrect. matter. Okay. I the, when Trump came out, I went back and and re-listened to his first talk not too long ago, and I mean he is talking about, look, these divisive race issues are bad for the country, and that we have to get over it. We have to like heal. We have to all right. realize that we're Americans and that we're all in this together. I mean, it's a really conciliatory type talk. Listening back to it, it's kind of infuriating that the media did what they did because, I mean, he was literally trying to make some make peace over this horrible thing that happened. But it wasn't good enough for the media because the media was right. like, no, you got to come out and condemn your side. We're not well, going to get listen, along, you bastard. I Again, I think you can love... I think it's totally fine to levy criticism to say it took him too long to condemn white supremacists, right? I don't have mm -hmm. a problem with that criticism. If it took three or four days or whatever, fine. Um, levy the criticism. It's based in, if it's true that he didn't make a comment for three or four days, that's mm -hmm. fine. But that's not what I was talking about. That's not what you were talking about. I don't, that's, I don't think no, we ever talked about not. that. You know, I don't think that's what we were talking about on Kyle, but you know, people are just dishonest and you know, they have to frame everything in some way in order to try to win an argument. Well, no, the media acts as though he as he as acts know, as though know, he praised the neo Nazis. Yeah. Yes, I know. Okay. Not anyway. there's a huge difference between not condemning neo Nazis for three days and praising neo Nazis. That's true. That there's a there's very a big giant difference, yeah. difference. Yes, true. true. A true. giant chasm, and that's the that is the goalpost moving that Mike tried to do or Matt right. tried to do, whatever his name was. Right. Yes. Anyway. Okay. Angry Bell Sprout for $2 says real men shit while standing up. There you go. Do okay. they? Okay. <laughs> I mean, why? Uh, but... Lightning Ninja 36 for $2 says I prefer the Roman punishment uh, decimation. There you go. There you go. I don't know how that would work in a setting for uh, for people that do bad on research papers. <laughs> Decimated is a word, weird word because you think of decimated as like annihilated, but decimated is only like the opposite. Lo losing 10% okay. of your forces. Right. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So. Which was supposed to, I, was it, was it, I don't remember what, what was it, what would you, yeah, what was it that you would do that you would get the decimation punishment for? Right. I don't remember. Is it? I know. I remember some kind of Roman military discipline and discipline thing, but that's <laughs> got to be shitty, right? Uh, Lord of the Nerds for two dollars says, "Still wanting on any Democrat to condemn Antifa." I think he means waiting. Still waiting on any right. Democrat to condemn Antifa. Nice. Has it? Yeah. Has that ever happened? I don't know. I don't know the answer to that question. They damn well I know that there were some, Antifa. I know there were some that praised Antifa. I know there were some that denounced violence, but I don't know if they if they named Antifa by name. But I know some of them denounced the violence, but they might have been too pussy to actually call it Antifa. So let's see. Here's an article about it. Claim: Not a single Democrat has condemned violence like the BLM or Antifa. Um, of course not. They're in favor of that. There you go. Violence is the language of the unheard, Sitch. I heard it in a in an MLK speech. Joe Biden wrote that while protesting police brutality is right and necessary, burning down communities and needless destruction is not. Violence that endangers lives is not. Violence that, that guts and, sh and shudders businesses that serve the community is not. So nice that he came out against the violence, but I don't think doesn't seem like he named Antifa specifically. Or BLM. But. So yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if no Democrat has named Antifa 
and denounce them. Sad. Sad, sad, sad. That's three quarters of their voters. There you go. Uh, SB Elite for two hours says, when are y'all boxing dev? <laughs> when are we going to box dev, Adam? Never. <laughs> no box. What? There you go. What do you box you dev go. for? Too lazy. Right. SB Elite for two hours says, do you all have day jobs? If so, what field? No. I used to, but not anymore. I'm oh, just really? lazy. Lazy fuck. Yes. Hmm. Elis, the Aquanaut for 15 months, thanks so much, says it's late in Florida. All the gators are sleeping and the crickets are singing. Good night, gents. Good night. Good May night. I wish you a night of only crickets and no cicadas. Oh, my goodness. Yes. There you go. Uh, J Mac for two hours says that's just fat chance from Venture Brothers, but worse. <laughs> I don't space remember space. that character. You don't remember Fat Chance? I don't. Okay. Don't I remember, remember the pedo Sarge military Sarge. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Sergeant Hatred. Oh yeah, that's him. He was obsessed with um. That. Remember his wife's tiny? He was like had the foot fetish. Oh Prince yeah, Prince's tiny feet. That's why he, he they had to give him a medicine to make him not a pedophile. <laughs> yeah, like an injection he would take. <laughs> I'll be honest, I don't know. I I I didn't hate Sergeant Hatred's character, but mm -hmm. it just he was so much lamer than Brock. I just I feel like when Brock wasn't part of now they do like he does come back, but. I, I just, I don't know. I didn't like the replacement of Brock with Sergeant Hatred. Oh, yeah, yeah. I, I wasn't... Brock, Brock is just, I mean, Venture Brothers is all about Brock Samson, man. Right, like he's, he joins Sphinx and he's still in it, but I don't know. Sergeant oh, Hatred is kind right. of funny, but I could, I could right. never really get fully into his character. I forgot so. about the Hatred substitution. I think that's one of the reasons why I kind of fell off. Yeah, he, he Brock joins Sphinx. Yeah, he was and gone. And kind of replaced him with Sergeant Hatred. And then I think everyone kind of hated it. And so next season, they have Sphinx basically lives on the Venture compound. So Brock's still in it like all the time. <laughs> but, oh, there you go. Yeah. So they brought him back. But SB Lee for Dress is. Right. It says, uh, two guys were the Nazis, left or right wing. So we've talked about this in the past. <sighs> oh, no. We've talked about this in the past. Um, I clearly say that the Nazis were clearly right wing under the under how I and how I and I think it agrees with me agrees with left and right wing. And the way that we do it is that the the left is basically the left wing position is that all problems stem from tradition and that tradition and existing systems and the only way to solve them is to look outward into new and existing ideas. And generally, this also translates into not just looking to new ideas, but also accepting new people. And that's why the left is generally very more pro-open border than the right. Because the new ideas are somewhere else. They're somewhere outside of your community. You have to look to, you know, look to the outside to get new ideas. Mm -hmm. And the right wing has kind of the exact opposite idea. The right wing is all of our problems stem from external sources, not internal sources. And that in order to seek answers to our problems, we need to go back and look at our pre-existing tradition, our pre-existing order. And we need to close the borders, wall ourselves off, wall ourselves off, because the thing that causes our society problems is outside forces come in to our society, infiltrate it, and then degenerate it. Okay? So the right views, answers must come from the past and from within, outside external forces infiltrate and degenerate. The left has the opposite opinion. All of our problems come from within, from our pre-existing eternal orders, and we must go outward to get answers to fix our problems. And under that idea, the Nazis would clearly be right-wing. So, that's my answer. Well, I think if there's an ethnic component, it's, it's right. I think, obviously... 
the right is xenophobic and the left is xenophilic. Mm -hmm. No, I mean, there's definitely lots of racist people on the left. Don't get me wrong. But if you're making like a general statement. Well, I mean, well, I guess is... you could say xenophilic is as a form of racism to an extreme. It's just a racism against your own race, right? No, this is a look. There are all these different spectrums that I left know. and right exist on. So people obviously point to the economic spectrum and they say, look, the Nazis were socialist, so therefore they're on the left. Well, they yeah, they're really on... economic socialists, though, so it's not really accurate. But but look at the ethnocentric right. metric, and they're obviously on the right. Like I, um, one... Were they even corporatists like the fascists were? I don't even one, know. One side wants to build the wall and one side right. wants open borders. I mean, that's pretty much one, one side is leans more towards ethnic homogeneity. Right. And one side wants multiculturalism. I just, I don't see how you put the Nazis on the left when they fail on all, like they're obviously so obviously on the right on all those different metrics. Yeah. Sure. They were um, on the left when it comes to, so socialism yeah they were on the left well so first of all the nazis didn't have they they had like a mixed economy they didn't have a purely socialistic economy anyway mm -hmm. and a private public uh blending but secondly there is a there is a problem and a lot of this comes from the tick video which everyone cites and i think tick's conception of of um of it is wrong because i think Tick basically, when I saw his chart, he puts, he has a very, like, a single analysis of, like, libertarians are on the right and everything that's not libertarian is on the left, which doesn't really, I don't agree with that phrase. I don't agree with that at all because there's left wing and right wing libertarians and there's left wing and right wing authoritarians. It doesn't make sense that you would have a single analysis of economics and put libertarians on the right because under if libertarians on the right that means all the christian conservatives in america who are not libertarian at all are all left-wingers and Which that doesn't make any fucking no sense, sense yeah, at all. they don't identify as left-wingers no one identifies you know the christian conservatives the michael Knowleses of the world as left-wing just because they're not libertarian socially so that that concept doesn't make sense to me i, I don't agree with the having the single unit variable of of libertarian being right wing and authoritarian being left wing, especially when the original point of left versus right was the opposite. To be right wing was to be pro authoritarian because that would be pro king. So, anyway. Well, no, I I completely agree with you. The spectrum that I lay out is personal freedom versus social cohesion so you have right. fr freedom on the left and security on the right and i feel like this really makes sense in our political environment you think about the right is obviously the law and order well, party right there's a problem with that too what is because the problem? A, because like a lot of wokeness is sacrificing personal freedom for security how so because it's like you have to sacrifice your speech in order to secure safe spaces or the safe safety of like other people's you know mental states. Yeah, but that's personal freedom for them not to be offended, and personal freedom for them to be able to go wherever they want into whatever bathroom they want to use, and personal freedom for them to like compete in whatever sports they want, and personal yep. freedom for them to right. like it's uh, it's all personal freedom. Like it's catering well, to the individual. Like well, constantly. it's well, it's. It's a little bit more complicated because essentially from the woke perspective, it's hyper personal. It's maximizing personal freedom for people that are considered oppressed groups, but at the cost of but they don't, maximizing security against people that are part of not oppressed groups. They don't see it as security at all. No, I understand that, but that's essentially what it is. So I'm just saying that that's kind Look, of the, the political the, the political spectrum that I've laid out and I brought it up on screen for you guys is personal freedom versus social cohesion. Do, do you don't think the no, because that left is that, constantly pushing for more individual freedom and the right that, is okay. worried about social cohesion? No, no, no. In America, 
okay, before wokeness came into being, mm -hmm. that idea would probably have held, held true. But as soon as wokeness and socialism enters an equation, that kind of fucks up that access because socialism well, you're moving completely... to a different spectrum. You're moving to an economic spectrum as soon as you start talking about socialism. Co I'm, I, look, I'm trying to isolate one no, variable I'm not because here. Just, wait, wait, wait. The socialist perspective, the communist perspective, okay, in the communist countries, they had, they had a culture. Even though, even though I agree that communists were primarily motivated by economics, they were still sacrificing individual freedom for social cohesion. So I'm not. So I don't think you can say that it's like a left. It's not a clear left right divide. You can say a clear left right divide between conservatives and liberals is that divide, and I think that's what you're getting at. But I don't think that's necessarily a left right divide. If that makes sense, that's a, you. You have a liberal conservative divide, not a left right divide. Well, what do you mean, liberal conservative? The whole liberalism is, is the ideology of maximizing freedom, individual right? rights and freedoms. Yes, yes. Oh, right. and I have Con set up the spectrum for. Look, at you're if you're moving more towards social cohesion, you're obviously sacrificing individual rights. The entire argument against transgenderism or gay marriage or any of the arguments that people make on the right is it, it's going to make society fall apart social cohesion is not no okay, longer well, let going me, to be let me, let me a make, thing right let me counter my own argument and make your argument against me this is maybe this is the way you'd frame it so even with socialism the thought process and the ideology, even though socialism is about destroying individuality for the group, it's still framed in a way of the point of doing it is to serve help the, individual the individual and serve the individual, even though the end result is to not serve the individual. This is Marxism where, 101, yeah. Right. Where the right wing position was never about serving the individual. It was about the individual serving it was about the state. Serving the state. Yeah. Right? That's why again, fascism is different than socialism. Right. But then again, that gets into trouble specifically not with the fascism, but with Nazis. Because, well, actually, no, it doesn't get into trouble. Actually, that would completely con conform with the Nazis. Because even though the Nazis had the view of the Ubermensch, um, the Nietzschean view of the Ubermensch, it was still under the principle that the Ubermensch had to serve the serve state. The, the, the state at the end of yeah. the day. It was that it was that groups of collectives of people were holding back uh, individuals from reaching their maximum potential, but those max, but those individuals were supposed to basically drag this the country forward in some direction, right? Well, that's why I just when you talk about socialism, I, what so much of the political spectrums are a problem because they're dealing with multiple factors. That's why I always try to isolate it down to one factor. Where, okay, you know, I th if you're, okay. Well, if you're, I, I think my my left right definition is is better because it it I think it's more encompassing, broadly. Well, hold on. What what do you mean? Because I think it encompasses both economic and social. This idea that the like, the left looks outward and the right looks inward. Looks inward. Yeah. What does that even? I mean, what does that even mean? Really? What do you mean? You know what it means. I've said it a million times. <laughs> the stream, and you've agreed. You've never. Well, you've I've, well I've never really. I mean, I've I've heard you say this it. whole time. Really. You're just like, yeah. I just kind of like that's your thing. Look, right. my thing is I'm trying to isolate it down to a single factor. Like I, the the personal freedom versus social cohesion. I think is. I mean, it's very accurate. You've got like, and this is the thing people want to talk about: right wing anarchist. And I think, what the fuck is that? Because mm -hmm. uh, don't you think you're if you're moving more towards order, you're moving away from anarchy? Like I guess the these weird right wingers are like anarchy will, uh, you know, so spontaneously form some sort of order. I just don't. I don't think conservatives believe that. I think it's kind of like a fanciful dream world. So. 
Okay. Like I still a, like my definition of better. <laughs> well, exp- let me steal man your definition. Right. Give me your de- right. definition because I've heard you say it a number of times, and I just right. I don't know where you're getting it. Like I don't have a frame of reference from any sort of literature that I've read about this. It's it's not coming from literature. It's coming from my own big brain. Okay? I know exactly, exactly. Yes. But I I right. don't know that I fully understand it because okay, what don't you understand? Well, you're saying that. The right looks to tradition for answers. The natural predisposition right. for people on the right is to view our solutions coming from traditions and from pre-existing systems and views our problems. Anytime we have a problem, it's the predisposition change. is from change, yes, or from some external force coming into our society and basically degenerating it. Yeah, that's, that's, where, why, I, that's where I disagree. Right. How do you disagree with that? Well, I mean, that's like every time the right. That's why it's like you know, make America great again. It was once great, but mm-hmm. something came in and made it not great. Now we need to make it great again. But right? there, but also, I mean, McCarthy is looking for communists within the nation who who are infiltrating our society and trying to destroy it from within. They have these un-American ideas that okay. either people or they got from across the seas, and they're coming within. But you said they're, but they're trying to destroy our society from within. Yeah, right. Okay. There's some there's some external thing coming into our country, mm-hmm. right, or into our society, and then trying to degenerate it essentially. Right. Mm-hmm. That's the right wing fear. So it's an external force. Yes, an external force or external ideas are coming into your good society, and then either attacking it through force or then or degenerating it through subversion right and what about a lot of right wingers will say you know liberalism is the problem liberals and their liberal ideas are those an external force what do you mean well, yeah cuz it well it depends cuz if, if they're going even if they're being so right wing that they're going back to like pre liberalism sure because that's like the ultimate look back to tradition isn't it but that's like, not necessarily advocate... an external force though obviously. no but wait wait to, well, no, it is because if you're going to say that you're advocating for monarchy, first of all, you're advocating for monarchy, right? So you're going, you're literally going back like super far into tradition, right? Mm-hmm. And you're saying that there was some external idea. Well, it depends what country you're from, right? Because if you're saying, oh, you know, who was it that came up with the Enlightenment? It was the dirty French, right? Or whatever country, you know, these Enlightenment thinkers, you know, first started from. And you have to relate it to like, these liberal forces either come in from external forces and then degenerate your 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 great monarchy, or usually the argument they give is that the liberal ideas allow the socialists to kind of come in and degenerate the society, right? Yeah, but that's not from some ex. That's not from foreign invasion. That's from no, okay, internal when I, okay. strife. Right. Well, okay. Maybe uh, maybe I'm not being super. When I say the fear is external forces, it's not just literal physical invasion. It's ideas external ideas coming into your society and then breaking it down which is the method in which socialists generally do is that there's some socialist idea comes into your society and then tries to deconstruct everything right i do think conservatives are worried about the undermining of tradition yes but where you lose me is when you're saying it's coming from inside or outside because i think they're worried about the undermining of tradition coming from within the country and also from outside okay. the country. There were okay. May, maybe I'm not, I'm not being clear. There are people inside the country mm-hmm. that people on the right are afraid of that are undermining the country. Yeah, because they're, they're f- undermining tradition and institutions. Which, yeah, right. But they feel like the ideas of the person are coming from some external source. Right. This is why it's like mm-hmm. we don't want you know we want to keep our children like walled off. We don't want you to learn about certain things. We right. don't want these external ideas to come into the children's head and have them subvert our way of life. Yeah. You understand? Yes. Okay. So that goes with my left right spectrum, build the wall, open borders, which are constantly yes, talking right. about. Right. That's why the yes, exactly. So, so that's what why is, the right is build the wall. Yeah. And what is your left perspective? The left is the exact opposite of that. They think all of the problems stem from pre existing traditions and pre existing systems. Right. And therefore, they need to go search for new ideas, essentially, to, to fix these problems. 
And that's why I also are more in favor of open borders because new people generally would mean new ideas, right? Right. Yeah, I buy into all that. Okay, so you that's agree. That's my cultural homogeneity spectrum. Multiculturalism right. versus ethnocentrism. Yes. When the Nazis obviously fall on the ethnocentric right. Right. edge of that. like They literally tried to... to genocide every other culture so i don't know how you could say oh they're left wing right well they're left they're i mean left the socialists i think were i think the communists were pretty i mean they were racist too right mm -hmm. um though at least in theory because there's always the problem of theory versus practice mm -hmm. so i think the the socialists and the communists were pretty racist back in the day but at least in theory the idea was supposed to be the abolishment of everything you know, every uh, grouping, right? Except for you'd have like the one unified class of people. Oh, okay. You know, because communism Flattening is a hierarchy. globalist. Communism is a globalist ideology and fascism and Nazism are hyper national, uh, ethno-national specifically, ethno-national societies. So they're Even... complete opposite ends on that spectrum. Look, I have I have the personal freedom versus social cohesion. Even if you look at it from a hierarchy versus an equality okay. spectrum, you right. still have hierarchy on the right and equality on the left. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Whatever. Anyways, Matthew Newman for two New Zealand dollars says, "Convert Ian to your religion, Sitch." <laughs> Post off. <laughs> there you go. A team reigns supreme. Well, I might ask, I might ask him if he's accepted Jesus Christ as his Lord and Savior just for fun. Right. It's just Abby for five Aussie bucks says, "Yo, get J J McCullen on. He seems pretty cool. He has bad taste in YouTubers though. I seem to remember him shouting out bread tubers. Interesting. Okay. J Mac for five dollars says that was Counter points his wife. Oh yes, I didn't realize that till later, but thank you. Fondue for Vidar says the entire drama is them tripping over themselves to prove counterpoints right. True. True. And J. Mac, our circuit father for another ten dollars, says I got into it with President Sunday since I'm mutual was since I'm mutuals with Mrs. Points. He tried to pull the erm who are you silliness with me. Twitter is cancer, but God, it's fun sometimes. <laughs> Twitter is fun. That's a sad fact of life right there. You you know you've you know you've defeated someone in a Twitter argument when they're like, Who are you? Like that's that's their response. They can't actually respond to whatever you're saying. They that's a like, typical Sunday response though. Sunday yeah. is like smug as can be. Right. Which is weird. He doesn't he does not have a large channel. He's like a tiny channel. He doesn't have a large channel and I just like he's, he's a very not, small audience too. So he's not that entertaining and he doesn't really doesn't yeah. have original things to say. We talk to him and it's just like talking to a standard leftist NPC. Right. True. Yeah. Uh, Twitter sucks. Sir Surrogate Godfather for five hours says I am buying more free will. Make a decision for me, yes or no. Okay. I'm gonna say yes. no. Oh. <laughs> oh shit! Uh -oh. You cross the stream, Sitch. What the, the hell? What, what are, are you do? doing? What are we doing? Well, I'm gonna say yes, and Adam said no, so you're gonna have to work it out from there. <laughs> okay. Uh, Blaine's escape quarter for five dollars says date ended successfully. <laughs> <laughs> she had a great relationship with her father. He died a few years ago. Sorry to hear that. You may not need a father figure, but it sure helps. True. Of course, yeah. Right. Uh, SB Elite for five hours says new ideas and why do the leftoids always ultimately want communism? Wouldn't that basically make them conservatives by that logic? Well, it's that's a fair point that they always want to go, they want to revert back to communism. Though they'll argue, and what is it? What is it that the left always argues? What do they say? Oh. They say real communism has never been tried. Oh yeah. Right? State capitalism. That was sitch. But sitch. That but was sitch. state capitalism. That was state capitalism. Right. So even though they're hearkening to some old theory in their minds, they, they don't think communism has ever actually been accomplished or done. So that's you know what they why always say. You know why it's always capitalism or state capitalism? Because that's why? the only shit that works. Yes, because communism <laughs> is a fucking pipe dream. Yes, obviously. Doesn't so. work. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 
They pretend, we pretend to work and they pretend to pay us. God, it's just, it's so idiotic to me. Right. Yeah. And also from a linear progressive model, you would say that capitalism, like the point when, when Marx wrote his books and his work, capitalism was the dominant theory. Well, actually, I mean, if capitalism was one of the dominant theories. There's obviously monarchies and shit still happening. Um, but a liberal capitalism was the, was one of the dominant theories that he was working to sort of overturn. And so from that perspective, they'd say, well, communism was still the newer thing. But We know. were terrified that communism was With, going to work and be a more successful system, system that would right. produce a larger military that we would ultimately have to engage and would would beat us right. and subjugate us and take all our women, all our mm. natural resources, make us a satellite nation of How did Russia. that turn out? <laughs> well, thankfully, I mean, I think we have enough evidence to know that it's, it's not going to work. It's not a no. competition. There is, no, obviously. there is, there are some people who are still, afraid of that because of China. Like China is obviously an authoritarian communist right. nation. And they think China's China, struggling though. Yeah, that's the thing. I listen to the China show all the time. And I mean, those guys just say everything that goes on in China is a scam. Like right. they, they pretend like they have a big successful military, but the truth is it's just like everything they do, they pretend is great, but it's really just bullshit. Right. Yeah, smoking. Well, also, I mean, do you, has when's the last like, what's the last military engagement China's been seriously involved in? Yeah, uh, what? I, I don't yeah. know. The answer to that question. Korean War. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. I, I don't no know idea. if they've done anything. So for but this for analysts to judge their military readiness. This is a problem with uh, the Russia Ukraine conflict because you right. know they told. Putin that oh yeah our military is amazing We're great military because they didn't want to get shot or killed right. right it was their job to produce a great military so obviously they're going to tell them yeah of course our military is badass sure and but you have a highly knows. corrupt you know yeah. a country where basically all the military people were skimming money from the military <laughs> yeah exactly and now they've turned around. And they're like, "Oh yeah, we're great." So I mean, I don't know if that's what's going on with China either, but I wouldn't be surprised if that was also what was going on to some extent. Anyway, I would assume not anywhere near as bad as Russia. I think Russia's probably in its own class of uh, incompetence and corruption, well, far the, beyond China. If but, China engages with Taiwan and then Taiwan just like kicks their ass, that's going to be embarrassing. Yeah, if that happens, right? Yeah, if something like that were to happen, so. I, I don't, I would, based on nothing but my intuitions alone, I would not think China would be as blatantly as incompetent as Russia was in the beginning of the Ukraine war. <laughs> okay. Man, you listen to some of that China show and you're just like... I know, this... but they're like completely anti-China, right? So they're going to have a very one-sided opinion on everything. Right, but listen, they lived in China for 10 years. Both of them right. speak the language fluently. They know the culture. And but they're still biased against China. <laughs> they're completely biased against China, yeah. but they are looking at actual Chinese media and mm -hmm. kind of dissecting okay. it. Where I, what other, what other people talking about China are doing that? Sure. Yeah. No. I, I think they're. I, I think they're great. I'm just saying. I would be surprised. I don't believe that China's military would be anywhere near as competent as Russia's military was. And this is based on just my butt. Okay. Right. This is source made it up. My intuition is telling me that I don't think China would be anywhere near as competent as, as Russia was in terms of corruption. Did but, you see did you see the video where they had like thousands of electric vehicles, EVs no. that were just parked like hidden in some wooded area? Because in China? yeah. So they Why? made all these they made all these EVs and pretended that they were sold so that mm -hmm. the company could boast about all of these EV sales. But then they just stashed them away, like in some wooded area. <laughs> no one wanted to buy them. They, they literally, people are like walking around looking at these EVs and shit. Yeah. 
That's hilarious. They have another video too where in different like the the Chinese Communist Party will tell these different small townships or whatever that they need mm -hmm. to have some sort of environmental program or something where right. they have to to grow so much area and they don't have like the irrigation or any of the farming equipment to do it. So they just go out and they like paint the mountainside. Right. So, uh, it shows up on satellite maps as green and then some Chinese <laughs> party, some Chinese party official. They, they, they literally painted the ground. Yeah. Green. <laughs> they fucking paint the ground green. Yes. Okay. Yeah. That's interesting. All the, they have video of all this shit. Yeah. So, but That's then hilarious. the Chinese Communist Party will send out some official mm -hmm. to check, and they're like, "Oh shit, they're gonna see that the ground is just green, right?" Mm -hmm. So they'll kind of try to prop shit up in certain <laughs> areas and like corral the person into some area that it's right, like the, semi it's like, wooded. Yeah, exactly. Right, there's like ten square feet of like trees. <laughs> there's so many stories like this That's about hilarious. how everything is just a fucking scam. Okay. Listen, I, I hope that's all true. So I hope everything that's all true. is just a fucking right. scam. It all goes with okay. that. There's that one saying that is supposedly a prominent saying in China. Like you know, America, we have honesty is the best policy, right? Um, I know. You said this. I know. I know what you're saying. Yeah. Well, what America has all these great ones in China. Right. It's if you can cheat, cheat. Right. Supposedly. <laughs> it looks. It, <laughs> Sitch doesn't believe it. No, I'm just saying. Like we have you just have to be acknowledged that those people are like very, obviously, obviously anti-China biased. Which I'm also anti-China biased. So I'm just saying. I don't want to like take everything they're saying as if it's gospel. If you're painting, if you're literally painting the ground green, that's not good. That's not good. Doesn't that <laughs> match up? Concrete. Doesn't that match up with a? It does. If you can cheat, does. cheat. Sure. If you sure. can do. Yeah, but you understand that China's a big country, right? Right. It's the best, you know, how many billion people or whatever in China? You saw that literally they're right. building skyscrapers and selling empty buildings to I people understand. as their investments I've... for the Listen, future. I'm not, I do not want to defend China. I'm just saying, okay, I'm not going to simply trust one very biased source and making a broad generic uh general claim about the state of the country okay that could very easily fall into the realm of wishful thinking wait, i wait. agree i want china to be filled with incompetent buffoonish military people so if they ever do invade taiwan or do whatever it'll be a total fuck blow up in their face well first I of hope all that's true it's not just one source because zay han is saying the same kind of things and also what is different from them like so, that's okay, like whatever I it's fine. No, I hold on, hold on. We don't just need one, to argue about this. One more thing. One more thing. <laughs> okay. What is the difference between somebody saying I'm not going to trust Sitch because he's just one biased source? Aren't you that's going fine. to like a lot of different sources and a lot of different materials? Uh, sure. I mean, so I, I mean, I don't that. think of Sitch that's as fine. like one source. Right. But you're kind of lumping them in when they're if going to a, a bunch of different. Where. Well, there's a difference because usually we're talking, I'm not making these broad, I'm not usually making these like broad claims where I'm claiming to be an expert about like the entire fucking country. We're usually talking about people's arguments and their ideologies. Right. But the, something you can the, just like in statistics, something you just like look up. I'm not making like a broad systemic claim about like how an entire country's military readiness is going to be. I would never claim to have anywhere near enough information to make a, what, def a definitive look, claim that's why i said that my claim about their military was based purely on my gut I'm i don't not basing it on really anything i don't they they i don't think the china boys have ever made any sort of any sort of claim about china's readiness their military readiness okay. like i'm well, just kind of inferring that okay all they're well, really doing all they're really doing is they're looking right. for stories that come out of china and translating them and kind of giving the cultural right. okay. background. So I'm it. glad you said that. Okay. Yeah. So, but you understand, like, if they have a channel that's basically about, let's look at all, like, the goofy, stupid shit China does, right? Yeah. They're hyper-selecting for a certain type of story. Right. So it would be dangerous, like, if you're in the U.S. military, then to try to say, well, because that's what they do means that their military is going to be incompetent, right? 
because like that's literally what they're looking for. Like I'm sure you could have a channel in China that looks for all the wacky incompetent shit some people in America are doing, right? Mm -hmm. Like it would not be necessarily wise to then extrapolate that onto the American military must therefore also be incompetent. Sure. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Anyway, uh, Matthew Newman for two New Zealand says tick shows Germans and Russians did the same economy. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. Well, okay. We'll get into the two things. First of all, to my understanding, that's not accurate. Number one, but number two, to me, it's, and I can only say this so many times. It's just extremely silly, extremely silly to not understand the main difference <laughs> I said a million times between the communist and the Nazis. Communism is primarily a system based around economics, right? Yes, of course. Fascism and Nazism is it's primarily about tradition a system and culture. Yeah. based about culture. Yep, tradition okay? and culture. Yep. Economics comes second. And so to me, it's ridiculous to say in a political system where ec where the economic system literally comes second to serve the cultural system to say that you're going to use an economic system to judge it just so you can win an argument online about whether the Nazis are left and right wing is really goofy. Okay. Yeah, and just what the fuck? It's just right. uphill battle. No one's... No one's going to change or you're not going to convince people. Well, right. you might convince some stupid people that the Nazis were left wing. <laughs> it's just, it's so laughable. Right. And it's the only reason you're doing that is so that you can say Hitler was a left winger and left wingers have something in common with Hitler. Right. Or it's just the people that are very libertarian that want to look at the lens of the world through the singular libertarian lens just not accurate but whatever mm -hmm. uh nilo for two dollars says name one communist country that's not nationalist the ussr the whole fuck i don't even know how you even ask me that question the entire thought process of communism is literally globalism that's what the thought process was well the ussr that's is not no longer around so Right, but that's, I understand that, but that was the whole thing. We are going to basically take this ideology and unite the world under one global ideology, one global government. That was, yeah. that's literally the fucking goal of communism. Yeah. The goal of fascism is the exact opposite. It's <laughs> like if the Nazis wanted to take, if the Nazis took over the world, the whole thing would be to just be like, well, we're going to take over the world and then separate everyone off. <laughs> it's like, it's literally the, I just, I don't know. It's silly to me. It's very silly to me that we're having this conversation. And it's literally just arguing over labels. It's arguing over labels to try to win an argument, which is always a bad sign of a conversation, right? If you're trying to win an argument through labels. With I, all of I think, our... To me, it's just interesting because I think, I do think there's a left-right divide that exists, and I think that the label can be useful to giving people a broad, a broad analysis of broad views that tend to align to some effect and why those views align to that effect i think is interesting and yet everyone wants to use those labels in ways to win arguments right unfortunately so the yeah. nazis are white wing you just have to suck it up it's fucking stupid i'm sorry it's just fucking stupid to say that they're on the left okay yeah it doesn't even make sense for them to be on the left, but okay. Well, it does make sense if you want to trash liberals. Right, or leftists, or socialists. I mean, the socialists, listen, socialists don't need help being trashed. They fucking suck. Right. They suck already. It's fine. And I mean, Dev already went, Dev has a great video, Short Fat Talker has a great video where he kind of goes through the evolution of fascism. And he talks about how fascism is essentially just right wingers taking socialism and then making it right wing. <laughs> right. It's essentially what fascism is. And I and I understand, like, from to be charitable, that's where some of the confusion comes from. Because yeah, 
so I mean, fascism is really just right wing socialism. So I can understand where the confusion comes from, but whatever. Um, Twitter sucks for five dollars. Says you're both allowed, and then prevented me from dropping five thousand dollars on a new addition to a collection. Wow. Well, there you go. What? What was that? What was it for? I mean, five thousand dollars for a new addition for a collection could be. A lot. I might change my answer depending on what it was. We You've biased me on Twitter. Sucks. We prevented and allowed. Because so we look, said you I literally said yes can and you make up no. your own mind. Yeah. There you go. It's the true free will. That is free. Twitter sucks for five dollars. Says, all right. I found two other things. Yes or no on one, and yes or no on two. See, you've biased me now. Now I'm going to say no. I don't want you to spend any more money. I don't want you to spend five thousand dollars on things. Okay. What if it's like a massive super chat for us, though? Oh, that's a good point. Hmm. Maybe we should throw the yes out. Just I vote off. yes. <laughs> no, see, but that feels immoral for us to say yes on both, just on the off chance to to profit ourselves. Yeah, you're right. That's that is immoral. Right. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you say yes, I say no, so we'll be in the same <laughs> position. <laughs> Wait, I'm saying, which one are you saying no to? The both. You're saying no thought, to both? I thought you were saying yes to both, and I'll say no to both. Um, I was just saying yes to one. So I'll go no to two. Okay, then. So it's a yes and a no on one, and then two right. no's on two. Okay, well then just for the sake of uh, balance, I guess I'll say no to one and yes to two. <laughs> <laughs> for a maximum free will okay. you're terrible for, for a maximum free will that's what i'll do so does youtube not allow you to talk about purchasing firearms because discount because discord. discord doesn't like it i think you talk about buying guns I, I don't know the answer to that i know i mean oh you're gonna buy a five thousand dollar gun oh geez wow okay. I mean, now I'm a little, I mean, if it's a cool gun. Now, see, now I've, the more information I get, the more my life you change. The more you realize you've completely answered incorrectly. Um, I don't know. It depends. It depends. How about this? You buy, you buy one of the guns, okay? Mm -hmm. Buy one of the guns. Buy one of the cool guns. That'd be my choice. But not 5000 That's a lot for a gun. Anyway, I'm like falling asleep here. I know. What's going on? You, why are you so slow? Look, you started an argument about... You... You started an argument. Dragged out the left-right wing thing for far too long. Well, it was, no, it was a great conversation. Okay. Way more substance than anything that's coming. out any of, of the videos a, that we watched, I know. Or a President Sunday stream. I don't think of President course. Sunday could have this detailed conversation no. like oh, the left and right is a social construct so therefore the left and the right are both gay <laughs> i know it's so stupid that's the argument yeah all right is that it ct for two dollars says by the way when you have covid and can't taste things you can 100 percent brush your teeth and then immediately drink orange juice with zero negative consequences it's amazing and it horrifies people when when there you go ct tried to tell me that that made her god because she had that superpower. I mean, that's pretty godly. Yeah. Amazing. Anyways. <laughs> thank you all for coming. Oh, Twitter sucks for five dollars says look up the Swiss ZFK3142 scoped. It's so weird the scope flips up. Okay, I'll look it up. Hmm. That is weird looking. Cool. Anyways, thank you so much, Twitter Sucks, for becoming our surrogate godfather. Thank you so much, all of you, for your incredibly generous donations. Uh, thank you... What was her name? I forgot her name. The lady we watched. Legia. Legia, for having some real lame takes for us to critique. And thank you... You who have made it to the end of the stream. You are the true super fans. You are the true free will seekers. 
and we'll see you all on Tuesday. Bye bye. No. No, I'm not ending it. Yes. <laughs> give me a good go. Give me a, a normal bye bye. Bye bye. No, no, stop. We're gonna be stuck here bye-bye. for another hour until you say bye bye correctly. <laughs> bye bye. Bye bye. There it is. <laughs>